The story starts in the rainy season. The main character forgets his umbrella and was getting wet from the rain. He then starts running to his apartment to get shelter. When he was going up the stairs, he encounters a girl who was wielding a sword. The girl gives him a murderous look, which startles him. After that, a pair of keys drop on the ground, and the sound from the keys scares the girl. He was scared at first, but after taking a look, he thinks that she is just a cosplayer. He looks at her and gets impressed by how well her costume was made, down to the sandals. After that, he walks away, thinking she is really dedicated to her work, but then she tells him to stop. He says that it is his house and wonders if he scared her by any chance. She acts aggressively toward him, which makes him confused. After that, he thought she is a weird person and goes inside his home. While closing the door, he saw that she was standing at the corner of the stairs. After taking a shower, he grabs a drink and after that, he calls his cat, Winter Melon, for feeding him. He then drinks from the can and says, it felt refreshing to drink after taking a shower. He then sits by the window and said, his work is done. After some time passes, he grabs his umbrella and checks on the other side of the door if the girl was still there. He saw that no one was there, but to confirm it, he opens the door. He then finds the girl sitting right next to the door. He gets nervous and tells her that she can use her umbrella to head home. He also says that she can call her family if she wants and tells her to go home. The girl asked where she is and he replied that it is the neighborhood of Baywing Road. After hearing it, she gets confused and asked who he is. He tells her that she can call him Lei Feng. He then asked if she wants the umbrella or not, but she didn't understand what he was saying. She then introduces herself as a disciple of the Salt Gang and says that she has no idea why she is there. Lei thought that she is either ill or has 8th grade syndrome. Lei then thought that it would be better if he rather calls security and tells her to come inside the house. He then calls security and was discussing the matter. The girl then intensely stares at the TV and gets startled by it. Lei was still in the conversation, but then he saw that the girl stabbed the TV with her sword and broke it. She looked scared as she stabbed the TV, but Lei couldn't comprehend what just happened. After that, the girl gives him a murderous look and Lei hangs up the phone. Lei knew that things are going to get dangerous if he doesn't do something. The girl then asked about the people in the box and who was he talking to. Lei wondered if she is from Wukiao Acrobatic Troop and if she can't even afford to pay for the TV. He tells her to put down her sword and says that he is a good person. While she was pulling her sword from the TV, he noticed that it was a real sword. He asked her name and where she came from. She replied that her name is Zhang He and she is a disciple of Salt Gang. He asked where is the Salt Gang and she gets surprised that he doesn't know about it. He replied, he hasn't heard of the Salt Gang and looked at her drenched body. Lei says that he is a good person and she can ask him any question. Jiang said that she wanted to go home, back to the Salt Gang. He asks if she knows Zhang Cheng City, but she was clueless. He then wondered if she is an ancient person and asked who the Emperor is. She was clueless and says that her majesty is just her majesty. Lei gets angry and asked what year it was. Jiang then confirmed if it wasn't the 16th year of Kayan. Lei gets shocked because it didn't seem that she is joking and tells her to give him a second. He then searches the internet and asked if the emperor's name was Tang Xuanzong, but she had no clue. He then continues to ask her about several names, but the name King Lian Jushi rang a bell and she asked if he knows him. It was the name of a famous player that Lei knew from a game. The food delivery man then rings the bell and makes her startled. She asked about the noise and draws her blade, but Lei tells her to stop. He says that someone brought goods for him and they are not a bad guy. She asked if it is a servant, to which he replied that it is a food delivery man. Lei then brings the food to her and asks if she wanted to eat it together. She replies that there was no need but thanks him. She then looks at him and asked why is all their hair short and if they were exiled. Lei gets sweaty and asked what she meant by that. She replied that she took a look outside when she first arrived an hour ago. Lei knew how violent she is, but he was relieved that nothing bad happened. He asked if anyone saw her, to which she replied that she hid in the dark and wandered around. Lei was about to eat his burger, but Zhang comes close to his face and says that he hadn't answered her question yet. He replied that their hair was short due to the local custom. He then offers his food and asked if she wants some. She stared at the food for some time, but then she shakes her head, saying that she doesn't want it. He then offers her a drink and said that he already opened the can. 
she gets angry because she thought he is looking down on her and asked, what is this food? Lay said that he wasn't looking down on her and replied that it is a hamburger. The coke on the table falls on the floor, and looking at the color, Jiang thought, it is poisonous. Lei nervously tells that it wasn't poisonous, but Jiang draws her sword and pins him on the floor. Jiang was staring at him intensely, but Lei take the can and drinks the coke to make her understand that it wasn't poisonous. He tells her to quit drawing her sword and says that he is a good guy. He then points at his cat and said that she is scaring Winter Melon. He looks at Jiang and thought that there are three options to deal with a violent girl like her. The first option is to leave her on the streets where she would starve or get caught by the police. The second is to call the police and hand her over to them. But he then thought that if something goes wrong, she might attack the police and make a mess for him. The third option is to observe her and as she is an ancient girl, he thought that she might know some secret techniques. It was a rare chance for him to see those powers, so he thought that he would regret it if he hands her over. After that, he insisted that she tries the burger. She drools while watching the food, but still refuses to accept it. She then asked, what is the thing that is in his hands? Lei replied that it was food and asked if he should take a bite to prove that it isn't poisonous. Jiang replied that he should while drooling. While he was taking the bite, he thought that this sort of food might be too much for her. He then says that her body won't be able to handle this food, so he will prepare a rice bowl for her. He then tells her to sit, as seeing her standing with a sword makes him scared. Jiang then touches the sofa and tries to sit cautiously. At that time, Jiang was thinking that although she was unfamiliar with everything, she knows that he was trying to help her by offering the umbrella. The room seemed weird, and the stuff he was eating made him look like a weird person to her, so she wants to be careful. She then asked about Lai Bai, as Lei mentioned his name before. He tells her to put her sword away and said that she might get shocked to hear it. She says that she wants to go home, no matter where that place is. He looks at her with a sad face and said that she might not be able to return, as it is really far away. She asked how far it is. Lei replies that it is 1,200 years far. Jiang asked what did he meant. So Lei explained that this era is 1,200 years after the era she is from. He says that her emperor, friends, or everyone that she knew were from over a thousand years ago, and that they are already dead. Jiang stands up and calls him a liar. He then tells her that she will find out about it slowly. He also said that the current era is peaceful, but there is a set of laws that she needs to follow. Jiang then continued to call him a liar, but Lei said that she will understand if she is a smart person. He said that everyone she knew became history. Jiang gets angry and tried to leave, but Lei tells her to stop. She then draws her blade and points at him. He repeats about the laws and said that she can't go out with a sword like that. Jiang asked why is he trying to help her, to which Lei replied that when Winter Melon was outside, he took him in. She asked who was Winter Melon, so he said that it is this fat cat. She then gets pissed and asked if he is looking down on her. From what she saw, she knows that he isn't an evil person. He is just an ordinary person who was heading home and encountered her. When it was about to get dark, he wanted to lend her an umbrella. She asked why he is helping her, to which he replied that the situation is interesting. He asked what would she do if he ran into her timeline. She replied that he would have been taken to the chief and then executed. After that, Lei makes a hard face and says, Ami Wamu Shinderu. He then says that she can't kill any people here as everyone are peace lovers. He didn't know how she got here, but he warns her to not harm anyone while she lives there for the time being. He also refrains her from destroying things as she did to his TV. He wants to help her, but if she wants to go, then she should be careful about the police, is what he told her. She then thinks about her situation. She knows that there is nothing to wear for her as the clothes are different in this era and she has nowhere to go if she leaves now. He tells her to put down her sword and says that he will order some food for her. He also tells her that if she keeps drawing her sword in front of other people, then it will be troublesome for her. After that, she looks at her sword and throws it away. He then asks what she usually eats and gets an idea about a set of food. He then decides to order some rice and buns. He tells her to take a shower and asked if she knew how to use the bathroom. She gets confused and asked where the bath is. After that, he shows her the toilet, which makes her surprised. Lei then says that she might get surprised to see amazing things and feel like something wants to hurt her. He reassures her and says that at least he will never harm her. 
he then shows her how to use the shower and tells her to give it a try while taking pictures from her back. He shows her shampoo and teaches her about the functions of the toilet. While she was using the bath, Lei was waiting in the living room. He opens his wardrobe in hopes of finding something that she could wear. He then accidentally opened the door of the bathroom to give her clothes, but he realized that he forgot to teach her about locking the door. He gives her a t-shirt and said that he will buy her some dresses tomorrow. He tells her to come over and said that he will teach her how to lock the door. After he came out, he was scared, thinking that if he went during the wrong time, then he would have been dead. After that, he sat on the sofa and meanwhile, Jiang was enjoying her bath. She tries to lick the soap, but spits it out. Lei was wondering if he was dreaming about having an ancient girl in his house. He picks up her sword and unsheathes it. While looking at the sword, he wondered if he should give this to an expert to identify whether it is an antique. Jiang gets out of the bath and watches Lei writing something. She then gets close to him and asked what he was writing. He shows her the paper and said it is a list of her daily necessities. He then gives her the paper and asked if she could read it, but she couldn't. He said that he will tell her about it later. Jiang then tells him that the clothes are strange for her, but he says that they looks good on her, but he coughed and tells her that it is a custom to compliment people on good looks. She glares at him and tells him to not to say something flirtatious. He then noticed that she was still wearing her straw shoes, so he tells her to put away her shoes and get a slipper from the rack. Suddenly, the takeout man arrives at the door and makes her startled. He then tells her to not get nervous and said, it is food delivery. Lei was thinking about how her cautious side resembled a wild cat. He then brings out the food and puts it on the table. While sitting at the table, Jiang says that she heard a saying from her second in command. It was that if a person has the intention to do something, then he is a thief. But she then smiled and said that Lei is really a good person. After that, she finishes her meal. Lei then asked if she is done because he wants to talk to her. He said that since she is from 1200 years ago, so if she couldn't understand anything, then they will discuss it. He also tells her that if she were to kill him, then she would be fine for a week if she were to hide his body. He then tells her to forget about her sword and gives a brief explanation about the TV and other devices. He then brings out his phone and gives an example of how it can be used. He tells her that if she doesn't understand anything, then she can feel free to ask him. She hears Lei's speech and sits quietly, and Lei sighs a breath of relief. He says that the outside of the house is complicated. He explained that even though it is peaceful and safe for him, but it is too dangerous for her. Jiang gets confused and asked why. He answered that it is because she might hurt people and get captured for it. He then brings out a card and said that it is an identification card. He explained how not having an ID card while traveling outside might spell trouble for her. He added that if she goes against the police or gets captured while holding a weapon, then she will be punished. He knew that if someone discovered that she is ancient, then it would become a global sensation. She then asked if he meant that she is a refugee, but Lei replies that it is worse than that. He then gives an example of her situation, saying that she is something like a slave without a contract. He explained that in this world, she is in a dangerous position, but for him, it is a wonderful feeling to meet someone like her. He says that he is willing to help her to get settled into this world slowly. Jiang asked how is she supposed to trust him and muttered that she just wants to return to her home. Lei replied that if she doesn't believe in him, then she can forget about it. He added that it won't be easy to help her if she doesn't believe in him. She thinks about it for a bit and asked what is she supposed to do now. He replied that first of all, she shouldn't draw her sword any time in the future as it is scary for people in this era. She then looks around for a bit and asked where his wife is. She also says that it isn't proper for her to be around him if that was the case. He then depressingly replied that he is a single dog and is currently unmarried. She was shocked to hear that he wasn't married and stared at him for a bit. He then sighs and said that it is normal for a man and a woman to be alone as long as they don't share the bed. He tells her to come with him and shows her a room that he used as storage. He said that she can live in that room. After that, when Lei starts cleaning the room, Jiang was wondering that this place is weird as Lei isn't married at the age of 20, despite being a landlord. He then brings a mattress for her and tells her to not worry, as it was clean and she can use it. He tells her to get some rest and said that she might be feeling confused right now, but he feels the same way. He then leaves the room and wishes her good night. 
After he was gone, Jiang puts back her sword and falls into deep thought. Su was into deep thought in the middle of the night while lying on his bed. He was thinking how the reality didn't make any sense to him. During the whole day, he was looking for a job interview and couldn't make it back in the rain. It was a normal and unlucky day for him. As a result, he picked up a girl who preferred to draw her sword at any moment and claimed to be from ancient times. He then tells himself to forget it and wait until tomorrow. Morning arrives and he wakes up. He then grabs his phone to check the time. He gets shocked to see the time and tries to confirm if yesterday's event was just a dream. He sneakily gets up and looks from the corner. He then saw that Zhang was already awake. She then noticed him and asked what he was doing. Zhu is now sure that it wasn't a dream. He then tries to continue their conversation, but it felt awkward to him. He asked if she is hungry, to which she replied, just a little. She then realizes something and dashes out of the room. After a while, she comes back and gives him something, saying he will be probably fine with these pieces. Zhu greedily looks at it and wonders if it is gold. She tries to give him her necklace, saying that he would be able to pawn more silver with it. But Zhu tells her to forget it and give her the silver pieces back. He then realized just how unfit she looked in her clothes, so he decides to buy her some clothes along with some daily necessities. He was thinking that taking her out for shopping in her clothes will look weird. There are fewer police patrols in his area, so he was thinking that as long as she doesn't make a fool of herself, then she would be fine. After that, he goes out to do the shopping for her. He picks a variety of clothes for her and looks at a night dress and decides to buy it as well. After that, he arrives at the women's underwear section. He was thinking that he has to risk it all as it was impossible for him to go inside alone. One hour later, he was finally done shopping. He then looks at the underwear and gets flustered. He goes to a library and buys some books worth 200 yuan. He wondered if it might be useful to keep it at his home. After he was done, he thought about going back home. While he was heading home, a police officer who knew him asked if he went to do the shopping, and he replied yes. He asked why did he call him yesterday, to which Zhu replied that it was a mistake. The officer then warns him about a thief and tells him to inform him if he sees him. Zhu then comes back to his house, but gets surprised to see that Zhang was looking at him menacingly while drawing her sword. He then gives her food and said that it is completely safe in this era. He tells her that he brought some daily necessities for her and will give them to her after the meal. He then kept staring at her, so she asked what is wrong. Zhu replied, shouldn't she be telling something like, thank you, young warrior. He then asked if he counts as a warrior or something else. She then expresses her gratitude in the way he envisioned, but she was confused. He sarcastically accepts her gratitude. He was just trolling her, but she was ignorant about it. After that, she starts eating at a fast speed and makes Zhu speechless. His image of an ancient girl eating was different, so he gets confused. He then said that he brought some clothes according to her height, but he doesn't know the actual measurements. He gives her the night dress and said she can wear it if she likes. She then holds a bra and asked what these are. Zhu gets flustered and said that he will show her a video about how to use these. He tells her that these are used by women, so she has to study them herself. She looks at the clothes and gets confused. He then gives her two books and tells her to read them, saying they contain history and language. He was thinking that it would be easier if he teaches her how to use the computer. He then looks at her yawning and says she should rest if she is feeling tired, and after that, he asked if she wanted to know anything else. She asked him what is his status in this world. Zhu answered that he completed graduation and is unemployed, but he then explains it in a way so she can understand. She thought that he was a rich kid or a family member of a landlord. After that, she starts reading the books that Zhu gave her, and while reading, she cries and asked, how can she go back? Zhu replied that he doesn't know and asked how did she got here in the first place. She said that yesterday, while chasing a thief, she got lost in the forest and after that, she saw a tall building in front of her. Zhu tell her that she has to learn to survive here first, and then she can think about going back. He then asked her about her military rank, but she replied that her gang was powerful. Zhu then asked if she could use any special arts or how far she could jump down without taking damage. She then points at the building and says that it is okay for her to jump from there. Zhu then gets speechless as the building she pointed to was fourth floor worth tall. Zhu then asked her if she knew martial arts or heavenly mystic techniques. Zhang had no idea what he was talking about. 
Zhu asked if she knew Kung Fu and begged her to teach it to him. Jiang said that he won't be able to achieve much at his age, but Zhu said it is fine. She then takes a stance and starts teaching him about the basics of martial arts. Jiang explained that martial arts are the accumulation of every little thing. He asked if he could skip the stance, but she replies that he can't. He then asked how long would he have to practice, to which she replied that for three years. Zhu was wondering if he would have been in the army if he stood up. Zhu and dropped the idea and asked if he could learn swordsmanship instead, but Jiang said that it is a no-go. He gets depressed and tells her to try out her new clothes. After she was gone, he thought that it was his chance. He then picks up her sword and tries to swing it. After a while, he gets tired as the sword was too heavy for him. After that, Jiang changes into her new clothes and appears in front of Zhu. She said that she tried everything and it is the one that fits her well. Zhu then tells her to move around and said that he wants to have a look. He tells her to let her hair loose and said that he will buy her a new headband. She then unties her hair and asked if it's okay. Zhu then starts to cry after seeing just how cute she looked. He was glad that Jiang didn't have any awareness. After that, he says that he will take her for a walk tonight. Sometime later, Jiang watches Zhu from a corner as he was using the computer. She then asks what he is doing and what is this device. Zhu replied that it is a computer and explained about the functions in a way she could understand. He then asked if it is hard to read the book, to which she replied that she is slowly getting it right. He tells her to take her time and said that he would have done worse if he was in a situation like hers. After that, he starts operating the computer again. She then asked if he doesn't have any work, to which Zhu replied that people have to think to make money in this world, and what he is doing currently is his work. She then wondered if he was a businessman, but he said it isn't accurate and she will be able to understand it slowly. After that, he asked how was her chief's martial arts skills, to which she replied that it was very strong. Zhu then smirks and then he clicks on a video. The video was about fictional fighting using martial arts. Jiang gets intrigued and starts watching it. After that, Zhu interrupts her and asked how strong were their martial arts compared to the video. He then asked if their martial arts were this strong, but she replied that these techniques look godlike to her. She then imagines fighting against the men from the movie and gets scared by the thought. After that, he shows her a different video where the person made a hole in the ground using his palms. Jiang gets scared and becomes speechless. She then asked if this is the true power of his world, but Zhu revealed that they were fake. She asked if he is telling the truth and whether it really was fake or real. He replies that it was fake and this was how they imagined what ancient people would look like. He then explained how are they doing it but she couldn't understand. He said that once she gets more acquainted with this world, she will be able to understand movies and art. He then asked if her leader was stronger than the people in the movies, but she replied that only their footwork looked familiar. He asked if there were anyone capable of superhuman movement, and she replied that only her gang's second miss was capable of something like that, but the technique such as the god palm was impossible even for her. He then thinks about something and shows her another video. He asked if she could do something like that with his eyes sparkling with expectation. She then thinks about it for a second and starts to imitate what she saw. Zhu felt excited after watching her do that. She then tells him that if he wants to learn, then she can show him the training method. While she was leaving, Zhu falls to his knees and after that, he starts celebrating behind her back. She then bumps into a ball and sees that Winter Melon was staring at her. She enters her room, making the cat confused. In her room, she was thinking that there is no one in this world without ulterior motives. She now believes that Zhu's goal was to learn martial arts all along. She starts to cower in fear after thinking about the movies that she saw. She then looks above the room and thought that it was spacious enough. After that, she draws her sword and starts practicing. There was noise coming from her room, which made Zhu wonder if she wasn't resting. He was also getting tired, so he decided to take a nap and throws himself on the bed. He was thinking how incredible it felt to have a female martial artist sleeping in the opposite room. A loud noise startles him and makes him wonder what she was doing. After taking a nap, he wakes up and checks his phone. He then sees time and said that he slept for too long. He gets out of his room and thought that it is time to take Jiang out for a stroll and show her the world. While they were getting ready to go outside, he sets some rules for Jiang and tells her to stick with him. He then takes a photo of her, but the photo didn't look good. He tells her to give him a smile. 
She tries her hardest to smile, but it scares him in the process. He then reminds her to not make any unnecessary movement while they are out. He tells her to put down the sword, but she was hesitant to do it. He explained that everyone outside is a weakling like him and that her simple punch would do the trick. After that, she clenches her fist and stares at it. She said, understood, while Zhu takes a photo of her. After that, they steps outside the building, but Jiang was scared by the surroundings. Zhu explained to her about the residential buildings and said that other people live there. He then points at the entrance and said that beyond it are different shops. Jiang gets scared watching a person riding a scooter, but Zhu tells her to calm down. He was high and mighty by taking out an ancient girl to the street. In the distance, two people were having a conversation. After that, the lady notices Jiang and stares at her. Zhu asked, what is the matter? And the woman replied that Jiang looked familiar. Then the policeman asked if she is his girlfriend, but Zhu said that they are just friends. The woman then remembered seeing her with a sword yesterday. The police and the woman start to discuss it, but Zhu said it was just a cosplay. After that, they understood and wondered why people do that. Zhu then grabs Jiang's hand and leaves in a hurry after saying goodbye. After a while, Jiang shakes off her hand and distances herself from him. Zhu was glad that it was that woman because it wouldn't have ended well if she met any other person. Jiang then sees a car and said it was really fast. Zhu tells her to think of it as a carriage, but the horse is the body. She then projects a weird image inside her mind. He then points her at a security camera and said that the movies that they saw were captured by those. He tells her that someone can watch them from those cameras and makes her scared. He then tells her to not worry as those guys have other important work to do. But Jiang then picks some rocks from the ground. Zhu asks what the rocks are for. But suddenly she aims the rocks at the camera and Zhu shouted if she is planning to destroy them. She looks at him and acts confused. He then sighs and tells her to put the stones back. After that, they arrive at the main road. He shows her a traffic light and explained how it works. After the light becomes green, he said that they can cross now. Jiang looks at the street lamp and gets surprised. After that, she looks around the city and gets barked at by a puppy. Zhu shows her an accessory and asked if she wants it. He then imagines her with that accessory but shook his head. After that, he falls into deep thought while looking at a jewelry stand. She looks at the accessories and something catches her eye. Zhu realized that she liked it, so he bought it for her. Zhu looked at her in the accessory and thought it suits her. They both then arrive at a dining hall. He orders pancake strips and cucumber salad for both of them. While they were finding their seats, he explained to her that it is a place for food. He said the food that they were eating came from this place and added that he grew up eating from this place. She looks around with a dazed expression. Zhu looks at her and falls into thinking. A few minutes later, a person brings their order which made her startled. After that, he gives her a chopstick and tells her to eat. While drinking a soda, Zhu was thinking that things are more complicated than he thought, so he could only take one step at a time. After the meal, he pays the bills and they step out. After they reached home, Zhu asked if she believes in him now. She wears a sad expression on her face and gets quiet. He tries to comfort her, saying that it might not be bad for her to live in this peaceful era. He said that if they can solve the issue with her ID, then she would be able to work and live a carefree life. But Jiang still said that she wants to go home. He tells her that it is impossible, as it is 1200 years in the past. After that, she asked how can she solve the problem regarding her identity. He replied that he isn't sure, but they will reach there eventually. He tells her that first, she has to get adapted to society and he will help in that regard. Jiang gets happy to hear it and thanks him, addressing him as young hero. Zhu then smiles and said it is a piece of cake. He tells her about the importance of the ID and said that he will give her an example. He asked where is the piece of paper from yesterday, and Jiang replied that he threw it in the dustbin. Zhu then looked at the dustbin with a worried expression. Jiang asked him what will happen if she can't get this identity issue, to which Zhu replied then she will be treated as an unregistered citizen. He explained that without an identity card, she wouldn't be entitled to any rights. He said, besides illegal sweatshops, most form of work would require an identity card, and without an paying job, it's difficult to support herself. Secondly, she wouldn't be able to rent a place or stay at a hotel without an identity card. Also, she wouldn't be able to travel to faraway places either, be it on a bullet train or long-distance coach rides. 
And lastly, if she were to raise any disputes, she wouldn't be able to do that without an identity card. Jiang said, so if she can find a way to make money and a place to stay, then an identity card is not needed. But Zhu replied, getting a phone line and making a bank card, all need an identity card. He then starts searching online while saying, if she gets transported here 20 years earlier, then this issue would have been less complex. And while searching for a solution online, he said, maybe she can try reaching out to the government, but then she might lose her freedom. Jiang grabbed her sword and asked Zhu if he is going to hand her over to the authorities, to which he replied, it was just hypothetical. He then tells her to study the world's history first, and then she would be able to make a better decision. Jiang asked her in a low voice if she is being a bother to him by staying there, and Zhu replied, as long as she don't try to slash everything, it's actually fine. After searching for a while, Zhu sighed as he didn't find anything useful. He then checks his phone and thinks about calling Kin Hao, his best buddy who is a glorious local police officer. He then thought about how Jiang will react after seeing him, so he decides to text him first. He tells him to go out for some skewers, thinking he is a civil servant, so surely he must know something. After that, Zhu decides to take a shower. Zhu was thinking if Jiang has taken a shower yet, and then he remembered that he forgot to buy her a pair of pajamas. And then he realized something, that there is someone of the opposite sex in the house, so he can't walk freely without clothes. After some time, Jiang slowly opened her room's door and after checking the surrounding, she quickly dashed inside the bathroom. She was enjoying her shower, which means ancient people take daily showers too. Then the next day, Zhu bought a writing tablet for her and explained that not only it recognized Chinese characters, it can also accurately identify Chinese phonetic symbols as well. And as he was teaching her how to use it, Winter Melon startled them. He then tells her to take her time while he will feed Winter Melon. Jiang looked at him feeding the cat and asked, what is that food in his hand? Zhu said, it's a food specially made for cats, which shocked Jiang. She was imagining cat food growing on trees, so Zhu said, this is manufactured food. It's not what she is thinking of. Then the food delivery guy came and knocked on the door. Zhu gave the packet to Jiang and tells her that he is going to meet a friend tonight for her identity issue. He said he will teach her how she can contact him using the computer and tells her to not leave the house. And as Jiang was enjoying her burger, Winter Melon came and looked at her with sparkly eyes. But Zhu picked it up and said she need to stick on the cat food. Jiang asked if she can not feed this burger to Winter Melon and Zhu replied, of course not. He said she can't because it's unhealthy, which shocked Jiang as she looks at him with disbelief. She sobs and was slowly eating the burger, thinking, this hamburger is no longer appealing. Before leaving, Zhu created a QQ account for her and said, if anything comes up, then she can use this writing tab to contact him. After a while, Zhu reached the location and saw Kin waiting for him. Kin said that they hadn't met up for a chat in so long, so let's drink to their heart's content tonight. Zhu then asked him about his work and how is it going after becoming a glorious police officer. Kin replied that it's totally different from what he imagined, as he is not getting any big cases, every day he has to deal with trivial issues that one can't even imagine. Like breaking up couple fights, and dealing with quarrels in the neighborhood, so he asked why there are so many of these minor disputes. Zhu replied that it's not a bad thing. After all, it means that the people are generally living a peaceful life. Kin has dreamed of being a police officer since young even though his height stagnated at 1.6 meters during puberty. And after finding that the minimum height for police officers was 1.7 meters, Zhu had to console his devoted soul. But luckily, the height requirement was later scrapped, and they tested how high one could jump instead, so Kin got motivated and practiced every day. And now, he achieved his dream of becoming a local police officer. Kin whispered that before Zhu arrived, he was hoping that an armed bandit would appear out of nowhere so he could jump over the table to take him head on. Zhu tells him to stop daydreaming while thinking about Zhang as the armed bandit. Zhu then said, let's imagine that a vagrant who lost his memories want an identity card, but he has no way to prove his identity, so how would he be able to get an identity card? Kin replied it's not possible, as such a person would definitely be an unregistered citizen, and it would be impossible to get an identity card. And then, Kin's work mode activated and he asked Zhu if he knows someone like that. Zhu replied that he is just asking on behalf of his third uncle's grandfather's nephew. He has a friend facing some issue. And while pouring a drink, Kin said, unless if you are someone 
who popped out of nowhere without proof of identity. Everyone has some sort of proof of their lineage. Zhu then asked, if police were to encounter an unregistered citizen, then how would they react, which made Kin suspicious. But Zhu said that nothing is weird about this and if he really becomes so devoted to work, that everything seems suspicious to him. Kin then tells him, if that person claims to have lost his memory, then they would launch an investigation to check if he is a missing person, or someone who was kidnapped, or if he is an escaped convict. And if that person clears all the checks, then they would just release the person, as it's not like he committed a crime or anything. Zhu asked, then what about the identity card? Wouldn't the police provide help with that? To which Kin replied, of course not. He said, let's say if you were to hold a knife right now and used it to stab Zhu, which makes him irritated, so he tells him to stab someone else. Kin corrected that if you were to stab someone and then went somewhere shady for facial surgery before coming back and demands a new identity because he lost his memory, so it's not acceptable. After drinking for a while, Kin gets completely drunk and was muttering. He will leave his mark in history by solving a major case. After paying the bill, the store guy said that their store is having a promotion for every 100 yuan of skewers bought, an additional 50 yuan of skewers free. Zhu thought how Jiang will react after seeing the skewers, so he decides to take some for her. He then get a cab for Kin and send him after saying goodbye. After Kin left, Zhu thought that he really have a big issue on his hands, but at least, it's interesting. After some time, he returned home and find Jiang and Winter Melon sleeping quietly. And as he was watching them sleep, they both wake up and looked at him. Zhu said that since she had an early dinner, he brought some food back in case she was hungry, so Jiang thanked him. But Zhu reminds her that she is forgetting something important. Jiang understood what he meant and addressed him as young hero Zhu while thanking him. Zhu gets happy and said, it's child's play for him. He first gave her some yogurt, saying, before eating it, they have to lick this. Jiang copied him, and after licking the yogurt, she said it's so tasty. Before going back to his room, Zhu thought that this feeling of a lively home and having someone wait for him feels kind of great. After taking a shower, Zhu came back to hall and gets surprised to see Jiang, who was still studying. Jiang thought, the quality of life there is pretty good, as one can take showers every day, and it feels great. Zhu then asked her if she figure out that piece of clothing that he gave her before. Jiang remembered about it and shook her head. After taking a shower, Jiang thought that she really is lucky to meet such a kind young hero, who lets her adjust to this world at her own pace. But she thought that it's not wise to rely on him in the long run, so once she grasps how the world works, she won't trouble him. Then the next morning, she finds Zhu in the hall, so she asked if he is working again, and Zhu replied that he is just watching the news. She then suspiciously asked him if he is sure that he is not working for the authorities. Zhu denied and said, since he is up early, so he is going to get some breakfast for them, so does she wants to tag along. But Zhang refused, saying, she will be fine here. And as Zhu was going to buy breakfast, he was called by his neighbors and the guard. One woman then asked him if he heard anything strange while sleeping last night. Zhu replied, none, as he was sleeping peacefully at night. Then a man said, maybe the building is haunted, because for the past few nights, something has scaring his dog. Zhu then asked the guard if he has seen the ghost too. The guard replied that he didn't see it, but the CCTV did. They all then decides to watch the recording together and saw something moving between buildings with extraordinary speed. Zhu saw the move and realized that the ghost is none other than Jiang. He heard the neighbors, who were trying to guess whether this was a person or a ghost. He then asked the guard if the same thing happened last night as well, to which guard said it didn't happen last night. Zhu then tried to trick them, saying, maybe that ghost was just passing by. And after a long discussion, they agreed with him and the guard said that he will keep a closer eye on this. Zhu then returned home and angrily asked Jiang if she has been sneaking out in the middle of the night. Jiang replied yes and asked, how did he know about it? Zhu replied, because that the all-seeing eye has recorded her movements. But when he get to know that she was wearing black outfit and her face was covered, he took a sigh of relief. He tells her that if she wants to head out next time, so they can go together. Zhu then searches for a movie name online. That involves an ancient person being transported to the current era and dying in a police shootout. He thought he need to show her just how dangerous her actions were and if someone have called the police then she would have met a bad end. 
Zhu then decides to order lunch, so he asked her what she wants, burgers, chicken wraps, or something else. Jiang smiled and replied, she wants something healthy. But Zhu said, in that case, she can just eat the cat food, which made her angry. He then showed her the washing machine and explained that they can wash clothes by it, so if she has clothes that need to be washed, then she can just throw them in. Jiang quickly went and bring her clothes. Zhu noticed a strange cloth, so he picked it up and asked, what is this? Jiang quickly snatched it from his hand and ran from there. Zhu noticed that it was foot binding and wondered, how was she able to scale walls with bonded feet? After a while, he thought that something is wrong, because her feet seemed fine when she took off her shoes earlier. He then searched on the internet if martial artists practice foot binding too. He went to her and asked if she can show her feet to him, but Jiang refused. But then, suddenly, Zhu realized why Jiang didn't try any of the underwear he bought that day. It wasn't because those were too small and couldn't fit, it's just that they were binded. He felt guilty after realizing that wasn't for binding feet, but for her breasts. He then tells her to take advantage of what this world has to offer or the clothes he bought would go to waste. He plays a video of how to wear underwear and left. Five minutes later, he came and asked if everything is going good. Jiang asked him if the people of this world live their lives in such an immoral way. Zhu replied, wearing comfortable clothes and enjoying life is not immoral, but Jiang calls this shameless. But Zhu said that she is just being stubborn, as females with their legs and waists exposed, it's their own choice. Also, if males can show some skin, then why can't females do the same, so she has no right to call someone shameless. But Jiang said, no matter what, it is unacceptable, just plain unacceptable. He tried to calm her down, saying, if she doesn't like it, then it's fine. Zhu then showed her some games and said, they are really fun, and according to research, 90% of the people start learning computer in order to play games. The first game he showed her was Super Mary, and as she watched him play the game, her eyes sparkled. And while leaving, Zhu thought he has to keep her busy, or she will start thinking about going on her night adventures and practicing her martial arts. After an hour, he stopped the game, saying, that's enough playing this for now. He then smiled and said he will teach her some Du Dizhu, the popular gambling card game in China. And in some minutes, Jiang got completely hooked to it. He saw her shouting, you can't trump my cards, it's over for you. So then, he decides to take an afternoon nap. Inside the room, Zhu thought it's good that he didn't manage to get a job that day. Because even if the interview went well, taking in a female martial artist from 1200 years ago would mean he had to resign anyway. In the evening, he came out and tells Jiang to be ready, as they are going outside for dinner today. He tells her to change her clothes and hairstyle, so the people can't recognize her as the mysterious figure from that night. She gets dressed, but as soon as Zhu saw her, he gets flustered and tells her to change back to what she was wearing originally. Angered, Jiang went inside to change her clothes again. After a while, the guard saw him and Jiang going outside, so he asked if he is taking his girlfriend out for a stroll again. Zhu replied, she is just a friend and asked if the road he is holding is made of peach wood. The guard said, the one he ordered is still on the way, so he wrapped this temporary one with many talisman. He then cheerfully asked, if doesn't he look like the door god Kin Kyong from the New Year picture. After a while, Jiang checked the surrounding and asked Zhu, what is a girlfriend? To which Zhu replied, it's the same as friend. She asked, then why is there a girl in front of it? And Zhu said, because she is a female. Jiang then angrily asked him, then why did he deny that she is his girlfriend? To which Zhu replied, he will explain it to her later. He thought, if she finds out what girlfriend truly means, then she will just leave in the middle of the night. While walking, Jiang was thinking, how this world has no curfews, no food stalls lining the streets, and not even dirt roads. This place gives off an indescribable atmosphere. It wasn't this peaceful, when the second miss talked about the time, the world was flourishing. She then saw Zhu buying something to drink. He gave boba tea to her, saying he is certain that she can't find this in her era. She asked Zhu if those people are relying on making this to earn a living, so can she also learn to do that type of job? Zhu replied, she sure can learn to do that, but she can't rely on it to make money since she doesn't have an ID. She then slowly drank some of the tea, but didn't like it at all. She said it's weird because the boba is hard to chew. Zhu gets happy after hearing that and said, even he thinks the same, but Jiang was looking at his drink. Zhu said that since females have a sweet tooth, so he thought that she will like boba. 
He then tell her to check his drink, saying, it's sour, so it might not suit her palate. Jiang take a sip of his lemon drink and said, it's delicious. He then exchanged his drink with hers, saying, throwing it away would be a waste. Zhu then proposes Jiang to go on a stroll with him, before heading home. They start walking and Zhu stops at the bus station, saying, he will take her somewhere nice. After a while, the bus arrived, so he tells her to be not nervous and follow him. They enter the bus, and he tells her to take the window seat. While the bus was running, Zhu asked if the bus felt smooth, and Jiang replied, yes it does. He thought that she would be more excited about it, but she replied that she had ridden a horse-drawn carriage before. After that, the bus stops at the Lanjiang Bridge, and they both come out. After coming out, Zhu tells her that the place is called Lanjiang, and then they look at the stunning scenery of the nighttime city. He tells her that unlike their era, where it's dark after night, the view that she is watching right now is called a modern-day city night view. She looks at the view for a while and asked if this really is over a thousand years in the future. Zhu replied that she should already know the answer by now as she had read some of the world's history. He also tells her that the world had seen some great changes in the span of 1200 years. He looks at her and sees her getting captivated by the scenery of the town. He said, it is unlikely that she will be able to return to her era, and it isn't a bad option to stay here, as long as she can get her ID. After that, he takes a photo of her, while saying, that he will bring her on a plane to experience the skies, once she gets an ID. She looks above and asked, if what he is saying is true. He answers that it is, while pointing out his hand to the sky. He tells her to learn about the world, while being holed up in his house. She asked, what will happen after that? Zhu thinks for a while and replied that she can live her life as she wants. He also tells her that she will eventually find something she likes so she can stay and enjoy the thriving world of the future. He then looks at his phone and said that it's almost time. Jiang looks forward and saw that the sky was illuminated by fireworks. While staring at the fireworks, Zhu was thinking that his era is the best out of the past thousands of years and there is definitely room for Jiang even if she came here accidentally from 1200 years. She muttered, her second miss would be happy if she could experience his world. He looks at her while smiling and tells her to experience the world to the fullest on behalf of the others that she left behind. He then reaches his hand toward her and welcomes her to his era. The next morning, Zhu checks the recent news and finds out about a thief around his neighborhood. He was thinking that it is a pain since their activities will be restricted because of increased police patrols. Jiang then points outside and asked what the people outside are doing. Zhu takes a peek and gets surprised to see it. He tells her that the people are watching the priest perform an exorcism. Jiang wondered if everyone from his era lived like a prisoner. She was thinking about how eating breakfast, using a computer, eating lunch, watching movies, and eating dinner were as if he is in a prison. Zhu tells her that he is a shut-in, and that being shut-in is also a lifestyle, but she couldn't understand what he meant. He explained that he could choose to go outside, but it feels tiring for him, so he stays home instead. To make it simple for her, he tells her that it was like being a landlord. She tells him that she wants to go outside and explore, so he asked if she means to explore on her own. He tells her to stop joking and gives her a lecture about how harsh it is to live outside on her own. He said that he would give her money, but once she runs out, she would either have to steal or run into another kind-hearted person to survive. He added that there are no forests nearby, so she might just have to search trash for food. Hearing that, Zhang gets into deep thought. She was thinking how she can't do anything without an ID as she remembered the words that Zhu told her last night. Zhu then take out some coins from his pocket and said that it was already an improvement for her to learn about money and how to take a bus but she still believes that she can't learn things properly. Zhu tells her that she is way better than her first appearance since she at least now knows how to survive in his world. He said that he will take her out frequently after the ghost incident calms down and added that there are things she needs to experience firsthand to understand it. She then asked if there are really any ghosts, so he points his finger outside and replied that the priest is still in the middle of an exorcism. He mentioned that she can pay him back after she is capable of earning, and if she can't, then he will find some ways for her to earn money. She thanks him while addressing him as a young master, which makes him happy. After that, he starts searching for a job online, as he knew that it wasn't impossible to find one in their digital age. He finds a job of power leveling in a video game and thought 
that it would be beneficial for her, as she would also be able to interact with other players while earning. He tells her to try playing that game, but he wasn't sure if she will be able to learn it. She asked if she could earn money by watching videos like him, but Zhu replied that it is still too complicated for her in her current state. Suddenly, someone knocks at their door and makes them startled. Zhu tells her to get back to her room as he was concerned. The person outside the door starts yelling, so he tells her to quickly hide inside her room as he knew that they are someone from his family. He then pushes Zhang back to her room while answering the person outside. After that, he opens the door and while addressing the man as his father, he asks why was he there. His dad then tells Zhu to call him the landlord while giving him a cold look. He then looks around and asks if he still hasn't found any jobs. Zhu replied that there is no need for him to find a job as long as he can pay his rent in time. While his dad was giving him a lecture, Zhu disrespectfully asked if he came only for his utility bills. His dad then gets angry and tells him that he will raise the rent if he can't get a job by next month. After that, Zhu asked if he saw a priest outside and his dad answered that he did. He then tells him to lower the rent instead as he believed that there were ghosts, but his dad leaves in a rage saying that he doesn't give a crap about it. While his dad was leaving, he saw something that shocked him. He then calls Zhu and looks at the girl's dress which makes Zhu nervous. His dad asked if he is into cross-dressing, but Zhu gets confused by what he was saying. Zhu knew that it would be a problem, regardless of whether he tell the truth or not. However, he thinks that it would be less weird if he finds out about Jiang, rather than finding out that his son is into cross-dressing. Besides, he knows that the truth can't be hidden for long, as there was a chance that his dad would come across some neighbors and get information from them. He then makes an excuse saying that it's his friend's clothes which piques his dad's interest. After that, he said that it is actually his friend's sister and she is temporarily staying for a few days. He then knocks on her door and tells her to come out. Jiang opens the door of her room and comes out. He introduces them both to each other while hoping that she doesn't accidentally expose her true identity. She almost mistakenly tries to address his father as dad, but then she stops. She then whispers to Zhu about how she should address his father and he replied that she should call him uncle. Meanwhile, his dad was shocked because he clearly heard that she tried to call him dad just now. After that, Zhang greets Zhu's dad and he greets her back. Zhu said that it is the whole situation and she will be staying with him for some time. She also nodded her head and said yes. His dad then grabs his hand and said that he has something to talk about. He looks at Jiang and tells her that it was no problem, so she can go back to what she was doing. After that, his dad asked him to tell the truth what is actually going on. Zhu angrily replied that he already told him the whole story and added that he wants his spare key for Jiang. He wanted the spare key because he knew that keeping the spare key with his parents might cause unnecessary problems in the future. After that, his dad asked if she is his girlfriend but he outright denies it. He tells Zhu that she almost called him dad, but Zhu replied that he misheard it. His dad then asks how old she is, and he replied that she is 18. After a moment of silence, his dad said that it is a sin while fixing his glasses. Zhu replied that she came to live for a while, and even if he had a girlfriend, it wouldn't be a sin. His dad was thinking that he came here to press him to get a job, but ended up meeting a girl, who almost called him dad. After that, he calls him a brat and shames him for not having a job. But Zhu gets angry and while transferring his rent to his dad, he tells him that he is a YouTuber. He asked about the utility bill and transfers it right away. He then shows that he transferred the money and asked for the spare key, but his dad replied that he is the owner. Zhu makes an annoyed face and tells him that he rented it. His dad said that he can stay for free if he gets a job, otherwise his rent will increase. While handing him the key, his dad added that he can live elsewhere if he is unhappy about it. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that it is going all according to his plan, because all the inheritance will go to him, so basically, his money will just come around to himself. His dad tells him that his mom was calling him to come home for a meal, and then he nervously looks back. Zhu angrily replied that she is not his girlfriend, but he asked if he thinks that his dad is stupid. Zhu said that he is still busy with work and will pay a visit when he is free. His dad mentioned that dating at a young age will cause problems and tries to bring up a topic from the past, but Zhu stops him. He tells him to quickly get a job and start working, 
but Zhu replied that he will see when the time comes. His dad gets speechless for a second and then tries to tell him to practice safely, but Zhu shouted that they really are just friends. While his dad was leaving the house, Zhu suddenly stops him. He showed him the straw sandals of Jiang and asked about the price of antiques from the Tang dynasty. His dad asked him about the time period again, and he replied that it is from the Tang dynasty, and possibly during the reign of Lai Longji. He asked how much these shoes worth, but his dad replied that he should check his mental health and get a psychological evaluation. While his dad was leaving, Su was wondering what he had done wrong. His dad calls him stupid while leaving, and tells him to touch some grass. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that his dream of becoming rich overnight is over. He already knew that nobody would believe that they were from a different era as they were fresh. It was unbelievable as no one could possibly know that space-time is thin enough for a human to appear out of nowhere. He then tells his dad to take another look at the shoes but his dad gives him a lecture and also mentioned how he is ashamed to answer a friend of his that his son has no job. Zhu replied that he is self-employed while thinking that he has to hide her straw slippers before Jiang finds out. After hearing him say self-employed, his dad looks away for a while and then he angrily tells him that it's a load of crap. He grabs Jiang's sword and while he was about to intimidate him using it, he noticed that something was wrong with it. Zhu looks at what he was holding and gets scared because he knew that Jiang will go crazy if she lose it. He said it's a toy, but his dad tells him to let it go. They both get quiet for a while, and Zhu tells him that he can inspect it. His dad was curious because he was acting in a weird manner. He then unsheathes the sword and stares at it for a while. Zhu asked what he found, but his dad angrily throws the sword at him. He was feeling embarrassed because he nearly believed his lie about the antique. His dad then again reminds him to find a job and then angrily leaves. He was glad that the sword was new as there is no way for his dad to find out that it's an ancient relic. He then tells Jiang to stop hiding and keep her sword in a safer place. He asked what was she about to address his dad as, but she replied that she didn't know how to address him. He then teaches her that she can address his father as uncle, and one day, if she were to meet his mom, she can address her as auntie. She gets pumped up and replied that she will remember that. After that, she asked him if he is not interested in practicing martial arts anymore. Zhu asked if there are any shortcuts or if there are some other efficient methods that he can use, but she replied that there are none. He gets depressed in size while lying on the sofa. He was thinking that martial arts is useless in his ur as he won't get any benefit from it. He then stood up and proposes her to play some games instead of talking about martial arts. He was thinking that making her learn about the games would also serve as a bridge to the real world. After that, she starts playing the game and Zhu gives her instructions while standing beside her. Then, later in the evening, while they were having dinner, Jiang asked how could she earn money from that game. Zhu replied that once she learns the game, she can play for others. Jiang couldn't understand, so he explained that it is a type of entertainment that people who have free time play. As it is a game with millions of players, some people are lazy to grind, so they pay others, who grind for them instead. She still couldn't understand the meaning behind it, so Zhu explained to her in simple terms that it is like helping a rich person to raise his cricket, and once they are grow up, they will take it back and have fun with it. Zhu was thinking that it is better for her to become addicted to the internet than to wander around at night. After that, Wintermelon does his stretches and approaches Zhu, but he tells him to go elsewhere. He then walks over to Jiang and looks above for jumping on her desk. He jumped on her desk and then gets on her lap for sleeping. Jiang then starts smiling while looking at him and said that he is a weird cat. At the police department, a senior officer asks his colleagues if they are hungry. A fat officer said that he would like to have lunch from McDonald's. After that, he asks how, but he replied that he isn't hungry. How then sighs and while looking outside the window, he said that it's a boring day as there is nothing for him to do. Suddenly, everyone turns their attention to Hao. He then asks what happened and why they are looking at him. The senior officer then asked if his mentor did not teach him to not say stuff like that. He gets confused and asked what he meant. Suddenly, a phone call came and all of them start feeling depressed. Hao is still confused, but the officer tells him to prepare himself to work through the night. After that, they get in the car and the senior officer warns him to not say stuff like having a boring day. 
Hao asks the reason and he replied that it is a superstition. But whenever someone says something like that, for the rest of the day, he will become so busy that he can forget about taking breaks. He then wondered if this situation is something that his friend Zhu will call raising a flag. After that, they both arrive at their destination. Hao was thinking that it's starting to feel more like real police work. They then arrives at the location of the scene and saw a person sitting there drunk. The senior officer then asks the person, why is he lying down while Hao was wondering if it's a major case? The person was drunk and he tells them to get his wife to open the door. The senior officer starts knocking at the door, saying that they received a disturbance call while Hao was getting nauseous of the stench from the drunkard. A lady opens the door and he asks if she was the one who made the call. She replied that she didn't make the call, but it could be the neighbors as they were making a lot of noise. The drunkard then snaps and replied he is the one who called them and tells the police how his wife locked him outside. The senior officer asked if he is her husband and she replied that he is and apologizes for all the trouble. The drunkard then says some vulgar words and threatens her in front of the officer. The officer then shows him handcuffs and asked if he wants to get sober in the station, which scared the man. Meanwhile, Howe was sarcastically thinking that they have finished another major job. As they were on their way to the station, another incident comes up. The senior officer then asked if he understood what he meant earlier. At the same time, Zhu wakes from his sleep in the middle of the night. He heard a noise and wondered what it was. He then takes a peek at the living room and wonders if Zhang was trying to sneak out again. After that, he turns on the light and as he was about to say something, he saw a different man inside his house. He then asked who he was while Zhang was coming out of her room. Zhu realized something and yells loudly that it's a burglar. As Zhu was about to stop the burglar, Zhang runs toward him at full speed and slams his forehead on the ground. She then stares at the burglar with a murderous look and tightens her grip. Zhu then stopped her, saying that he will die if she exerts any more strength. He looks at the cowering burglar and after that, he looks at Jiang, who had her guard up. He then starts to wonder what's going on in his house. Zhu gets nervous, thinking that Jiang almost killed the burglar. There were visible marks on his arm, which reminded him of how brutal Jiang is. After that, he tells the burglar to wait until he calls his police friend. The burglar gets scared and tries to stop him, but Jiang menacingly stares at him, which makes him feel uncomfortable. He then apologizes to Zhu and said that he won't do it again, but Zhu replied that he deserved it and asked if it is his first time. The burglar said that it is his first time, but at the same time, he was wondering if Jiang is a martial expert because of how he nearly died. Zhu thinks for a minute and tells him to apologize. The burglar then apologizes while bowing down his head, but it looked insincere to Zhu, so he tells him that he will call the police and they will accompany him to the hospital for his injury. The burglar then begs to let him go and said that his injury has nothing to do with them. Zhu again asked if it is his first time, as he seemed scared of the police, and the burglar swears that it is. After that, Zhu walks over to the window and tells the burglar to leave like how he entered. The burglar then rushes to leave while thanking them both. He climbs down and shouted from below that they will live a peaceful life. Jiang comes over and asked why he let him go. Zhu replied that if the police had questioned about his injury, then it would have been a problem for her as she doesn't have an identity. She gets surprised and asked why would she be the one to get questioned instead of the burglar. He replied that it is hard to explain and asked if she was planning to sneak out as she is wearing outdoor clothes. Jiang said that felt comfortable with the clothes and added that she came because of the ruckus. Zhu tells her to stop thinking about unnecessary things and go back to sleep. He also said that he will bring someone to fix the window tomorrow. After that, he turns off the light and wishes her good night. The next morning, Zhu wakes up from bed and brushes his teeth. As he was coming out of the washroom, he encountered Jiang who looked exhausted. He asked if she finished practicing her martial arts. She replied that she did while untying her hair. Zhu then excitedly asks her if he can watch her practice next time, and she permits him. Meanwhile, he was about to smooth talk her, but then he gets shocked by how easily she agreed to it. He then tells her that they will have breakfast outside and look for someone to fix the window. Outside, Zhu teaches her that she can learn more about life by experiencing it personally rather than reading books. 
Jiang asked how to do it and he replied that she should get rid of her old thoughts and treat everything as brand new. Jiang gets confused and asked what he meant by brand new. He gives her an example from last night of how she should have restrained the burglar instead of going all out. Jiang clenches her fist and said that she had already scaled back a lot of her strength. Zhu gets afraid while looking at her fist and said that it was good. He explained how hurting someone seriously in his era is a crime. So she asked how badly can she injure someone in that case. Zhu replied that it depends on the circumstances and the reason for beating up the person. She asked how should she handle the situation if he sneaks into her room in the middle of the night. Zhu gets angry and said that it is an impossible scenario and asked if he looked like that type of person. Jiang replies that he did, but Zhu says he is not. He makes an imaginary stance and explained how righteous he is. She said that she will believe him for now. Zhu was getting scared, thinking about her finding out that he recovered her old shoes from the trash. She mentioned that she suspects him because of how earlier he admitted that he was a pervert. Zhu angrily replied that it was a joke and he wouldn't dare to make a move on her. He thinks for a while and asked what would she actually do if that happens. She makes a hard fist and replied she would punch him with all her might. Zhu gets scared after seeing her fist and realized that she really wants him dead. After that, they arrive at the restaurant and tell the cashier to prepare the usual meal for them. While they were waiting for their meal, Zhu tells her that she should experience her new life from now and remember this day. Jiang then looks at her hand while saying the word, remember. She was thinking that it is a thriving world and there is no need to kill anyone. Then, the food that they ordered arrived and Zhu thanks him. Jiang then takes one of the dishes and eats it while making a happy face. Zhu was thinking that no one would believe that this bun-eating girl in front of him is from ancient time. He tells her that she can eat and take as many buns as she likes and he will pay for it. She looks at the buns and asked if it is costly. Zhu said that it is the least costly food out of their whole meal and assures her that the food didn't cost much. While she was on her way to order, Zhu was happy as he was feeling accomplished. He then suddenly gets surprised as he heard her talking about getting 15 buns. After that, he rushes over and tells the cashier that it's for takeaway. He asked if she would be able to finish all that food by herself. Jiang said that it's alright and asked if she has ordered too much. Zhu tells her to not worry about that, but she should continue her eating after getting home as it would attract attention there. Jiang understands and said that she will repay him after playing games and Zhu replied that he will be waiting. After finishing their breakfast, they start walking towards home. On their way, Zhu notices a buffet restaurant and tells her that he will take her there someday for a new experience. She didn't know what it was, so he explained how she could basically eat unlimited meals. She was surprised and wondered if it was some sort of charity kitchen, but Zhu explained that these are common in his era. He gives her an example of how some people who use their brain instead of strength don't require much food, and for that reason, they have to keep a low profile until she gets accustomed. He tells her that similarly, the business owners take advantage of their small appetites and profit from it. She asked if the business owners have no problems with big eaters as they can recover from those with small appetites. Zhu was surprised by how smart she is because as a kid, he had the wrong impression of a buffet. She then asked why people with small appetites eat there and if they have money to spare. Zhu replied that there are different dishes in the buffet, so people could taste many dishes for a single price. Zhu was thinking that as Jiang is experiencing all of that for the first time, she will learn something from even the tiniest topics. He knew that by collecting bits of information, someday she will achieve a certain level of knowledge and understand how the world works. He was thinking that Jiang has started to seem more compatible with his world. Two weeks later, Zhu gives Jiang a smartphone and said that she can call him if anything happens. She asked if it was expensive, but he answered that he got it as a gift. She gets happy to receive a phone and stares at it with sparkly eyes. She then thanked him while addressing him as a young master, which makes him happy. He then tells her to follow the instructions and try to give him a call. With her intelligence, he thought that it would be no problem for her. After that, he pauses for a second because he realizes that his actions and speech made him look like an NPC. After that, he tells her that he is going out so she should have her dinner without waiting for him. He also added that she can watch videos if she gets bored of playing games. 
She asked if controlling the characters in the game counted as work. He replied that it did and tells her that she won't be compensated for overtime. After that, he heads out and Jong tells him to stay safe. He gets out and calls a taxi. While traveling, he was thinking how he haven't been to that place since he took in Jong. After that, he enters his parents' house and calls his mom, saying he's back. He then enters the house but there was no response. His dad then comes out of a corner, so he asked where his mom is. His dad replied that she is playing side mahjong. His dad then tells him to call her to come and asked where his girlfriend is. Zhu replied that she is not his girlfriend, as he already mentioned before, and she will just be staying with him for a while. His dad replied that he knows all about young people and asked if he would let a boy stay instead. Zhu said that he let his friend Hao stay before, but in return, his dad replied that he doesn't count as he would have been his girlfriend already if he was female. His dad then finished the topic and Zhu calls her mother. Some time passed and there was an awkward silence between them. Zhu then mentioned that a burglar broke into his house and tells him to write off the fees for window repairs. His dad asked if there was even anything worth stealing, but Zhu angrily replied that his computer isn't worthless. His dad believes that he sleeps while hugging his computer so it's impossible for it to be stolen. Out of concern, he asks if there were any injuries. Zhu replied that the burglar took a beating and ran away. His dad angrily asked about his well-being, and Zhu replied that he couldn't get injured as the burglar was the one who got beaten. Suddenly, his mom arrived and asked why didn't he inform her earlier, but Zhu replied that he mentioned her in the group chat. She said she probably forgot as she was too busy. She then happily goes toward the kitchen, saying that she will prepare dinner and meanwhile, they can do something else. While preparing dinner, she asks about his girlfriend, but Zhu gets angry and said that she shouldn't believe in his dad's words. His dad calls it nonsense because normal friends wouldn't eat or live together like them. After that, his mom finishes preparing the food, and while serving, she asked if he has any photos of her. She was planning to head over and take a look herself, but his dad stopped her, saying that it would be rude to suddenly show up, so she decided to ask him personally after he comes back. After that, Zhu tells his mom that she is just his friend and there is nothing to see. He knew that his mom would keep nagging, so he decided to show some photos of her. He shows a photo of Jiang and reminds her that she is just a friend. His mom found her pretty and asked him for a closer look. She sees the picture and recognized that the picture was taken at Lanjong Bridge. After that, she starts swiping and found more pictures of her. She asked why did he have so many of her photos if she is just his friend, but he gets troubled and takes his phone back. He was thinking that he took all that photos for observation purposes, but it is troublesome that they are treating her as his wife. Meanwhile, his mom was thinking about how he took photos of her every moment, regardless of what she was doing. She was confident that they are both interested in each other. She asked if Jong is studying anywhere, and Zhu replied that she is not. She gets surprised to hear that Jong isn't studying despite having good looks, and Zhu wondered what it has to do with having good looks. His dad smirks and said that she wouldn't have been interested in him if she was a top student. While Zhu and his dad were arguing, his mom was thinking that it's a pity since Jiang is still young. She then asked how they met if she is not from Jiang Cheng. Zhu replied that they can talk about other topics while he was thinking about how his parents are ready to matchmake her while she's still ignorant of the world. After dinner, he was getting ready to head home and tells his mom to play less mahjong. His dad said, her not playing mahjong is more impossible than him going outside, while his mom commented that it is rude. She then brings the ghost incident in his area, and Zhu replied that he heard about it as well. He tells his dad to lower his rent, saying that the apartment is haunted, but his dad called it nonsense. His mom also insisted that he lower his rent, as his expenses must have risen after getting a girlfriend. His dad mentioned how he denied that she wasn't his girlfriend. Suddenly, Zhu shouted, he swears that she is his girlfriend, so please half the rent. After a while, Zhu returns to his apartment. There, he saw Jiang holding onto her sword, which made him wonder if she was practicing swordplay. She was looking nervous and dashed towards her room, saying that she is going to the shower. After that, she takes clothes from her room and dashes towards the bathroom. He asked, why is she taking her sword with her, but she couldn't reply. He asked if something happened after he left or if someone broke in again. She moved her head and said no. 
He asked if she is defending her against him, but she replied she isn't and said he is a good person. After that, she slams the door, but Zhu gets into deep thought and wondered if she saw him as a pervert of some sort. While Zhu was sitting in the living room, he could hear the bathing sounds coming from the bathroom. He gets flustered by the sounds and imagines a naked picture of her in his mind. He then shakes his head and tries to get rid of the dirty thoughts. He then noticed his laptop on standby and wondered if he forgot to turn it off. He thought that he will leave it be as he has videos to edit. After that, Jiang comes out of the bath. Zhu kept staring at her and asked if practicing martial arts makes someone look prettier. He wanted to know how she keeps her skin smooth and if there is some special technique. She replied that she wants to teach him, but he is unwilling to learn. He didn't want to learn from the basic stance, since he saw others doing ultimate techniques in videos without any labor. Suddenly, he got the idea that she could open a martial arts class to teach others, but then he realized that kids of his age aren't motivated enough to practice something like martial arts. Meanwhile, Jiang plugs in the wire for using the hair dryer, but couldn't figure out how to use it. She then asked if the priest from before was able to exercise the ghost, and Zhu replied that the priest was just deceiving others. He also mentioned that the priest was there since her nightly adventures made her seem like a ghost. She then pouts and said that she is human, not a ghost. She wasn't accustomed to the new hair dryer, so he proposes that he will dry her hair for her. She looks at the machine and gives it to him. While he was drying her hair, he tells her that she is indeed human, but her inhumane movements made others think that she was a ghost. She asked why the people of his era don't practice martial arts. And Zhu answered, as the standard of living improved, martial arts became less important to them. He also said that those who practice martial arts for violence in his era are mad, and refrains her from falling into the same category. After that, he tells her a detailed history of how martial arts got lost. He then concludes it by saying, that in his era, martial arts is no longer a necessity, as people are able to live comfortably using technology. After that, Zhu tells her to put away her sword, but Jiang replied that she saw a ghost and she is using it to protect herself. He then again reminds her how she was the ghost who everyone was afraid of, but she said that she really saw it. She tells him that she saw the ghost when he was gone. Zhu gets scared for a minute, but then he realized that it might have been a misunderstanding, so he asked what the ghost looked like. Jiang said that the ghost's hair was longer than hers. She then impersonates the ghost to give an example, which makes him scared. He asked for more details and she said that her face was pale white and was wearing a blue dress. Hearing the details, Zhu gets scared and tells her to stop. He then looks behind him and wondered if there really is a ghost. He then shakily explains to her how ghosts are not real and tells her to go back to bed. She tells him that during her era, ghosts were scary things. Zhu replied that ghosts are scary in his era as well, but he explained that it is just the misunderstanding of other people, and they don't exist. She shouted they exist, and that she saw one, but she didn't know if her sword will be able to hurt it. Zhu looks at Jiang and then realized that supernatural phenomena might exist, as she is living proof. After that, he reassures her by saying that he will borrow an exercising item tomorrow. She then thanks him by addressing him as a young hero. He tells her to stop overthinking it and go to bed. He puts the hair dryer back and thought that he should take a shower. He came out from the shower faster than usual as he was scared of her story. He was thinking about how living with a roommate is big. He couldn't sleep so he decided to edit videos for tomorrow. While checking his computer, he noticed something. Meanwhile, Jiang was staring at the clothes which Zhu bought for her. She was thinking that he was considerate of her standard since she saw others in the streets. She then smiles and thinks that Zhu is a good person. She then checks under her pillow and takes out the shirt that she wore on her first day. She said that the shirt had different proportions than her body and how her second miss would fix it for her if she was back in the village. She then recalls a memory where her chief was giving her advice about martial arts. Her second miss used to give her advice to learn sewing to raise her appeal for marriage. She then starts crying because of the memories and said that she will improve her martial arts to deal with the ghost. Suddenly, she hears a knocking sound on her door and after she opens it, she finds Zhu waiting outside. He opened a video from his computer and asked if it was the ghost that she saw. She then pulls out her sword while being scared and replied that it was the one. Zhu then blamed himself because he was the one who told her to watch the video that he paused halfway through. 
He tells her that he will explain it to her tomorrow, but she was still scared. He then closes the laptop, saying that he has sealed the ghost inside and said she can sleep peacefully now. The next morning, Zhang wakes up and thought that the ghost really didn't appear. She then walks toward her door and opened it as she promised Zhu that she would let him observe while she practices her martial arts. She then starts her practice, thinking that martial arts are the only thing that could protect her in this unfamiliar era. After a while, Zhu wakes up from his sleep and wishes her good morning while she was feeding Wintermelon. He then walks past her and thinks about how she has completely adapted to his era. He was thinking that she was lucky because of how his era treated women and how it would have been a bad case if someone like his chief crossed over to their era. After that, he asks Jung what her chief looked like and if he had a beard. She replied that he was taller than him and had a beard, which confirmed Zhu's suspicions. She asked why is he not growing a beard and he replied that it's because he is a scholar. She gets suspicious thoughts about him because the scholars of her era also grew beards. Zhu gets angry and said that razors in his era existed specifically for men. After that, he tells her to get ready for breakfast. She tells him that her phone isn't working and if it's costly to repair it while making a guilty face. He replied that it's a misunderstanding because her phone ran out of battery. After that, they leave the apartment and while descending the stairs, Zhu tells her to learn about her phone, as she will need it to earn and use money in the future. She didn't know what he meant, so he shows his Y chat wallet, and then he sends 100 yuan to her account to spend. He tells her that she can consider it as a loan and can pay him back later. He was thinking about how others who borrowed money from him in the past didn't have a need like Jiang, and because of that, he tells her that his first time is hers with a creepy smile. On the other side, Hao returns home from his police work. He asked his dad if there was something to eat and his dad said that there's some porridge for him. While he was serving his food, his dad asked if he caught any thieves last night. Hao replied that there are no thieves because in the current era there is no need for someone to become one. His dad then mentioned how his friend Zhu caught a thief even though he is not a police officer. Hao gets surprised and asked when it happened. His dad then tells him how it happened a few days ago and how he released the thief after beating him up. Hao gets angry and picks up his phone to scold Zhu for not informing him. He was angry at the fact that Zhu got an opportunity of catching a thief even though he's always lazing in his house. His dad tells him not to bother him and mentioned how he got a girlfriend who is staying with him. He gets surprised to hear the news despite knowing the fact that he has good looks. His dad said that his friend made an effort to make one and asked what he will do. Hao shakily replied that he is not in a hurry and explained how busy he is. His dad then gets angry at the fact that he couldn't find even one girlfriend even though his friend had two before him and asked why he sits in his car all day. Hao said that he just wants to catch thieves, to which his dad asked if he managed to catch any which hits him hard. He said that he will eventually catch one and think about getting a girlfriend after that but his dad believes that he was just making excuses. He tells him to believe in him that he will bring home the prettiest girlfriend. His dad gets angry and said that he won't even be able to find a girlfriend and prepares his slippers to beat him. He then replies that there is a saying that a man needs to achieve his goals before settling down. His dad wasn't convinced by that and tells him to not run. After that, Hao was thinking that his words were correct as he believes that men should be hungry for success. He then gets a call from one of his friends, saying that he wants to hang out with him, but Hao refuses because he had duty that night. He then said how being on duty is hard and tells his dad to wake him at 4 p.m. At the same time, Zhu also gets a call from the same friend while he was back from breakfast. His friend invites him for dinner and tells him that he invited Hao, but he was busy with his police work. Zhu wanted to know about the location and asked if he could bring a friend along. His friend replied that he can and said he will see him later. After the call, Zhu tells Jiang that he will take her to have a fun time that night, but she was clueless. He explained that it meant to experience modern life and forbids her to act without his clues. She replied that she got it while Zhu was picking up Wintermelon. After that, she mentioned the ghost movies and asked why they made something weird like that. Zhu explained how some people of his era liked to seek thrill and asked if there were any books in her era in that genre. She wasn't sure as she didn't read anything like that. He then gives an example of a storyteller and explained how demand and supply work. 
After that, he gives other examples of how others solve problems for monetary rewards. Hearing his examples, it was no wonder to her that Zhu was able to live as a landlord. She then understands the purpose of horror movies and Zhu compliments her for getting it. He tells her to catch it as he throws a cola at her and said that it's a reward for her correct answer. She then gets into deep thinking while looking at the cola and asked if he took her in to satisfy his psychological needs since it served no purpose. He then tries to think for a while and replied that it might be the case but he doesn't fully understand it either. She then looks at Zhu, thinking how good of a person he is, and then she proceeds to open the cola. After opening the can, the cola overloads and gets spilled on her clothes. He tells her to take a paper towel and wipe it off. Later that night, they were on their way to the party, and Zhu tells her to not worry about the crowd, also forbids her from drinking alcohol. After a while, they arrive at their destination, and Zhu tells her that they are there. He said that they should go and said that she doesn't need to hold back on food as a rich person is treating them. After going inside, Jiang could hear some singing that was making her feel uncomfortable. They arrive at a big door and Zhu tells her that it's inside it. After opening the door, they saw everyone attending the party. His rich friend noticed him and announces his name through the mic. They looked around a bit and saw that others were engaged in different activities. He then asked if they already started and his friend replied that since there was nothing to do, they were waiting for them. After they both sit down, Jiang starts looking around in confusion. Jiang then starts sweating as she was feeling out of place in there. Zhu extends his fist in front of her and tells her to eat these nuts if she is feeling hungry because the main program will happen later. She couldn't hear what he said because of all the noise, so he came closer and tells her to eat these nuts after opening it. After that, she cracks open the nuts and asked if she is doing it right. He asked if she had those nuts in her era since they existed for a long time. She replied that she didn't see these nuts before and said it is delicious. Zhu was thinking how nobody will notice her breaking the nuts since there is so much noise. He then grabs a wine bottle and tells his friend Wang Jai to have a drink with him. Wang Jai said that he was going to start singing but he takes the drink anyway. They both cheered and started chugging the drink. Jiang was tempted by what they were drinking, so she tells Zhu that she wants to drink that too. Zhu explained how bad it is for her to drink alcohol, but she still insisted. He then explained that the alcohol content is greater than their era, but she wanted to have a little sip. Zhu lost to her persistence and pours her a drink, saying that she can have a sip. After that, she drinks the alcohol and Zhu asked how it tastes. She replied that it isn't good, but he couldn't hear what she said. As he went closer to hear what she was saying, Wang Jai interrupts them because he thought they were doing something lewd. Zhu tells him to mind his own business, but Wang Jai approaches him and asked if the girl beside him is his girlfriend. He then tells him to introduce her to them, but Zhu replied that she is just a friend from the countryside. Zhu then introduces his friend to Jiang as a rich man, but Wang Jai was angry to hear it. Wang Jai asked if he could become friends with her too, but Zhu tells him to get lost. Zhu tells him to forget about it and said that he is hungry. Wang Jai proposes to him to sing as everyone isn't present and asks about his friend Hao. Zhu replied that Hao is currently the protector of the people which he wouldn't understand. After that, Wang Jai along with some other people start singing and dancing. Jiang asked why there are so many people and said that it's too noisy. Zhu said that it's a celebration, and it is because of Wang Jai's girlfriend's birthday party. He then gets surprised by her nut-cracking skills and asked her to help crack some of his nuts. After that, he asked if she can sing but she replied that she has never sung before. And then, a guy along with some other people enters the room, and Zhu wondered why is he there. The guy noticed Zhu and looks away. Meanwhile, Zhu notices Zhang cracking some nuts and asks if she is hungry. She replied that she is, but he tells her to wait a bit longer as a massive cake is on the way. She starts drooling while imagining the cake that he described. She was thinking how the food from his world never tasted bad, except for the one time, when she ate a burger which she hid for two days. Wang Jai then gives him the mic to perform a duet with him. He takes the mic and said that he will sing only one song. After that, Jiang gets close to the mic and asked what that is. Then, her voice gets enhanced and makes her scared. He tells her to not get afraid of it, and that he will explain it to her later. 
After that, he looks at her while she was wondering what a microphone is. He suddenly feels the urge to pinch her cheeks, and as he was about to do the deed, Zhang notices his hand. He then fakes it, thinking that he will pinch them sooner or later. After finishing their duet performance, Wang Jai noticed that almost everyone is present, so he begins the main event. The waiter then brings a massive cake, which was wrapped like a gift. Wang Jai cuts to the chase and announces to everyone that it is his girlfriend's birthday. But then, he gets shocked, because he realized that his girlfriend is not with him. Someone mentioned that she was heading outside, but they had no idea where she was going. Zhu felt bad, wondering how his girlfriend vanished during the main event. Wang Jai looks outside for a bit and after coming back, he tells everyone to continue the party, and leave the cake for when she returns. Zhu asked how long they has been dating and he replied that it's around two months. Zhu said then it's time for them to break up, but Wang Jai angrily replied that they are truly in love. Meanwhile, Jiang was trying to understand the concept of a girlfriend. She asked if a girlfriend meant someone like a wife. Zhu replied that the term differed from person to person and gives an example of how in case of Wang Jai, a girlfriend meant someone else's wife. She asked what it meant to him and he replied that it meant like a drawing or even a concept. Wang Jai then asked if they both are really just friends, but Zhu changes the subject to something else as he didn't want Jiang to find out more. Wang Jai then checks the time and said that it's getting late. He heads out, saying that he will give his girlfriend a call. Zhu gets relieved while Jiang was staring at him with confusion. Suddenly, someone calls Zhu from behind and asked if he changed his girlfriend again. He tells him to mind his own business, but the dude said that he just wanted to consult with him as he couldn't find a girlfriend. Zhu makes a sinister smile and replied that the reason he couldn't find a girlfriend is because he is too ugly. Hearing that, Liangzi replied that he didn't have to be so unfriendly and invites him for a toast, but Zhu refuses his offer and tells him to get lost. Meanwhile, Wang Jai comes back and gets afraid, thinking that they are having a fight because he invited them both to patch things up. The situation was looking grim, so he thought that it's all over. He then steps between them and tells Liangzi that he shouldn't have provoked him. He replied that he wasn't provoking him, but reminiscing over old times. Zhu asks Wang Jai if he's the one who invited him, but he was wondering if it was unsalvageable. Zhu said he always thought that the matter was trivial. Wang Jai then asked if it's the same case for Liangzi as well. He replied it is because he just wanted to have a drink with him. After that, they started arguing on the matter, and then suddenly, Zhu asked if the previous beating was not enough for him. Meanwhile, Zhang was worried, thinking if they are going to fight. Wang Jai gets surprised and asked when they fought. Liangzi said that he just wanted to have a toast, and nothing would have happened if he accepted it. Zhu angrily said that he is not doing it. Liangzi then addresses Zhang as sister-in-law and asks her to have a toast with him. Zhu tells him that she's not doing it either and stops him from calling her sister-in-law. Jiang also replied that she is not, and Zhu tells her how sly of a man Liangzi is. After that, Wang Jai gets mad and tells them to calm down. He then pushes Liangzi away and tells him to get back to his corner. When things settle down, Wang Jai asked about their fight, and Zhu replied that it happened some time ago. Wang Jai apologizes to him, saying that he wouldn't have invited him if he knew that things were this bad between them. Meanwhile, Jiang was confused about why he addressed her as sister-in-law earlier. Zhu said it's because he is ugly. He tells her to look at Liangzi and asked if he looks more handsome than him. She replies that he is, and then Zhu said that she looks great as well. He added how someone with his type of brain would think of them as a couple since they both look pretty. Wang Jai gets mad because he was thinking the same before, but Zhu roasts him by asking if he has a brain. Jiang asked why people were thinking of them as married, because of the fact that they looked like a good match. Zhu said that he has no idea and warns her to talk to people like him. After that, Wang Jai's girlfriend arrives and he rushes to the scene while giving order to the waiter to prepare for the celebration. The cake gets revealed and Jiang asked with sparkling eyes if the whole cake is edible. Zhu then suddenly gets in deep thought while looking at the cake because something was feeling off to him. After a while, Jiang witnessed something which was disturbing for her. A few minutes ago, Zhu grabs her hand and tells her to go with him. He then makes her sit in a corner and tells her to hide until he comes back with a huge piece of cake for her. She had no idea how it would taste and wondered if it was a rule to stay hidden. 
She then looks at the cake while thinking, how she is looking forward to it. As she was thinking about how the cake looked tasty, suddenly, everyone started throwing around the cake while having fun. She gets devastated by the sight, and reaches out her hand for the cake, which was on the verge of collapse. After that, Zhu appears with a piece of cake in his hand and asked, what is wrong? He sighed and tells her that he knew something like that would happen, so he snatched a big piece of cake for her before the fight began. She then takes the cake from Zhu with a disappointed look and tries a bite. He asked how it tastes like and she replies that it is good. She was thinking how she wanted her second miss to try some of this cake too. Her second miss used to conserve food, so Jiang was thinking how she would have been happy to taste this cake. After that, while observing the cake fight, she asked why are they wasting tasty food. Zhu replies that it is another use of it and mentioned that he will buy her a cake next time. Jiang gets into deep thought about how people were wasting tasty foods instead of eating them. She then wondered if it's the best era and started to question herself if it's really the golden age. After the cake fight ends, Zhu said that it's safe to come out and tells her to wait until he finishes cleaning up. While she was waiting, Liangzi approaches her and asked if Zhu left her alone. He then asked her name and insisted that they know each other. She replied that she won't be talking to him. He tells her to not act fierce and asked if Zhu told her to speak that way. He saw how clean she is, so he tries to make her dirty by sticking cream on her clothes. Jiang gets startled and asked what he is doing, and he replies that she looked out of place so he wants to smear some cake on her. He then proceeds to smear her with cake while she was preparing her fist. Suddenly, Zhu grabs him from behind and asked who permitted him to do that. He then launches a punch in his guts while telling him to show respect. After tasting the punch, Liangzi gets angry and punches him back in the face. Zhu looks at him with rage while taking his punch and falls on the table from the impact. After that, Wang Jai noticed that they are fighting and tells them to stop. He tells others to turn on the lights and pull them apart. After that, Zhang pulls Zhu out using only her one hand, and meanwhile, Wang Jai and some others pull out Liangzi. Wang Jai was cursing himself and thought that he was stupid to invite them both. While erasing his bleeding nose, Zhu tells Wang Jai how a great birthday is ruined because of him and asked if he wants to punch him too. After that, Wang Jai apologizes to everyone and tells them to head home. After everyone was gone, Zhu provokes him and asked if he wants to continue their fight. Liangzi starts to get angry, but Wang Jai tells Zhu to stop. He was worried about Zhu's swollen face, but he replied that he is fine. While they were arguing further, they hear a knock on the door. Wang Jai opens the door, saying that they are in the middle of something, but it was the police, and they say that they received a report of a fight. He gets surprised, because the person behind the senior police officer was Hao. The senior police officer then asked if he knows them, and Hao replied, he does. After that, Hao enters the room and saw how both Zhu and Liang were covered in bruises. He then makes an angry face and said they were having too much fun. Wang Jai then makes up a story to cover up for them and said that they are wasting their time. The senior officer asked what happened, and Zhu replied that nothing happened just like what Wang Jai described. Hao saw how badly Zhu was injured, so he thought that it might be fine if Liangzi is okay with it. The senior officer then tells Zhu to give his ID, but he replied that he didn't bring it with him. He then looks at a broken glass and asked if they really didn't fight. As Zhu was about to reply, how they were just having fun, suddenly, Liangzi tells them that they fought and that Zhu punched him. The officer then looks at him and asks again if they fought or not, so Liangzi tells him to look at the mess and decide for himself. Hao then asks Zhu about the fight, and he replied that they will talk that out in the station. Wang Jai swoops in and said that it was a misunderstanding and they are spouting nonsense. The officer said it's enough and tells them to head back to the station with them. After that, Zhu tells Wang Jai to send Jiang back to his home, and Wang Jai said that he can leave it to him. While leaving, the officer mentioned that all the witnesses has to be present. Hearing that, Zhu makes a grim face. He then tells the officer that there is no need for Jiang to be present since she is a high schooler, but the officer didn't believe it. Wang Jai covers up for Zhu, saying that they could take him for questioning instead. The officer then shouts at them and said they all will be going. Hao tells them to stop looking at him since he is still a newbie and his word doesn't carry any weight. Zhu then tells him that Jiang came from the countryside so they shouldn't scare her. 
Hao said, they are going to understand the whole situation, so there is no need to be scared. He was thinking that Zhang was his girlfriend, but it didn't seem like the case. While they were exiting the building, Hao asked about Zhang's background, but Zhu refrains him to pry into it that much. He then introduces her by only telling her name. Hao tells her that she can address him as Brother Kin, but Zhu refrains him from scaring her. Before departure, Wang Jai tells Hao that he can drive his car while he experiences riding in a police car. After some time, they reach the police station, and Hao jokes by saying how Wang Jai has arrived at his home. He said that it's getting late, so they should finish the investigation. Meanwhile, Zhu was feeling nervous because of his guilty conscience. He knew that taking care of an ancient person meant to keep his temper in check. Jiang then looks at Zhu and gives a signal, which meant that she will be fine. Zhu thought that they will have to tackle the situation in the future anyways, so it is a chance to get familiar with it. After that, Zhu and Liang get called inside the room for questioning. The officer asked what happened and order one of them to give the details. Zhu admits that it was a normal fight and he hit him first because he was insulting him. When the officer asks for more details, Zhu tells him that Liang will give him the rest of the details. Meanwhile, Liang was plotting that he will not be blamed because of how Zhu started the fight first. Liang replied that they were joking when suddenly, Zhu punched him out of nowhere. The officer gets tired of their vague answers and angrily states that he wanted a detailed recount. He then went on about explaining what he meant by detailed information and menacingly asked if they understood that. The officer added that there is nothing to think about as they just have to simply describe what happened. He then tells Zhu to start, but Liang interrupts by saying that he will do it instead. While Liang was describing what happened, Zhu was thinking about how it is still early for Jiang to get involved with the police. He was worried, thinking, if Jiang will say anything suspicious during her questioning with Hao. After Liang finishes his story, the officer said that he wants to know Zhu's side of the story. Zhu tells the officer how he hit him after he insulted him. Ling interrupts by saying that he was just joking, but the officer knew that he was lying. After some time passes, the officer tells Liang to resolve the matter with a handshake, but he gets confused because he thought that Zhu was going to get arrested. The officer mentioned how they both would get arrested in that case and how the punishment will be decided based on their injuries. Zhu knew that Liang would lose his job if he gets arrested, so he tells him to resolve the matter with a handshake. Liang gets angry and said that Zhu was the one who hit him first, but the officer gives him two choices. First, they can resolve the matter peacefully, or second, they both get arrested. Liang then sits down while making a defeated face. In the meantime, Hao was waiting for Zhu outside. He tells him how his face will take time to recover and asked if he wants a ride home. Zhu replies it's fine, and as he was about to say, nothing is going to happen on the way. Hao grabs his mouth and refrains him from saying such things. Hao said there are some mysterious powers at work, but Zhu was clueless about what he was saying. Hao then again invites him for a ride, but Zhu asked where are his cousin and the others. Hao said they are waiting for him outside, after refusing his offer to wait for him inside the station. After that, Hao tells him that it felt like Zhang was an airhead, but Zhu said that she is smarter than him. Meanwhile, Zhang and Wang Jai were tired of waiting outside, as it was getting late. As Wang Jai was saying how Zhu is late, Zhu appears and asked why are they waiting outside. He replied that waiting inside made him sleepy and mentioned how their day was a total mess. Wang Jai offers them a ride, but he refuses, saying they will get a cab. While waiting for a cab to appear, both Wang Jai and Zhu were feeling cold. He said how cold it is at night during this time of the year while shivering. Wang Jai then noticed something and asked Zhu, why is he not lending his jacket to Zhang? Zhu replied that she isn't cold and Zhang also agreed. Wang Jai then asked whether she is his girlfriend or cousin, and Zhu said she is neither. A few hours later, they finally arrive outside their house. While walking towards their apartment, Zhu was troubled by something about Zhang. He was wondering how silent her footsteps are, and it was feeling like he had fun alone. He then turns around and tells her to walk beside him, because it felt like a stooge is following him around. Jiang gets mad and tells him that she is not a stooge. After that, she jumps at his side and starts walking beside him. He said that she isn't a stooge anymore, so she replied that she wasn't one to begin with. After returning home, Zhu lies down on the sofa and said he is tired from today's events. 
He asked Zhang what she said during her questioning and she replied that she told how about how she is his cousin, a high schooler, and that she went to celebrate a birthday. Zhu then compliments her while thinking that he now knows why Hao was telling him that she is an airhead. Jiang said that the constables of his era didn't seem that scary. Zhu tells her that they will not harm anyone unless someone commits serious crimes. He was glad at the fact that nothing serious happened and that she was able to experience many new things. He praised her for holding back when Liang was pestering her. She said that she didn't know any rules so it is natural for her to follow whatever Zhu say. Zhu then asked if she is not afraid that he will trick her into selling her off, but she smiled and said that he is a good person. She was thinking how she wouldn't have survived without Zhu's help, and she believes that he is the only one who will offer her such help. She tells him that Liang didn't touch her face, and Zhu replied he knows that if he did, then she would have beaten him so badly. After that, he blushes while asking if their fight looked like a kid fighting to her. She then disappointedly looks at him and asked if he really called that a fight. After that, when Jiang asked why he hit Liang, Su said because he deserved it. He then tells her that in future if she hits someone then she has to use the same strength that he used yesterday. He gives a detailed explanation about the mentality of the people who thinks that they are better than others. He also mentioned that he hates Liang because he is someone who looked down on others and is a bootlicker. When Jiang asked what he meant by bootlickers, he tells her that they are the type of people who deserves to die. Jiang couldn't understand what he meant because the image of a bootlicker was different for her. He then tells her to take a shower as it was getting late. While Jiang was showering, Zhu was thinking that having someone to chat with felt very good. He thinks about cuddling her, but then he realizes that something is weird and wondered why is he having those thoughts. After that, Jiang comes out of the shower. He looks at her and stands up, saying that she should dry her hair by herself. He said he will take a shower while looking flustered. After he arrives at the bathroom, he hides his flustered face while saying it was close. After some time, he finishes his bath and comes out. Jiang asked him if it's normal for girls to keep their hair short, as she noticed many during the party. Zhu replied that it's a personal taste and asked if she wants to cut her hair as well. She said she wants to cut a little. But Zhu tells her not to cut them and said, long hair is great. He then imagines her with short hair and gets afraid of it. After that, Zhu starts drying her hair and said, he will help dry her hair every day so she shouldn't think about cutting them. She asked him if it's normal for boys to help dry a girl's hair. Zhu hesitantly replied that it is very normal. He then proceeds to dry her hair while looking at her face. He tells her to go to bed and said, he is also going to sleep. He turns off the lights and wishes her good night. Meanwhile, Jiang looks at him go while twirling her hair. She went to her room and searched good night on the internet. She sees a music option and after tapping on it, the music starts playing at a loud volume and makes her scared. She kept listening to the music and after a while, she falls asleep while music was being played in the background. The next morning, Zhu wakes up from bed and wishes Jiang good morning while she was using his computer. He then proposes to her for having breakfast, but she refuses, saying that she has work to do. He tells her then he will go and buy breakfast for them. While he was getting ready to head outside, he was thinking about how staying with her influenced him and created a routine, as previously, he wouldn't even have breakfast. After Zhu was gone, Jiang suspiciously looks back and starts typing something. She then searches about what is a girlfriend and gets an elaborate description on the internet. After learning about the girlfriend meeting, she searched if there are any ghosts in their world. Suddenly, Zhu comes back and invites her for breakfast. Jiang said that she is working, but Zhu tells her to take a break to eat. He tells her that he brought light snacks as it's already getting time for lunch. She then takes a bun and asked if she could start working as she has been playing that game for a while. Zhu said he will find a request for her and then she could try it out, which makes her happy. Zhu was thinking that he will find her a normal job once she gets more familiar with his world. While having breakfast, she happily said that the food in his world is really tasty. Zhu said it wasn't her first time tasting those foods, but she replied, it really is delicious, just like the cake she ate yesterday. Zhu then asked about her birthday and said he will get her a huge cake on that day. She replied that she didn't know about it, which makes Zhu speechless. He tells her that he will make the day she came as her birthday and asks her opinion on it. She gets happy and asked if she would be able to eat cake next year. 
Zhu looks at her face and wondered how happy she looks about having to eat cake. He tells her that they will have cake today as a late celebration for her first year birthday. She gets happy and thanks him, but then she tells him to forget it since she thinks that cakes are costly. He reassures her, saying that it isn't costly and tells her to wait to eat it. After that, Zhu looks at his phone and asked if she brought any copper coins with her. She said that she didn't have any copper ones but has silver coins. As she tries to grab her coins, she gets reminded of how her second miss used to stuff coins in her pocket. Zhu said that it's unlucky because the copper coins has high value in his era and thought that it is the power of time. Meanwhile, Hao was patrolling the area and was greeted by some people from his neighborhood. While entering his house, he was thinking about how being a protector of citizens gave him a sense of fulfillment. After he enters his house, he gets surprised by a puppy. His dad said that the puppy was given to them by his friend, so he ordered how to train it. After looking at his face, his dad asked if he doesn't even know how to train dogs as a police officer, but how gets mad by that. After that, he asks the dog's name, but his dad hasn't decided on one. How then remembers something and asked if he knew that Zhu has a cousin. His dad replied that it's the first time he heard about Zhu having a cousin and asked if he is interested in her. How thought that their parents are very close to the point where they agreed on marriage before their birth, but then they called it off because he and Zhu were males. His dad asked why is he asking about Zhu's cousin, and he replied that he met her yesterday. His dad heard him saying she's pretty, so he said that he will call Zhu's dad to ask about her, but how stopped him. He was thinking that he didn't have any strong opinion of her, but seeing how Zhu acted on behalf of her, it wasn't strange to believe that she was his cousin. On the other side, Zhu and Jiang go out for a stroll and asked his neighborhood guard about the ghost, and he said that the ghost didn't return after the exorcism. He tells them how it was his first time encountering a ghost despite his old age. Zhu laughs, but he was feeling guilty inside. After walking past him, Zhu asked Jiang if she saw how her actions scared that old man, so she promised to not do it again. After that, she pouts and tells him that everyone thinks that she is his girlfriend, even though she is not. He tells her to let them believe it, as he already clarified that she isn't his girlfriend. Zhu tells her to not worry and suggested to drink some kumquat lemon. Meanwhile, Zhang was thinking about how there is nothing to hide and they didn't cross any line, so as long as her consciousness is clear, it is fine. She then asked about a girlfriend and what she does so she will avoid those actions to clear up any misunderstandings. Zhu replied that girlfriends go to shopping with their boyfriends, walk on the streets with them, and have meals with them. He also added that they will live together and also go get milk together as well. Hearing that, she starts to feel conscious about her actions, but he tells her not to worry since normal logic doesn't apply to her. She looks at her drink and wonders why non-girlfriend couldn't drink these delicious drinks. She was thinking about throwing her drink in the trash can, but then she changes her mind. She then asked him if everything will be okay as long as they have a clear consciousness. Zhu said it's correct and since they have nothing to hide, so there is no need to make a fuss about it. They then reached the cake shop while Jiang was thinking how Zhu is right and how they shouldn't be bothered by others thinking. After arriving at the shop, Zhu buys a cake and steps outside. Jiang was wondering if the cake was pricey and thought that her debt to Zhu is growing larger. She then tells him how he previously mentioned getting paid for solving problems and asked if he has some problems to solve as well. Zhu understood that she was thinking about working for him to pay off her debt and realized she is too smart. He said he doesn't have any problems and even if he did, she won't be able to help him. When she asks about the problem, he thought about teasing her and said the problem is that he doesn't have a girlfriend. She then gets into deep thought which made Zhu wonder if she is being serious. He was getting flustered by thinking she is going to agree. He knew that he wouldn't dare to make any moves on her, even if she agrees. She then makes up her mind and tells him that she couldn't kidnap a young woman for him since it was a rule set for her by the leader of their group. Zhu then makes a funny face because he realized that he was overthinking it. After they bought the cake, Zhu was thinking how he likes her willingness to accept anything and how she investigates or ponders something she never heard of. He knew that changing one's entire point of view is scarier than not being knowledgeable. She then grabs him and asked if it's normal for doing something like that while pointing him towards a kissing couple by the side of the road. 
He feels single and tells her that it's indecent. He then asked if the people of her era were liberal as well and gives the example of Lai Shimon. She replied that she heard about it, which makes him curious to know more. He was thinking about how he can prove his dad's research is fake if it didn't match up with Jiang's recount. She didn't understand what he was saying, so he asked if she saw liberal things in her era. She replied by asking why would she be concerned with what the emperors and the subjects were up to. Zhu said it's true and wondered how historians depict illicit exploits of emperors, but it had nothing to do with commoners like Jiang. After that, he said that he wants her to tell him about her life in the Salt Gang. She recalls some memory of her previous era and tells him how her life was dull compared to his era, and he wouldn't like it. Zhu said then he will treat it as story time, and they returned home. He then opened the box and showed the cake to her. He gives her the birthday candles of 18 years old and tells her to plant them anywhere on the cake. He tells her to wait while he will turn off the lights and said that it's all part of the ceremony. After turning off the lights, he welcomes the birthday star to the stage by bringing her in front of the cake. He then tells her to make a wish after closing her eyes and then blow the candles out in one breath. He said her wish will come true since it's her first birthday. While Jiang was making her wish, Zhu comes closer and tried to hear that. After she was done, she gets startled to see Zhu as he was getting closer to her. He then panics and tells her to blow the candles if she's done wishing. He blows the candles and when it was over, she said that it is a weird ceremony. But Zhu replied it won't be once she gets used to it. She then asked if she can do the click thingy to preserve the cake forever. Zhu realized she meant a photo and then gives her instructions to capture it. He said that it's time to cut the cake and gives her instructions on how to cut it. After cutting a slice, she gives him the first slice and in response, Zhu tells her to have the rest for herself. She then looks at the cake and wondered if it's really all hers. After that, she takes a slice and stares at it. He asked why isn't she eating and if she doesn't like it, but she replied no and takes a bite, saying it's delicious. Zhu keeps looking at her face while she was eating the cake. He was thinking about how his expression looked like hers when he first ate a cake, but then he got sick of the cream because of eating more tasty food. He was wondering how long it had been since he enjoyed eating something delicious. After that, he gives her a drink and proposes to her to toast with some cola. He was thinking how Jiang was lucky to be there, but it was just like every other day for him. He also wondered how his life hasn't been wasted since he took on an ancient girl and will be able to make a memory to think about it in the future. After that, they toast for meeting each other and to the meeting that spanned a thousand years. While eating the cake, she tells him how once a tragedy was avoided after exterminating locusts from her village. Her second miss used to tell her that it was the golden era and that Lord Tao was a saint. She even made an altar for their lord to pray for his longevity and used to eat only half of what others ate. He was surprised by how martial arts in their era treated government officials since he had the reverse impression of them. She added that it was because of him that they survived and her second miss used to tell her to be grateful for living. Hearing that, Zhu wondered what their dark age would be like if their golden age was like that. She then tells him about plagues, droughts, slavery, and other disasters, which occurred frequently and also mentioned how it was like a golden era for them if there were no man-made disasters. She then looks depressed and while looking at the cake, she wondered what her current time would be described as if she considered her previous time as the golden age. Zhu then looks up her era on the internet and finds out about the famine of Yandi. He was thinking how compared to Zhang he is lucky since he happened to be born in the current period. He then tells her to forget about the past and focus on eating the cake that was in front of her. After that, she smiles and thanked him. She was done eating the cake, so she asked if the cake could be preserved for tomorrow. Zhu replied that it wouldn't taste good much, but she said it will still be tasty. As she looks at her birthday template, she tells him how great it was to be in an era, where people throws around food for fun, reveals their body, and couples gets intimate in public. She then said that her second miss was wrong, and the current age is the true golden age. Zhu then asked if they should have a toast again, and this time, to toast for the golden age. After that, they toast to the golden age. She looks above and thought that she will experience this world on behalf of her second miss. A few days later, while Zhu was using his computer, Zhang was secretly staring at him from behind. When he asked what was wrong, she gets flustered and hides from him. 
She then walks up to him while holding something behind her hand, which Zhu noticed what it was. He then said that she should have told him earlier and proceeded to make an order online. He then cancelled the order and tells her to buy it herself since he thinks that she needed to be familiar with the basics of modern society. He then asks her about the white strip and said that it is bad for her. Hearing that, Zhang gets flustered but he tells her that he is just concerned about her. She then blushes and tells him that the piece of clothing hurts her back. Hearing her say that, it felt to him as if he obtained knowledge beyond the cognitive scope. He said that he will do some research on the web, and meanwhile, she can try out some other pieces. While she was going back to her room, she asked if what they are doing is considered normal. He replied that they have nothing to hide, so it would be considered normal. She muttered it's true, and after getting inside her room, she also thought that they have nothing to hide. After that, Jiang transfers 100 yuan to his phone, and menacingly tells him that she has paid back 100 yuan. She then repeats her words, which makes Zhu wonder why she was in a hurry to pay him back if she couldn't bear to part with it. He was thinking about giving her some other activity, so he asked if she knows how to cook. She replied that she can cook porridge and reheat leftovers. He asked if she is interested in learning, since he believes that it is good to learn multiple skills, and it is definitely not because he wants to taste her cooking. Hearing that, Zhang gets excited and asked if she could learn to cook. Zhu thought that cooking is a skill that is valued in every era and it is better to be cooped up at home. He said she can learn cooking and he will teach her how to make stir-fry potatoes today. After that, he tells her to clean the kitchen and tells her to explore it while he will buy ingredients and seasonings. He knew that his cooking wasn't that good, but he believes that girls should be able to learn how to cook. While he was shopping, Zhang finishes cleaning the kitchen. She then gets hungry while thinking about different types of dishes and gets happy to know that she will be able to make those tasty dishes. After a while, Zhu comes back with a bunch of ingredients, which makes her curious. She then looks at the potato and asked what that is. Zhu replied, it's a potato and tells her how famines would have ended if their era had potatoes. Since he was tired, he tells her to carry the items to the kitchen. He gives her instructions on how to wash and peel the potatoes. He also tells her how he will give 5 yuan per meal to her as a salary for making him food. But she replied that it isn't appropriate since she is living off of him and will be eating the same food. He then tells her to treat it as a bonus since eating at home is healthier. He was thinking how weird it sounded to eat at home while she responded to his offer. After that, he shows her to cut the potatoes into strips after she was done skinning them. Suddenly, a call from Hao comes, and he leaves telling her to continue what he told her to do. After he answered the call, Hao asked if he would like to grab a meal with him that night. But Zhu replied that he can't come since there will be some cooked food for him. Hao sighed and said that he doesn't know when he will be free again. But then, he realizes what he said and asked what he meant by cooked food. Zhu tells him that he won't share with him since there isn't enough food and hangs up the phone. He knew that if he didn't add the last part, then Hao would have brought his utensils just to eat at his house. He thought that he shouldn't let Hao and Zhang meet again unless there is a need. Meanwhile, Zhang searches if it is normal for a male and a female to cook together on the internet, and gets anxious. After that, Zhu shows her some necessary seasonings and ingredients. He tells her to observe the amount of seasoning he used and remember it. But she was getting suspicious of him because of what she learned from the internet. He then asks if she remembers it, and she aggressively replies that she does. She was acting weird, so Zhu asked if something is wrong. She muttered that her consciousness is clear, but Zhu didn't catch that. She then correct herself and said that it smell good. After the cooking was done, she was amazed by the fragrance of the dish. Zhu then gives her a bowl of rice, and she thanked him. He was thinking how it is the first time cooking food together since he took her in two months ago. Jiang takes a bite and asked if potatoes are grown in the soil too, since they are so delicious. Zhu replied that it is grown in soil, and tells her how the steamed potato is his favorite. He picks two steamed potatoes and gives one to Jiang to try. He tells her that potatoes originated from the west, and if somehow she returns to her time, then she should head southeast by boat to snatch a big piece of land. She then tells him how she was thinking of some land to take root in his world. He couldn't understand what she meant, so she explained that she will start cultivating and learning about different crops. 
he advises her not to do it since growing crops isn't a reliable way of living. She asked why not, since she has the strength and said that by farming for three to four years, she will be able to return her debt to him. Zhu replied that she should learn how to live in his world first. He then imagines her as a farmer and thinks that he will not allow it. She gets disappointed by hearing his response and says okay. Watching her sad face, Zhu tells her to treat his place as her home and said that he will take care of her. She gets flustered upon hearing him say that, but Zhu tells her to not misunderstand. He was thinking how fun it is to be around someone ancient, and he thinks about letting the future decide what happens next. She tells him not to joke and said that offering herself as a payment isn't an option. Zhu was confused since nobody told her to offer herself and wondered what situation he fell into. After that, Zhu tells her to calm down, saying that he didn't say anything about harming her and asked if he looks like a bad person. She replied that he is a good guy, but Zhu gets angry and tells her to address him as young master. After some time, Jiang was working, and then she comes across a file. And after she clicks it, she finds a cosplay of Zhu and asked if it is him. He denies it, but Jiang said that it looked a lot like him. He said, even though the person looks like him, they are not the same, but she kept staring at him. He gives up by confessing that it is him and Jiang said he looked weird in the past. Zhu replied that he had a dark past and tells her to stop looking at it. He was relieved because she only found the photos as it would spell disaster for him if she finds out about his hidden videos. Jiang then asked him if he had long hair before. Zhu replied that it was the funeral love phase and they were the forerunners of the trend. He was thinking how his dad wouldn't be nagging him for rent if it wasn't for that. Zhu said that he will create an account for her so that she can upload pictures there. For the password, he tells her to type a row of letters on the keyboard since she didn't know English. He then shows her how to do it and she said she got it. After that, she needed an internet handle so Zhu decides to choose one for her. He chooses Fly Dancer and when she asked if it's her online name, he replied that it's necessary to have an alias since everyone hides their identity online. He then makes her join some gaming community and tells her to talk with others while ignoring toxic people. He also shows her to use the search option in case she couldn't understand something. After that, he relaxes on the sofa and wonders if Jiang will become an internet addict at this rate. He was thinking that it's much better than being a minor or a vigilante. He thought how it already has been two months and how he's used to someone asking him questions or conducting research on their own. He knew that she will eventually get used to his era and will become a modern city girl. He was wondering how her potential in the Kaiyuan period was limited, but over here she had more potential. After some time, while Jiang was going to shower, he tells her to use an absorbent towel which he brought to dry her hair easily. After she finished showering, she was thinking how Zhu was right since everything she saw so far existed for the enjoyment of people. It wasn't like her era when people did everything they could to survive. It only had been two months and even she could tell how different she looked from when she first arrived. After she comes back from the bath, Zhu calls her over for drying her hair since he didn't want her to think about cutting her hair short. While he was drying her hair, she tells him to keep his hair long as well, but he refuses and said that his current hairstyle is fine. She was feeling bad for being the only one getting help, but Zhu replied that it isn't a hassle. He said that it is an easy task and promised to take her to a hair salon someday. She then thanks him and thought if Zhu would have survived in her era with his big heart and weak body of his. She then thought that she would probably be the one to protect him while saying, it's a piece of cake. After that, she thought that it is better for him not to experience her era because it is good with how things are currently. The next morning, he takes a photo of her while making her wear warm clothes. While looking at her photo collection, he was thinking about how she is turning into a dress-up darling. He tells her that she would have been frozen to death if he didn't prepare these clothes for her. He asked if she's able to withstand cold using her martial arts. She replied that she would withstand it much better than him. He then makes fun of her by saying her feet would have been frozen with her straw shoes. Hearing it, she gets angry and Zhu dashes outside, saying that she doesn't have to cook his share. While walking outside, he was thinking about how he didn't transfer his rent to his dad since he believes that it would be better to pay him personally. 
He was also thinking how people would see Jiang and him like a couple, since they are living under the same roof, and how only someone like Wintermelon would be oblivious about it. After he arrives at his house, his mom gets surprised to only see him. She asked where his girlfriend is and he replied that he didn't bring her along. When she asked for the reason why doesn't he bring her girlfriend for a visit, he takes an orange and said that it isn't a need to bring her along since she is just a girlfriend. Also, he mentioned how his dad would find an excuse to scold him if he brings her over. She then angrily looks at him and asked how they end up living together. Zhu makes a made-up story of how she came to search for work and had been alone in that unfamiliar place. He said how he took her in as a sister, and over time they ended up living together. His mother asked where is she from and he replied that she is from the mountains and that she was in bad shape when they first met. She didn't believe what he was saying, but Zhu asked if she noticed that Zhang's demeanor is different from others. He said that she is different from other carefree girls who have everything handed to them on a plate. His mom then asked about their future plans since they were already living together. He gets flustered and tells her that nothing is going on between them, but she replied that they should watch themselves. He was thinking how there is nothing to watch out for since he is just taking care of her. After that, his mom tells him to bring her over and also mentioned that they should break up if nothing is going on between them. He asked if his dad will let him live for free if they were compatible, but his mom replied that they'll see. She then asked if he found a job, but he answers that he is still searching. After some time, his dad returns home. His dad asks Zhu if he's there to pay the rent, but Zhu teases him by saying that he is there to just have a meal. His mom tells them to wash their hands and get ready to eat. While eating, he was saying that the ribs at home are the best and thought how he wanted Jiang to try them as well. He knew that she is probably done eating and is working overtime playing games. His dad looks at him and asked why is he grinning, but Zhu claimed he wasn't. After their meal, while Zhu was helping his mom with the dishes, he notices some plants and asked if they are gingers. He stares at the plants and tries to touch them, but his mom smacks his hand and asked what he is doing. He tells her to give him some, because he wanted to grow some at home too. He gets a plant from his mom and while staring at the plant, he was thinking how Jiang will be interested in growing a plant like that. He was thinking of giving it to her when he gets back. His mom then tells him to head home and leave the rest of the dishes to her. Meanwhile, Zhu was picturing Zhang with a smile and after that, he tells his mom while blushing that he thinks that he is in love. His mom said it's obvious since they are living together and asked why his face is red. He then leaves while telling his mom to make sure that his dad doesn't stay up late. When he was returning to his apartment, he was thinking about how his feeling is genuine since he wouldn't dare to be lustful. Even though he joked about her being his girlfriend before, he only meant to tease her and nothing else. He was thinking how weird it was to have a crush on someone from a thousand years ago since others out there have normal girlfriends. After some time, he returned home and Jiang gets startled by his arrival. He asked what she was doing and she shakily replied that she was planning to play some games. He then gives her a plant and said that it is for her. She then looks at the plant for a while and asked what it is. Zhu replied that it's a ginger sprout and she can plant it anywhere she wants. She walks towards the kitchen and said that she will place it there. While she was placing the plant, Zhu looks at her with a love-struck face. He asked if she's planning to play games, but she replied that she will play tomorrow. He added that she should keep herself warm and tells her to come with him. After they both sit on the sofa, Jiang asked what's the matter. He then tells her to let him touch her hand for a second, but she refuses to do so. Zhu said that he wanted to check if her hands were cold, but she replied they are not. She lets him touch her hand, saying he can check if he doesn't believe her. While holding her hands, he said that they look different due to wielding swords every day. She gets embarrassed from holding hands and asked what he is doing. Zhu replied that he just wants to see if practicing martial arts makes one's hands ugly. She gets even more embarrassed and tells him that she is going to shower. While she was leaving, Zhu was wondering what was wrong with her. After she was gone, he checks if she left. He then dashes toward his laptop while thinking that she must be up to something since she was acting suspiciously before. After that, he checks the history of his browser and finds that she was searching for a variety of topics. Judging by the search results, he had no idea what was going on inside her head. 
After that, she comes back from a bath and said that she is done showering. Su then gives her a weird stare and said that he will blow dry her hair. She was wondering why he had a weird gaze and later realizes that he has been acting the whole night. Zhu tells her that the search engine isn't omnipotent since it was someone else's answer to her questions. He also tells her how humans make mistakes so she shouldn't take the answers seriously. He added how some people scam others so she shouldn't blindly believe everything she sees. While he was drying her hair, she asked why he brought up the subject all of a sudden. He replied that there is no reason and he just suddenly thought of it. After a while, he was lying in his bed and was thinking about how Jiang will be able to join into society soon, with how things are progressing. He was thinking if he should trick himself into thinking of her as his girlfriend, or if he should let her be with someone else. After that, he smacks his face and said that he should stop kidding and find a way to make her his girlfriend. The next morning, while Jiang was brushing her teeth, she was feeling disturbed by Zhu staring at her. She asked him what he is doing, but Zhu tells her to ignore it and brush her teeth as usual. He was thinking that the more he see her, the more perfect she looks. He then tells her to go to his parents' house later when she is free. He tells her that his dad was curious about her when he came over last month. He said that she just has to pretend as his girlfriend and have a meal with them so that they don't bother them in the future. She asked if they have to sleep together since she heard it somewhere. Zhu replied that she doesn't have to do it, but she can if she wants to. She gets flustered while saying that she doesn't want it. He tells her that she just has to enjoy the meal since they are pretending it. She agreed and said she will pretend to be his girlfriend. Zhu suggested that they should practice but Jiang asked what there is to practice if they are only pretending it. He makes an excuse by saying that they should practice eating. He also tells her that he will take her to a buffet where she can eat as much as she likes. She asked if he is telling the truth and Zhu said that she can stuff herself full with the hot pot. While they were on their way, he asked if she is cold. She denied and said she isn't cold since the clothes that he gave her are warm. He suggests her to keep some potatoes in her pocket in case she suddenly returns to her era, but she asked if she could take a computer instead. Zhu said that he wouldn't recommend it since everyone will think of her as a weirdo. She thought that she should learn about growing potatoes after getting back from eating, as she would probably choose to go back if she was given the chance. Zhu then saw his auntie Chen struggling to carry a bag of rice in the middle of the road. He then exchanges a few words with her and she asked for his help. He accepts to help and carries the bag on his shoulder. He tells her that he is going to take his girlfriend for a meal, but she didn't know that Jiang was his girlfriend, and asks for her name. Zhu introduced Jiang to his aunt, and she compliments her. After reaching their destination, Zhu tells her that she met Jiang before. She couldn't remember, so he tells her a made-up story of how she met her when he was in university five years ago. She still couldn't recognize her, so he said that she might have forgotten since it happened a long time ago. She agreed, saying that her memory isn't good because of old age, but Zhu tells her to remember Jiang this time. After that, she invites him for a drink inside, but he refuses her offer, saying that he is taking his girlfriend out to eat since they're usually cooped up at home playing games. After their encounter while they were on their way, Jiang couldn't understand what he meant by her appearing five years ago. But Zhu tells her that he was lying to his aunt. He explained how she would be non-existent if no one knew about her. She couldn't understand what he meant, so he explains how her future wouldn't exist with nobody knowing her past, since her root was in the Tang Dynasty. He also mentioned how she needed to root in his era in order to live life to the fullest. He knew that Auntie Cheng is a huge gossiper, so he intentionally told her about them. He tells her that people will have an impression of her and will know that she exists. After that, Jiang understands what he meant. While walking, they come across his uncle Zhao. Zhu then asked if he is cold and he replied that it was freezing. Zhu asked why is he not in the security room, and he replied that he came for a smoke. Zhu tells him that he and his girlfriend are going out for a meal, so they would be heading off. After their conversation, Zhu couldn't find her hand and was wondering how he almost got close to holding her hand. He then clears his throat and clarifies to her that he was trying to grab her hand, only to make people take notice of her. She said that it's fine in that case and offers her sleeves for him to hold. He said there is no need, but deep down he was thinking how getting to hold only her sleeves was akin to getting lonely. 
While crossing the road, he tells her that the hot pot restaurant is right ahead. He then gets surprised when he saw Hao at the end of the street and wondered what he is doing there. He noticed, so Zhu waves at him since it will be suspicious if he turns around and leaves. After that, Hao approaches them and asked what they are doing there. Zhu replied that they are on their way to Hot Pot and invites him, but Hao refuses, saying he's currently working. Hao then looks at Jiang and asked if his cousin can recite the laws of cosines, but she was totally confused about what he was saying. Zhu interrupts by saying that it is enough and introduces her as his girlfriend. Hao was wondering if something is wrong since he introduced her as his high school cousin before. He looks at him seriously while saying that something is up with him, but Zhu said it's enough of him acting like a detective and asked if he would rather arrest him for interrogation. Hao then lets him off the hook and tells him to explain to him the next time they meet. After that, Zhu shows him his middle finger and tells Jiang to ignore him while they were leaving. After a while, they reach the buffet restaurant. After getting inside, Zhu shows her a place to sit where the lighting was better. While they were taking their seats, Jiang asked if it would have been better if she didn't come out of the house. Zhu replied, there is nothing wrong and asked if she would have preferred to stay cooped up at home all the time. He also mentioned how she wouldn't be able to learn anything if she stays at home all the time since it's necessary to experience life outside and integrate into society. After that, she points at the officers outside, but Zhu tells her that it's nothing to worry about since she didn't commit any crimes. He explained how they will even help her if it's necessary, but Jiang gets mad since he told her that they were scary before. Zhu replied that times have changed and dragged her to get some food. After that, they bring a lot of food to their table and Jiang thanks him for giving her a treat. Zhu said there's no need to thank him and tells her to take her jacket and hat off. While Zhu was preparing the food, he asked if they had hot pot in their time. Jiang replied while drooling that she never tried it, but they had a similar of eating. He then remembered that there is a poem about it while serving her meat. He recites the poem in his head and gets happy to see her getting happy from eating hot pot. After that, he peels off some shrimp and gives her to eat. She then tries the shrimp and asked why is he not eating. Zhu realized that he got too mesmerized by her that he forgot to eat. He said he's full and helps her by peeling off the shrimp, saying that they should help each other as friends. Jiang replies she understands, but she was having the wrong image of self-help. After eating, he asked if she's full and she replies that she is stuffed. He suggested that they should walk home to let some of the food digest along the way. He then makes her wear the cap and said that it should do it. After leaving the restaurant, he looks across the street. He then tells her that they will take a different road to stroll around. While they were walking by a lake, he asked if she could walk on water. She replied that she couldn't while thinking that modern people are weird. Zhu then asked if she could split rocks while pointing at one, but she answers by asking if he thinks that human flesh are harder than rocks. He looks around for a bit and then he drags her somewhere. He then points at a small tree and asked if she could break that. She then makes a stance to break the tree and smacks it with a punch. The tree gets split in half, but Zhu panics by saying, that it is considered property destruction and tells her to run. After that, he grabs her hand and runs away as far as possible. She asked if he could let go of her hand, so he let it go. Zhu said that they should return home and play some games while looking sad. They then return home, and while Zhu was chilling on the sofa, Jiang asked him the meaning of romance. Zhu gets surprised and asked her, what romance is she talking about? He was standing on the sofa, which created an awkward moment. He then jumps out of the sofa and gives her a weird stare. She then points at his computer and tells him that a person said it to her. Zhu turns on voice chat and asks the person in a weird tone if he wanted to romance. He then tells her to prepare for dinner and said that he will handle it. After she was gone, he puts the person on his blacklist while thinking that people has already starting to make a move on her when even he himself didn't make any yet. He was feeling like he made an achievement by removing a potential threat. After that, he hears knocking sounds and found out that he was waiting outside. Zhu said that it wasn't payment day yet, but his dad tells him that he is just on his way from work. He also mentioned that he came to check if his heater is working and as he was about to say something else, he gets speechless to see Jiang in cooking clothes. He was surprised by what is happening in front of him. Before coming to their place, he was thinking of whipping him into shape since he thought that he is messing around all day with his girlfriend. 
After that, he looks around and sees that the house is sparklingly clean. When he previously arrived, the place was unclean but he was shocked to find out that it became a proper place. He then greets Zhang and said that he came to check if the heater is working, and Zhu replied that it is working fine. Zhu then tells him to go home, or his mom will nag at him for being late. After that, he turns around and tells Zhang to come over to their place someday. After his dad was gone, Zhang said that she will be going back to cooking if that was all. While she was heading off to cooking, Zhu looks at her from behind. He looks at her as she was working and thought that this feeling is a direct boost to his soul. After a while, they were having dinner and Zhu asked Jiang if she thought about the future. Jiang replied that the future will be just like their current moment. Zhu said it's fine and it could be just like this in the future, but she hastily corrected that she meant about not troubling him all the time. She also said how she is extremely blessed to receive help from him, so she couldn't ask for more. Her second miss once told her that she shouldn't take advantage of people who are kind to her. Zhu thought that the current development could be in his favor so he tells her that they can become related through marriage, and that their meeting together is fate. She replied that she can't since he is her benefactor and she needs to repay everything she owes back to him. Zhu then started thinking of a scenario where she was supposed to act like a damsel in distress and he would say some cool lines to get together with her. He asked if offering herself for marriage is considered as repaying him, but she replied that her second miss told her that it was the most shameless way. Zhu thought about how her second miss is getting in his way, even after a thousand years and because of that, he is getting angry beyond recognition. He asked if she couldn't treat him as a benefactor, but she replied that there is no need to pity her. He then thought how being Zhang's benefactor is the greatest obstacle in his journey to make her into his girlfriend. While she was playing games, he was thinking about how it would take her years to repay him based on the rates of power leveling in that game. He wondered if he could force herself into a relationship, but then he realized that she would break his neck if he attempts to do so. It makes him scared thinking about that. While Zhang was getting distracted by his cat, Zhu was thinking about how she needs to figure out a way to keep herself fed, or else she won't feel like she belong in his era. After that, at the start of December, while Zhu and his friends were having dinner, Hao asked him about the whereabouts of Jiang. Zhu then tells him a made-up story of how she had nowhere to go, so he brought her home to be his girlfriend. Hearing that, Wang gets shocked and asked if it's the normal procedure, and Zhu said it's normal if both parties are willing. Hao asked him why he introduced her as his cousin before, and Zhu replied that he was helping to hide her identity because he was afraid that she would be taken to a shelter since she doesn't have an ID. He then makes other excuses, which make Hao believe him for the time being. After that, Zhu tells him to help her with the ID problem and see if he can find a solution. The three of them then chit-chat for a bit and end their meeting with some drinks. While Zhu was getting a ride home from Wang, he asked if he could give Zhang a job that didn't require any ID. Wang replied that it's easy and all she had to do was give him a heads up. Zhu then tells him that the main reason for getting her a job is to build a foundation before applying for ID since her background was bleak. Wang asked if he meant to fabricate her working time for two years and then tells him that he can count on him to make that happen. After that, Zhu returns home and asks if she had eaten anything. Jiang replied she had and tells him that she left some for him in the kitchen. He was happy since she learned to leave food for others and tells her that he will eat it later. While he was checking on his cat, Jiang closes in on him and starts sniffing. She said that he went drinking and even went to a brothel. Zhu gets surprised to hear it and asked what prompted her to say that. While imagining him doing naughty stuff, she tells him that there was a fragrance coming off his body. He smells his jacket and thought that it must have come from sitting inside Wang's car. He tells her that brothel and prostitution are illegal in their era so she doesn't have to worry about him selling her off. She gets surprised and said that his world had many rules and regulations. He then tells her to not think that his world is safe, since some crooks are always around to sell someone's liver or kidney, which goes beyond selling one's body. After that, she imagines getting her body tied up and thought she was fortunate that Zhu didn't decide to harvest her organs to sell. He asked if she realizes that she is getting too relaxed and said that it's a good thing to have a basic level of wariness. She wasn't listening, since she's too scared, which made him wonder what she is thinking. He then gets up and walks towards the kitchen to see what Zhang left for him. He sees the plate and thought that it looked great. 
He was getting happy while thinking how great it felt having someone to leave food for him at home. After finishing his eating, he washes the dishes and comes back to the living room. He walks past her and sits on the sofa. While sitting, he was thinking about how the more he looks at her, the more he wants to give her a hug. He asked what she thinks of his dad after meeting him, and she replied that she doesn't know. He tells her how his dad is stubborn and how he is envious to see others' dads having a meal or going for a stroll together. He tells her how his dad never hugged him since he was young and how he would often wish for just a hug. He said that it's an unreasonable request while making a sad face and asked if she could give him a hug and let him experience what it felt like. At that moment, Jiang was wondering how she suddenly got involved in that. Zhu then tells her to forget it since she's not his father and also added that even though he just wanted to know what a hug feel like, it's fine if she doesn't want to. Jiang looks at him and starts to feel guilty. She then clenches her fist and said that she will help him with a minor thing like that. She offers him a hug and asked if he meant something like that. Immediately after that, Zhu grabs her shoulder and gives her a hug. Jiang starts to panic at the sudden hug, but she then calms down and grabs his cloth while hugging him. She asked if it's enough, but Zhu replied that he wants to hug a little more. While they were hugging, Jiang was thinking that she's just letting him experience a hug and that her conscience is clear. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that her whole body feels warm and her hair has a faint smell of shampoo. If he isn't afraid of scaring her, he would want to hug her even tighter. She again asked if he's done, so Zhu lets her go. He said that he now knows what a hug feels like and thanked her. While blushing, she replies that there's no need for thanks, since it was a piece of cake for her. He stands up, saying he's feeling giddy from alcohol, so he will take a shower first. After he left for the shower, she was thinking that Zhu isn't as relaxed as he seems on the outside usually. The next morning, while Jiang was practicing her martial arts, Zhu records a video of her practicing it. When Jiang notices him, they both say their morning greetings to each other. Zhu asked if the martial arts works on her health and vitality, so she tells him to look at just how she is stronger compared to him. Zhu then searched for martial arts practice on the internet and starts to think of something. He calls her and looks at her with glimmering eyes. He then gets down on his knees and said that he wants to learn martial arts. She gets shocked and wondered what is happening. He said that he feels that martial arts is an important tradition and that it would be a pity if it is lost to time. He added that he will practice earnestly and asked if his stance is correct. Ten minutes later, he gets tired and falls from exhaustion. She then tells him to continue and explained how martial arts is all about practice and perseverance. Zhu replied that he can't continue and he won't dare to dream of it anymore. He also mentioned how he just wanted to strengthen his body, so Jiang said that she will teach him some techniques if he can continue that stance for an hour. Hearing that, he gets excited and asked if he would be able to practice those techniques half-naked in the snow, but Jiang gets confused and asked why would he want to do that since it is cold. After some time, snowfall begins in their area, and it was also the day Zhu started to take martial arts seriously. They both get out of their apartment and Jiang starts sliding on the ice, saying that it is slippery. While asking if it is fun, Zhu was thinking how Jiang was cold to others at first, and now she is full of life. She then slides around for a bit and said, it's very fun. Zhu said that she should continue it later since their ride is waiting. While they were inside the car, she was thinking that the driver seemed relaxed and he didn't have to endure the cold, since all he had to do is turn the steering wheel. She asked Zhu if she could be a driver, but he tells her that he alone won't be able to teach her how to drive, since it required her to learn many things, and it would be troublesome if she accidentally kills somebody. She asked why isn't he driving a car, even though he knows how to, and he said it's because he is poor. After they get out of the car, he tells her to act normal around his parents and tells her to remember the role that he made up. While they were walking towards his parents' house, Zhu notices someone familiar. He then calls his uncle Kin and tells Jiang to hold his hand. She holds his sleeves while thinking that it's all a pretend play and her conscience is clear. His uncle asked why is he there and Zhu replied that he is taking his girlfriend to meet his parents. Zhu then introduces Hao's father to Jiang and she greets him. Zhu looks at the dog he was with and asked when he got a dog. His uncle said that it has been a couple of months and people call him Tyrant. 
After that, he tells Zhu to come over to him and whispers about teaching how to make a girlfriend since he hasn't dated anyone before. Zhu then cooks up a plan and tells him that an arranged marriage would be suitable for Hao since he is too honest. After that, he tells his uncle to have a nice stroll and said that they will be going first. While leaving, he was fantasizing about how good he is to help his friend with his life's biggest problem. He then tells her how there is a saying about not stop acting, even after the play is over and asked if she understands. He gives her an example of how it is normal for a couple to hold hands and tells her not to be nervous when his mom asks her a hard question. Judging by her reaction, Zhu knew that she didn't get what he told her, so he starts a short lesson for her. He then gives her an example of how giving a detailed answer instead of a short one would be better. She gets confused and asked, what is the difference? He replied that giving a short answer won't make his mom happy, but giving her a detailed answer will make her seem more sincere. He then starts the second lesson and asked, what should she do in case his mom asks what she was doing these days? After that, he explains how instead of saying that she play games, she should say that she is working on her own things. He also tells her that if his mom asks what kind of things she does, then she should reply the things that she does on her own. After that, when he asked if she understood, she replies by saying roughly, but in reality she was clueless. He then tells her that she just has to be flexible and play the part of a girlfriend. They arrive at Zhu's parents' house and his mom comes to greet them. He introduces her as his girlfriend and said that he brought Jiang to meet her. He introduces his mom to Jiang, and she greeted her. His mom then invites them inside while thinking that Jiang looked even prettier than in the photos. Zhu tells her to follow him and drags her inside. While he was helping her take off her jacket, his dad comes out of the room and looks at them cluelessly. Zhu then noticed him and tells him that he brought her to meet him today. His dad stares at him intensely while responding to him. While they were putting on their jackets, he was thinking about how they even had matching sweaters. Zhu then looks behind and starts grinning. His dad asks what he is happy about, and he replied that he is happy because he has a girlfriend. Zhu was thinking how his dad dedicated his whole life to historical research, yet he couldn't recognize an ancient person from a thousand years ago in front of him. Also, the fact that she is his fake girlfriend made him feel awesome inside. While they were waiting for dinner, Zhu peels an orange for her and tells her to treat it as her own house while giving her the orange. Zhu then realizes that he forgot to bring some fruits since it was their first time visiting and apologizes, but his dad replied that they had more than enough things at home. After that, his mom tells them that the food is ready. Zhu shows the washroom to Jiang and tells her to wash her hands inside. After she was done washing, Zhu's mom tells her to not be shy and take a seat. Watching them together gave her a sense of comfort, and after that, she ran over to them. Zhu serves her a bowl of rice and gives her a pair of chopsticks for eating. Jiang gets nervous, wondering if they are not having a simple meal since it looked different from what she imagined. Zhu serves her some meat and tells her that his mom's pork ribs are the best. Meanwhile, his mom was getting happy, thinking that they both looks compatible. After a while, they both looked shocked since she was eating her second bowl of rice and thought that she ate more than both of them combined. While Zhu was washing the dishes, his dad tells him to go to his study later. Zhu's mom brings a glass of water for Jiang, but she hesitantly replied that she didn't have to make an effort for her. His mom then sits on the sofa and tells Jiang to sit beside her. She tells her that Zhu shouldn't have kept quiet about having a girlfriend and asked her if they are living together. Jiang didn't understand her question and replied positively since she thought that they are indeed living together. She asked when they met and Jiang replied that they met very early on. And when his mom asks if she is not from Jiangcheng, she suddenly remembers Zhu's lesson from earlier. Jiang replied that she is from somewhere else and not from Jiangcheng. Zhu's mom wondered why she answered the question twice and asked her where she is from. She then confidently replied that she is from the mountains. Meanwhile, Zhu arrives at his dad's study and he asked what his plan is since they are living together. Zhu replied that she is just staying over and they are eating and living together. His dad gets angry, saying that he knows how young people think and asked what would he do if anything unexpected happens. Zhu knew that nothing will happen since she is his fake girlfriend, so he replied that he just have to waive the rent for him and don't have to worry about anything else. His dad said that they can talk about the rent later since he needed to talk about him cohabiting first. 
Zhu then makes a weird face and tells his dad that he has more expertise in that area than him. His dad gets angry and kicks him out of his room, but Zhu couldn't understand why his dad is getting fiercer by the day. Then, he sees Zhang and his mom together and gets afraid, thinking that it will trouble some if his mom keeps questioning her. He tells his mom that they will take their leave since it's getting late. He wears his jacket and while fixing Zhang's hat, he tells his mom that it's good to go home early as it is getting cold outside. After that, they leave the house while saying their goodbyes. After they left, his dad approaches his mom. He asked about Zhang and she replied that she was pretty good. He then asked if she didn't ask about what she does and she tells him that Zhang told her that she is working on her own things. He asked what that meant and she replied the things that she does by herself. After that, his father asked where is she from and she replied that she is from the mountains of Jicheng. He asked about what mountains and she answers that it is over at Jicheng. What they learned about her was complete nonsense, so his dad gets angry thinking how they got a meal, dodged the rent issue, and didn't even manage to ask more about Jiang. He was also getting angry at the thought that he even didn't bring fruit or anything, even though he was visiting with his girlfriend. Meanwhile, Zhu asked if she wants to have some noodles after getting back, but Jiang replied that she is full and her appetite is shrinking. He then tells her it's normal since she is less active and because of using less energy, her appetite is getting small. After that, he looks at her and tells her that she should eat less otherwise she would get fat. Hearing that, she gets afraid and replied that she will eat less. He added that she particularly doesn't have to starve since she is practicing martial arts and tells her that he will buy a scale later to monitor her weight. When Zhang asked what a scale is, he scares her by replying that she will be lifted up like a pig and get measured by attaching weights on the other end. He then tells her that he was joking and meanwhile, he was thinking that she learns fast so he should use the opportunity to tease her. After that, he said that their ride has arrived, but Zhang was angry at him for teasing her. After they went home, Zhang was wondering, when will she be able to pay her debts in full and feed herself after that? She then asked him if there are any other ways to earn money. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that there are countless ways to earn money, but he couldn't think of one that suited Zhang. He replied to her that she continues earning through her game and enjoy herself since life is short. She gets depressed and said that she has nothing. After that, she looks at him and asked if Wintermelon also came to enjoy life as well. He replied that he doesn't know how a cat feels and tells her how he was envious of her since she was not bound by the shackles of society. She asks what he meant by the shackles, but he stops his answer midway and said that she wouldn't understand. She then gets angry and tells him that she wouldn't get it if he doesn't talk about it. He replied that she will understand in the future while going for a shower. Before entering the bathroom, he tells her how he hates two kinds of people, and the first type are those who don't finish what they were saying. She then asked about the second half, but he quickly enters the bathroom and leaves her hanging. Meanwhile, she was exploding from rage and was thinking about how she wanted to pummel him to the ground. After coming out of the bath, Zhu teaches her about how there existed two types of traders and how they monopolize resources and information. To make it simpler for her, he gives an example of how some people in her era would use the advanced information of a disaster to hoard supplies and force families to make them sell whatever they could. Zhang then gets a weird imagination of getting married off and gets angry at the thought. While she was getting angry at him, Zhu tells her that he was joking. He was thinking that she has to learn everything from scratch if she wants to understand what he says. And then he realizes something and tells her to search humanities on the web. She searches about the topic on the internet and gets the definition of humanities. She asked what that was, and Zhu replied that it's the part she was lacking in. He then explained that literature, arts, etc. were the culmination of humanities. He also said that he will find some suitable novels and movies for her to understand easily. She asked if there won't be any information gap between them if she learns about those things. Zhu replies positively and said how she doesn't even get the jokes he makes. After that, he tells her to sleep after showering, but she asked if he doesn't want to take advantage of their information gap to make her his girlfriend. He then starts coughing and shakily muttered how she gets that idea. She replied that she can sense he was guilty, but Zhu says that there is no evidence and tells her to take a shower. After she was gone, he suspected that something is up with her. He then checks the search history and confirms 
that something was really up with her. Jiang usually acted innocent, but it turns out that it was all an act. He was thinking that she deserved an Oscar for her efforts. After some time, Jiang comes out of the bath and asked, why is he making that expression? He replied that there is nothing wrong with his expression while holding his cat. While Jiang was sitting in her room, she was thinking about why Zhu wanted to close the knowledge gap between him and her if he wanted to make her into his girlfriend. She then wonders if she is overthinking it and if Zhu purely wanted to help her. The next morning, Zhu wakes up from bed because of a call from Hao. Hao angrily asked him what he told his dad. Zhu replied he told his dad that Tyrant's name was well chosen, but Hao tells him to not act dumb and asks about the matchmaking. Zhu tells him that his dad got worried for him since he saw him yesterday with his girlfriend. After that, he hangs up the call, saying that his girlfriend is calling him for breakfast. He gets out of the room while feeling great. Jiang noticed him and asked if he woke up early. He then makes a stance and said that he is practicing martial arts to strengthen his body. Jiang then steps in and gives him instructions on correcting his stance. Zhu asked her if there is any easier way to gain strength through castration or dual cultivation. She gets surprised and asked if he wants to castrate himself, but Zhu replied that he wishes to dual cultivate. She gets shy from hearing him say dual cultivation since it meant doing naughty things to gain power. After that, she tells him that there is no such method while looking away. Judging from her expression, he said that it seemed like there is, but she angrily replied that she wouldn't know the method even if it exists. She then clenches her fist and wondered why he is so irritating. Zhu was almost done with his regular martial arts practice. He then rushes toward the bathroom and checks himself in the mirror, thinking that there isn't much change in his body. He was also thinking that he should be the protagonist since he picked up Zhang from the Tang Dynasty. After that, he creates an image of himself being the protagonist and fantasizes about a story where he would fight bad guys and live together in the wilderness. He then realized that he couldn't live in the wilderness since he would still have his parents to worry about. After some time, while Zhu was chilling on the sofa, he looks at Jiang and tells her that she will become nearsighted if she reads books like that. He also mentioned how it'll be better for her if she sits up straight and read. And when she asked what nearsighted means, he replied it meant that she won't be able to see clearly without glasses. He gets up, saying that he remembers having a pair of glasses without prescription. After that, he brings it and tells her to try wearing them. He asked if she remembers his dad wearing those things over his eyes. She wears the glasses while he takes a photo of her. After that, he shows the picture to her, saying that it looked well but she says that it looked weird. He looks at her and saw how beautiful she looks with the glasses. He was wanting to hug her again, so he tries to give the same excuse as before. She gets clueless and asked what's wrong with his father. He then blushes and asked if her second miss let her experience the sensation of hugging others. She replied that they would usually squeeze together during winter days and it was warm and comfortable. Suddenly, his phone starts ringing and he tells her that it's a call from his rich friend Wang. After he receives the call, Wang asked if he's at home at the moment and Zhu replies positively. He tells him that he got a solution to the employment issue that he raised earlier and he is currently outside his home with the necessary documents. After a while, they hear a knocking sound at the door, and Jiang stands up, saying that she will open the door. While Jiang was at the door, Zhu was wondering why she liked looking through the peephole that much. Meanwhile, she was thinking that the invention of the peephole is great since she could stab any bad guy through the door. After that, she saw Wang through the peephole and remembered that he's the rich dude from before. She opens the door and while he was entering the house, saying how cold the temperature is, he looks at the person who opened the door and saw that it is Jiang. He tries to go away, saying that he got the wrong house, but Zhu grabs his shoulder and tells him to come inside. Seeing Jiang, he thought that he really got the wrong house, but Zhu asked if he forgot about his girlfriend. After some time, Wang was feeling comfortable inside his house, since it was cold outside. He said that it's no wonder he hasn't seen him around and asked if he was hiding in his house with his mistress. Zhu tells him to stop joking and asked if the work that he mentioned is reliable. He replied it's reliable, and also tells him that he brought some past records which was easy since it was a product promoter role. He then tells him the details of the work and said that it's the safest option since personnel shifts are around all the time. 
Zhu then gets happy, saying that it's exactly what he wanted. After that, he calls Zhang while she was working on the computer and tells her to sign the contract paper. She gets surprised and asks what is that, but Zhu tells her not to worry about getting sold off and said that it was a document to prove that she was working there for two years. He then writes her name on his phone, in case she didn't know how to write. He shows her name and tells her to copy how it is written, since it's her signature. Wang then gets surprised and asked if she didn't know how to write her name. Zhu closes his eyes and tells him that it was a long story. He explained how he found her after she wandered around for 10 years in the streets. He also tells him how she could only smile while snot dripped from her nose when they first met. Meanwhile, Zhang was getting angry listening to his story, but she knew that she can't hit people. Zhu tells Wang to stay for a meal, since it was hard for him to come over on that snowy day. After that, he tells Zhang to cook some extra food, and she replied that she will. While she was getting ready for cooking, Wang was surprised that they will be having home-cooked food since he thought that they will go out. Wang muttered how he suddenly feels like making a girlfriend who can cook, and Zhu tells him that it's fine as long as he takes care of his health. Wang mentioned that he recently felt like getting a new PC and tells him for helping out with the parts. Zhu replied that he will get a friend to build it as long as he pays for it. After that, Wang looks at his laptop and asked why is the language set to traditional Chinese. Zhu replied that he likes it, but Wang tells him that he has been acting weird recently. After that, Wang calls him amazing and said that he is one of a kind person who knows everything. Zhu replied that poor people like him spend time learning while rich people spend money to buy their time. He then gets confused since he didn't mean to tell him that. Wang drops his orange from shock and asked if he took the wrong medicine that day. He tells him how he would have usually told him to get lost if he said those words and asked if he is a different person. Zhu said that he is the one who took the wrong medicine while wondering why he explained it to him in detail, just like he does to Jiang. He tells him that it's because so much happened in the past half year, but he knew that it's because of raising Jiang, who is from the Tang dynasty. Wang then makes fun of him and asked if taking care of a single girlfriend is tiring for him. Zhu asked if he has seen his love from the star, which was a drama about an alien falling in love with an actress. Wang gets speechless for a second and then he starts laughing and asked if she is an alien. Zhu then roasts him, saying that it would be futile to explain it to him since his taste for enjoying shows is different. Zhu then tells him to wait while he will check if his girlfriend needs any help. While he was on his way to the kitchen, he sees Zhang working and gets captivated by her. After that, he tells her that she looks pretty while thinking that she is a wife material. Zhang gets flustered from hearing him say that and calls him a pervert. Zhu gets scared to see her kitchen blade and leaves, saying that he was just there to look around. While Zhang was cutting the vegetables, she was wondering why he came to compliment her out of the blue and what he wanted to do. After that, when the cooking was done, they start eating. Wang tries her cooking and complimented her, saying that it's good. Zhu gets happy hearing him say that and tells him to eat more. While they were gossiping, Zhang was thinking that it felt like having a guest come over where the husband entertains the guest and the wife cooks. After they were done with their meal, Wang leaves while telling him to take care of his computer matter. After Wang was gone, Zhu saw Zhang gathering the dishes for washing. He said that he will wash the dishes and that she should rest. While taking the dishes away he tells her that he had to talk to her about something. When he was washing the dishes, he tells her how she will no longer be an ancient person who came out of nowhere. He then starts setting up a backstory for her by saying that she was someone who lost both her parents and could only wander around the mountains of Jicheng since young. She was brought to Zhangcheng by a friend when she was 16 to do odd jobs. One day, she met a kind-hearted man by the name of Zhu King and they quickly became friends. While spending time together, they unsurprisingly developed feelings for each other. Hence, with feelings for each other, they became deeply in love. After becoming a couple, Zhu King attempted to find her parents, but their efforts were futile. Under his advice, she moved to his house, where they began cohabitation. After that, he concludes the story and tells her that it will sound more reasonable to others. He also mentioned how it wouldn't make sense for others to see him help her if she weren't his girlfriend. After that, while grabbing her hand, he tells her that it was because of their deep love and asked if she understands. She replied she understands, and then suddenly Zhu fixes her hair. 
he said that once she is accustomed to the modern world, they will go to the officials and tell them how they realized the problem of ID when they made plans for marriage since it was the best story for successfully getting her ID. Jiang then clenches her fist and asked if he was trying to hit on her a while ago. Meanwhile, his heart was beating fast, so she was confirmed that he was making his move on her. Zhu hastily replied that he wasn't hitting on her. He tells her how they were couples and how it's normal for him to fix her hair when it's messy. Jiang then makes a fist and says that they are fake couples so he shouldn't touch her carelessly. Zhu gets scared and tells her to calm her fist. While they were on the sofa, Zhu was thinking that he shouldn't have carelessly touched her. He then gets into deep thought and after a while, he said that he will come clean about it. He tells her that he had an ulterior motive, but she was clueless about it. He confesses how living together under one roof made him fond of her. He then continues by saying how he naturally developed a crush on her and gradually, he came to like her. Jiang then asked if he's saying that he developed a crush on her and Zhu replied he likes her now. She gets embarrassed and asked if he could stop liking her and also tells him that it isn't right. Zhu asked if she is already married to someone previously, but she replied that she wasn't. After that, he tells her that it would be considered as boot licking if he continues to help her after getting rejected, and for that reason he said that he wanted to lick her. Jiang then suddenly pictures one of the strange ads from the search engine and tells him that she will hit him if he tries to touch her. After that, she stands up and said that she will be leaving. She starts to feel guilty about the debt, but Zhu tells her that there is no debts between them anymore. He said that she paid her debt by teaching him martial arts, so she can leave if she wishes. He also mentioned that before leaving, if she teaches him more martial arts, then he will help her rent another place. She asked why he is doing that and he replied that it's because he likes her. He tells her that feelings couldn't be controlled and it wasn't reasonable to say that he can't like her since she is indebted to him. He also tells her that she might not feel the same way, but she can't say that she doesn't like him just because he helped her out. She tries to change the subject, but Zhu said that she might eventually have to live with someone in his era, so he asked if he is excluded from her consideration. She looks at him and replied that she didn't exclude him from her consideration. He asked why she wanted to leave in that case and she replied that it's because he wanted to lick her. Zhu then realizes that she misunderstood his words from before, but it was too late to defend himself. He then tries to explain how by licking her, he meant to treat her nicely since he is still scared of being hit by her. After that, he tells her to sit beside him to make her clear about the licking situation, but she replied that she doesn't want to. She was thinking that something felt off even though what Zhu said made sense. After a while, she was sitting inside her room, wondering if she wished to leave because she had a guilty conscience. She knows that Zhu is clearly her benefactor and she admits that she had thoughts about him that she shouldn't have. Suddenly, she starts to wonder why she thinks that it isn't right. Meanwhile, Zhu gets into deep thought while he was sitting on the sofa. He was wondering if she decided to leave since she was inside her room for the entire afternoon and starts crying. After a while, Jiang comes out of her room and Zhu noticed her. On the other hand, Jiang also noticed him, but she turns around the other way and goes inside the kitchen. Zhu suddenly stands up and gets happy since she decided to stay. He then approaches her and asked if she had figured it out. While washing the tomatoes she said that what he told her before about the difference between indebtedness and liking made sense to her. After that, she turns back and tells him that it's okay for him to have feelings for her, but he isn't allowed to lick her. She also said that he is also not allowed to do things that crosses the line like when he fixed her hair. Zhu replied that he won't do it anymore. After that, she shakily tells him that leaving for good would be a betrayal of his kindness and once she clears her debt, she will talk about it in the future. And while she was cutting the tomatoes, she was getting troubled, since Zhu was still looking at her work. Zhu had some doubts, so he asked if she is able to differentiate between gratitude and like. She couldn't understand what he said, so he explained that if it's all gratitude she feels, then she is mistaking it for like. After that, she gets embarrassed and tells him that she doesn't have any feelings of like. Zhu replied he understands, but judging from her reaction, he knew that she had a guilty conscience. After that, Jiang asked if there is a way to differentiate between the two feelings. Zhu tells her to stay still and said he will perform a test. He also forbids her to do anything until the test is over. After that, he reaches out his hands and suddenly gives her a hug. 
While Zhu was embracing her, she was feeling embarrassed. He then let go of her and tells her that if she likes him, then her heart would be beating really fast just like him. Jiang remains silent for a while, but then she turns around and tells him to leave if he is done with his test. Zhu said that he won't bother her and while leaving, he was thinking that she wouldn't have let him hug her if she didn't have any feelings for him. Meanwhile, Jiang was getting red since her fear is coming true. After some time, Jiang brings him dinner and while she was leaving, Zhu was thinking that the matter about their feelings is secondary and helping her learn about the culture should be the main focus. He knew that she is still lacking in something, that she doesn't know how to smile. She only smiles when she encounters something that she doesn't understand, but she was unable to comprehend the different forms of entertainment around her. For that reason, he thought that she can start learning about it by watching some comedy films. He then tells her that he found a movie for them to watch together. While watching the comedy show, Zhu was laughing to his heart's content, but there was no reaction from Jiang. He thought that she really didn't understand it still, but he knew that it's not easy integrating someone from a thousand years ago into modern society. And he was also thinking that it is also a fact that nobody told him to like her. After that, while Jiang was playing video games, Zhu was thinking that it's very harmonious to have a girl from the Tang Dynasty playing games in his house. He gets up, saying that he's going to bed first and wishes her good night. She then turns back and wishes him back. After he was gone, Jiang was thinking that her feelings are all over the place and she didn't know how to face him. She keeps looking at the time on the computer until it was 11.30 p.m. After that, while Zhu was in deep sleep, she sneaks inside his room. She gets to the side of his bed and looks at him from up close. After looking at his sleeping face for a while, she hurriedly leaves the room. The next morning when they both wake up, Zhu asked if she didn't have a good sleep last night since she looked tired. She then turns around and tells him that she slept a little late last night. After that, when they were done with the breakfast, Zhu tells her to go out for a walk with him to experience the beautiful things in his world. They get outside for a walk and she asked if holding hands is one of the beautiful things. Zhu replied that it is and also tells her that she can feel the rapid heartbeat. After that, when he asks if she could feel it, she gives a cold reply, saying that she doesn't feel it. He then starts ticking her palms and she suddenly gets startled by it. He said he's just giving her a demonstration and tells her to give her hand. While Zhu was holding hands with her, he was thinking that he will give her an experience about dating. After getting on the bus, when Jiang asked where they are going, Zhu tells her a meme. She couldn't understand it, so he tells her that they are going to experience life. After they get off the bus, Jiang was thinking that it feels like she doesn't have to do anything and he will take care of everything. She then starts blushing, thinking that it's her first time feeling something like that. After that, they went to a computer shop and she was getting nervous from riding the escalator. She asked if this place specializes in computers and he replied that she could pretty much buy, sell or repair them there. He entered the shop of his friend, Gao Bo. Gao then gets surprised by him and asked what brought him there. Zhu tells him the details of how he wanted him to build a computer for him within the budget of 20,000 yuan. He writes a number on a note and tells him to call that number and deliver it to the person as soon as he gets done with the work. Gao tells him that it wasn't a problem and after that, Zhu said that he's leaving. Gao asked why he's leaving like that, and Zhu replied that he's bringing his girlfriend around. Gao then looks at them from behind and starts to feel jealous of them. Zhu then tells her to remember the place where they are right now is called Jiangcheng Square. After that, he points at the statues by the trees and crosses the road while telling her the directions they took. They then arrive at a store, and he tells her that it's the place she was selling alcohol two years ago. She couldn't understand what he was trying to say, so Zhu reminds her about the made-up backstory that he told her before. He then asked if she will be able to make her way there alone, and she replied that she remembers the route. She then looks at the store and asked if she can take a look at what is inside. Zhu replied that she can't and tells her to forget about places like that. While they were walking, he asked if she's hungry and told her that he will take her to a BBQ buffet. Inside the BBQ buffet restaurant, Zhu takes a piece of meat and starts grilling it on the cooker. Jiang tells him that she preferred the hot pot buffet since there is no need to look after the meat. Zhu replied that it's fun to eat the same ingredients cooked in different styles and while serving her, he tells her to enjoy the taste of the food instead of thinking about filling her belly. 
He also tells her how eating their favorite dishes in a warm place during winter is also a way to enjoy life just like the hand holding that he mentioned earlier. While grilling the meat, he tells her that once she is warm and full, she can look for mental fulfillment. After they finished eating, Zhu asked if she is full yet. Jiang then blushes and asked if she could still have some cake. Zhu then immediately stands up while saying that he will get it for her. Jiang replied she can get it herself, but Zhu dashes to get it for her. He ends up getting two for her and while she was eating the cake, she was thinking if that was what Zhu meant by fulfillment. Zhu then noticed something in the distance and saw that there are plush prizes for those who don't leave food on their plates. He asked if she wanted one and tells her how she can get one if she finishes everything on her plate. She gets surprised and said that it's a good deal. Meanwhile, Zhu was fantasizing about Jiang with a plush and was thinking that girls will always be attracted to plush even if they are from a thousand years ago. He said that girls like cute things like that and tells her to take one away. She picks an orange teddy bear and tells him that its color reminded her of Wintermelon. After that, they get out of the restaurant and when she asked what is the use of that plush, he replied that she can hug it while sleeping since it's soft. He also tells her that she can think of it as him while hugging it, but she gets angry and starts squeezing the plush. She menacingly replies that it wouldn't be a bad idea to treat it like him. After that, all that was left of Zhu's date plan was to watch a movie with her. He tells her that they should walk their way to the movie theater to save some money and digest some food. He also tells her how rich people's girlfriends would act coy and say that they couldn't walk anymore, but she becomes clueless and asked if they had leg problems. Zhu realizes that she doesn't know what acting coy meant, so he describes it to her by putting an act in front of her. She gets uninterested in his acting, but after finishing it, he tells her that it's something like that. He then asked if she would like to try but she menacingly looks at him while squeezing the teddy bear. Watching that makes him scared, and Zhu backs off. After that, while Zhu was buying tickets for the movie, Jiang asked if they couldn't watch those at home. Zhu replied that it's different since they are on a date. He also mentioned how when they are at home, she always watches the movies in a serious mode, when they were meant to be a relaxing form of entertainment. He tells her that the room where they will watch the movie will be dark, and that she can't make noises while watching. He said he has a serious question and asked if he could hold her hand while watching the movie. Jiang gets confused by what he is asking since she thinks that there is nothing good about holding her rough and ugly hands. After that, she gets shocked because she realizes that the great pervert from her era liked a girl with rough features and had five children with her. She thinks that she was right about him being a pervert since he likes her rough and ugly hands. While punching the bear, she menacingly asked what he said and he shakily replied, it's nothing. He asked her if she wouldn't snap one day and beat him up, but she replied that she won't. She then gets happy all of a sudden and tells him to learn martial arts quickly so that she could spar with him. Zhu replied that there is no need and drag her, saying it's almost time to enter the theater. He buys some popcorn and arrives inside the theater. He said that it is called popcorn and people usually eat that while watching the movie. After a while, the movie begins and while Jiang was getting captivated by the movie, Zhu tries to sneakily grab her hand. She gets startled by the sudden surprise and moves away her hand. Zhu then lowers his voice and asked if they couldn't hold hands for a little bit. Meanwhile, Jiang was thinking about how her hands were full of calluses and not nice to touch. She thinks that he is indeed a pervert and gets weird hallucinations about having five kids. While watching her in that weird state, Zhu was wondering what she was thinking. After the movie was over, they get outside. While walking, she asked if he likes her hand that much. Zhu replied that he does, while thinking how holding hands is the only thing he could do, since she would beat him up if he tries anything funny. Jiang then looks away while blushing, and then she offers her hand, saying that he can hold it. While accepting her offer, he was thinking that it looks like she just experienced a serious internal struggle. While holding hands, he asked if the movie was good, and she replies that it was. He tells her that watching movies is the best way to improve in her current state, since she will be able to widen her horizons. He added that he has been thinking about ways to increase her awareness and her outlook on life. It is a long process, and waiting for her to learn to be independent would take way too long. Therefore, during the process, he might occasionally be less honest with her and tells her to not hit him even if she finds out. 
She gets flustered hearing that, since she didn't know how to answer that question of his. Zhu then asked her if she noticed that she has become more empty-headed recently. When she asks what empty-headed is, he gives her an example by saying that she was really cautious in the past when she first arrived. After some months, she took out her sword less, but secretly kept her guard up near him. And recently, from the day he told her that he likes her, she became like a dummy, who would believe everything that he says. He then tells her that he feels like tricking her into kissing wouldn't be hard to do. Jiang starts feeling embarrassed since she realized that what he told her is true. Zhu explained that it's normal for people who are in love for the first time to behave like that, but she tightly squeezes his hand and said that she is not in love. Zhu then starts crying from the pain of her gripping, so she lets his hand go. He said that he won't rush her and she can admit to it when she feels like it. He also added that it's possible that she is like that not because she likes him but because she is dependent on him, just like she was dependent on her second miss. She then tilts her head downwards and replied that it might be the case. He then tells her to take some time to think about the difference between like and dependency and also added that he will trick her into bed if she continues to be empty-headed. She gets flustered and asked what he meant by tricking her into bed. Zhu replied that he is falling more and more in love with her and someday, in the heat of the moment, he might trick her and eat her up. She then gets flustered and asked why he is telling her that. Zhu said it's because he likes her. They both then looked at each other for a while, and then Zhu tells her to head back while holding hands. While they were inside the bus, Zhang asked if his hand still hurts, and he tells her to use less force the next time they hold hands. After a while, when they reach home, his cat lies in front of him and holds his foot for food. He teases his cat by holding its food and tells it to meow for him. While Wintermelon was eating, he was thinking about how Jiang is currently clueless about anything related to romance. He thinks that she is at the same level as he was in grade 5 and gets reminded of a memory when a girl proposed to him by offering a box of stickers, but he rejects her by saying that he likes the stickers from cereal boxes better. After that, his memory ends and he thought that his past was really traumatic. He was thinking that in order to make Jong understand more about romance, he needed some help from some of the romantic films. After he was done with sorting out the movies, his stomach starts growling. He then noticed the time and saw that it's already 8pm since he was engrossed in his work. He then looks back, wondering what happened to his dinner and where Jong was. After that, he knocks at Jong's door and she opens the door while looking sleepy. He asked if she was sleeping the whole time, and she replied that she slept for a bit. He was worried about her since she looked lifeless and while checking her forehead, he asked if she is sick. She then blushes while saying, she's fine and she will be making dinner now. Her temperature was normal, but judging from how she was holding her stomach, Zhu realized what problem she was facing. He then tells her to rest while dashing toward the kitchen to get her a cup of water. He prepares a glass of hot water for her and tells her to drink it, saying that it helps in her current problem. He asked if she would like to have some noodles and she replied that it's okay. After he was done preparing the noodles, Zhu asks if he should add some garlic and she replied positively. Zhu was happy by the thought that she eats both garlic and onion. After a while, Zhu was telling her that he would take care of the dishes and his phone starts ringing. He picks up the call and Wang tells him that his friend who built a computer for him is awesome, since his current computer is way more powerful than his previous one. While Zhu was on call, Jiang sneakily operates his computer. She then writes on the touchpad and searches on the internet about the difference between feelings of like and dependency. Then, after a couple of snowfalls, the coldest depth of winter arrives. Meanwhile, at Zhu's parents' home, his dad tells his mom to see if Zhu ran out of money when he arrives. At the same time, his mom was thinking about how chatting with Jiang was fun, but she couldn't find out more about her. After a while, Jiang and Zhu arrive at their house and she greets both of his parents. Then, while Jiang was giving them souvenirs, Zhu tells his mom to let Jiang help her and boasts about her cooking. Meanwhile, his dad was getting angry, thinking that Zhu is boasting about his girlfriend again. His mom replied that there is no need for help, so Zhu tells her that they will be watching TV in that case. After a while, Jiang and Zhu were watching TV and eating some fruit, and his dad asked what type of work Jiang does. Before coming to their parents' place, Zhu tells her that they won't be able to dodge their questions like last time, so he teaches her the answer she needs to tell them. 
she gives him a detailed explanation of how she performs information exchange with other users online. His dad gets clueless about what she was saying, and while fixing his glasses, he was thinking how he didn't understand anything she said, but it sounded professional to him. After that, when Zhu tells his dad how hard her work is, his dad asked what she mainly does at work. She then gives him a complicated and detailed answer about her work, and even though his dad didn't understand a thing, it seemed to him like she is capable. From his dad's point of view, it looked to him like she is some kind of a genius. After that, his dad angrily stares at him and tells him to try joining a big company that could sustain him for life. Zhu asked why it had to sustain him for his entire life, so his dad asked about his plans in that case. Zhu replied that he wants to grow his current work into a strong business, and eventually step by step, he will become the CEO of a listed company. His dad gets angry hearing his baseless dream, and as he was about to beat his butt, he realizes that Zhang was still present before him. He then stops his attack, because he believes that what happens in the family should stay in the family. Zhu then tells his dad that everyone has their own fate and asked why couldn't he understand that. Suddenly, something comes to his mind, and he leaves to another room, saying that he remembers his mom bringing a fortune slip for him. He brings the fortune slip and reads his fortune to his dad. He tells his dad that he can't help it, since his destiny isn't to work under a company. After that, while he was taking a photo of the fortune slip, his dad asked why he is doing that. Zhu replied that he is taking a copy of it to have his girlfriend's fortune told the next time they visit since she believes in that stuff. His dad tells him that fortune telling is fake and they wrote something similar to his character. His dad also asked if he forgot how he subjugated him when he was a delinquent. Zhu tells him to stop while saying that he didn't subjugate him, but he changed of his own accord once he grew older. While they were quarreling with each other, Zhu's mom arrives and tells them to stop fighting. She whispers in his dad's ears that it isn't appropriate for him to make a scene in front of Jiang. His dad then gets angry and leaves the room. After he was gone, they both were waiting on the sofa for dinner. Zhu tells her to open her mouth and stuffs a piece of orange in her mouth. He then praises her, saying that she did a good performance to fool his dad. She gets happy from his compliments and tilts her head downwards. Zhu was getting bored so he checks her hand while wondering how she had massive gripping strength despite her hand looking like a normal girl's hand. Meanwhile, Zhang was getting embarrassed and wondered why he likes to play with her hands that much. She takes his hand and tells him that it's her turn to check his hand. While checking it, she was thinking that his hand is bigger than hers and that he has clean fingernails and meaty palms. She then stares more intensely and wonders what is fun about hands. Zhu then startles her by asking if she is able to read palms. She replied that she can't while taking her hands off him. Zhu then goes inside the kitchen and asked his mom if he could bring his girlfriend along when he visits during the new year. His mom gets surprised and asked if she is not going back to her home. Zhu then tells her that he mentioned before how she didn't have a family. His mom asked if he wasn't joking that time and he replied that he wasn't. After that, she finishes cooking and tells him that he can bring her girlfriend along in that case. She also asked if he had enough money to spend since he has a girlfriend now and he replied that they don't have to worry about it. She then tells him to bring out the dishes and he positively responds to her. After they were done with their dinner, and when Zhu and Jiang were telling them that they are heading back, a potato falls from Jiang's pocket which catches his mom and dad's attention. His mom then picks up the potato and asked why she stuffed a potato in her pocket. Zhu makes a story by saying, that she lacked affinity with the earth and for that reason, the potato acted like a talisman. He also tells her that direct dirt would make her clothes dirty so they are using something that is close to the earth. Zhu thought how he couldn't tell them that she is carrying a potato with her in case she gets transported back to her own time. His mom said she will cook potato dishes for her since it will be more effective for her if it's in her stomach. Meanwhile, Jiang was clueless about what they were talking about but after some time, she gets a sudden realization and thanked his mom by bowing before her. Watching her in that state made his mom think that she was also like Jiang when she first met Zhu's grandmother. After saying goodbye, they both left. After they were gone, his mom was thinking how they looked compatible with each other, and she wishes they don't have disagreements with each other in the future. Zhu and Jiang were returning to their apartment from Zhu's parents' house. 
While they were walking, Jiang asked what was the meaning of like. Zhu replied, it means that she'll subconsciously want to get closer to a person, and gives an example of how she would want to buy a delicious cake and make it hers. She then asked, what would someone do if they can't afford it? So Zhu replied, that they will work hard to earn money in order to buy it, and the process of working hard is also a way to give their all. He also added, how wanting to make someone theirs without making the effort doesn't count as like. Even if they are unable to afford something, using underhanded methods to reach their goal is abominable. Zhu said that he doesn't want to deceive her since he likes her and that he will respect any choice she makes. He also added how giving his all without wanting to make her his own would be considered licking her, but then he clarified that it isn't the type of licking she is thinking of. Jiang replied that she feels like he is tricking her with his choice of words while wondering why would he touch her hands all day long if he doesn't want to make her his. Zhu said that it's also another form of like, but she replied that she doesn't have feelings of like. But he said that he was talking about liking someone in general, not anything about her liking him. She angrily turns around and wondered if he like her hands then what she likes about him. She was thinking about how he helps her blow dry her hair, rambles on while answering her questions, helps grill meat for her, and cools noodles for her to eat. She wondered if it was something else and that she likes her hands to be held. She asked him the meaning of love, while Zhu was wondering if she reached enlightenment since she is asking questions like that recently. He answered that love is when two people take their time to understand each other and their hearts become one. She asked what feelings would he have in that case, but he teases her by saying that she will experience it if she kisses him. Then their cab arrives, so he tells her that it's time to head home. They arrived at their apartment, and while Zhu was changing his clothes, he was thinking that he has to finish his video editing before going to bed. After that, while Zhu was working on his laptop, Jiang approaches him and sits near him. She then asked if he ever thought about her suddenly going back to her era one day. Zhu replied that she would become successful as long as she grows potatoes and someday she might become a landlord for her achievements. She then tells him that she was talking about him and asked if liking her would be all for naught in that case. Zhu replied that liking someone is an irrational thing, and he couldn't stop liking her just because she might leave someday. He also asked if there is any conflict between her being able to go back home and him liking her. While fixing her hair, he tells her to enjoy her current moment instead of thinking about the what-ifs. She asked if that is considered tricking her or coercing her. Zhu said that it doesn't count as long as she doesn't hit him and grabs her teddy bear, saying that she can hit it instead if she wants. She then takes the plush and tells him that she would have hit him in the past, but she can no longer tell if what he is saying is true or false. He tells her that she can reject his advances by pinching his hands or cracking his fingers, but she replies that she doesn't want to pinch him. She also mentioned how it even felt like that was pretty good. Zhu explained that it's a feeling of like, or at least, she doesn't hate him since she would be annoyed otherwise. After that, when she asked if he planned all of that from the start, Zhu replied that it wasn't entirely his plan, and that he'll subconsciously try to get close to her since he likes her. He explained how a peacock shows his feathers when it looks for a mate, so just like that, he wants to show off his good parts and gain some recognition from her. She then bashfully tells him that he is shameless and he replied that he is. She tells him that he is a pervert while squeezing the plush and Zhu replied that he is. After that, she gets tired of it and angrily bashes her head toward his stomach. She then leaves the living room and angrily shuts the door of her room. After she was gone, Zhu was thinking that it's fine if she like him, dislike him, or beat him up, but he couldn't understand the meaning behind that headbutt. The next morning, while Jiang was done with her regular martial arts practice, she beats Zhu and tells him to correct his position. While she was instructing him, he was wondering if she is exacting revenge for yesterday. Jiang then happily tells him that she will teach him a martial art technique since he wanted to strengthen his body. But Zhu replied that there is no need since he thinks that maintaining his current stance is more effective than martial arts. She tries to lure him in by saying, that he would be able to hit her and not have to worry about getting hit by her. But Zhu knew that it's a joke since there is no way for him to win against her. Jiang then puts her sword on the ground and tells him to watch her as she performs the move called the Tang Fist. She then demonstrates the move before him, while on the other hand, Zhu gets scared from seeing her strong fist. 
he falls to his knees and said that he will learn. After that, he makes an excuse saying that his stomach is hurting that day, so he asked if they can practice it tomorrow. She agrees to his condition and tells him that she will be preparing breakfast. After a while, when Jiang was inside the washroom, she was thinking that there is a chance Zhu might be gifted in martial arts, and that if he can surpass her, he won't be scared when he wants to do something to her forcibly. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking about how she learned to threaten others. Jiang then suddenly checks on him and tells him not to slack off. After that, while Jiang was grinding in her game, Zhu said that he is heading out and tells her to contact him if anything happens. He then holds her hand and leaves the house while making her mad. After that, Zhu arrives at his friend Wang's house. Wang opens the door and asks why is he there. Zhu then tells him that he knew he would forget about their class reunion and asked if he remembers now. Wang said that he forgot about it and tells him to come inside. While entering, Zhu asked if there are anything rated 18 plus inside his house, but Wang replied there isn't since he broke up with his girlfriend. After that, Wang asked if he didn't see his moments on social media, but Zhu said he doesn't care about that. After Wang finished getting ready, he tells him that his girlfriend was a disaster and that she dumped him for no reason. Zhu asked where his car is since he went there to hitch a ride from him. Wang replied that it got confiscated after he argued with his dad and that currently, he is poor like him. Zhu then tells him to forget it and take the train with him instead. After that, while they were on the train, Zhu noticed that Wang was looking somewhere. He asked where he is looking at and Wang replied that he is looking at the girl with the yellow bag. As he was saying that, she looked like one of his exes. The girl turns back and angrily tells Wang that she really is his ducking ex. Wang tells her that it's a coincidence and he was just saying that she looked familiar, but the girl gets angry and asked what he meant by just familiar. He then notices some paintbrushes in her bag and said he remembers that she can paint. She was a little glad that he remembers it, then Wang shakily asked how she had been. She replied she's good and tells him that he on the other hand doesn't look well. After that, while they were chatting, Zhu gets surprised looking at them acting like a couple even after they broke up. He was feeling lonely, so he wonders what Zhang was doing at home. He then opens an app for chatting with her and sends her a message, conveying how much he likes her. Meanwhile, Zhang was playing game on the laptop, but then she suddenly receives a notification. She sees the message that Zhu sent her and gets embarrassed, thinking why he is saying nonsense again. She is getting angry since his profile picture looked irritating to her. She then picks up her phone and texts him by asking if he wants to have his clothes washed. He replied yes, so she goes into his room, thinking that his clothes might be there. After entering his room, she suddenly notices something on his desk. She picks up her old shoes and wondered why are they in his room. She then takes a closer look and becomes certain that it was her shoes from when she first arrived. She starts to wonder if Zhu liked her slippers alongside her hands. Meanwhile, Zhu was getting happy with Zhang's reply when Wang interrupts him by saying that he will come to their reunion later since he has an urgent matter to take care of. Zhu then arrives at their reunion spot and they asked if Wang wasn't with him. Zhu replied that Wang met his ex-girlfriend on the way so he went to reminisce about the past. His friend then asked what he was up to these days and Zhu replied that he has been holed up at home. After that, some of his friends starts gossiping about how they've been busy with their work all the time and had little free time. Meanwhile, Zhu was feeling out of place and was thinking, they are just noisy. He then goes into a corner and while leaning on the wall, he was thinking that it's boring and he misses Jiang. After they were done eating, one of his friends asked why he looked moody so he replied that it's because he is tired of the recent events. He gets invited to karaoke, but he refuses the offer, saying that he needs to sober up. Zhu saw all of his friends enjoying themselves and wondered why are they all making that farce. Then, while leaving the place, he wondered why he liked those types of gatherings in the past. After coming out of the building, he was thinking about how he has been unknowingly influenced by Jiang. She was like a meteor to him, who smashed his old life to smithereens. He then suddenly gets a call from Wang, and as he picks it up, Wang tells him to save him while crying. Half an hour later, Zhu arrives at the destination where Wang was at. Wang opens the door half-naked and tells him that he has been waiting for him. Zhu asks what happened and if he has been tricked by his ex-girlfriend. Wang tells his story of how he wanted to rekindle an old flame, 
but she insisted he take a shower first. And when he was out of the bath, his clothes were gone except for his phone and wallet. Zhu asked if that was all while Wang was getting furious because of her. While Wang was putting on the clothes that Zhu brought for him, he invites Zhu to go to the karaoke with him. Zhu replied, he can go by himself since he won't be going. He said how he doesn't like noisy places since for the past half a year. After that, when Wang insists that he come, Zhu replied that he really isn't interested and also added that from now on, they can occasionally have meals with those who are close to them. He was thinking how partying and wasting money would be a waste since he could use it on buying pork ribs and let Jiang cook for him instead. Zhu then tells Wang to go ahead while he will stay there to enjoy the quiet environment. Wang then leaves while telling him to sober up and that he can use the room until afternoon. After Wang left, Zhu was thinking that living his days grounded and having another person around is different from partying all day. Although he has been constantly saying that he wants to trick Zhang into becoming his wife, he is not sure if he is really prepared for that. He was wondering how the word marriage surprisingly carried a hefty amount of weight behind it. After that, he returns home and while Zhang was keeping him steady, he was singing a song while drunk. Meanwhile, Zhang gets annoyed, thinking that he went drinking again. Zhu then grabs Zhang's chin and gets closer while addressing her as a pretty little lady. She pushed him aside and makes him sit on the sofa. She asked how much he drank and he guarantees her that he isn't drunk. He then puts a bag on the table. When she asked what that is, Zhu replied that it's pork ribs and that she can stew them. Zhang then gets happy and tells him that she will make a stew out of it tomorrow. While going to the kitchen, she tells him to go to bed, but he said it's fine and he will be okay after lying there for a bit. Jiang was completing her daily tasks when she suddenly calls Zhu and makes him startled by asking what the golden lotus is. He then quickly dashes by her side and permanently deletes the video file. Jiang was angry about him deleting it, so he tells her that it isn't time for her to watch those types of videos yet. She tells him that he could have told her to not watch it instead of making it disappear. He lies to her by saying that he just hid it for now and he can bring it back later. Zhu sits on the sofa while thinking that it's getting hard to fool Jiang. It becomes nighttime and Jiang looks at Zhu sleeping, so she wondered how he ended up sleeping instead of taking a short rest. After that, she puts a blanket over him and gets embarrassed after thinking about the incident that happened to her earlier. She then touches his chin. But Zhu starts making noises, which makes her startled. She runs towards the kitchen while thinking she should make dinner. After Zhu wakes up, he wonders how he fell asleep. Jiang noticed him wake up and tells him that she made some porridge for him, which she left in the kitchen. Meanwhile, he was getting happy, thinking how not only did she put a blanket on him, but even made him porridge. While he was on his way to the kitchen, he saw her watching a movie. He tells her that the movie she is watching talks about a story from her era and that it will resonate with her. He also mentioned how things will not stay the same as time goes by. Hearing his words, Jiang starts thinking how the times have changed and wonders if the words from her second miss were outdated as well. After some time, while Jiang was taking a bath, Zhu gets to his computer to check the search history since she is acting weird. He then gets shocked after seeing that the search history is empty and wondered when she learned how to clear her search history. Jiang comes out from the bath and tells Zhu that she is done showering. He keeps looking at her as she was going over to the desk to dry her hair. He tells her how he might commit a crime right there if it wasn't for the fact that she could kill him in one punch. She asked what would he have done if she was a weak and powerless girl when they first met. He replied that he would have called the police and had them take her home. She gets surprised and asked if he wouldn't have wanted to do something illegal, but he angrily replied that he is not a criminal. He sighs and thinks about a proverb that he made on his own. While Jiang was drying her hair, he asked what she feel about him. She turns off the hair dryer and replied she doesn't know yet. He said that he expected her to say that she feels nothing. He also asked if her current lifestyle is better than before and she replies that it's great. He mentioned how the life they are leading paled in comparison to others, and once she learns more about the world, she will discover more exciting things and discover that he is just a plain and normal person. There was no response from Jiang, so when he asked if she doesn't have anything to say, she replies by asking what she would have to say. 
he tells her how the life they are leading is just a small episode, and if he somehow managed to trick her into becoming his, then he would be ruining the possibility of her leading a better life. She said, it's because of him that she came this far and asked why he is saying that all of a sudden. He gets up and bashfully replied that he becomes scared once he has deeper thoughts about getting together with her. He tells her he realized that he became more greedy and that there might be consequences if he does something in the heat of the moment. Meanwhile, John was getting flustered since he is looking at her slippers. Zoo makes up an excuse for tricking her into rubbing his belly. She looks back and asked if his belly hurts that much. Zoo replied that it does since she isn't aware of how strong she is. She approaches him and touches his belly asking if it's hurting there. She then starts rubbing his belly while he was thinking that her hand felt soft when she doesn't use it for violence. While she was rubbing his belly, he tells her a saying that all encounters in life are a long overdue reunion. He then describes its meaning by saying that encounters between her and everything was already determined a long time ago. He mentioned how if he could go back to the day they first met, it wouldn't be out of place for him to tell her that she is finally here. He then answered her question from before by saying that if she was a powerless woman, then the outcome would have been vastly different from what they are experiencing now. She then turned around and asked if he is not going to trick her anymore. Zhu gets speechless so she asks if she is too direct. He replied that it isn't about her being direct and that she should erase the word trick from her head. After that, he starts to think that he couldn't let go of this chance to hold her close. He then grabs her shoulder to move her close to him, but he couldn't pull in since she's too strong for him. Zhu starts getting depressed because of not being able to pull her towards him. He then gets up, saying that it's late, so he will be taking a shower. After he was gone, Zhang gets embarrassed, realizing that she should have let him pull her close. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking while showering that he was almost there. He knew that she wouldn't have done any intimate action if she didn't have the slightest bit of interest in him. After he comes out of the bath and asked why is she not going to bed since it's already late, Zhang replied that she'll check something in game before heading to sleep. Zhu walks towards his laptop, thinking that he should do some proper work, since the vibe is all gone. He was thinking of taking the chance to write a review of a movie and practice his film critique skills. Zhu then starts to get annoyed, since Zhang comes behind him to watch what he's doing. She asked what he is doing and he replied, it's a work that helps him earn money and pass his time. She then asked if she could also use it to earn money. To which he replied that she can't since she hasn't received the proper education and because how she can't express herself. He asked what are her thoughts after watching the last film and she replied that the times had changed. He gives her a detailed explanation of movies and how she has to look beyond the surface level to have a better understanding of the characters. He said that it's the reason why he told her to read and watch movies more frequently. He then asked if she likes looking at books and she replied that she might. He makes a pun by telling her to guess who likes looking at her but she was uninterested. Zhu starts blushing and asked if he could hug her. She embarrassingly asked why he wanted to hug her and he replied by telling her to just humor him for a bit. He then takes it as a yes since she wasn't responding and hugs her. Meanwhile, Wintermelon was getting crushed in the middle and while Wintermelon was leaving, Zhu tells her that he was greedy for her. He also tells her how he will become a gentleman who can support a family for her. After that, he moves back and wishes her goodnight while touching her finger. Jiang looks at him from behind as he was leaving and wishes him back while holding her hands on her chest. The next morning, he was sorting out his finances. He had 40,000 yuan saved up since his university days and because of Jiang's sudden arrival, he liquidated a large sum of money from the stock market. His uploaded videos make him 4,000 to 6,000 yuan per month and his film reviews weren't bringing him any views. Looking at his current condition, he was thinking that his dad was right about him wildly living his days. He was thinking about how a person gets lazy as long as they are not hungry. Jiang was becoming a modern person day by day, so he was considering his dad's advice of finding a job rather than living a mediocre life. After that, Jiang approaches him, saying the food is ready and he replied that they should invite his parents for dinner sometimes. She then looks at the desk and asked what those cards are. He replied that these cards are for storing money and gives her a card for temporary use. She asked why she need it as she had her WeChat wallet. But Zhu said it's a different method and links the card to her WeChat wallet. 
Thus, she got a piece of equipment meant for modern people. The next day, while they were getting ready to head out, Wintermelon approaches them and Zoo prepares his leash to take him outside. They then took out Wintermelon for a walk, and while walking, Zoo was thinking how it's already getting New Year since John came. They both then stopped, since Wintermelon wasn't advancing for some reason. She then looks at Wintermelon and asked, what's wrong with him? Zhu then asked Jiang if she remembers when he mentioned how he picked Wintermelon off the streets. Back then, he picked him up by the trash cans around there, so he believes that Wintermelon is wondering if they are going to abandon him at that same place. Jiang then takes Wintermelon in her arms and turns back, saying that they shouldn't go over there. While they were walking, Jiang asked if he likes going around and picking things, so Zhu replied that he only pick things that he likes. Jiang then saw some kids playing before her eyes and starts to think that everything before her eyes is calm and peaceful, it felt as if she is dreaming. Zhu then points his finger at a girl while realizing that she is his neighborhood Auntie Cheng's granddaughter. He calls her by yelling her name, Yan. She noticed Zhu and runs towards him while addressing him as a big brother. Jiang kept staring at them, so he introduced Jiang to Yan. After that, she looks at his cat and asked if it's Wintermelon, since he was slim when she last saw him. Zhu then tells her to follow Wintermelon and eat more, but she angrily replied that she doesn't want to turn into a fatty. He then lends her Wintermelon to play for a bit and watches them while sitting on the bench. Zhu tells Jiang that the neighbors in his area are good and that his auntie Cheng might like to gossip a little, but she is kind-hearted. He also mentioned how when he was young, his auntie Cheng invites him to her house if she saw him waiting outside for his parents. After that, he moved to their new home with his parents and came back to his current apartment when he was in college. He tells her how that area is filled with his childhood memories. She asked if there was any reason to introduce her to Yan. So Zhu replied by asking if she doesn't think that she was cute. Jiang asked if it was his only intention and he replied that he wanted her to know more people. While Jiang was telling him that she thought he had some ulterior motive, Yan interrupted by asking Jiang if she is his girlfriend. Zhu asked if she knows what a girlfriend is at her age, and she replied that she does. When he asks her to describe what it is, she bashfully replied that a girlfriend is a female friend. That makes them surprised. He then starts patting her head, saying she's cute, while Jiang was getting angry, remembering how he told her the same thing before. He tells Yan that she should come to his place for playing with Wintermelon and also with her big sister. She gets happy and replied, she will. After that, he tells Jiang that he is turning into a hand freak, but she didn't know what he meant by that. Zhu explained, it means that he likes hands a lot, but she said that he has been like that from the start. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking about how he only holds hands because of his limited permission, otherwise, he would have let her know what a true pervert is like. After some time, they arrive back home, and while Jiang was instructing him about the Tang Fist move, Zhu was thinking about how he wasn't able to hide from practicing martial arts. After that, they hear a knocking sound at their door. Zhu opened the door, wondering who it is. It was Yan, who tells him that she came to play with his cat. He asked her why she bring her homework along, so she replied that because she gave her grandmother the excuse of coming over to do homework. She then greets Jong and she nervously greets her back. Yan asked about Wintermelon, so Zhu tells her that he's sleeping on the sofa. She grabs Wintermelon while saying, it's time to wake up. While she was playing with Wintermelon, Zhu looks at her homework and gets depressed since she didn't even start it yet. He then tells her that she has to complete her homework with Wintermelon, but she replied that Wintermelon doesn't know how to do it. While the three of them were doing their individual work, Jiang turns around and see that Yan was doing her homework. Zhu tells Jiang to look at Yan's language homework and said that she might be able to solve it. Yan then tells him that she is having some difficulties with some problems and asked for help. While Zhu was tutoring her, Jiang sneaks in from behind and looks at one of her books. She then stares at Zhu while thinking that he is reminding her of the accountant in her village who taught her how to read. She was thinking about how Zhu wouldn't sigh like the accountant and that he's more knowledgeable than him. Zhu then looks at his phone, saying that it's getting late, so he invites Yan to have dinner with them. He tells Jiang to escort Yan home, since it was late, but she gets surprised to hear that. After they were done eating, when it was time for Yan to go home, she tells him that it's just a few floors, so she won't go missing. But Zhu asked if she is not afraid of the dark and tells her to hold on to Jiang's hand. 
After they arrive at Auntie Cheng's apartment, she opens the door, wondering why she was there. Jiang then nervously replied that she came to escort Yan back. She then apologizes to Jiang for troubling her and tells Yan to thank her. Yan makes a big smile and thanks her. After Jiang came back, Zhu tells her that she should shower and go to bed early since they are going to buy some New Year items tomorrow. She asked if they are going out to buy them and he replied by asking if she thought they are going to buy things inside his room. Jiang gets angry hearing his answer and as she was rushing to take a shower, Zhu interrupts her by asking if she wants to have some noodles with pork ribs that he's going to make. She asked if he hasn't had his fill, but he replied that he feels hungry sometimes and feels like eating. After he was done cooking, he tells her to give it a taste and that the broth from pork ribs smelled great. He also takes out the garlic and puts a piece in her bowl. She then starts eating the noodles and after she was finished eating, she tells him that she is still a little hungry. He replied that she will get fat like wintermelon if she eats too much at night, but she said that she is hungry because she had a shower. After that, he tells her to rub her tummy and if it is sticking out, then she isn't hungry. She starts rubbing her tummy and sees that it really was sticking out. She then lies by saying that it isn't sticking out but Zhu replied that he won't believe it unless she lets him feel her tummy. She said that he's making excuses to touch her, but Zhu replied it isn't illegal to have such thoughts. After Zhu was done washing the dishes, he tells her that supper time is over and reminds her to sleep early while going to his room. He then comes back while saying that a full belly leads to impulsive desires and that she shouldn't think about sneaking into his room to do naughty things just because she is full. After he went to his room, Jiang lifts both of her hands in her rage. The next morning, while they were outside, Zhu said that the weather is good today. And while they were walking, they encounter Uncle Zhao, so they both greeted him. Zhu tells him that they are off to get some New Year goods. And when they were leaving, Zhu looks back and tells him to cut down on the cigarettes, but he replied that he is already an old man, so cigarettes are what kept him alive. After a while, they were on their way to shopping. When Zhu looks at a girl's leg and then, he looks at Jiang's. He whispers to Jiang that the girl behind them is wearing nude stockings and asked if she would like to try wearing them. She replied she doesn't since she prefers warmer and thicker clothes and also asked if the girl isn't feeling cold. Zhu replied that she isn't feeling cold because they are actually warm. He said that they will be going to a barber's shop to sort her hair since it's almost the new year. After some time, they both arrive at a barber shop and he tells the stylist that they are there to get their hair done. Jiang gets nervous as the stylist was preparing to cut her hair. She then asks Zhu if she could have the same style as his mom, but he rejects it and instructs the stylist how to trim her hair. While the stylist was trimming her hair, she was trying hard not to dodge the stylist's hand. After her hair was sorted out, Zhu looks at her, thinking that her hair looked neat and that it's better. Jiang asked him where they are headed next, so he replied that they are going to the mall to buy some clothes and shoes for her. After that, suddenly they come across a dog, which makes him scared. He said that they should avoid the dog and go around it, but Jiang asked why should they do that, since she could kill that dog with one punch. He was thinking that he forgot about Jiang being a warrior capable of cold-blooded murder. After that, she approaches the dog, asking why is he afraid of a dog. She intensely stares at the dog and when it was running away, Zhu asked if she used her killing intent on the dog. She replied that she doesn't know about killing intent and that the dog simply ran away because it knows that it can't beat her. Zhu then reminds her again that they are in a world where she didn't have to pick up a sword and just simply enjoy her life. After that, he asked her if she was reminiscing about the blood-filled days from before. She looks at him and said that no one would like to fight with others if every day is peaceful and stable. Zhu muttered, she is right, and they should live their days in peace, but Jiang was feeling that she walked into his trap. After a while, they return home after finishing their shopping. Zhu then tells her to stop looking and help him put up the couplets. While putting the couplets, he said that not putting these couplets outside the door would feel like no one is living in their house. After he was done, he asks her how it looked. She replied, it looks shorter than other ones, and the letters aren't domineering. He then asked if she likes it longer, and she replied, the longer the better. He makes a weird face, saying that he is the best, but Jiang had no idea what he was talking about. While they were placing couplets, they encounter Auntie Chang and Yan. Zhu said it's nice timing, and asked her to take a photo of them with the door. 
She uses his camera and takes several photos of them. She asked if they are ushering New Year there and he replies that they are. She starts to wonder if they are going to get married soon since they are ushering New Year together. She tells them to carry on what they are doing and leaves. They then enter their house and sort out the things they bought. After they were done, Zhu and Jiang take a rest on the sofa. He takes out his phone and while watching their photo and sees Jiang eating some nuts. He asked if he could have some and opened his mouth for her to feed him. She gets annoyed and flicks the nut into his mouth at high speed. He starts to shake in pain even though she controlled her strength when she flicked it. He then shows her a photo of her and she replied that her smile looked silly. Zhu tells her that she is the one who was being serious. He said he will put some filters to make it look better but she had no idea what he was talking about. The next day, Jiang was learning how to make dumplings from his mom since he requested her to teach Jiang. After that, when she asked what they eat usually, Jiang replied that they have three meals a day, which makes her shocked. His mom then starts wondering if Zhu, who usually sleeps till noon, is actually waking up for breakfast. She was thinking about how having a girlfriend really changed him. Meanwhile, Zhu and his dad were eating some nuts when suddenly they hear a knocking sound from the door. Hao then comes in, saying that his station gave him food, so he brought some for them. He then looks at the front and saw that it was Zhu who opened the door for him. While they were interacting, his dad was getting angry, thinking about how he brought food from their station, when his son doesn't even have a job. Zhu said that he heard him having a girlfriend through matchmaking, but he replied he will be leaving. His mom then invites him for staying over for some dumplings, but he said that his dad is also making some at home. He looks over at Jiang and gets shocked to see her at Zhu's parents' house. He then grabs Zhu and takes him to a corner, asking why his girlfriend is making dumplings at his home. But Zhu replied by asking if he has a problem with that. Hao was getting jealous of him, so he shoves an orange slice in his mouth. Hao thought about how Zhu is bringing over his girlfriend, while his own girlfriend isn't even genuine. Zhu then asked if he's leaving and he replied that he should get going since his girlfriend is present there. Hao leaves while requesting him to accompany his dad while he is away at work, and he replied that he will. After some time, while they were eating, Zhu asked her if the dumplings are tasty, and she replied that they are. His mom gets happy while looking at her eating the dumplings, and tells her to eat her fill. She's thinking how initially she thought that Zhu is lying about her past, but now that she looks at her, she wonders what hardships she faced during her life. After they finished eating, his mom was getting happy, thinking how genuine she looked since she ate all the dumplings. But on the other hand, his dad was getting angry, wondering if Zhu brought his girlfriend for free food. After some time, they reached home and Zhu asked Jiang if she learned how to make dumplings. She replied that she is almost there, but she needed a few more practice. He tells her that eating dumplings during the new year is a tradition, just like having mooncakes during the late autumn festival. He also said that one's area affects one's perspective of the world as well. She asked if he's done, but Zhu asked in return if she wants to hear more. Jiang was wondering why he isn't tricking her into hugging him since he usually does that. Meanwhile, he was thinking if she is in awe of his boundless knowledge. After that, Zhu goes to take a shower and while he was showering, Jiang finds a video of kissing, which Zhu uploaded to his social account. She then proceeds to play the video and gets embarrassed by watching it. She was saying out loud that it's very shameless. Zhu comes out of the shower and tells her to take hers as well. She replied that she will shower later and after looking at his lips, she feels embarrassed. Meanwhile, Zhu was clueless, wondering if she liked to watch the news since it was on the screen. She said that she won't wash her hair that day, and Zhu replied then he will do some work in that case. After he was done with his work, he tells her that he going to sleep and wishes her good night. After he was gone, Jiang was thinking that something felt missing since he didn't touch her hands before going to bed. Zhu then comes back and startles her by asking if she is not going to shower. She then blushes and tells him that she will wash her hair. He asked if she needs help with drying her hair but she replies she doesn't. After she was done washing her hair, she sees Zhu waiting for her with the hair dryer. She then sits down and lets him use the hair dryer for her. While he was drying her hair, she asked why is he quiet today. He replied, it's because there is nothing going on, and tells her not to be embarrassed when asking him for something, like drying her hair. That was not what she wanted to hear and believed that he will eventually trick her into something. 
The next day, Jung prepares a fish and starts cooking it, while watching the recipe on her phone. She tells Zhu she feels like she's already a modern person and that she is capable of hiding her true self. He asked what she meant about hiding her true self and wondered if she is planning to leave suddenly. She said she thinks his family is nice and that the four of them together are really nice. Then the next day, Zhu was replacing all the old things with new ones, since the new year was around the corner. After he was done, he thought how it's Zhang's first new year and it's like her getting reborn. He then wondered what she meant by saying she's already a modern person, so now, he wanted to know her search history. After that, Zhang points at the computer and asked, what is that? He replied that the person is a streamer and he earns money by doing it. She asked if she could do it too, but he replied that she can't. She said that she knows since her identity is still insecure. She also mentioned how she did her own research and found that there are fake IDs that she could obtain. Zhu replied that it's illegal and they will do it legally. After that, when she asked if there is any proper way, he replied that the opportunity will eventually come once she is adapted to his world. Zhu then thought how she really grown as a person since in the past she would only listen to him and wouldn't be able to discuss a matter. In the evening, Zhang gets ready for cooking, saying that they will have dumplings for dinner. While she was getting to work, Zhu sneaks in to have a look at her search history, believing that she might have forgotten to clear it. While he was about to look at her history, he feels a cold presence behind him that Zhang caught him, but it was a false alarm since she was still working. He was scared because Zhang left a message in the search history which was meant for him. After that, he asked her how are the dumplings going and she replied that she is still needing them. He offers to help while thinking that it's a false alarm and it is meant for testing him. Zhu then starts mixing the dough and Jiang looks at him while wishing that the life they are having right now continues. The day of the New Year's Eve arrives and while they were on their way to his parents' house, they meet Uncle Kin. He asked if they are on their way to the reunion dinner and Zhu replied they are. He tells Zhu to go on, saying that his parents must be waiting for them. Meanwhile, Zhang looks at Uncle Kin's dog and after he left, Zhu asked if she likes dogs and that they can raise one if she likes. She replied that a dog will consume more food, but Zhu tells her that people raise dogs for their own enjoyment and gives his Uncle Kin as an example. She tells him that they already have wintermelon and he replied she is right. Zhu then starts blushing and gets happy since she mentioned the word, we. After that, they arrive at their parents' house and Zhu asked his dad why didn't they open the box gifted to them by his friend Hao. He then opens the box and finds out that it was passion fruits inside. He offers a piece to his dad, saying it is good for his beauty. He then hands one to his mom and another one to Jiang. All of them eat the fruit and when Zhu asked about the taste, everyone gives a different answer. Judging from their reactions, he thought that it isn't nice and decides to skip eating it. As he was trying to avoid eating the fruit, everyone glares at him with rage. He then starts eating the fruit while thinking that he shouldn't have opened the box. After that, the dinner was ready and his mom calls them for eating. Zhu and his dad opened a bottle of wine and pour a drink. His dad said another year has passed and the new year is a little different since Zhu is also grown up. After that, he finishes his speech and wishes New Year to everyone by cheering with a glass of wine. While eating, his mom brings up a childhood story of Zhu that makes him embarrassed, so he tells his mom to stop bringing it up. But she continues telling the story while Zhang smiles hearing it. After they were done with dinner and cleaning up, Zhu's dad secretly calls him to come over to his room. He goes with his dad and after arriving, Zhu asked why was he so secretive. His dad then gives him a blue box and tells him to open it after he gets home. He asks what it is, but his dad kicks him out of the room, saying that he will know what it is when he open it. Before heading back, they say their goodbyes to their parents. While they were on their way, Zhu tells Jiang that they will go over to his uncle Kin's place for a visit, and that she can practice her conversational skills with him. She replied okay while looking drunk. Zhu was wondering why is she looking slow-witted and if she is drunk from only a half glass of red wine. He said he will check what his dad gave to him. He then finds a condom inside the box while thinking about how his parents didn't know that they are not in that stage yet. Jiang looks at the condom and asked what was it. Zhu replied that it's a balloon and it will be useful in the future. When she asked if it really will be useful, he bashfully replied that it might be. 
They then arrive at their Uncle Kin's house and exchange their New Year's greetings. Zhu suggests he find a partner since Hao couldn't be home frequently due to his duties. Uncle Kin replied that he won't be able to find one and that nobody will be interested in him. Zhu then smooth talks him and he laughs while telling him to stop joking. He then asked Zhang if she is bored accompanying an old man like him, but she said she isn't. He asked when will they be getting married since they are already celebrating New Year's at their parents' house, but Zhu replied that they haven't thought about that yet. When he asks if she is from Jiangcheng, Zhu sends her a signal, and then she replied that she isn't from Jiangcheng but Jicheng. After that, Uncle Kin asked if she came there for studying, but she replied that she came to work. He said she looked young for work, so she replied that she didn't attend school. He tells her that she should let Zhu take care of her in that case. She then makes a gentle smile and replied, yes. After that, Uncle Kin says how time passed fast since Zhu was already about to form a family. Zhu then tells him that it'll be Hao's turn as well since he heard that he started dating. While they were gossiping, Zhang was looking at the TV, and while looking at it, she was thinking that something isn't right, but she couldn't tell what it is. After that, while they were returning from their uncle's house, Zhu asked her if she could feel it. He asked if she could feel the gap between her and modern people, but she asked what was different about her. He then grabs her hand and tells her to find it out herself, instead of having him tell her. While they were holding hands, she starts to think that she likes their current life and that she wants to rely on him. After they return home, Zhu turns on the TV, saying they will still be able to watch the New Year's special show. He then reminds her to wear her new clothes tomorrow, since it was the first day of the New Year. Meanwhile, she was having complicated thoughts about Zhu in her mind. She then aggressively looks at him and leaves the room, but Zhu had no idea what she was thinking. He was wondering why she is going inside the kitchen, and when he asks what she is doing, she comes out of the kitchen with a bottle in her hand and wipes her mouth. He then gets shocked and asked why she drank the cooking wine. She looks at him while drunk and asked if they still had a clear conscience. He replied that it's clear while putting the cooking wine away. Suddenly, John grabs his hand and pushes him to the sofa while getting on top of him. While she was on top of him, she was thinking about how she wanted to rely on him. While the countdown for the new year was being broadcasted on the TV, she gets closer to him for a kiss, and as the countdown for the new year hits ends, Jiang kisses him on his lips. She was actually biting his lips while Zhu was thinking how for the first time in his life, he was feeling helpless. Being pressed down like that, he couldn't even play along with her. After that, Jiang backs off and asked if they had a clear conscience now. He replied, it's no longer clear and asked, how could it be clear when he has been ravaged by her? He was thinking that it was inevitable since they were both running on alcohol in their systems, but he didn't think that he would be the one getting taken advantage of. After that, he tells her to let go, saying that he can teach her how to do those things if she wants. She lets go of him and after that, she hurries back to her room. While Zhu was thinking how he had idea what was up with her, suddenly, he gets confused by seeing something. Jiang brings her shoes and tells him that he can have them if he likes them. He gets confused by it and asked what's the meaning of that. She blushes while wondering what else she could do for him. After that, she tells him that she can teach him how to punch, but Zhu shakily replied that he will learn tomorrow since it's New Year's time. She then gets disappointed while looking at her fists and leaves saying okay. She walks towards her room and wishes him good night. Meanwhile, Zhu was speechless by her behavior and starts to wonder what was that complicated mess. Suddenly, Jiang returns and looks at him from a corner, but Zhu was getting scared, wondering what is up with her again since she just wished him good night. While Jiang was approaching him, he shakily tells her that she will regret it if anything happens after she becomes sober tomorrow. After getting close to him, she takes his hand and tells him that he hasn't touched her hands yet. He gets shocked, wondering if that was all and after touching his hands, Jiang happily goes back to her room. Zhu was thinking about how alcohol is bad news for her and wondered if she will be in shame after waking up tomorrow. He then tightly locks the room getting scared, thinking that she might leave unannounced after she wakes up tomorrow. The next morning, Jiang woke up wearing her new uniform and seemed to be in a good mood. Meanwhile, Zhu looks at her secretively, thinking that everything seemed normal, which was even more weird to him. After that, he approaches her and asked if she remembers what happened last night. She shyly replied that they no longer have a clear conscience. 
As he was about to say something, he realizes that he forgot to take a shower yesterday because he was flustered. He then tells her that she might have misunderstood something and that he will talk about it after he is done showering. He leaves for a shower, but meanwhile, Jiang was getting flustered, thinking how it's all over and that they are going to have five kids. Twenty minutes later, they both sit down in the living room, and Zhu asked why she drank cooking wine last night, and why she forcibly kissed him. She gets flustered and shakily replied that she wants to rely on him. He asked why she gave her shoes to him if she wanted to rely on him. She then looks at him directly and muttered if he didn't like her shoes. He tells her to wait and asked who told her that he likes shoes. She replied, she checked that liking shoes is not some type of illness and that she is okay with not wearing shoes. Zhu gets shocked after hearing her and tells her that she is having a huge misconception about him since he didn't like shoes to begin with. After that, he realizes something so he asked her if she saw him keep her old pair of shoes. She replied, she won't look down on him, but Zhu refrains her to look at him with those eyes and tells her the whole story of how he wanted to earn money by selling her straw shoes. She asks him if he like freshly worn shoes with a shocked expression, but Zhu asked in return what she has been looking at on the internet. She then bashfully tells him that he can keep the shoes if he wants, but he can't sell them to others. He replied, he really doesn't have a thing for shoes and that he won't sell it to others for money either. He then asks her if she really wants to rely on him and if her idea of doing that was pushing him down and biting him. She replied that they won't have clear conscience after a kiss and therefore she is his girlfriend now. He then asked her if she could give him a hug since she is his girlfriend. She slowly closes the gap between them and while Zhu hugs her he was thinking about how he has been waiting for this day for so long. He tells her how his conception of a clear conscience is different than hers and that he wants to be in a romantic relationship with her. She asked if after that is marriage, so he replied that liking her and liking her body is different, and it is the end goal. She said she liked the life she is having right now, and she wants it to be like that forever. Zhu replied he knows, and that he doesn't want a Jiang, who bears children for living with him, but rather a modernized Jiang as a wife. He then kisses her forehead and tells her that he hopes she can learn how to smile. She tries smiling, but he tells her to stop, and it is making him flustered. After that, he grabs her shoulder and said he didn't mean that she can't smile but is not used to smiling. He gives an example of how he smiles when she watches the snow and eats new things. He said that he believes she is aware of what people were smiling at, but she is still unable to smile from the bottom of her heart. She then asked if this was the reason why Uncle Kin didn't talk to her much yesterday. He replied she is from a thousand years ago so she needed to grasp many things and not force herself to do anything just for a stable life. She said she wasn't forcing herself, so Zhu tells her to kiss him again if that was the case. After that, she gives a kiss on the cheeks. He tells her that it's a lot better than before when she was forcing him, but she apologizes and said she will give all her shoes to him. He replied that he doesn't like shoes, but he likes kisses instead. After some time, they go to their uncle Kin's house and Jiang receives a red envelope from him. She accepts the envelope and thanks him with a smile. She could feel how thick it is, and earlier, she received a thick envelope from their parents as well, which made her believe that she will be rich once the festivities are over. As they came out of the house, they encounter Hao outside. Zhu asked if he's done with his shift and he replied he is. Zhu then makes a smug face and shows him that they received envelopes with lovebird designs. He then mocks him by asking, when will he show his girlfriend to his dad, but Hao gets angry and curses him. Hao was thinking, that if Zhu get to know, that his girlfriend is in name only, then he will snitch on him to his dad, so he couldn't let him find out. Hao said, he will be going, while Zhu wishes him a new year. While they were walking, Zhang asked Zhu, if Hao could help with her identity problem, but Zhu replied he can't, since he is still new and didn't have much authority. He also added how it's safer to have more people know her regardless and that it would help with their cause. Jiang replied it's great, so Zhu asked what is great about it. Jiang said that the two of them are working towards a common goal, so it feels fulfilling to her. She then starts singing a song, which makes Zhu surprised. She then looks at him and said that it is all she knows. Zhu then starts looking around while flustered and gives a kiss on her cheeks. He replied that it was already good. But then, Jiang gets flustered and calls him a pervert. On the other side, Hao was eating some dumplings at his house. He
he said that it's fragrant and the dumplings from his house are the best. Meanwhile, his dad was having a conversation with his dog, saying how he didn't neuter him because he wishes him to find a female dog someday so he can give birth. How tells his dad that their dog is a female, but it was obvious to him that his dad was hinting at him. How then goes to Zoo's parents' place to wish them a new year and they tells him how they were talking about him having a hard time as a policeman. Zoo's dad then takes out a red envelope, saying that it's meant for his girlfriend, but he will make an exception this time. He refuses the envelope and tells them that he is too old for receiving it. Zoo's mom then shoves it into his pocket, saying that they wouldn't have given it to him if he didn't have a girlfriend. She then tells him to bring his girlfriend over next time, and he replied he definitely will. Hao was thinking about how he was being nagged by everyone to see his girlfriend, and once he brings her over, he will get nagged for marriage. He leaves while crying, but Zoo's dad couldn't understand what was going on. Zoo's dad asked him if he knew what Zoo has been doing these days. He replied that he uploads videos and tells him to give him his phone for a second. He tells Zoo's dad that it's Zoo's account, but his dad didn't like the name he was using. Hao said he can't use his real name online, and shows him the video options in his account. His mom said that they should watch it, since they didn't know how he earns money. The videos they were watching all contained kissing scenes which makes everyone speechless. His dad then tosses the phone, shouting if he has been doing those nonsensical things all day. On the other hand, Zhu encounters Auntie Cheng while walking, and they both do their New Year greetings. Jiang also greets her and she greets her back, saying that she looks full of energy. Suddenly, Zhu starts sneezing which makes him wonder if someone is talking behind his back and is scheming something. At Auntie Cheng's house, Zhu asked when Yan will return, since Jiang wishes to meet her, to which she replied, Yan will be back soon and they should have kids too, if Jiang likes kids. Zhu laugh it off while saying, she is right, and they will soon send their wedding invitation, while Jiang was looking at him. She called him a pervert again, and then Auntie Cheng asked them, how did the two of them meet, and if it was online dating. Jiang replied, they met each other in Jiangcheng, while Zhu added, that he chased her for whole three years, before tricking her into being his. She replied, it would have been worth it, even if it took five years, and then her husband brings some snacks for them. Zhu tells his uncle Wang that there is no need for this as they are just visiting for a short while. When they return home, Zhu asked Jiang if she knows what online dating is. She replied yes since when she turned on the computer it was right on that web page, so there was no need for her to search for it. She then gave some food to Wintermelon while Zhu wondered if teaching her how to surf the web is a blessing or a curse. But he still thought that she is innocent, she has been led astray. He then gets an idea and tells her that he prefers socks over shoes, especially the long, thin, and black kind with no additional design. She was looking at him and then she turned her head away. Zhu smiled while saying, judging by her reaction, she should know what kind of socks he is referring to. But he gets scared after heard her saying, it's the kind that she saw him looking at on the streets. After some time, while they were having lunch, Zhu swears to God that he will never set his eyes on other girls. He added that he doesn't actually look at other girls much to begin with, but he does take a glance at girls with long legs, it's just human nature. But she calmly said there is nothing wrong with that, and she too likes to look at them sometimes. It's a little brazen, but they still look quite pretty. Zhu said if she finds them pretty, then does she want to wear them as well, while thinking, the warrioress wearing black stockings will be something looking forward to. But then, to his surprise, she said, pretty as in she want to caress them. After a while, Zhu was searching something on the web while thinking, could it be that she just wants to touch some stockings? He looked at her and thought, who wouldn't want to touch them, since it's so smooth and silky, so that's just normal. He then asked her if he should buy two sets of stockings for her and then she can wear them to her heart's content. Jiang replied, she doesn't want to wear them, so Zhu said it's fine while thinking, he will get them first, as she may not want to wear them now, but she might want them in future. He then tells her that he is going to take a shower first and then they can open their red envelopes to see how much money they received today. She then gets flustered and shouted, she doesn't want to, as Zhu asked her, if she wants to shower together, since they can save water that way. She called him shameless and pervert, and tells him to go away. After some time, Zhu take out the envelopes while saying, it's time to start opening them. Zhang eyes sparkled and she gets too happy to find, that they received more than 3,000 yuan. 
she gave the money to Zhu, saying, this is all meant for him, so she can't take it. But Zhu replied, these are all meant for his girlfriend, so who would take it, if not her? He pulled her towards him while saying, they are already girlfriend and boyfriend, so what's hers is his, and what's his is hers. He said, her second miss give her some emergency silver, so she can treat this money as an emergency fund and hide it somewhere, and take it out in times of need. She said in a low voice, but she still owes him a lot of money, she will still has to pay him back. But Zhu said, let's keep the two matter separate. He then went close to her while saying, putting this aside, should he teach her how to kiss? Hearing him say that, Zhang gets too flustered and couldn't even speak. He grabbed her and tells her to close her eyes. He leaned forward and kissed her. She slowly opened her eyes and was enjoying getting kissed by him. But then, her gaze shifted downwards as she saw his hands squeezing her melons. She hides them and asked what is he doing, to which Zhu replied, it was an instinctive action, and let's start from the beginning. But she angrily denied and went to her room. She said, he was trying to make her bear his child. Zhu tried to explain, that this would not lead to childbirth, so come over for a kiss. But she makes a strange face and said, she doesn't want to. She said, she is going to bed and slams the door. After she left, Zhu wondered, if Jiang learned how to kiss. He then shook his head, saying, let's see the reaction garnered by his previous upload first. He opened his account, and saw someone calling him shameless and asking to delete all his content. Zhu looked at the comment and thought, why does the way this person talks, sound so familiar? He then decides to block him, thinking, there is no point in letting this man get to him. At the same time, Zhu's father was doing something on his phone, so his mother asked, if everything is okay. He was checking his phone to see if there are any replies to his comment on that brat's nonsense video. But to his surprise, it says, due to the user's privacy setting, he is unable to view their panel. He was cursing the app for not working, as he's just a middle-aged man, who only knows how to go to a video from the uploader's channel. On day 6 of the new year, Wang Jai and Hao came to meet Zhu. He opened the door and tells them to relax while the food is being prepared. Zhu added that he is inserting the BGM into the video so they can't use the computer for now, but can use the laptop if they want. As Wang Jai was joking with him about inserting, he saw Jiang and gets surprised. He changed what he was saying and said, he seemed to be living well these days, no wonder, he hasn't been meeting with them. After a while, as Zhu and Jiang were working in the kitchen, Wang Jai commented, seeing his bro entering into the next stage of his life is giving him pressure and anxiety. He picked up Winter Melon and asked if what he is saying is right. He then asked how, how did someone who was a deadbeat have a sudden change of heart, but how was in his own world? But Wang Jai shouts in his ear, so how came back to his senses. How then asked Wang Jai if it's possible that Zhu got switched with a clone, as he suspects that the cloning technology gets way more advanced, and Zhu is a test product. Wang Jai gets serious and said, what Hao is saying makes sense, as Zhu was missing for a couple of months before, and only came to a handful of outings. Hao said, clones would usually have some special markings on their body to differentiate them from the real person, so let's pay close attention to any markings. Suddenly, Zhu arrived and asked, what are they two whispering about? He kicked Wang Jai while telling him to move over and let his cat go. At the dinner table, Zhu said, it's New Year, so Zhang made a few of her specialties, so let's drink less and eat more of the food. Zhu then roll up his sleeves while saying, he is feeling a little hot from helping out in the kitchen. But to both Hao and Wang Jai's surprise, he had a mark on his wrist. Wang Jai shouted, oh shit, there really is a mark, which confused Zhu. Zhu gets worried, as he forgot about the bruise from when Zhang pinned him down. Zhu quickly tried to hide the mark, but Hao's police mode activated, and he tells him to not move, and hands up in the air. They both looked at his mark and inspect it thoroughly. Wang Jai smiled and asked Zhu what this is all about. Zhu said it's nothing, and they just got a little too intense when playing around. Wang Jai gets shocked after hearing him say intense. He stepped back a little from Zhu while saying, he didn't expect that Zhu was that kind of a person, but Hao didn't understand what he meant by that. Wang Jai then whispered in his ears that the injuries he got are from masochism. But Zhu angrily tells him to stop spewing nonsense. They both looked at Zhu like he is some kind of scum. But then, Wang Jai smiled and gives him a thumbs up, saying he is totally wild. Zhu makes a strange face while trying to prove his innocence, but to no avail. Back at the dinner table, Wang Jai calls Jiang's sister-in-law and asks for permission to toast a glass with her, thinking, she is such a bold person. But Zhu stopped him and said, Jiang doesn't drink at all. 
He was thinking that there is no way he would dare to let this girl drink again. Wang Jai then asked how about how does it feel to live his dream of being a cop, to which he replied, it's fulfilling every day. Wang Jai said he envies both of them as his days are empty. Zhu is living the high life, has a cat, a companion, he has things to do, and yet has time to spare. But Zhu replied, everyone has their own problems, while thinking, even now, the issue around Jiang's identity is still a huge problem. He looked at Jiang and thought, however, it's all worth the trouble. Jiang then asked Wang Jai if they had known each other for a very long time. He replied, it's been four years in university since he and Zhu are friends, but how and Zhu go back even longer, they met each other in diapers. After hearing university, she asked did he meant back when Zhu had red hair. Wang Jai started laughing, saying he has seen that photo, and revealed it was earlier than that, he thought that he was really stylish, though it's a painful memory. Wang Jai then quickly takes out his phone and said, he will find photos of Zhu, as he has a substantial amount of his dark past. He showed her a photo of Zhu, where a monkey was bullying him. Wang Jai said, Zhu was beaten up by monkey on Erme Mountain, so the next day, he brought along a stick while looking for revenge, and got an even more severe beatdown. And it was then Wang Jai realized that Zhu had some weird hobbies, and Hao also started showing Zhu's photos to Jiang. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking, it's no problem for his own girlfriend to see his dark past, no problem at all. After a while, Wang Jai asked Zhu for his computer friend's contact, as he want to get a few more for the esports tournaments. Zhu tells him his shop address and how dragged Wang Jai outside, saying, they will meet up again when they are free. Wang Jai then makes a signal to Zhu, saying, they don't want to get in their way of a fight anymore. Zhu lost all his strength after thinking, in the eyes of Wang Jai and Hao, he is a masochist who likes getting abused. And in the eyes of Jiang, he is a pervert who likes unwashed shoes. He realized that he no longer has any reputation, as it's a total reputational collapse. After a while, Zhu was thinking that they are already halfway through the New Year festivities, so it's time to seriously think about job-related matters. He once said that he wouldn't chase for likes, wouldn't use clickbait, and wouldn't do low-quality videos. But that is the secret to success, so he is going to take it to the next level. Then the next morning, Zhu was sitting on the couch alone, so Jiang asked if he wants some water. But he stood up and hugged her, saying, he doesn't want water, he just want to hug her. He said, he likes her and the smell of her body, which makes her embarrassed. She asked in a low voice, if her body has a smell. And he replied of course, and all men are lecherous by nature, so they are able to detect the smell of beautiful women. But then he added, that he is a bit different, as he is only lecherous for her, and he asked her for a kiss. She moved her face close to him and then, starts kissing him. She then gets startled, as he grabbed her melons again. She said, can he not always be so concerned with her melons? She then pushed him down while holding his hands. She thought, this position is better as she can stop him from pushing his luck and trying to make her pregnant. Zhu was enjoying her doing it but thought, for the sake of his future, he must not let her form a habit of holding him down. Suddenly, someone knock on the door, so Jiang gets up and said, she will open it. She opened the door and find Yan, who asked her, why is she smiling? Jiang couldn't believe she was smiling, and then, Yan entered the house. She picked up Wintermelon while saying, stop sleeping all day, and come learn with her. As she was playing with Wintermelon, Jiang said, she seemed to have changed. Zhu replied, she certainly did, as she learned how to like a person. After a while, Zhu was teaching Jiang how to read and write, and then, he realized that both his and hers name have 14 strokes. So it's fate. Yan asked, how many strokes does her name have, and he replied, many more than both of them combined. She then asked him, how can she become a superstar and Zhu replied, she will have to sing, dance, and others must like her. He asked her if she can sing, but she replied she can't. He asked if she can dance, to which she said, she can sway her butt. He smiles and tells her that her big sister Jiang knows how to do that too, but Jiang shouted that she doesn't. Then in the evening, Zhu noticed Jiang going towards the bathroom while hiding something from him. Inside the bathroom, she was washing her shoes, when suddenly, he came and asked what she is doing. She tells him that she is washing shoes, so he asked her the reason for that. He said, she gave those shoes to him, so they are his now. But she replied, she will give them back to him, after she washed them. He then smiled evilly while saying, her stockings are going to arrive soon, so he will buy some high heels for her, and then he asked, if she wants the white or the black ones. She replied, she doesn't want any of them, but he ordered them both while ignoring her. 
she thought. He is not content with one pair of shoes and is actually plotting to get new ones. In the second month of spring, Jiang was fishing, while Zhu was doing his martial arts training. She tells him to keep his voice down as he is scaring the fish away. While training, Zhu feels that one fist of his is now capable of punching a bull to a death. But he knows it still is not enough to tame the wild Jiang. He then heard her shouting, she caught another one. She happily showed him the fish and said, they can make fish soup for lunch today. Zhu said, the purpose of learning martial arts is to strengthen your body and to help others. And then, he tried to grab her melons again. After a while, he had a slap mark on his face and he said that she should not use it to oppress others. No matter what, they cannot lose sight of their values. But Zhang was thinking that she wasn't using it to oppress others, she just used it to protect herself. She thought, if this was in the past, she would have broken him into two if those trotters of his were to touch her. Suddenly, Zhu felt a sudden chill as he sensed some killing intent towards him. After a while, they were returning home when Zhu starts feeling thirsty. He then went close to a vending machine to get coke for them. He explained to Jiang that there is a human sitting inside this machine, who dispensed the drinks by pushing it and letting it drop at the bottom. She knows he is lying so she asked if the ATM actually has someone hiding inside too, and that person counts and dispenses money. She was thinking, if Zhu is still able to fool her at this stage, she might as well do nothing, stay home and bear his children. She then saw Zhu making a payment to get their drink. Her eyes sparkled as she asked him if they were to get one of these machines, wouldn't the money they put in it flow into their own pockets? But he explained how she need to buy the drinks to put inside the machine herself, so she said she doesn't want it anymore. Zhu paid the money, but to their shock, the coke gets stuck inside. He tried to shake the machine, wondering why did it get stuck. He couldn't shake it out, so he decides to buy one more so it can knock the other one down. Jiang asked, what if it gets stuck too, but he replied, they aren't that unlucky. He made the payment again, but what happened was a rare occurrence as it got stuck too. His eyes got red in anger, and he pushed the buttons intensely. He buys another one, but it got stuck for the third time. He was on fire while saying, they invested into this, so he is going to destroy this stupid machine. Jiang looks around them to check if it's safe, and then, she kicked the machine and all the cans dropped down. They ran from there at full speed to avoid any trouble. After running afar, she tells Zhu to not worry as she checked that there were no CCTVs around, which shocked Zhu as she learned to check before doing something bad. She said, there is no reason to be that shocked as she learned that a long time ago. While walking, Zhu tells her that if she were to arrive a thousand years later, the earth might not have many people left. It would just be a bunch of robots walking around, she would have an epic battle with them, but then, eventually succumb to exhaustion. He then smiled while saying, once she will got her identity card, they can get on a plane, or maybe a boat, and can see the mega fishes in the ocean. After reaching home, she cooked the fish she caught, and it smells great. She then asked him if they should give the remaining fish to uncle and auntie, but Zhu said, they are too small, so let's leave them for winter melon. Then the next day, Jiang tells Zhu that she exchanged all the materials into gold coins, so how can she sell them? Zhu looked at the gold amount and gets surprised to see such a huge number. He tells her to wait while he will find a channel for her. He was checking the price list while thinking, it's really inspiring, a person from the Tang dynasty earning her first big sum of money after grinding for months. Jiang was happy and said she heard from others that the current price for gold is much more expensive than before, and if she were to sell everything, she can pay him back in full. Zhu replied, not only will she able to pay him back, there is still a substantial amount left over, so she will be able to buy new clothes and shoes for herself. After some time, Zhang asked him if she can get a kiss. Zhu wondered if she wants a kiss to celebrate or something else, but then thought, a kiss is a kiss. He then leaned towards her and starts kissing her. Zhu noticed that Zhang was not pinning him down this time, but then he looked at her hands and asked what she is doing. She said, she is just copying what he wants to do. She thought, it doesn't feel nice touching, so why does Zhu like doing it? She then thanked him for everything and how he was willing to take her in, even after she pointed her sword at him. Zhu replied, her beauty is to blame for that. So she thought, how does such a shallow person exist, as he never pretends to be righteous for once? Zhu said, if the one who was hiding in the corner was her master, with his thick beard, he would have immediately called the cops and got him arrested. She agreed that looks matter, as if he had bushy eyebrows and suspicious eyes, she would have slashed him down, when he knocked over the can of coke. 
she said, they are both lucky in that sense, but still, she wished to thank him. He then tells her to smile more often in the future, as she looks great when she smiles. She said, once she sold her gold, she can use the money to pay for his television, and extra money can be kept as emergency funds. Zhu then decides to tease her a little, and removed one of her socks. She pulled her leg away and asked, why did he take his socks? So Zhu replied, he just wants to take a look. He hold her leg and said, her feet are different from her hands, as there aren't as many calluses there. He thought, her skin is smooth to the touch, and slowly started to have indecent thoughts. He then shook his head, thinking, he need to stop touching. He thought, he will find something to turn his attention to, and then he removed the other sock. He then walk away with the socks and went to the bathroom. She asked him, why did he take her socks away? Zhu replied, he is washing her socks, since he has nothing to do. She said, she can wash it herself, but Zhu ignores her and keep washing it. He said, soap is harmful to her hands, so it's fine for a man like him to do it. He added, he is her boyfriend, so he will do these things for her. Jiang gets embarrassed after hearing him say all that. Then the next day, Zhu's parents came to their house for dinner. He tells them to sit down for a bit, as Jiang is still cooking. He then calls Jiang, saying, his parents have arrived and his mom brought a gift for her. She then comes out of the kitchen and Zhu shows her the gift, saying, his mom brought it for her. Jiang thanks his mom, but she tells her to not worry about it. After that, Jiang finishes her cooking and Zhu's mom gets surprised by how good her cooking skill was. She said that these dishes taste way better than her, and Zhu compliments by saying that her cooking talent is the real deal. He was thinking about how Jiang abandoned her sword for the ladle and has been learning well. After they were done eating, Zhu brings the dishes for washing. While he was washing the dishes, Jiang tells him to leave them and said she will wash them instead. He replied it's fine, and that dish soap is bad for her hands. He added that his mom probably saw the calluses on her hands before, so she brought a hand cream to take care of her hands. She then asks if hands needed to be taken care of, and if swords weren't the only thing that required intensive care. He replied that in modern times, she needs care more than the sword, and that she should store her sword properly. Jiang gets flustered and wondered if he is planning to make her hands smooth like royalty so he can play with them later. Meanwhile, his mom looks around for a bit and tells his dad that she previously thought they were living a simple lifestyle. But after looking at their house, everything looks clean and tidy. She believes that they were compatible and tells him that he should give this house to Zhu when the time comes. His dad replies that he will wait for him to get a job first. After that, while Zhu and Jiang were returning from the kitchen, his dad gets up and said he has something to discuss with him. While he was leaving, he tells Jiang to accompany his mom in the meantime. After they were gone, his mom asks Jiang about what Zhu does all day in the house. She replied that he cuts movies apart and arranges them together, so his mom asks what he does besides those videos. Jiang was thinking about how she couldn't tell her about their martial arts training, since she will think they are mentally ill. She then tells his mom that he uses his computer to look at the casino, and she gets shocked after hearing that. Jiang then corrects herself by saying that it was called the stock market, and his mom replies that it wasn't far from being called a casino either. After that, she grabs Jiang's hand and said she has to watch over him and restrict him from throwing too much money into it. She happily replies that she will do her best to supervise him. Meanwhile, his dad looks at his bed and asked if they are not staying in the same room. Zhu replied that they were not sleeping in the same room just like he previously mentioned. His dad was thinking that a man and a woman are staying, eating, and living under the same roof, so nobody will believe that nothing has happened between them. He then asks if they quarreled, but Zhu repeats that nothing happened between them. His dad then tells him that his mom was telling him to give that house to him after he gets married. Zhu said it's great and asked for the papers, but his dad replies that he rejected the idea. His dad then tells him to give up on doing unrealistic things and be like his friend Gayabo who owns a shop. Zhu replied that the times has changed and that the definition of happiness differs from person to person. He also says that he knows being a video uploader wasn't a stable profession but he wants to try it out because he is still young. He then mentioned that he won't have time to do it after he becomes old and makes his dad speechless. After that, they come out of the room and his dad said, it's time to go back. While they were leaving, his mom said that they didn't have to send them off but Zhu tells them to be careful on their way back. After they were gone, Zhu tells Jiang that his parents was urging him to get married, which makes her flustered. 
He said that her identity problem isn't solved yet, so they can't get a marriage certificate for the time being. Jiang gets relieved since she wants to pay him in full first before they get married. Zhu also mentioned that they even don't own a house since the house they are staying at is leased to him by his dad. He was thinking how previously he thought about living a free and comfortable life, but now he wants a stable life. He said one thing is bothering him and Jiang asked what is it. Zhu said he is confused about whether he should kiss her face or hand. Jiang gets angry while thinking he is doing it again. After that, while they were eating salad, Zhu asked if she ate these often back then, and Jiang replied sometimes. Zhu asked if she is missing her home. She said, it's not that, but went silent. Zhu tells her that he will take her to Gusu once she gets an identity card, but Jiang replied that she already saw it on the web. It's totally different from the Gusu that she remembered, so there is no need for her to visit it. She was thinking that she should cherish the present and let the past go. Zhu then looks at her and said, he'll listen to her. While Zhu is cleaning the dishes, she brings his phone, as Hao was calling him. He then receives the call and asks his reason for calling, so Hao tells him to go to the household registry office for Jiang's ID. Zhu asked if it's easy, but Hao wasn't sure since the checks were pretty strict. Zhu then tells him to meet up to discuss about the matter, and Hao replied that he will get back to him on that. Zhu said that he isn't in a rush, but this confused Hao. Zhu added that they might not even be together for that long, but Hao hangs up, saying hats off to him. After the call, Jiang looks at him menacingly and asked what he meant by that. Zhu replied he was bluffing and that it's too early for her to get registered. She said that she wants to be on the TV, so Zhu asked what she meant by that. Jiang said the one that they can watch on the computer. She said that she could earn money from it and that it could also serve as proof of her existence. Zhu explained that there are both pros and cons to do streaming, and that she could get no viewers. She said that she did some research and wants to give it a shot, but Zhu tells her to let him think about it. He starts writing the pros and cons on a paper to get his thoughts on the matter. Jiang looks at him writing and said that he doesn't seem too willing. Zhu replied, it's true that he is not willing, and asks her perspective on that. She replied that she is playing games all day, so streaming it would be killing two birds with one stone. He suggested to run a business instead, but she replied that opening a store would require capital and a security deposit. He said that he can provide the capital, but she seemed unwilling. She then tells him that if he is not willing, then she will think of something else. He asked if she wouldn't ask about the reason, but she replied that he wouldn't make decisions that would harm her. After that, she grabs his hands and pins him down on the sofa. When he asked what she was trying to do, she replied that she wants to kiss him and then play some games. After their kiss, Zhu said that he would have been very happy if she didn't hold her down. She bashfully answers that he would have started touching her, and Zhu starts cursing his primal instinct. He said that she is skilled in martial arts and he couldn't beat her. He angrily declares he will let her know what it means to be cruel once he gets to a higher level. He then sits down while thinking how he had ulterior motives for some of the actions, and that streaming is the first thing she wanted to do out of her own will. He tells her about the harsh reality of a streamer while getting depressed, thinking how others would simp for her after she becomes a streamer. He gets an imagination of John leaving him after she becomes rich and gets depressed thinking about that. He tells her that she would be led astray, but she replies she knows every line of work is not easy. Zhu agreed that every line of work is tough and asked, what if she leaves one day? She said, it's not going to happen and that the potato is still stored in her clothes. Zhu said he meant about her leaving the place since she is still a human being. Jiang said that she wouldn't leave and asked if her wanting to stream made him think that she might leave. He starts imagining her as a rich person and tells her it might be part of the reason since one would feel insecure when one loves someone. At the bottom of it all, he's afraid that she would be led astray and that she has unknowingly turned into a half-modern person. He asks if she clearly sees the relationship between them, so she replied that they are boyfriend and girlfriend. She continues that they will be married in the future and live their days as partners. He replied that even though they are partners, they won't be able to avoid the friction that comes from living together. He then gives an example of how they have different opinions of her wanting to be a streamer, and that it would be resolved if she listens to it. But if she continues to obey his every order, it would gradually weigh on her heart. Once her ideas get vetoed too many times, she would erupt someday and eventually leave. He tells her that it is what he fears the most. Jiang couldn't understand what he was saying, so she starts trying to understand what he said. 
Since Zhang was clueless, Zhu explained in simple terms that it meant the two of them respects and treat each other equally. Jiang asked if she was being disrespectful to him when she held him down, and he replied she was. She tells him that they are even now, which completely erases Zhu's imaginary version of her. He asked if she doesn't have any opinion on that, and she asked what opinion. He then grabs her hand, saying that respect is the foundation of their relationship and that he doesn't like to be held down. She lets go of his hand and tells him that she is going to play games. Zhu tells her to forget gaming and discusses her moving into his room. She asked, why should she move into his room? And Zhu said, it's normal for couples to live in the same room. But she replied that she doesn't want to get pregnant. He asked why she thinks she will get pregnant. She said that she will get pregnant if they sleep together. Zhu asked her if she knows how children are made, and she replied that they have to sleep together for that. Zhu explained that sleeping together will not make her pregnant, but she shyly tells him that she won't get tricked by him. After some days, the March spring arrives, and Zhang was looking at the price of her game currency. She was watching how the prices were dropping and depressingly says that grinding in game isn't a long time solution. While she was doing her work, Zhu was making a list of works that could be Jiang's future career. He asks if there was anything she would like to do, and she said that she would like to cook. He writes the job cook on his list, but erases it after thinking that it would be hard without an ID. Jiang said that she would make a street food business, but Zhu tells her that it's not simple as she thinks and that she will be chased by inspectors as well. She asks if it's okay as long as she earns money and he replied that it's only enough to keep herself fed but she asks if keeping herself fed isn't enough. Zhu then starts thinking about how his thought process is starting to look like his own father. He then tells her to start making dinner. Zhu was thinking if what she works as is important. He knew that if it is Jiang, she would probably be happy to even work at the construction site. The food gets prepared and while eating, he tells her that she became a half-modern person and that she has the final say in their discussions. Jiang then turns around and tells him that she didn't even think about it. Zhu said there is no rush and that there will surely be something that she likes to do. The next morning, Jiang practices with the sword that Zhu brought for her. After she was done, he asks if it's good to use, and she replied it felt nice. He looks at the previous sword while thinking how she pointed that sword at him before, but now she became a real modern person. He then asked if they should throw the sword away. But she walks up to him and while touching the sword, she tells him that she is a little attached to it. He tells her to forget what he said and that he will store the sword. He then wraps up the sword with cloth and hides it under his bed. He comes out of the room and tells her that he put her sword in his room and that she could take it from there if she misses it. She replied she understands and starts cutting her fingernails. While she was cutting her nails, Zhu approaches her, asking if she needs help in cutting her nails. She gets flustered and said she doesn't want any help. After some time, Zhu returns with a package, so Jiang asked what it was. Zhu replied, it's the clothes that he bought for her before. He opens the box and said that they should check it out, but she gets embarrassed to see a bra. She then immediately covers her bra and tells him that he is not allowed to touch them. She then finds a card, telling them to give a 5-star review and get 20 yuan back. She gets excited by the offer, but Zhu was getting angry at the thought that they would get to watch her, even though he didn't watch her himself. He then explains to her that a review is meant to give a picture of herself wearing the clothes she bought. She gets speechless hearing him say that she needs to wear those clothes. She then angrily throws away the card, but Zhu grabs the card, saying that he wants to do it, and tells her to lend those clothes to him. After some time, she gets a notification, saying that she received 30 yuan. She gets happy seeing 30 yuan appearing in her account, so she asks Zhu how he did it. Zhu replied that he gave some spicy photos of the buyer, and they even gave extra 10 yuan to him for deleting it. She starts laughing and tells him that it's really funny. He then tells her that he will buy some pork and have an extra meal for dinner. While she was getting happy over eating extra food, Zhu looks at her and said that sometimes, raising her feels like raising a daughter and asked if she also got that feeling before but she angrily replies she didn't. After that, he looks at the comments section of his previous video and found that a commenter was writing negative comments. It reminded him of his dad, so he blacklisted him. But the next day, while they were visiting his parents' house, his dad was furious. Zhu asks if he is still angry, but his dad asked why would he be. Zhu said because he blacklisted his account and his dad scolds him for that as it wasn't just one time. 
Su then tells his dad to message him next time, instead of commenting something on his video. His dad asked if he would read his messages, to which Zhu replied, he doesn't read his comments either. Zhu tells him that he would understand it eventually if he watches some videos and tells him to ask anything about what he doesn't understand. He also said he will explain it all to him slowly and tells him not to fall behind on time. His dad goes back to his room to get his phone. After he was gone, Zhu offers help to peel off the apple, but Jiang said she can do it herself. While Zhang was peeling the apple, he takes a photo of her. She noticed that he was taking pictures so she asked him if he is taking pictures because he is afraid that she will suddenly go back one day. Zhu said it's a random picture while he was being fed by her. He said he wants to use these pictures to document her journey into a modern person. He also mentioned that he is still a little worried about her suddenly going back. Zhang looks at him and while blushing, she grabs his hand. Zhu starts advancing toward her, and as they were about to kiss, his dad comes back from his room. They both then immediately move away from each other. After that, his dad tells him he has no idea why people watch his videos. Zhu explained that his videos are called automats, and his dad said that the name alone is indecent. He tells his dad that he shouldn't judge the name and instead understand the background of automats. Meanwhile, Zhang was thinking that Zhu seemed to know everything and that he can explain everything from head to tail. She was thinking about how Zhu's knowledge is more useful than the search engine. Meanwhile, his mom looks at them, thinking that it's a peculiar sight. She was wondering what they talked about in the room previously. After they leave their parents' home, they visit Uncle Kin's place. Kin tells Zhu that he is tired of waiting for Hao to bring his girlfriend home for a visit. He said that he suspects Hao is bluffing, but Zhu tells him that there is nothing to bluff about. Zhu asked if he had found a fake girlfriend, and Kin replied he can't say for sure, since he has learned to be like Zhu. Meanwhile, Hao was working at the station and starts having an ominous feeling. After that, Zhu tells him that he is a good person, and that a girl like Zhang falling for him is a proof of how good he is. Kin asked Zhang what she likes about him and said Zhu is thick-skinned. Zhang thought for a while and said she likes the fact that he is thick-skinned. Zhu was happy, thinking how she was stiff during the new year, but now she learned to crack jokes. Kin tells Zhu that he has no similarities with his dad, but Zhu replied that it's not true as they both like antiques. Kin said that his dad like examining antiques and he likes them because of money. But Zhu said it's not true and while holding Zhang's hand, he tells him that he likes examining antiques too. Meanwhile, Zhang was embarrassed, wondering if he is referring to her. She tightly grabs his hand, and Zhu felt a little pain. Kin asks if something is wrong, and Zhu replied, it's nothing. After that, while they were on their way to home, Zhang tells him that she is not an antique. He asked, what is she if she is not an antique? Zhang said while blushing that she is a state of the art. Zhu starts laughing at her joke and thinks how she is still Zhang, regardless of whether she is an antique or state of the art. He tells her that she can kiss him as a reward for her great performance today. Jiang gets embarrassed while looking around and asked if he is serious about doing it there. She was getting embarrassed, thinking that they are still within the district, and then she ran away while shouting that she doesn't want to. After a while, Zhu was showing her the train station, saying that he will take her to buy a ticket and go exploring. After she gets her ID, she smiles and said okay. He shows her a bookstore and said that they should go take a look. The shopkeeper asks them what they would like to buy, but Zhu replied that they are just going to look around. After that, while he was looking around the store, he tells her to pick some books that she likes to take home. She noticed something and picks a book called It's About Time. Zhu tells her that she won't be able to understand that book, but Zhang replied that she liked the word, time. He thought that it could be used for display and tells her that he will buy it. He picks several books for her to read and pays the bill. While they were outside, Zhu gets exhausted since the weight of those books were heavier than he expected. Zhang said she will carry the books, which makes Zhu blush. She asks where they are going, and he replied that they are going home since it's inconvenient to carry books around. Suddenly, Zhu notices someone in the distance. It was Hao, who was walking with a girl. Hao asked, what are they doing there? And Zhu replied that they are out for a walk. Zhu looks at the girl beside him and asked who she is. Hao introduces her as Liu Jingfang, and as he was hesitantly trying to say something, Liu tells them that she is his girlfriend. Hao said that she is his girlfriend for now, and that it's just a blind date. Zhu introduces himself and Jiang to Hao's girlfriend. 
Zhu invites him to watch a movie, but Hao replied that he doesn't want to get between the two. They then leave, saying that they should get in touch in the future. After they left, Zhang asked why he lied about watching movies and he replied that he just made a random reason. He said that the two of them are acting strange. He thinks that it didn't look like their relationship was fake, but it looked like the girl was pursuing Hao. Zhang said that she didn't find anything strange, but Zhu replied that she doesn't know how. After that, she asked why they are calling themselves Heazi or Kingzi and if she should be called Hezi. He tells her a story of how they thought their names would be powerful if they add Zai after their names. She was relieved, thinking that she won't be called Zhangji or Hezi and that Zhang is better. After they return home, Zhang tells him that she wants to watch a movie. He asked if she wants to watch it at home because the atmosphere in theaters was better. Inside a theater, she feels unsafe and uncomfortable because of dark and immoral people. But inside the house, she feels safe and can freely share thoughts, so she tells him that she wants to watch it at home. Zhu nervously replied he will listen to her while looking at her fists. He tells her that life needs a sense of ceremony and that they can't just live through it carelessly. He also asked if she would answer that she hold up inside her house all day when their son will ask about their date life. She menacingly asked what he meant by son while thinking that he is finally exposing himself, but Zhu tells her that it isn't the main point. Zhu starts the movie and while watching it, Zhang eats some melon seeds. While she was eating the seeds, Zhu lusciously looks at her. She moves her hand, which made him think that she is trying to grab his hand. But then, he thinks that he is overthinking it, since Zhang was just taking her yogurt. After getting her yogurt, as she was about to lick off the cream, he looks at her tongue with a perverted face. After she was done licking, she notices Zhu looking at her and asked if he wants some. But he embarrassingly replied he don't. He kept staring at her, so she was thinking, it's obvious that he wanted some, but he doesn't want to admit it. She angrily tells him that he can have some, so he should stop staring at her. After that, Zhu gets a call from Hao, so he asked why he called him. Hao said that he ran into some trouble, and it is about the lady that he was match made with, and tells Zhu to not tell his parents about it. He tells him the story of how they made through matchmaking, and he was treating her at a restaurant. They had some meals while conversing about his job as a police officer. She finished her meal first so he quickly finished his meal as well. He went into his interactive mode and asked if she's also forced into that matchmaking. She gets confused and asked what he meant by also. He wondered if he got it wrong but she replied that he's right. He said it's a coincidence and sighs, saying that he had another matchmaking session lined up in a couple of days. She said it's annoying and how give her a proposal. Then they worked together to pretend that the matchmaking was a success and acted like a couple. He tells Zhu that he decided to cancel the act after a couple of days, but she refused. Zhu gets confused and asked why she refused. Hao said that she confessed to him when he told her that he didn't want to continue the relationship, but he couldn't figure out why. While they were talking about the matter, Zhang was looking at Zhu's yogurt, thinking that she shouldn't eat it. She starts drooling while looking at it, and after some time, Zhu was done with the call. Zhu asked where his yogurt is, and she replies that she got thirsty after eating too many melon seeds, so she drank another one. He said he put it down because of the call, but Zhang embarrassingly replied that she will buy it for him later. He then grabs her hand and tells her to stick out her tongue, which makes her blush. He said that he wants to see if the yogurt is still there, but she knew that he's trying to trick her. She then forcibly sticks out her tongue. Watching her tongue makes Zhu's heart throb, and then he kissed her. One month later, while their neighborhood aunt was buying clothes from a roadside shop, Zhu and Zhang notices her. He tells her that the clothes looked high class, but she asks if they look good. The shopkeeper comes out and said the shirt suits her. She take the shirts since the weather seemed warm recently. She buys the clothes and Zhu bags it for her. While they were walking, Zhang looks at Zhu for saying something. She said that the shirt in that shop looked cheaper, so they should buy it from that shop. But Zhu rejects her idea and said that he looks good in any outfit since he is a man and handsome at that. But she is different since she is a woman. He said that she would look even better in a nice outfit, so she doesn't have to think of saving his money. Zhu learned how to treat a girl from his dad when he was a little kid. After that, while they were visiting a supermarket, he asked if she has thought of selling vegetables at a place like that. Jiang replied that she had some thoughts before, but after some serious consideration, it didn't seem like it'll suit her. Zhu asks why, and she said that she would lose bargaining with other people. 
She added that if she were to sell vegetables, she would make a loss and also starts thinking about how selling through the internet is a better option. After some time, while they were at home, Zhu finishes his regular martial arts practice. He tells Zhang that he can take on three of himself from last year, but she tells him that he needs to disable two of them first, otherwise it would be a tough battle. She also tells him that he wouldn't be able to avoid a palm strike, but Zhu was concerned that the person would get disabled if he strikes the head. She said that he would be able to break his opponent's neck directly if he is lucky. He then tells her to wait and looks at his hand, thinking that some power had awakened in it. He starts saying random lines, which Zhang couldn't make sense of. After that, he brings a chair and puts two cushions on top of it, but Zhang was clueless. He takes a stance to strike the cushions while thinking that it's time to see the fruits of his labor. He launches his attack, but Zhang and Wintermelon looked uninterested. She asked if there was any meaning behind it, so he replied that he could feel himself getting stronger and asked if she would like to try. After her turn, Zhu returns to normal and tells her that he is going to continue his training. Looking at how she demolished the cushions, Zhu felt humiliated. Meanwhile, Zhang looks at Zhu practicing and wonders when he will be strong enough to force her into doing naughty things. After his training was over, Zhu activates his video uploader breathing technique 8th form and increases his video editing skills. He was thinking how his film critique skills had room for improvement, but he wants to take it slow and do his best for the main video for now. Jiang looks at him while using the computer, so he points a finger at her and sends her a flying kiss. She gets flustered while receiving his flying kiss, while Zhu was thinking how slowly and steadily their relationship will strengthen. After that, while Zhu was working using his laptop, he looks at Jiang reading a book and tells her that it's good to read. When she asks what is good about it, he replied that reading a book makes a person wise and that she will be able to learn a lot more things without his help. He said he is her teacher and she has to respect him, but she gets shocked and asked if teachers and students also get married. The way she said it makes it sound stimulating, but he tells her that it's just a title and gives an example, saying that some girls likes to say their partner, daddy. She immediately drops her books and bashfully asked what kind of kink is that? He replied that it's weird but he wanted to let her know that such a thing existed. She starts wondering why she is talking about that stuff. She said she is going to keep reading, but Zhu was finding her reactions cute. She finishes reading the book and moves close to him. He asks if she is done reading the book and she replied that the book seemed complicated. Zhu understands that she is still not used to it. She asks what he was looking at, so Zhu shows her a video and asked if she is talking about this. He said it's a spin-off journey to the West and that the protagonist is similar to her. Jiang replied that her mouth is not big like hers, but Zhu tells her he meant that they both are similar in violence. She said she never hit anyone before, but Zhu reminds her what she did to the thief. Zhu looks at her as she was close to him, and he could smell her scent. Jiang then gets startled because he asks if he could touch her calf. She looks away and asked why he wanted to touch them, so Zhu said her thighs are fine too. He explains to her that craving for lust is natural and that it's normal between couples. He proposes that they should become siblings instead, but she moves away, saying she doesn't want to. She was thinking about how they kiss several times, and if they become siblings now, then it will be weird. She gives him permission while thinking that it's fine since they often kiss anyway. He then starts touching her legs and said it looks more like a normal relationship now. She asked if he was afraid she would hit him since he always takes her permission before doing anything. Zhu said that it isn't the case, he just wants her consent before doing anything. She asks him if it is tiring dating her, but he replied that he likes her the way she is. He then starts sliding his fingers inside her socks, but Jiang gets embarrassed and tells him to stop touching her like that. He was watching a clip again and again, so Jiang tells him that he already watched that part three times. He said he was thinking that these three lines might hold a deeper meaning, since out of so many things, these three shots and three lines are used. She said it's just three lines and that he is just thinking too much. Zhu said it might be true, but then tells her that thinking a lot is good, and once she develops this habit, she will understand how people think. She still couldn't understand and asked him why. He replied that if she doesn't think independently, then she will become stupid and get tricked into being a wife or having a child but she angrily tells him that she is not stupid. She was thinking about how she saw through his intentions last time and rejected him fiercely. 
He asks her what he likes about her and she replied that he likes her hands and shoes. Zhu said it's just her imagination while squeezing her legs. She was wondering what Zhu likes about her if it wasn't her shoes and hands. She thought how she somehow started liking him and wanted to be deceived by him, so she wonders if she is not smart. She then looks at the time and said she is going for a shower. After she was gone, Wintermelon hops on the sofa. He then starts scratching his legs for attention, but Zhu pushes him away. Zhu was thinking that Wintermelon is delusional to try and compete with Jiang for attention. He was thinking how it would have been fine if he could transform into a cat girl, but then he remembered that Wintermelon is a male. After some time, Jiang comes out of the shower wearing her night dress and Zhu starts looking at her. He tells her to sit for a bit, but she refuses his offer. She knew what he was thinking and that if he touches her legs while in her nightgown, she'll be killed by his frivolity. Zhu takes a peek at her since her cleavage was clearly visible. She wonders where he was looking and gets embarrassed after she realizes it. She calls him a pervert and goes back to her room. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking about how he couldn't focus on work now. He thought about taking a shower to calm down. After washing his face, he was thinking that he needs to practice his punches and that he should never look like his friend Wang Jai. After he was done, he notices that the lights inside Zhang's room were still on, so he wondered if she is still not asleep. He goes to his room and lies on the bed. He starts imagining her in a night dress and thought, how it is a long night. But after that, he didn't want to think about it anymore. Meanwhile, in Zhang's room, she was checking the stockings that Zhu brought for her. She was thinking about how it is slippery and comfortable to the touch. Zhu bought these socks two months ago, but she kept them in her room and never touched them. She then grabs her phone and searches online about how to wear stockings. She sees the instructions on the internet and wears the stockings. After wearing it, she was thinking that it felt silky smooth, just like she thought. It was also comfortable which made her realize why Zhu always wanted her to wear it. Exposing her legs was embarrassing for her, but trying it out inside her room was fine. She was thinking about how Zhu was not also allowed to see it, since it all will be over if he does. The next morning, Jiang was sneakily going to the washroom to wash her stockings, but suddenly she sees Zhu inside the washroom. She calls him which makes him startled, and he hides a cloth behind him. He shakily asked why she get up so early. When she asks what he was washing, Zhu replied that he was washing some socks. He asked what she is doing, and she replied that it's nothing. They both then stare at each other for a while, and then Zhu asked if she has anything else to say. Jiang was thinking that he is acting weird and wondered why he is afraid of someone watching him wash socks. She gets the wrong impression of him wearing stockings like her and waking early to wash them. While she was getting embarrassed, Zhu tells her that he feels like she was thinking something rude. She angrily leaves, saying that she doesn't know anything. After some time, while Zhu was sitting on the sofa, she asks what he was thinking. He said that he is just reminiscing about last night's dream. When she asks what dream he had, he replied that it was very fun stuff. She asks if he was dreaming about becoming a girl and wearing stockings. But he instantly refused while wondering what is going on inside Jiang's head. After some time, while Jiang was making some food, Zhu asked if she wanted to open an online store. She replied that she doesn't want to. He tells her that there is no need to hurry and do what she likes to do. He said he believes that she will be successful in whatever she does, but she replied that she even doesn't believe in herself. He rambles on about her career, saying, it takes a lot of trial and error to find a job that suits her. He gives an example of cats eating fish, dogs eating meat, and that Ultraman fights monsters, and tells her to follow her own nature. She gets confused and asks what was Ultraman. He tries to impersonate Ultraman in front of her, but she was thinking that he was trying to transform into a magical girl. After that, Wintermelon hops into the table and takes a piece of meat that was on the plate. Jiang then puts him down and said that cats can't eat it. Then the next day, Zhu and Jiang find a notice saying, in order to improve the security of the district, they will be installing an access control system. He asked his uncle Zhao if a small and old district like theirs will be implementing access barriers too. He replied yes and it's all because of the burglar that was seen on the CCTV during the ghost incident. Zhu smiled while asking, wouldn't that put him out of job then? But Zhao said he still has to guard the entrance even with a barrier up. He and Zhang then reach their regular training spot near the river. Zhu picks a rock from the ground so he can test his strength. 
He throws the rock and it jumps on the water more than two times. He boasts about his strength, saying that it has increased drastically. Jiang then excitedly said, how about they spar a little then, and he can use the techniques that she has taught him. He imagined a wild Jiang appearing like Pokemon. He calculated that he is on level 5, while she is on level 99, so he decides to run from the battle by saying, he still want to live for more years. She said she will reign in her strength, so Zhu tells her to not move her arms and legs, and then he will reluctantly spar a little with her. Jiang thought, is that even considered sparing, wouldn't it just be a massacre instead? But then she realized that this rascal is just finding an excuse to hug her. She looked away and said, she won't move then, bring it on. Zhu couldn't believe that she agreed and wondered if Jiang really can use her internal energy to send him flying. He excitedly thought, if he can really witness the legendary internal energy in action, being sent flying is a small price to pay. He then took a battle stance while saying, if that's the case, then keep her words and reign in her strength. Jiang looked just how serious he was, so she thought, maybe she was wrong, and he doesn't actually want to hug her. It's been two minutes so she asked why has he not made his move, but Zhu tells her to not talk to him, as he is looking for her weak spot. He finds her weak spot and dashed towards her at full speed. His hand was about to grab her melons, so Jiang thought, this guy is a crook after all. She gets angry and hit him hard with her head. Zhu said she cheated, as she used her head. But Jiang replied she didn't, as she didn't move her arms and legs at all, so it's his loss. She looked down while thinking, it's because his hand was going to touch them. Zhu said, her martial arts skills are far superior, and he has far more to learn, so it's his loss. But then, he said it ended way too fast though, so how about another round? But she can't use her arms, legs, and head, just use her internal energy. But she refused it. She thought, Zhu is trying every trick in the box, just to get a feel in, and said, he is lucky that he met her, because if it was second miss, he would have been on the floor in serious pain. Zhu asks how old is her second miss, but she angrily asked in return, what is he even thinking? He grabbed her face and said, he is just teasing her. He is not thinking of anything, it's just she looks adorable when she is angry. He then tells her that he will teach her to skip stones, as it's pretty fun. She looked away and said, she doesn't think it's fun. He gave a rock to her, so she throws it too and makes it jump several times. He asked if it's fun, even though she enjoyed it, she replied, it's not. They then heard a commotion from nearby, and wondered what is happening. Jiang hides behind Zhu, saying, she can see a police officer over there, but Zhu tells her to not worry, as she didn't commit any crime. He hold her hands and said, let's go and see what is going on. She worriedly asked, what if they decide to run a check on her, but Zhu said, it isn't likely to happen, as they are busy and not on patrol. He continued, that in the past, he was worried that she would make a scene and tell them herself, that she doesn't have an ID, but it's not the case anymore. Jiang agrees with him, but still, she subconsciously would like to stay away from them. They went near the crowd and saw Hao scolding a man. Hao tells the man, he is lucky that the weather isn't as cold right now, otherwise, it would have been hard to rescue him. He asked where the man lives and if he wants them to send him home. But the man replied, there is no need for that and left. Zhu then went near Hao and said, their little Hao needed his hand to be held by older colleagues just a half year ago. But now, he can go on patrol on his own. Hao tells him to stop joking and said, he didn't even enter the water, he just pulled him out. And then he asked Zhu, why are they there? Zhu replied, they are just strolling around, and as there was nothing to do, so they took an interest in the commotion, as it's the favorite pastime of the masses. Hao then tells Zhu to go away, as he doesn't have the time to joke around, he still has to change his boots and get back to work. Zhu asked if he is too busy, and Hao replied, it's been boring, but then he stopped himself, thinking, he nearly blurted it out. After he left, Zhu tells Jiang that they are public servants, and they can find them for any issue, even if it involves catching your pets. They then heard him shouting, who destroyed the tree stem? They have no morals at all. Zhu said it might have been those old men who like to fish, they hate going home empty-handed, so they must have taken it instead. He said, those old men know martial arts too, like wall climbing and flying around and stuff, though the old fishing man this time, was none other than Jiang. Zhu asks if she agrees with him, but she said in anger, she doesn't know. Zhu looked at her while thinking, how never would have thought, that the tree was chopped down by this little lady in a single move. After they returned home, Jiang picked her fishing rod, saying it's a pity that she forgot to take it. He asks if she likes fishing that much, and Jiang replied yes, as they don't have to spend money to get fish, and if she were to snag a big one, she can even sell it. 
she said. She will be able to earn so much money this way, and she even thinks that she can do this for a living. But then, Zhu showed her the video of how the fishermen caught fish nowadays, and how they can catch too many with the help of the net. She gets angry with him, but he tells her not to be, as he was just teasing her, although it was the truth. He then asked her, was the surname of her leader Wang, and she replied, it's not, and why is he asking that? Zhu said near the end of the Tang Dynasty, there was someone from the Salt Gang named Wang Xiaoji. He was a salt smuggler, who gathered a huge force in rebellion. Zhu then asked her, if she and her gang would have rebelled too, but she said, the imperial dynasty was too strong and resistance would have been futile. Zhu heard her saying resistance is futile and thought, this is something that modern people would say, and if she were to head back like this, Lai Longji would be in danger. Jiang then tells him, he said that appetite and lust are only natural was a quote by Confucius, but that's incorrect, it was actually a quote by Gayazi, that's what the web says. Zhu couldn't believe that even an ancient person is able to correct his mistakes, this is the power of the internet. While Zhang was working on the computer, Zhu was imagining her in different dresses, thinking, they are still missing something. And then, he realized what they are missing. He quickly gets up and tells Zhang, he is heading outside, there is no need to cook dinner for tonight, as they will be eating outside. He was in a taxi, thinking, it's going to be summer in a few months, and summer clothes are missing pockets. He reached a store, thinking, when it comes to skirts, there is absolutely no place to keep your things, like your phone and keys. He thought, she still has to keep a potato and corn on her, so he will have to find a suitable bag for her. He likes a bag while thinking, her aura has always been a little serious, and her quietness is atypical for a girl her age, so giving this bag would make her look more cute. After a while, Jiang asked him if he went out to buy this for her. Zhu asks if she likes it, but Jiang asked in return, why didn't he bring her along? After a while, while she was happily looking at her bag, Zhu was thinking how she wouldn't have bared to spend the money. She would rather carry a backpack around and say, it's big enough to store several items, as this small bag price is enough to purchase a few backpacks. He then takes out a lip gloss from his pocket and gives it to her, saying, keep this in the bag too, as a girl's lips should be glossy. He said, even if she doesn't want to put it on, she can still keep it in bag, since it would look weird if her bag didn't contain any feminine products. He also gave her some tissues and sanitary pads, also showed her the two compartments of the bag and said, she can put her corn seeds and potatoes in one of them. He tells her to carry it when they head out in the future, as all the girls carry something like this. Jiang asked if he is going to carry one too, but Zhu said, men only need their trouser pockets to handle it all. He then gets a message from Hao, who invites him and Jiang for dinner. Zhu smiled and tells Jiang to get ready as they are going out for some good food. After some time, they were going to meet Hao, and Zhu asked Jiang to give her bag for a second. Jiang asks why is he carrying her bag, and Zhu replied, a man should carry a lady's bag for her. She asked him if he is looking down on her, so Zhu returned the bag. She saw how experienced Zhu really is, so she asked if he had a girlfriend before and he replied positively. He tried to skip the topic, but Jiang asked him to tell her everything about his past life. He tried to escape, but she smiled and said, she is talking about his girlfriend, but Zhu said, that's called an ex-girlfriend. She asked if she is his next girlfriend then, and Zhu said she is considered neither, she is his current girlfriend. Zhu thought something is wrong, as it's not Jiang's style to find faults out of nothing and get angry. She asked, why did they get married, and if a boy isn't supposed to marry his girlfriend? Zhu pulled her towards him and said, it's possible for a couple to break up and added, he was young and dumb back then, and it was a decision based on his hormones. He explained, dating is far from the stage of marriage, it is just meant for you to test the waters. If the couple feels they are incompatible, then they should just break up. Jiang asked if breaking up meant that the two people are no longer related, and Zhu replied of course, why would they still be related if they break up? She makes an angered expression, thinking, from his tone of voice, it seems like breaking up is a very common and normal thing to happen. If the two people were to break up, they will no longer be related, and will no longer meet up or contact each other. She was shy and angry at the same time, while thinking of the things that they have done together. She asked, what is considered incompatible, and Zhu said, it's hard to explain, but guaranteed that the two of them won't ever break up. She said, from what he just said, it seems very common for couples to break up, but she has always thought, that a girlfriend is like a fiancé, and that's why. 
she was hesitant to say, so Zhu completes, that's why she decided to kiss him. Jiang was angry, thinking, everything she read on the internet is a lie, as it's possible for a girlfriend and boyfriend to no longer be related in the future. Zhu then hugs her and tells her to calm down, not let her imagination run wild, and they will never break up, as she is special and different from other people. She asked what's different about her, and Zhu said, even before he talked about that, she never thought that breaking up is possible, so this is different enough from others. Even though she smiled and asked, what about him then? In reality, she was angry, thinking she would never hug someone else, even the thought of it sickens her, but this guy named Zhu King seems well-practiced. Zhu saw her expression and realized that she is worried about him breaking up with her. He hugs her and said he will never break up with her, as he knew from the beginning that she is unique, and he had thought about the aftermath before even hitting on her. He knows that if he break up with her, then she will smack him to death, this is the price for liking her. He added that their relationship is not ordinary, they are from two different periods, so there is no use talking about it right now. He said in the future once she will have a modern person mindset, then not him, but she can break up with him. Currently, their relationship is one where he takes her in, so once she is independent enough, she can make her decision on either leave or stay, and if she choose to leave, he will let her go. He said, he is now looking at her as though she is an ancient person, and he will interact with her as he would with any modern person. If she chooses to leave when the time comes, that would mean their feelings were not strong enough, so there will be no point in forcing it. He is hitting on her now, because she has not turned into a modern person yet, and Jiang asked if that's considered taking advantage of her. Zhu replied positively and added, if she look back at his actions, she will know that his intentions were not pure, and before she wise up, he will chase her with all his might. Jiang thought she doesn't understand the meaning of chasing her, this guy has always been tricking her, and yet he is saying that out loud with righteousness. She said he is not a good person, and then she kissed him in the open. She tells him his ex-girlfriend broke up because she can't beat him up, but if he dare to break up with her, then she really will beat him to death. After a while, when they were in the cab, Zhu was thinking of how Jiang will not use her martial arts on him. Even if she is angry, she will not violate this rule. Then after some time, they reach the location and Hao noticed them coming while holding hands. He tells Zhu that Liu isn't there yet, so they can order some drinks first. Zhu makes fun of him by saying, he should call her Liu Liu now, there is no need to sound so distant. Hao replied it's gross, and they are just having a simple meal and seeing how things go. Hao was thinking that it's strange that she developed feelings for him while they were pretending to be a couple. That's why he asked Zhu to come along, because his eyes are more vicious than him. After some time, Liu arrived and apologized for being late. Jiang thought her bag is too small, as it will only fit two large potatoes at most. Hao then introduced Zhu and Jiang to Liu. While Liu was ordering, Zhu was staring at her to see if he can find anything suspicious. Jiang noticed him staring at another girl and reminds him that he promised. Zhu thought, how can he explain it to her that he is doing it for Hao? After a while, Zhu was thinking about how a lady like Liu is not compatible with Hao. According to Zhu, she might be more suitable for someone like Wang Chai. He now understands what Hao meant when he said something felt off. The more extravagant she makes herself look, the more it makes Hao seem like a gold digger. Even though Hao put effort into dressing up, their outfits are of two different leagues. And if she is still dressing up like this, it makes others think that Hao is a gold digger, and shows that she doesn't think of Hao at all. Hao commented how he brought her to eat Bray's chicken the very first time that they met through matchmaking. Zhu also remembers the time when he and Jiang first came there. After some time, the food they ordered arrived. Zhu picked up the pork and asked Hao if the braised pork is good. Hao understand what he meant and replied, it's not bad. Zhu continued that there are both fatty and lean kind of meat, and Hao added, it's best for the braised pork to be half lean and half skin on it. They both then smiled strangely, like they received some kind of satisfaction. Both Liu and Jiang get confused after seeing their expressions, and asked why they are smiling. Zhu said, you guys won't understand, and was happily enjoying the meal. But Liu seriously asked if they were talking about the man's thing. He quickly refused and said, he is referring to the joys of reading. Hao revealed, the two of them used to read novels under a blanket with a flashlight. They crave for food until next day because of the midnight. 
Then the next day, they would climb out of the school to buy braised pork and stir-fried livers from the stalls outside. Liu shockingly said, the two of them under the blanket. Zhu explained, back then, the school was really strict about reading novels, and they had to sneakily read them. Liu looks at Jiang and said, they girls like to read romance novels, who even read books about food, right? Jiang misunderstood and said, she read the introduction to Mao Zedong's school of thought at night, and Liu thought, all of them are a little abnormal. Zhu then asked the waiter to bring some extra rice. How shockingly watched him ordering three extra bowls of rice. He said, they ordered so much food, and he still want rice, so is he going through puberty again? Zhu replied positively and added, it's time for their bodies to grow, so they should eat more too. He offered some rice to Hao, but he refused, as he was already full. He then watches Zhu and Jiang demolishing the rice and thought, they really are a couple. After dinner, Jiang noticed Liu fixing her lipstick, so she too opened her bag, take out her lipstick and put it on her lips. As Zhu was looking at Jiang, someone sent him a message. He checked the phone and saw, the message is from Hao, who said, his girlfriend isn't really a high school student, right? Zhu replied she is 19, and Hao said, she looks very demure. Zhu thought with a strange expression, just not too long ago, he was warned that he would be beaten to death if he were to break up. After dinner, both groups said goodbye and prepared to leave. Zhu said he is a little bloated, so let's take a walk to help digest food, and Jiang replied sure. As they were walking, Zhu remembered something and asked, didn't she was chasing a thief when she was suddenly transported there? So it is possible for that thief to be transported as well, while thinking, if that is true, then he is a third party between Jiang and that thief. Jiang then squeezed his hand tightly and said, if there comes a day when she bumps into him, she will definitely not let him slip through her grasp again. Zhu gets scared and asked if she hate him that much, and she looked at him in anger. Zhu tells her to calm down, as if he really did come over, he would have been exposed long ago, as he is not a pretty lady. Even if he's a pretty lady, not everyone is like him, he would have handed over to the scientist to experiment on him. Zhu then noticed a fortune-telling room, so he asked Jiang if she wants to give it a try. He explained that there is a crystal ball inside, and it will give her the answers to any question she asks. She was imagining an egg on top of the volcano, thinking, if it's an egg island. Jiang asked if she can ask about her return to Tang Dynasty, and Zhu replied, she can ask anything, but she will be treated as a nutcase if she asks something like this. As they went inside, Jiang gets happy after seeing a totally new surrounding. Zhu tells her to sit near the woman there and said, she will answer her questions. Zhu was waiting outside for Jiang while thinking, be it tarot cards or the horoscope, they all use generic descriptions and words to describe someone. After a while, Jiang came out, so Zhu asked if she gets her questions answered. She blushed and said, she asked the woman about the marriage. And Zhu understands what just happened inside. He said, the one she is seeking is so close yet so far. He has actually been by her side all along. So Jiang shockingly asked, how did he know about that? He replied, he has learned how to tell fortunes as well, that is what fate has directed him to. Jiang ignored him and said, in any case, she said something along those lines, so he probably won't be beaten to death by her. Jiang was looking at him while thinking, if this is what she meant by so close, but what does she mean by so far? She then looked at the stars and thought, maybe the thousand year gap between them. Zhu then received a text message from Hao, saying, he just sent her home, so what does he think about her? Zhu thought, she definitely is pretty, but she is not Hao's ideal type. He wants to find someone who will live a simple life and will help to take care of their future kids together. He then replied to Hao that for things like relationships, it's all about compatibility. Jiang looked at the messages and asked Zhu, what is considered incompatible? He replied, when two person are together and don't feel like suffering, that means they are compatible, and the reverse is true for incompatible. She then looked him with serious eyes and asked if he and his ex-girlfriend were compatible then. Zhu was sweating as he could see Jiang releasing a murderous aura. Zhu then remembers the story of Chancellor Fang, who walked a straight path while others took on multiple wives. Later, the others started gossiping that the reason he didn't have concubines was due to his fear of his wife, so the emperor bestowed two ladies after hearing the gossip. He bitterly accepted the ladies and brings them home, where his wife was ready to chase them away, so he gives her two choices, either drink poisoned wine or accept the ladies. 
and to his surprise, his wife didn't hesitate to gulp down every bit of wine in the jar, though it was not poison but vinegar inside. Back at present, Zhu thought both ancient and modern women are susceptible to drinking vinegar, and Jiang looks completely like a modern person now. He laughed it off while saying, earlier she was okay with him going to a brothel, but she tells him not to change the topic and asked if it's because she didn't approve of him visiting brothels. But Zhu instantly refused, saying he has never been to any brothels, not now and not ever. He tells her that they got together because of their raging hormones, as she looked like a beauty in his eyes. But once time passed and the hormones calmed down, they would always clash over various things. It's the little interaction during day-to-day -day life that lets you see if two people are suitable for each other. Jiang asked why did they two clash over. So Zhu replied she would always buy shoes, wallets, and clothes for him that were out of her budget, even though he doesn't really need any of it. She thought that she was treating him well, but he was not happy at all, so Jiang asked isn't buying good things is how it's supposed to be. And Zhu replied it's not, if you like it, then it's great, but even though he told her many times that he didn't need it, she still scrimp and saved to buy things for him. He added that she was acting like his mom instead of his girlfriend, and Jiang wordly said, isn't that like how they currently are? Zhu replied, it's different for them since he is providing her with new experiences, and if she will not want it, then he won't do it. He smiled and said, this is why they weren't suitable, as he wished for an orange, but she gave him a peanut. He is grateful for her, but being with her makes him and her miserable, therefore, they parted ways peacefully. He still remembers the last fight they had, he had his lunch by 4pm, but she insisted he was hungry and bought food at 6, and then they fought over that. Jiang couldn't believe the reason they broke up was because they too had too much food. Zhu said she will understand in the future there is no one wrong or right, it's just that they weren't compatible. That is why he said if she wants to leave, he will let her go because neither of them will be happy if he were to force her to stay. And if his feelings were to fizzle one day, but before he could finish, Jiang said, she will beat him to death. He corrected himself that if her feelings were to fizzle out one day. But again, before he could finish, Jiang said it won't happen. Zhu asked if she likes him that much, and Jiang replied, he has already touched her legs. She said, if such a day were to come, she will really beat him to death. Suddenly, Zhu hugs her while saying, it's too early to talk about all this. A person's thoughts will always change and they won't know what will happen when the time comes, just like how it happened with him and his ex-girlfriend. So let's just go with the flow, after all, neither of them knows what the future will hold. She smiled and said, what they have now is great, and some things will never change. But he makes fun of her, saying, now she is bold enough to even kiss him by the roadside. She gets flustered and muttered, doesn't he like her more now that she has become like this? He looked at her with love and said, that's why they will never break up, and she doesn't have to worry about beating him to death someday. He then starts rubbing his cheeks against her, saying, he suddenly has the urge to kiss her. Their lips slowly went close to each other and then they kissed. Then later at night, Zhu opened his laptop to check his video performance. He thought, the old man has improved, since he now knows how to threaten others. His dad commented, all the things that he has uploaded are indecent, any more of this and he will report him. But Zhu deleted his comment and uploaded a new video of transferring internal energy, in which the female has to take off all of her clothes. He then noticed Zhang coming out of the shower, so he asked her if she is able to transfer internal energy. She replied she can't, and that whatever he saw on TV is all fake. Zhu then asked, can she emit warm fumes from her head to dry her hair without a hair dryer, while thinking, when did she buy this nightgown? She replied, she can only fight and not emit any warm fumes. She was waiting for him to dry her hair, so Zhu quickly bring the hairdryer. She sits on a chair while thinking, she will have to wear some pants next time, or this rascal can caress her legs by just directing the hairdryer upwards. She thought, but if she were to wear pants, it feels like she doesn't need to wear a nightgown anymore, and then she muttered, only if he was blind. Zhu asked if she suddenly turned to the dark side while thinking, that sounds like ancient yander speak. He noticed how she was using her hands to hide her melons, so he tells her to let go of her hands, as he is a proper gentleman, so he won't peek. But she asks suspiciously, then why is he focused on whether or not her hands are there? Zhu thought, such clear logic and proper reasoning, and then he says with teary eyes, that she is all grown up now, which angered Jiang. She clenched her fist and asked what he meant by she is only grown up now. 
She then shouted that she will do it herself while thinking that he wants to bet her even when they are not married. Zhu looked at her and thought that small frame of hers is able to give off such tremendous energy it defies science, so he should conduct research on it. He sit on the sofa with style, thinking it's all for the sake of scientific advancement. He gathered his courage and asked if she would like to move into his room. But Jiang shouted why would she do that, since they are not even married yet. Zhu promised he won't do anything, it's just that the storage room isn't really a suitable place to sleep in. She angrily replied, he want to bed her, and he is still saying that he won't do anything. She thought that sleeping in the same room will definitely produce babies. Zhu suggested placing a bowl of water in the middle of the bed, but she said she won't, and what is the use of putting a bowl of water there? Zhu imagined himself getting beaten like a dog by her answers. He cursed himself while thinking, it was a miscalculation to not trick her into staying in his room before. Zhu changed his plan and offered to swap the room instead, so he can convince her into staying in his room. He was having dirty thought about how he wants to hold them in his hands and squeeze them well. He was staring at Jiang's legs and she noticed this. She hides her body and shouted, she doesn't want to and she is comfortable sleeping in her room. But Zhu said, she is his girlfriend, so if anyone gets to know that she is sleeping in the storage room, then his reputation will take a hit. She pouts while thinking, she was initially taken in by him, and then they got together, so moving into the master bedroom makes it seem like, she is the lady of the house or something. She thought, well she will become the lady in the future, but if she get pregnant before marriage, then second miss will haunt her dreams and scold her. Zhu tells her that his dad scolded him about this last time, so if they are not sleeping together, then let's just change room. She asked why his dad wants her to stay in his bedroom, and Zhu replied, maybe because he already sees her as daughter-in-law, so she can call him dad now. In reality, Zhu was trying to trick Jiang, so he can record his dad's embarrassing moment. Jiang was hesitant to call him dad before marriage, but Zhu said it's okay and if he were to break up with her, his parents would beat him to death too. He said it again, since his dad has already stated that they should switch rooms, so she should just move over, otherwise, he will be scolded the next time as well. Jiang replied, she is just staying temporarily in such a situation, who would usurp the master of the house, so she is not changing. Zhu excitedly said, if that's the case, then why doesn't she call him master from now, which angered Jiang. He laughed it off, saying, he is just joking, also she is a girlfriend usurping her boyfriend's position, so she should do it proudly. She then heard him saying that he will pack her things, so she stopped him and said, she will do it herself. Twenty minutes later, she packed all her things and moved into Zhu's room. Zhu was inside her room, thinking, when his dad and mom were living there, this was the room he stayed in, so it's full of memories. He then turns around and gets shocked to see Jiang. He couldn't believe just how beautiful she was looking in her new dress. She said he was the one who bought it previously, but Zhu's focus was only on her melons. He said, people who practice martial arts are so terrifying, while Jiang hide her body and shouted, he is saying weird things again, but buy another one for her. After a while, she was on a computer checking night dresses. Suddenly, Zhu calls her name and tells her to come over. He showed her a dress, but Jiang asked if there is something longer than this, the kind that covers her entire leg. Zhu replied there is, but it would be quite stuffy for her. He was thinking about how she is trying her best to protect her white panties that she is wearing. The reason he knows that is because he bought those for her. Zhu said, showing her calves is nothing to be afraid of. This dress is more comfortable since she will be able to move around easily. She got tricked again and agreed to purchase that dress. After a while, Zhu noticed her reading computer course online. He tells her to sleep early and starts leaving. But then he returned from the door and give her a good night hug. He gets flustered after seeing just how beautiful she is looking in her nightgown, and then he gives her a goodnight kiss. Later at night, when Jiang was preparing to sleep, she noticed Zhu entering her room. He realized he entered there by mistake, since he is too used to entering his own room, so he said sorry and quickly left. He went to his new room and said, even the nooks and crannies are clean. He sits on the bed while thinking, how this place is a small piece of heaven just for Jiang. It's just that, there is now one more person on the outside, that is able to accompany her in life. He then finds her hair on the bed, so he picked it up while thinking, how if he were to invite her in his room, to enjoy the air conditioning, she would not do so. She would rather bake to death than enter his room, due to embarrassment and whatnot. 
But now that they switched rooms, once the hot summer sun rolls around, he will ask to move to her room for the air conditioning instead, so she will definitely agree. He gets serious and said, only a fool would install an additional AC in the storage room. Then the next morning, Zhu woke up and came out of the room. Jiang was doing something on the computer, so she quickly closed it before he could see that. Zhu ignored that and thought, she needs to put on a better act. She didn't even hide her browser window properly. She tells him that the porridge is in the pot, so let's eat together. Zhu said okay and also tells her to eat first next time, or wake him up if she wants. Zhu was enjoying his breakfast and said, these homemade salted vegetables taste better than store-bought ones. And Jiang said, during her era, outside were better. Zhu said that's weird, but she replied, it's more weirder for something, that he has paid money to taste worse than something, that he has made by himself. Zhu said, the ones she makes are better than those bought from outside, so has she thought about selling her own version? And Jiang replied, it's impossible. Zhu agrees with her and said, if she wishes to survive on selling salted vegetables, she will need large orders. He explained how she will need to manage quality control, production, storage, as well as transport. Besides all that, there is also the customer's needs too, as there are some who only want to try it out from time to time, and some who have no choice but to eat them for every meal. To sum it up, she shouldn't just assume that the needs of her customers are the same as hers. He then added, if she wants to earn money this way, then he wouldn't oppose it, he just hoped that she will be able to live a better life. She gets sad while saying, second miss also said something similar, that she wanted her to live a better life, as best as she could. But how do you know if it's the best? Zhu replied, that would depend on herself, there's a saying that said, a frog in the well knows nothing of the sea, she will only know how big the world is once she climbs out of the well. That's why he was hoping that she will choose him only after getting to know the world more, so he wouldn't be guilty of irresponsibly tricking her into bed. Jiang realized that Zhu's mind is filled with thoughts of having kids with her, so she will definitely not give him any opportunities to sleep together with her. And if he dares to sneak into her room, she will lift him up like a pig and throw him out of the door. As she was thinking all of that, Zhu wondered, why is he feeling scared all of a sudden? After a while, Zhu was training while thinking, the purpose of martial arts is to strengthen one's body. Jiang then tells him that she thought of a few things that are suitable for her, like if they were to open a salted vegetable store online. The deposit is refundable. Next is cooking, she has seen a few people making their cooking videos, so if she were to learn a few more dishes, they can give that a try. Zhu said, it is known as food vlog, and it's okay to teach a dish that was already covered by someone, as long as people out there like it and watch it. She added, there are some people who stream themselves eating. So she asked while drooling, if that's a viable career to perform yourself eating. And also, there is still Liv streaming herself playing games, as she is getting faster at grinding the game. But Zhu said, watching others tackle an ever-changing dungeon entertains the viewers, but she is just grinding the same game with different accounts, so it will bore people. She asked, then why isn't he bored of her, as she saw a ton of photos and videos of her doing swordplay in his phone. But Zhu replied, he is chasing her. She then muttered, that she is thinking of opening an online salted vegetable store, then teach others to cook. And after she is done eating, she would grind the game and she would promote her salted vegetables to the viewers watching her stream. Zhu couldn't believe that she is thinking of doing everything. Jiang excitedly asked if it's awesome. And Zhu suggested of live streaming herself sleeping as well. But she refused, saying, live streaming her sleeping is not okay, and Zhu replied it's just a passing remark. He continued, who would follow such a plan of hers, cooking for herself to eat, playing games after eating and trying to get others to buy her salted vegetables. But then he thought, there might really be people who would watch just to simp. Zhu said she is on the right track, but that is impossible and she can only choose one of these things. After his training, Zhu was thinking about, ever since he started learning martial arts, his back and legs no longer hurts, and he is full of energy every day. He saw Jiang sitting quietly, so he signaled her to come close to him. Jiang sits next to him and said, all of those don't take much time to do, so why can't she do them at the same time? He replied, it's already hard to focus on just one thing, so who would even have the energy to do everything? Jiang said, she can promote her salted vegetables to those who watch her eat and play games. But Zhu asked, how would she attract people to watch her eat and play games then? 
she excitedly said. People who buy the salted vegetables can watch her make them to be assured that it's safe to eat, so naturally, they will watch her eat. Zhu was looking at her with disbelief while her eyes were sparkling. After a while, she agreed to focus on one thing first, and if it goes well, then they can try adding the others on top of that. Zhu said, she must first have an interest in the thing that she wants to do, as it's better to do something that she like. So Jiang replied, just like how he like her shoes. But he grabbed her leg and said, it's just like how he likes her legs. And then to Jiang's surprise, he squeezed her leg. She then teach him a lesson by hitting his leg hard. And while he was holding his injured leg, Jiang said she is off to play games and left in a hurry. After she left, Zhu was thinking how he can't handle being so close and he might accidentally lose control if he is not careful. He thought, as a virtuous gentleman, he can't be rash and then he opened his laptop to check the stock market. After working for some time, Zhu shut the laptop as the stock market is closed at 3. He tells Jiang that he is heading out to get a package and she said okay to it. After some time, while Jiang was preparing dinner, she heard him saying that he is back. She looks at him and asked, what did he buy? He gives her something, saying, it's a compact mirror that he bought for her. She looked in the mirror and gets happy. She then noticed him holding a package, so she asked what that is. She opened the box and get confused to see some strange rings there. Zhu tells her, since he has nothing else to do, so he is going to make a vest out of these. He explained the method to her that first, they take five metal rings and cut open one of them. Then, combine those five and repeat the steps to make a metal chain. Jiang picked some rings and shockingly said, so you can actually make a vest out of these. She gets depressed while thinking, if Zhu is sick, as how can he even think of making clothes out of these? But then she remembered the night, when he tells her that not everything he do has a motive. She asked how long it will take. And Zhu replied, he will only do it in free time, so he doesn't know the exact time. Jiang thought, maybe Zhu is making this, so he can use this to guard against her. She gets excited, thinking, wearing metal clothes can help him resist two more punches. But then, Zhu said if she wants to wear it, then she can, but the bottom has to be made into a skirt-like style, so she asked, if there is a point to this. He replied, let's just say he's full and have nothing better to do. When people are bored, they will think wildly, such as wanting to touch some legs or play with feet, but since she doesn't allow him to play around with her, so he is diverting his attention. She gets flustered while thinking, so he is having those indecent thoughts again, and she muttered that she will give him her shoes to play with. But Zhu excitedly said, he doesn't want to play with her shoes, he wants to play with her legs instead. She looked at him and realized just how desperate he is. She plays with her hair and said, he can hold her while they watch a movie like he did last time, so Zhu said okay to it. He thought, he really need to divert his attention, as seeing her sitting there, he keeps thinking about what is there and what is not. He rarely goes out now, and he developed the habit of going to bed early and getting up early, so he has a lot of free time. He then noticed her still sitting on the floor, so he asked, if she is not going to play games. Jiang replied no, because he just said, that they are going to watch a movie together. Shocked, Zhu asked if she wants to watch it now. Jiang gets flustered after hearing that and said, didn't he say he wanted to watch? Zhu replied, what he meant was the evening, when they smell good after a shower. He then makes fun of her, asking, if she actually wants to watch a movie with him that much, so it's not impossible to do it right now, but she shouted, she doesn't. She then angrily left while saying, she is going to play games. Zhu then picks his phone and tells her to not talk for a bit, as he is going to record a video. He turn on the recording and starts explaining the process of making a sleeve out of those metal rings. Jiang pouts while thinking, he is obviously working, yet, he was talking about touching her legs and diverting attention. After some time, Zhu took a sigh of relief, as he got tired after making a piece that is the size of a palm. Jiang asked if he is done with the recording, and he replied yes. She was then checking his video and asked if he is going to do a live stream too, and Zhu replied, it's not a live broadcast. She then asked him if she can do this too, as it seems easy. He replied she can, but he doesn't recommend it, because if she only make clothes like him, then she won't learn anything. Zhu thought, even if you were to finish making this vest, it can only be displayed at home, at most, he would be able to take some pictures and post them. Jiang then asked, how does filming the process gives meaning to the activity? He replied, it all depends on her perception, 
knowledge and problem-solving abilities. It is not something that one is born with, she has to go through learning. She gets excited and said, it seems kind of awesome. Zhu then tells her, if she is willing to stay at home to do household chores and raise the children, there is no need for her to learn. He will earn the dough to support her. Her head starts spinning after hearing the word, raise the children. She filtered the part about raising children and asked, is it like raising winter melon? But Zhu refused, saying, she would still have to do chores, and after that, have to do with him. She gets confused and asked, do what with him? And Zhu happily replied, do that. Zhu saw her expression and realized that she really has no idea. He figured that ancient people really have no idea of what goes on between a husband and wife before marriage, and wondered if they do a crash course at the last minute. He then tells her to stop looking at him like that and read some books as it's important to learn and do the art of self-learning. Jiang then thought that she doesn't want to let him provide for her, she want to feed herself. She looked at Winter Melon while thinking, she can't be as dumb as Minter Melon, as all he does is eat and sleep all day. She then pick a book and wondered if it really is useful to read these books. Zhu then tells her the benefit of reading, that if she doesn't read, she will only be angry at herself, but if she were to read, she will be able to angry at the heavens, the world, and the society. After some time, Zhu gets a call from Hao. He was excited to know that Zhu is actually making a piece of armor, so he tells him to make it a little bigger so he can wear it too. Zhu asked if he check out his sad channel every day, and Hao replied that he saw his dad scrolling through his videos, that's how he saw it. Zhu gets confused and asked why his dad is watching his videos. Hao replied, Zhu's dad is the one who taught his dad, so he needs to be careful, because both of them watch him regularly now. Zhu makes a strange expression and thought, recently, the comment section seems to have quite a bit of discussion, so the anonymous account must be Uncle Kin. And then Zhu smiled, as a thought crossed his mind. He sends his chainmail armor video to his dad, thinking, he will let him know what it really means to be a deadbeat, or he will ask him what the hell he is doing. He then looked at Jiang working and thought, even if she actually reads, she would only understand certain parts of it. But still it's good, as being able to understand the world she is living in, is the first step to becoming smarter. She then brings some dumplings that she made, and tells him that there are both cabbage and pork fillings. The vegetarian ones are sealed with a spiral pattern, while the meat ones are pressed shut at top. While eating, Zhu was making fun of her, saying, she has evolved from a dumb little Jiang to a smart little Jiang. After some time, Zhu was checking the ginger plant, so Jiang asked what is he doing. He said, under normal conditions, it is hard for ginger plants to flower, and there are requirements when it comes to the soil, and humidity conditions, so it may not flower. Jiang replied it's fine, since it looks pretty good like this too, and Zhu said, it's like her, just give it some water and it will survive. But she instantly refused that it's nothing like her while thinking, what does he mean by giving her some water as she still has to eat plenty of rice. After some time, Zhu noticed Jiang playing with Winter Melon. He starts crying, saying, he is really less than a cat. She asked what does he mean by that, so he replied, he wants to crawl on her legs like what Winter Melon is doing. But she said it's impossible, so Zhu asked her the reason for that. And then to his surprise, he heard her saying that he is too big so she can't support him. His expression changed while thinking, if she mean that he can do it, if she can support him. He thought, although a human can't fit, but his head is still good for a lap pillow. And once she has bathed, done her pajamas, and is sitting on the couch, he will lay his head on her thighs. She saw his weird expressions and shouted that he can't do it, even if he can fit. But Zhu smiled while saying, she will be okay with it sooner or later. He then asked if she want to take a shower before they start watching movie. She asked why she have to shower, even though she didn't want to, so Zhu tells her to not take it then. He realized that she is afraid of wearing her pajamas and squeezing close to him while watching the movie just like last time. Even if she knows that he won't touch her, she is still afraid of any accidents happening. Zhu then stops thinking about it and opened the laptop to watch the movie. He then looked at Jiang and asked if she wants to watch the movie with the lights off. She clenches her fist and asked why is there a need to turn the lights off. He replied, it is to set the atmosphere to a more appropriate one, as this would allow the viewers to focus their attention on the movie and immerse themselves in it. He then tells her to turn off the lights, so she stood up to do that. After turning off the lights, she sits next to him while looking flustered. 
And then to her surprise, Zhu picked her legs and put them on his thighs. She was looking at him weirdly, so he tells her to just keep watching the movie. As she was asking if it's a martial arts film, Zhu was slowly moving his hand behind her. He put his hand on her shoulder and said, Yes, this is Huang Fei Hong. He knows the art of shadowless kicks, where his kick doesn't leave a shadow behind. He thought, even though she treats kissing as a normal occurrence, she is still somehow sensitive to body contact. He wondered if she is worried about him crossing the line. But still, he admit that watching a movie with the lights off and cuddling with her on the couch feels so good. He was squeezing her legs, so she tells him to stop being weird. And Zhu said, it's not weird, she just need to focus on the movie. She muttered, she didn't wash her feet. But Zhu said, she didn't go out today and sat there the entire day like a saint. She bites her lips as she was feeling something strange inside her. Suddenly, Winter Melon comes and gets on her lap. After some time, she tells Zhu that she still wants to live stream and let others watch her play games. She was thinking how his hand is so warm, and Zhu asked why is she so insistent on live streaming games. She said she initially wanted to record her cooking, but what he said was right, that she need to have some more experience with something to better understand the intricacies of it. Zhu replied, since she has played games for so long, so it's not a bad choice to start live streaming with games. He thought, this is her second time asking this, so if he turn her down again, then her enthusiasm for it would take a hit, as she gathered the courage to ask him again. He asked her if she thoroughly thought of it, and she replied positively. She said, she has seen others focus on nutrition, some on competitive eating, and some on meal prep, but she still is inexperienced, so she will stick to grinding for now. Zhu then asked if she wants to try the PvP arena which confused Yang. He explained that she will need to fight with other players where the game characters are also controlled by players, so she can try it tomorrow. But Jiang excitedly stood up while saying she will try it right now, but Zhu stops her and tells her to watch the movie first. He was thinking that he hasn't cuddled her to his heart's content yet, also he still wants to play with those slender legs, so how can he let her leave? But then, in the flow, he did something really indecent to her. After a while, Zhu was explaining, as human civilization progressed, the wants started outweighing the needs, just like the monkeys. When there was cultural advancement, people started to prefer looks, thin figures, and slender shoulders, which was the result of changing times. Looking at it from another angle, there is no difference between your legs and looks, and comparing them indicates that you are falling behind the times. Her eyes were red in anger while Zhu said, Every inch of the body is the same. It has nothing to do with whether it's weird. Rather, it's up to the preference of the individual. She was so angry at him and tells him to stop his nonsense. After some time, Zhu was sitting with Winter Melon while Jiang was playing games on the computer. He was thinking, he never knew that he has a thing for it previously, and there was no indication whatsoever. He looked at her and thought, maybe it's because she is too good looking. He thought that her feet would be full of calluses, but it turned out otherwise. The size fits his hands, it's warm, and it's smooth to the touch. Suddenly, she turned around and asked in disgust, why is he sniffing his hands? Shocked, Zhu quickly stopped himself, as he was doing it unconsciously. She angrily thought, she already told him that she didn't wash her feet, yet this rascal touched it on purpose, so he definitely has a thing for shoes. She then gets furious as she heard him saying that there was no smell. She turns around and sneakingly smells her feet and thought, obviously it has no smell, as she was at home the entire day, but she still wants to give him a beating. She then looks at the screen that says if she would like to enter the PvP zone. She snaps her finger as she was ready to battle. She started playing the game and was winning every battle. She looked at Zhu, who is now working on the Iron Rings. He then tells her that there is no need to rush, she can start streaming her fights, as it is also a form of content, so she might get some viewers who have nothing better to do. She said, grinding gives her money, but fighting others doesn't, so it's different from what she first thought. Zhu asked if she really not considering filming her swordplay or cooking instead, as one of those activities might go viral more easily. She shook her head while saying, she is just trying it out and learning the ropes by doing something she is already familiar with. But then, reality hits Zhu as he realized that Zhang was thinking of streaming whole day, so he tells her to stream the PvP arena just for an hour. But he added that she can't treat this as a career, she is only in the early stages of trying it out. 
and in future she might encounter some things that she may not have seen or understood previously. Only then should she put in the effort to do it. For example, she may come to love washing clothes, cooking food, and taking care of children, and she might let him have fun with her legs. But Jiang angrily replied she won't, and killed a player in just three seconds. She said, this ghost knight looked just like him, and doesn't seem like a good person. After a while, she happily tells him that she won again. But Zhu said it's normal, as her MMR is low, and everyone she is matched with are noobs. She asked what a noob is, so Zhu explained that they are the people who are less skilled than her, they might have some bells and whistles, but they are ultimately useless. But then Zhu thought of something and wondered if this girl learned how to be sarcastic, since he is a noob himself. After some time, Jiang was on her eighth victory, so Zhu wondered if the opponents she is getting are trash, or if she has real talent when it comes to this. After turning off the computer, Jiang was going back to her room. But then she suddenly stopped and remembered that her room is changed now. She gets flustered and quickly went inside the main bedroom. Inside, she was thinking that after changing rooms, she is not used to it, even though the bed is bigger and comfortable. After a while, Jiang gets out of the shower and said she is very clean now. But Zhu smiled while saying she has been clean from the start and there really wasn't a smell. Jiang gets angry, thinking he really sniffed her feet before she even showered, and was thinking of turning back time somehow. Zhu thought it is kind of embarrassing to be sniffed when you haven't showered, although it did smell nice. And looking at Jiang being conflicted, he realized that she is becoming conscious of him. If she didn't like it, she would only be mad, and she wouldn't have come and told him something like that after showering. He then thought of her different versions, how she was a samurai, then a girl with no knowledge. And now, her current behavior is probably from getting comfortable in an unfamiliar environment, and she might not even realize that she is starting to depend on him. He thought of her acting as a sweet girl, but he knows that she wouldn't do something like that. He was working on the armor, thinking he need to make a sleeve within 10 days, and then he will record a second video. He needs to regularly update the fans on the progress, or they will forget about it after a while. Jiang came and asked him if he is not going to sleep, and Zhu replied he will sleep in a bit. She tells him to not stay up so late, and if he wants then she can help him too. But Zhu said she can help him by not looking so good, as he is just trying to divert his attention. Otherwise, it's difficult for him to look at her running around in her pajamas. Confused, she muttered the words, don't look so good. Then, after some time, Zhu went outside Jiang's room to check if she is sleeping, but he was not hearing any snoring. He then went inside his room and fall asleep. Then the next day, Zhu tells Jiang to keep playing her game, as he is going to head out for a while. As he was inside the cab, he noticed Hao's girlfriend on the other side of the road. He tells the driver to make a U-turn, as he saw two acquaintances. Zhu take out his phone to click the picture, thinking, who knew that he would become a paparazzi one day. And then, Zhu gets shocked, since Hao's girlfriend kissed another girl on the lips. Suddenly, the driver asked him if he is not going to say hi, to which he replied that he contacted them on the phone since it's raining. After a while, Zhu was thinking that girls often like to hold hands, hug each other, and even go to the restroom together, but that kiss is something unimaginable. He texted how but he was not responding, so Zhu thought he must be working right now. After some time, a boy was working on a computer's motherboard. Suddenly, Zhu startled him by saying he need a webcam and that he is so busy that he didn't even realize that he took two memory sticks. Zhu then tells his friend to give him a decent camera like the one he bought last time, a sound card, and also a pair of headphones. His friend said, so it's for streaming him making chainmail, as that video of his went viral. After Zhu returned, he noticed some people outside his building, so he asked his uncle Zhao, what are they doing? He replied, they are preparing to install the electronic access control system, so they are measuring it now, and it will be ready in few days. After a while, Jiang asked what he bought this time and Zhu replied, it's for streaming. Zhu then asked her about the door gods that were used during her time, to which she replied, they used the one with fiercer appearance. Zhu asked if like Zhang Qi, and Jiang excitedly said yes to it. Zhu said, then he will put a Zhang Qi behind her, which confused Jiang. He said that other live streamers have cute backgrounds and they have little rabbits and dolls and a plushy self. Jiang said she has bears, but Zhu replied bears are not as useful and only Zhang Qi can suppress evil. After measuring the size from different angles, Zhu ordered a scroll of Zhang Qi for them. 
After he received the order, he gives it to Jiang, saying he will stick that on the door later to ward off the evil stuff. His phone then starts ringing, and it's from Hao. Hao said he was on patrol before, and asked why he was calling. And then to his surprise, Zhu asked him if he and Liu have kissed yet. Hao fell silent for a while, and then said they held hands before. Zhu asked if the two of them never hugged, to which Hao replied no, not yet. Zhu sighed and tells him to consider breaking up with her. As soon as Zhang heard him saying breaking up, she gets alerted. Zhu thought, regardless of whether she is a marriage swindler or just fooling around, she is free to find whoever she likes. But Hao is such an honest good guy, who has his heart set on serving the people so he doesn't deserve this. Zhu said, if they two haven't even hugged, does it really count as being together? To which Hao hesitantly replied, it should count. Zhu then tells him to listen calmly, as he will be honest with him, that when he was out in the morning, he saw something. Suddenly, Hao shouted, that happened and thought, it's hard to accept that they kissed, even though she is a girl too. Zhu then makes a joke by saying, how about he try his best to snag them both, but Hao angrily said, he needs to ask her what is going on. Zhu added that it can be her little sister or something as well, so he can ask her the next time he meets her, after all, he is the professional when it comes to beating around the bush. Hao said he knew it from the start, as there is no way a pretty lady like her can be interested in him, so he can't run from this any longer. After the call, Jiang suspiciously asked Zhu, who he was breaking up with. Zhu replied he is not breaking up with anyone, he was just advising someone else to do so. It's the one she met previously over a meal, the lady in stockings and a short skirt, and also tells Jiang that he saw her kissing another girl this morning. Jiang starts sweating and screamed, kissing another girl. He then acted like some kind of hero, saying she is certainly weirder than him. Jiang was thinking, why would two girls kiss, and if boyfriend-girlfriend exists, would they be called girlfriend-girlfriend instead? And then she remembered that Zhu once said, when your needs are fulfilled, the thoughts of people will be more diverse, which leads to liking some weird stuff. She then sit beside him and asked if it's common for girls to be together. Zhu said it's uncommon, but he respect them and their decision. She said she understands and thought, as for how two girls can reproduce, she won't ask that. While she was in deep thought, Zhu was thinking that he used his ID to verify the account used for streaming and she is able to stream her gameplay now. Even though it shouldn't pose a problem, to be safe, he should appear on the live stream as well, as it's rare for her to have something that she wants to do. She then heard Zhu saying that he thought about it for her, that she can stream her games from 7 to 8 every night. It fits nicely into the time after their dinner, they don't usually have things on, and after 8, they can do whatever they want, like watching movies or something else. After a while, the live stream started and they lose the very first battle. Jiang twitched her eyebrows and said, didn't he say that they all are noobs, while Zhu was trying to change the topic, as he is a noob himself. He quickly gets up and tells her to play, since it's her turn. He then tells her that they are live right now, even though there is nobody watching, she should not dig her nose or whatever, as it will leave a bad impression, and she shouted she wouldn't do that. After some time, she had a beautiful smile on her face as she was doing live stream for the first time. Zhu was thinking, someone from the Tang Dynasty is live streaming her gameplay, so life is such a magical thing. While Zhang was playing games, Zhu was sitting behind her, thinking, since it's live streaming in his name, he better make an appearance. It just happens that he needs to edit the chainmail video that he recorded yesterday. He saw her on a winning strike and thought, the account she is using doesn't even have any decent equipment, yet she is winning easily, she really is talented. Jiang then noticed him behind her and asked, why is he sitting on the couch? Zhu replied, because it's his live stream, so he has to be on camera. Then, Zhu gets an awesome idea, and then he emptied the space behind her. He stand behind her and said, he will move his training session to the evening, so he can just stand there for an hour. Suddenly, Jiang noticed that someone just joined her live stream. She gets too happy and shouted, someone joined. But then to her surprise, the guy quickly left the chat. He joined again, so she gets happy and said, they are here again, and the guy left the stream again. She gets angry while thinking, why did they leave as soon as she spoke? The guy joined again and Jiang thought, this person leaves as soon as she speak, so she won't speak anymore. She was not saying anything and was playing the game calmly. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that it's his first time he stood for such a long time, he is a little tired but he need to hold out for 20 more minutes. 
He was releasing a bright aura in his mind, thinking, men are made to last. The guy in the live chat then asked Zhang, what's that behind her? She looked at the comment and said, that's Zhang Kiwi. The guy on the other side angrily shakes his screen while shouting, who doesn't know that Zhang Kiwi? He is obviously asking about the motionless thing behind her. But as the time was over, Zhu gets relaxed, which shocked the guy. He tells Zhang that today's live stream is over, so she ends the stream. She then excitedly tells him that someone was watching. She then happily starts calculating that if she gets one viewer a day, then she will have 365 viewers in a year, which means she will be able to sell a lot of salted vegetables to these people. But then she remembered that she hasn't even opened up a store yet. Zhu tells her to not start calculating so early since one or two viewers are useless and she might not even get any for tomorrow's stream. While he was explaining that once she will start losing on the higher levels, no one will watch, but she was not listening to him and said, maybe they will come again tomorrow. She then asked him if they are making dumplings for dinner and Zhu replied, yes that's right, since eating dumplings during Kingaming is a must. After a while, Jiang was rolling the pin to make dumplings, while Zhu was mixing the stuffing. But then to her surprise, he quickly kissed her on the cheek. She looked at him, but he looked away from her. But then, Jiang said that she never thought it would be like this, so Zhu asked what she meant. She replied, like this, she was using the rolling pin while he helped mix the stuffing, and then secretly kiss her. She then remembered her past, when every day, she had to fight to survive. And now, the kitchen, the house, and life. It feels like she has left all of that behind in the blink of an eye. She then gets startled, as she heard Zhu asking what is on her mind. She said, she was thinking of the kitchen they had in her time was made of mud bricks. They would first put the river mud inside the mold, and then let it dry into bricks. But then, Zhu tells her a poem, that when the strong autumn winds blow, so does the grass, which is such a woe. She gets surprised and asked, if he is capable of composing poems as well. Zhu answered no, as that was by Du Fu, a genius composer from Tang Dynasty, while showing her his information on the phone. Zhu said he was already considered a genius during her time, and in the year 755, Du Fu became a counselor of the military, where he oversaw the keeping of armor and logistics. When he returned home in November, he hears wails from within his house. It turned out that his youngest son died of starvation. He then came up with the famous phrase, as the mansions stink of meat and booze, the streets are lined with corpses with shoes. Zhu continued, that in the same year, the Anxi rebellion began, which was perpetrated by a cushion and she shiming. But then, Jiang tells him to stop, and that's enough. She thought, if she didn't come over, would it have been a chaotic world when she reached her 40s, and how everyone in the village survived those hard times. She then looked at Zhu and tells him to kiss her. He didn't even waste a second and immediately kissed her. He said, it's all in the past, be it good or bad, it all happened a thousand years ago. He continued, that a thousand years is neither long not short, perhaps the next thousand years will be totally different for all he know. On the scale of human history, it is but a hot minute and yet it is an eternity to humans. He then gets depressed, saying he give up since he couldn't do the fillings like Jong. He looked at her while thinking, no matter what, she seems like a proper housewife, and no one could say that she used to be a warrioress. Zhu said, the way she looked now is great, so Jiang asked if she looked better now or when she practiced swordplay. Zhu knows he is in trouble, as no matter what he say, she will get mad at him. He quickly stood up and said he liked them all of course, he like her in any shape or form. He said he will boil the water and thought he escaped the situation he was in. But as he was preparing the water, he heard her asking, what about when she is hitting him, does he like it too? He looked back and asked if she wants to live stream herself play acting while hitting him, and the title would be called, 108 Ways to Beat Up Zhu King. Her eyes sparkled as she asked if she can really do that, but Zhu instantly refused, saying she can't. After some time, Jiang was sadly looking at the dumpling she was holding. After taking a bite, she said that second miss would only eat until she was half full, and she wanted the peaceful times to last as long as possible. She can't believe that it only lasted just 20 more years. She was too sad when she heard Zhu saying that her second miss extended her golden age though. She treated her so well, and if she were to live a fulfilling life in his era, her second miss would definitely be very happy. Jong gets happy after hearing that and said, really? 
After a while, Zhu said that a few decades ago, when there were still landowners, one such owner hired Feng Shui Master to look at his house. The master looked at his house with his Feng Shui compass and said that the location was great. The place had good Feng Shui and many scholars would be born on this land. Later on, the house was demolished, and in its place, Zhongyan High School was constructed, and the school indeed produced countless scholars. Zhang gets shocked and asked if Feng Shui really that magical. And when he mentioned comparing their bazi at his house, is that one accurate? But Zhu said, she doesn't know her birth date, so they cannot compare their bazi. Suddenly, he starts laughing and makes fun of him while saying, she believes everything he say. But Jiang shook her head and said, that's not true, and she only believes in things that she wants to. Zhu was working on his chainmail, so Jiang asked if he has enough metal rings to finish. Zhu replied, he doesn't think so and asked why, so she tells him that she want to make a basket out of these. Metal baskets are sturdier than bamboo ones, as long as she lines the interior with a piece of cloth, she will be able to use it for groceries. Zhu imagined her doing that and thought, honestly, it's a good idea. But then Jiang said, if there are not enough of these, then forget about it. Zhu then smiled cheerfully while saying, they might not have enough metal on hand, but they can get one made totally out of bamboo. Two days later, the delivery arrived and they opened the parcel. Zhu said, the pajamas he bought before also arrived with the basket. He was thinking about how just getting one set of pajamas is enough, after all, he will be moving into the master bedroom when it's summertime, so he will buy a new set then. He then looked at Jiang with the basket, who asked if it's looking good on her, and Zhu replied, it totally does. He was thinking about how as a competent future wife, it is necessary for her to have her own grocery basket. After some time, while they were returning from the grocery shopping, Zhu noticed someone playing basketball. He looked at the boy and said, that's Uncle Zhao's grandson. His name is Zhao Yu. Zhu went close to him and asked if he can borrow the basketball for a second. Yu gets happy after seeing Zhu and happily shouted its big brother. Zhu took the ball and showed his moves to him and then easily put the ball in the basket. Yu gets too excited after seeing his moves and asked if he can fly, to which Zhu said he can't, but that big sister over there can. He pointed at Jiang while she looked confused. Zhu asked Yu if he wants big sister to put on a show, and he excitedly said yes. Zhu gave the ball to Jiang and tell her to copy the move he just pulled, while Yu was looking at her with sparkling eyes. Jiang started dribbling while Zhu thought, it's a pity that the warrioress is unable to understand just how cool it was to pull off that dunk. He then noticed her moving with speed and jumped like she was flying. Both Zhu and Yu's jaws dropped after seeing her jumping like that, and Zhu took a picture of her. Zhu then returned the ball to Yu, who was still shocked, and then they quickly left. When they returned home, Jiang tells him that she bought a new piece of string when they were out, and he can hang this around his neck now. She then showed him a locket and said it's for him. Zhu asked if it's some kind of token of love, and Jiang said, it's not. Jiang thought that modern people don't seem to hand jade pieces around their waists anymore, so she ties it around his neck. She tells him to not lose it, and Zhu said, this is the piece that she has been wearing for a long time, so can she really bear to give it to him? He smiled and asked if there is any special significance behind it, and Jiang replied, no, there isn't. She thought, she has been wearing this piece of jade since she was young, second miss told her to give this as a token, if she met a good man. If it was someone from the same village, then she should keep it for emergencies, and exchange it for money if there is a need. When she first came over, she wanted to give this to Zhu as a means to repay him, but he refused, and now that they are in a relationship, she will still give it to him after all. She then looked at Zhu staring at it, so she asked him the reason for that. He said, he is just checking to see if there are any words inscribed on it, for example, Miss Jianghe, or something like that. He then put it under his t-shirt while saying, there's nothing written on it. After a while, when Jiang was in front of the computer, he puts a chair near her. She looked at him with suspicion, because she knows that he is up to no good. And just as she expected, he lift her legs and put them on his lap. Jiang thought, she will let him have his way, since she is in long pants. She then asked Zhu if there is any way to obtain equipment beside buying it with money. He said the majority of it requires money while they do give a piece or two during events, but she really doesn't need it while grinding through the dungeons. But in the PvP arena she will either wear lousy equipment like a Christmas hat and still rise through the ranks as proof of her skill or she would use equipment and skill to rise even higher. 
Jiang said, spending money isn't worth it, since she has not lost yet. But Zhu replied, that she will know the importance of having good equipment in the future. She then asked him about the Christmas hat, and if it's to celebrate the birth of a saint. Zhu explained, it's a festival celebrated by Westerners every year, where an old man would wear that hat and red outfit, and stuff present in everyone's stockings. Zhu continued, that he met him once when he was younger, and later on, when that old man was getting too old, he handed his business to him and appointed him as his successor. So if there's anything she wants, she can wear that pair of long and silky stockings, and he will stuff her presents into it. She looked at him with a weird face while realizing that he is up to no good. She thought to be touched by this rascal while wearing that kind of stockings, and then she gets too flustered while saying, no way in hell. She tells him that stockings are out of the question, but she can wear the hat for him, and Zhu tells her to make a promise. She promised him while thinking, that she seemed to have agreed to something weird, but whatever, he can't beat her anyways. Zhu then tells her that she can change her loadout in the PvP area, and once she wins enough matches, she will be able to upgrade her equipment. The main stat to look out for in her outfits and equipment is attack speed and offsets, so remember to not go for strength, and he repeated three times. But Jiang said, strength requires gold coins, and she grinded those coins from defeating all those monsters, so of course she won't upgrade strength. Zhu blushed after seeing her expressions, thinking, her game business is on the right track, and now he won't have to worry about her sneaking out in the middle of the night. Jiang looked at Zhu and thought, if she can't go back, it doesn't seem that bad to stay there and see how Zhu will trick her. Then the next day, Hao was telling Zhu that he asked Liu out for a chat, and his analysis was spot on. She spilled the beans the moment he hinted that he knew something was up, and she said that her family was pressuring her, and that. But Zhu tells him to stop, and what does he mean by spilling the beans, as it makes her sound like a villain or something? He then heard Hao saying, in any case, his first love was over before it even began, and tells him to not say anything to his father. Hao continued, he always felt that something was up, but he couldn't tell what the problem was exactly. But anyway, it's better that they are no longer entangled with each other. He then asked Zhu to answer him, why did he bump into something like that, and why it has to be him. But before he could say more, Zhu tells him to stay positive. After Zhu cut the call, he noticed that something is wrong with Jiang. He went close to her and asked what she was looking at, and she replied, she is just playing games. Zhu thought that sneaky reaction is similar to him, as he used to look like that when his classmates shared good-looking pictures with him. Jiang tells him to go away and not talk to her as she needs to concentrate on grinding. Zhu blushed while thinking, it doesn't matter if she is angry, ignorant, happy, or irritated, the warrioress is always so good looking. After some time, Jiang gets ready as it's time for her to do her streaming. And as soon as she started the stream, three viewers joined instantly. Jiang was playing her game while Zhu was in his training position. She was too focused on playing that she was not looking at the chats. A user named Lankyuda asked what's going on, and if he is lagging. She replied he doesn't, it's just that she is playing the game. He said, he knows that she is playing games, but what is that thing behind her? And another one replied, that it's Zhang Kui, so Lankyuda left the stream. But he joined the stream again, thinking, he couldn't help but want to figure out, what the hell is going on, as there is no nonsense, no background, only one person playing games. There's Zhang Kui posing menacingly on the door, and there's a person standing in a strange pose. At least, it should be a person, because if it's a wax figure, it's way too realistic. And then the guy shouted, it blinked. He asked in the chat if anyone saw that the guy just blinked, but others didn't believe him, saying, it's just a wax figure. Zhang noticed the comments and revealed that behind her is a person, and he is being punished to stand and cannot move. The guys asked how long does he have to stand, and this position should be the Hyoji of Fist that has been lost for a long time, and one requests her to play some music. She looked at Zhu, who winks at her, so she realized that he wants her to make her own decision. While she was turning on the music, Zhu was thinking that it's a good thing, that there aren't too much people in the stream, as it's not chaotic and messy. Then one hour later, Zhu was saying that it's not bad, since the number of people in the stream broke through double digits, so it's a big improvement. Jiang then suddenly gets too happy and shouted, someone gifted her Coca-Cola. Zhu said it's a good start and congrats her for making her first few cents from stream. He gave her a Coke while saying, he will also gift her a can of cold Coke. She then gets sad while saying, 
but the viewers are all only curious about what he is doing, and no one is watching her play games. Zhu said it's normal, because she hasn't reached a high rank yet, so him standing there can help her attract traffic and keep the audience. Zhu then tells her to record her play in the area next time, so if she encountered any famous streamers and defeats them by luck, it will be even better. He thought, if she doesn't buy equipment and continued to wear the trash stuff, then it will be impossible to continue her winning streak. Jiang take a sip of the coke and then excitedly said, All right, if she meet any famous streamers, she will beat them up. Zhu was thinking that his last movie review was uploaded last week, so he need to get more content for his movie review account. He thought he can scroll through the movie catalog with the warrioress, so he said, since it's 8 p.m., so let's cuddle and watch a movie. Jiang asked, why does they have to cuddle if they are watching a movie, and he happily said, because that's how couples watch a movie together. She muttered, the lights have to be off, right, and also, she want to take a shower before watching. Inside the bathroom, she was holding a pajama, thinking, she won't have to worry about him lifting her skirt, if she were to change into this new set of pajamas. Surely, he must know that she won't dare to hit him for real, and hence, she must be even more vigilant than ever. After changing, she thought that these clothes are way too short, as there is almost no difference from wearing the original set of pajamas, and if he suddenly licks her, what would she do? From early on, he expressed his intention to lick her, and now that she is clean and fresh out of the shower, he really might. But then she heard Zhu asking, why is she still standing over there, and she replied, she was thinking of hugging Winter Melon while watching. She went near the couch and to Zhu's surprise, she gave Winter Melon to him. He asked, why is she giving Winter Melon to him, as she was the one who wants to hug him, but she replied, it's his to hug. She glared at him, and then pulled him towards her. He asked what she is doing, and then to his surprise, she picked his legs, saying, she wants to hug his legs too. Zhu was crying, thinking, in order to not let him touch her legs, she's making the first move, she really became smart, and all he did was sniff a little last time. She asked him about the movie, like what movie is this? Zhu tells her the title and explained, this movie talks about a time with many feuding clans, though it is different from the time that she is from. The clans follow a set of rules, which are more that, what normal people are used to forming their own small circle. And then a thought crossed Zhu's mind, so he tells Jiang, that perhaps, it was this piece of jade that made her jump through space-time, and it will transport her back when there will be lightning. She said it's not possible, since it's just an ordinary piece of jade. But Zhu replied, that's how the novels usually go, it might be hiding an old man or some secret martial art in it, and it might awaken if he were to stuff it in his mouth when his gums bleed. Jiang gets scared and tells him to put it somewhere else, and what if it really brings him back to her time? Zhu replied, if it really does, shouldn't he pass this back to her, so that she can go back? She fell silent and was trying to find an answer. But then Zhu hugged her while saying, he was just joking, as magical things like that don't exist. And above all, he won't return this to her, since it's his now. He pats her head, while Jiang was thinking, that when she came there that day, she was just walking through a forest and somehow ended up in this steel city. She thought, it seems like this piece of jade has nothing to do with it at all. And it's also nice to live like this forever. Zhu looked at her face and smiled while thinking, she is completely off to dreamland. Looking at her right now, Zhu wondered, how can she claim to be a martial artist, when she lets her guard down like this? He leaned down to kiss her while thinking, he used to dream of setting off on his own adventure, to see what this management world had to offer. But now, with this warm lady in his arms, he just wants to stay at home and hug her all day. Zhu checked the time and thought, since she is in such a deep sleep, he should carry her to her room. Imagining, that surely she will be touched when she wakes up tomorrow, and will beg for him to move into the master bedroom with her. He thought that it's fortunate that he has been training his strength or he wouldn't be able to princess carry her. Zhu was guessing her weight, thinking that she really is light, not even 50 kg. Meanwhile, Zhang was pretending to sleep. Zhu take her inside the room and put her down and noticed her pouting. He then tells her to stop acting as this is considered entrapment. She gets up and asked what does he mean, so he explained, it means that she is making him have the impression that she is asleep, and he would take the opportunity to do something. And then, she would suddenly catch him in the act. He then grabbed her leg and start massaging it. Jiang gets flustered and pushed him away, asking, why is he touching? Zhu replied, this way, it doesn't count as him taking advantage of her anymore, and then he left after saying goodbye. 
After going outside, Zhu was thinking of writing the movie review while it is still fresh in his brain. After some time, Jiang was secretly looking at him from behind the door. She then asked him if he is not heading to bed yet, to which Zhu replied, he is preparing to. She then looked at the coke can and gets angry, thinking she asked if he wanted a straw earlier and he said that using one will make men look too feminine. Zhu then gets up and asked if she is unable to sleep because she just took a nap. But she said, it's not that. She tells him to make sure to sleep early and then quickly ran inside her room. Zhu blushed while thinking she has learned to care about when she go to bed, combined with his training and leading a disciplined life. He should be full of energy, even if he live till 80. Then the next morning, Jiang was doing her martial arts training while Zhu was watching her do that. He then asked Jiang if she knows the exorcism swordplay. She looked at him with a confused expression and said, she doesn't. She then went near him, as Zhu was showing her a video for that. They saw a video of a girl doing swordplay. She looked at him and said, this is a game, and she can't split mountains in half yet, but Zhu tells her to try performing the move. In reality, the exorcism swordplay is the butt tilt swordplay. She refused immediately after seeing the video, saying, she doesn't know how. Zhu starts begging, saying that it's quite easy and he will make breakfast for her, but Jiang said she will make it herself. And then, he decides to use his most dangerous skill and sit on the ground. He starts crying while shouting that he will do the laundry, will do the dishes, and also help her do the grinding. She looked at him with narrowed eyes and thought, he's just going to be looking anyways. She turns her head away, and Zhu noticed that his plan is working. She sighed and then agreed to try performing it and Zhu starts jumping with joy. He was about to play the video, but then Jiang snatched the phone and put it inside her pocket. Zhu then noticed her going away from him, which confused him. She then took the stance and starts performing the sword play. After a while, she looked at Zhu acting strange and asked, what's wrong? He said it's nothing much while thinking. How did someone come up with such a pervy form of sword play? He thought it's embarrassing, as he can't stand and can't sit. He then tells her that he is feeling a little unwell, so she can cook today and he will cook tomorrow. Jiang thought he is stuffing his nose with tissues, so asking him to cook in that state is a little ridiculous. While having breakfast, Zhu was thinking about how he will have to be more careful in the future as his sense of danger is all messed up with his pervy thoughts. After some time, he tells her to read her book while he will do the grinding for her. Watching her reading books, Zhu thought that it's much better than letting her interact with her nonsensical audience. Zhu then remembered that the access control system on the main entrance has been installed, so he tells Jiang that he is going outside for a while, as there is something he has to do. After going out, he went to her auntie Chang and said he wants an access key too, so she tells him to fill out the form first. He said he will fill out the form for his girlfriend as well, so auntie Chang asked why didn't she come with him. Zhu said he was out for a walk and ended up there, so he took the opportunity to get this settled, since there is no need to waste a trip just to get the access key. Auntie Cheng then checked the information and said she is only 19, so she can't get married this year. Zhu gets startled by that and asked who said that they are getting married this year, and she replied it's just what she thinks. Zhu replied they haven't dated for that long yet, also she has no kin in her hometown so they are unable to get her ID processed so he will have to accompany her back to her hometown when he is free. She said all the best to him and tells him to add Jiang to his family registry as that girl is a good catch and she knows how to manage a household. She then gives him the access keys while saying she can't wait to receive their wedding invitation. Zhu then came back and gave one key to Jong and explained that from the next month onwards, she will have to use this to get in and out. He then tells her about his conversation with Auntie Cheng and that she wants them to get married this year, which makes her flustered. He then sit on the sofa while saying she is just 19, so even the law doesn't allow them to get married yet. She muttered, so she can't get married at 19. Zhu added that she will probably be considered an old lady if she were to get married at this age during her time. But she gets angry after hearing that and asked, who is he calling an old lady? After some time, Zhu noticed her sword and gets an idea. He picked it up and requests her to teach him some elegant swordplay, so Jiang asked if he is sure. Zhu was thinking that he really had no interest in martial arts. He wouldn't have caught all of the ancient martial arts drama and uploaded about them since his university days. She looked at him with a doubtful expression and said, let's eat first. 
After some time, she was teaching him how to use a sword, telling him that he needs to concentrate his force at the tip of the sword. Zhu was thinking about the times when he sued to practice wielding a sword. Jiang explained, once he will have a good grasp on wrist techniques, he can start on learning the techniques, like stabbing, striking, and Zhu nervously asked if they fight on instinct. She then gets into her evil mode and starts saying stuff like how she doesn't even need to put any thought in striking him down once he points his sword at her. Zhu looked at her expression and tells her to stop saying such scary stuff as he is just learning this for fun and he is not going to point this at someone else. He said, this is something that is fun for him, just like scrolling through short form videos is an interest of his. After some time, Zhu was thinking that after training for more than an hour, he seemed to be more tired than he thought he would be. He then decides to take a break and work on his chain mail. He was thinking of how his life become very fulfilled since uploading videos, reviewing movies, trading stocks, and practicing martial arts, each one needs time for growth. But fortunately, it's all semi-entertained, so he can enjoy it with Jiang. Then, the time come for Jiang's livestream, and as always, Zhu was still standing behind her, doing his training. The users were still talking about him, saying, he is in the same position as yesterday, and it could be that he hasn't moved the whole day. Jiang tells him that they are saying, he hasn't moved the whole day. But Zhu was not responding to her and thought, a bunch of mortals, they know nothing about strengthening the body. Crouch like a bow, stand like a pine, no moving, no shaking, sit like a bell, rush like a gust of wind. He thought that he is now a pine tree, and as they all know, a tree cannot move. A guy in the chat asked Jiang, why is the boy behind him ignoring her? She said, because he doesn't like to talk, he just likes to stand still, he is a martial arts maniac. Zhu thought it's not bad, she learned how to talk nonsense, and wondered if she learned it from him. The new users were talking, if anyone seen him move, and why does he look like a mannequin? The guy from before was saying, he tried imitating the stance a few days ago, and he couldn't handle it after only a few minutes. But then, Jiang seriously started explaining, that this should not be practiced randomly, as doing it wrong can harm their body. She said that he did the wrong stance for a long time at the beginning, and she corrected him many times before he got to the point where he is now. She was thinking that the number of viewers is around 20, and it takes time for crops to mature, so as long as she works hard, hundreds or thousands of people will come to watch. She thought that her current task is to play the game well and win every duel while wearing an ugly hat. Suddenly, one of the viewers said he just realized that the streamer seemed to hasn't lost yet, which shocked the others. Zhu then noticed his phone ringing, so he picked it up and noticed that it's from Wang Zai. Suddenly, everyone starts commenting that he moved, he's alive, and it's a little scary when he looks at them. While Zhu was wondering why everyone seemed to be there for him, since this stream is Jiang playing games, he saw that Wang Zai joined the stream. He sends a reward to Jiang's stream, while Zhu was in shock. Wang commented that if he stand for another hour, then he will send a few more rewards, and the others agreed with him, saying that they want to know how long can he stand. Jiang tells him that this user wants him to stand for another hour, while Zhu was thinking that Wang is looking for a beating. He then angrily leaves while saying he is not doing it, and Jiang tells the viewers the same. He saw her getting sad, so he tried to escape the situation by saying people wanted to see him standing still, there is something wrong with that. He explained that the main point is her playing games, so they should focus on her playing, and Jiang said, it's true. Zhu then leaves angrily while muttering, he will scold Wang Zai's to death. Jiang then asked him, how much was that gift just now, and Zhu said about a hundred yuan, but she will get around 30% of it, which shocked her. He explained that she didn't sign a contract, so the platform will have to take a commission, and if she does well, they will send an offer to ask her to sign the contract. He then asked Jiang if she recorded it, since she can still earn money if people watch it after it gets uploaded. He then happily tells her that from now on, they will be the colleagues. He tells her to upload the video of today's stream, since it can attract people to watch the future live streams. He said, it's something that she need to learn anyways, so he will teach her how to do it. He was thinking that taking a step back, even if she wants to sign a contract, he would be the one signing it. After all, the stream is under his name. However, there are too many rules and regulations in signing the contract, and you are required to stream a certain amount of hour, so it's troublesome to think about. There are roughly three different paths one can choose from. 
First, sign a contract directly, in which you get a basic salary and recommendation, lots of resources, and a reasonable share of gifts. Second, sign a contract with a brokerage company, there are usually a lot of pitiful like this, and the revenue platform will take half of it first, and the rest will be given to the brokerage company. And third is a free person, where one can broadcast wherever they want, is completely free. But there are not many promotional resources, the gift split is big, but the advantage is freedom. He thought that they are playing around right now to get her familiar with it, and when the time comes for the contract, she can try to be the food streamer she wants to be. Jiang then asked Zhu if he wants to try standing for half an hour in tomorrow's stream, and in the remaining half hour work on his chainmail. Zhu thought about it and then tells her to forget it, since it's not very interesting to watch. He said that manual work is boring, and only a half-sleeve has been made till now, so no one will know what they are doing. She gets impressed, saying that he thought it through like always, and Zhu said he is also thinking a lot now, much more than before. He said she even learned to talk nonsense, to which she smiled happily and said she is going to be his colleague. Zhu then gets serious and said he learn her martial arts, she learn his craft, so it would make sense to call each other master. He said that she should address him as master from now on, but she tells him to stop being so weird. Zhu added that she really doesn't know the joy and asked what does he want to call him, to which she said she will call him Zhu. But then he quickly went close to her and asked, then what will she call him after they get married? She gets flustered and was about to say husband, but then stopped herself and said they will see when the time comes. Zhu then gets happy after looking at her expression and gets excited just by thinking about it. Then, two days later, Zhu is going somewhere while thinking that only through diligent practice, once can become proficient in the skill or arts. Suddenly, he heard Wang Zai shouting that his father is there. Hao was also with Wang, who said that in just two months, he got fatter again. But Zhu tells him to shut up, since this is called being robust. Wang asked Zhu about his live stream and what exactly has he been practicing. Hao gets confused listening to all that, while Wang was saying that he tried it too, but collapsed in just a few minutes. Hao then tells them to stop talking, and asked about what this sunflower manual is. Zhu gets serious and said it's a long story. He went to the park one morning and saw an old man doing exercise there. He asked him if it's useful, and he said it is, but he didn't believe it, so the old man tells him to try hitting him then. Wang interrupted, saying, then he paid 80,000 yuan for injuring that old man. But Zhu tells him to not interrupt. Hao then stopped both of them from arguing. He then challenged Zhu to an arm wrestle match, saying he wants to see the magic of the martial arts he has been practicing. Zhu agreed and tells him to not cry when he lose, which made Hao a little angry. The arm wrestle match begins, and then to Hao's surprise, he felt that something is wrong, as he couldn't take him down in one go. Zhu was completely unfazed by it, and if wanted, he could have defeated him in a second. Meanwhile, Wang was acting as a referee, telling them to use more force. And then, the long-awaited moment came, one defeated another. As soon as Zhu lost, Wang makes fun of him and said, it seems like the godly martial arts are nothing more than that. Zhu brushed it off while saying, Hao is worthy of being the guardian of the people, as he still can't beat him. But Hao was confused, thinking, how come there isn't a feeling of winning at all, and wondered, if Zhu lost on purpose. He then asked Zhu what kind of godly medicine did he eat. After hearing him say that, Zhu fell silent for a moment. And then he gets serious and continued his old man's story, but Hao calls that bullshit. Wang then tells Hao that it isn't complete nonsense and then showed him a video of Zhu. It was from Jiang's stream where Zhu was performing martial arts. Wang shouted at Zhu, saying he is sure that it's martial arts as his pose exudes an aura of righteousness. Zhu checked the time and thought it's time for Jiang's stream while Hao and Wang were having a discussion about meeting a real martial artist in this age. Wang then points at him while shouting, he just lined the table with a tissue, since when does he exhibit such girly behavior? He said that Zhu definitely mastered the sunflower manual. But Zhu angrily replied that his clothes are new and this table is dirty, so why wouldn't he do that? In reality, he was thinking that they won't understand, that this was given to him by his girlfriend after extensive bargaining with the street vendor. But then, Wang hold his hands and begged him to teach him as well. But Zhu showed him the reality by saying that he is weak, his foundation is poor, his body condition is bad, and he will crumble after a short training session. 
but then he points at Hal, saying he can learn though, but Hal refused and said he would rather do 200 push-ups or shadow box than to maintain that pose for an hour. He then tells them to stop saying nonsense and then gets up to get some food. Hal then asks them if they are drinking, and if yes, then he will help them, but then he suddenly stopped and freezes on the spot. Zhu wondered, why is he so nervous all of a sudden, and what did he exactly see? Zhu gazed back a little and finds some men drinking and having fun, so he wondered if Hao is looking at those three guys. Zhu thought he should not make any rash moves. Meanwhile, Wang was shivering with fear and was not saying anything. Hao then tells Zhu to go and get the food instead, as he has something else to do. Hao then noticed four men walking past those three guys. He also gets up and starts walking in their direction. And as soon as they all reach near, they flip the table and pin all of them down. Wang noticed this all and asked Zhu if they need to run, but Zhu said there is no need for that. Hao and the other police officers then took the criminals away. He looked back and tells them to meet another time, with a cheerful smile. Wang said, from the looks of it, it seems like he will get merit for that, and Zhu also agreed with him. Zhu was thinking that it's different from what is shown on television, the plot usually has him shouting freeze, before the other person flips the table. Wang remembered Hao's expression and said they were just hanging out and having a good time. But even he feel Hao's killing intent when he got serious, he couldn't move at all. Zhu tells him to cheer up while saying, let's just get him to treat them as compensation next time. Zhu then remembered how he too froze when he first saw Jiang drew her sword, and he would still get unsettled when she points the sword at him during training. He is not afraid now, just used to it. Meanwhile, Wang was thinking about Zhu and how that one is a rising star in the online world, while the other became a guardian of the city, like the kind one would see on television. While on the other hand, he is just same as before, wandering around aimlessly with nothing to his name. Zhu looked at his expression and thought about cheering him up. He asked him in a cheerful voice, would eating pig's kidney improve his own if it had kidney deficiency? Wang then gets into a deep thought while Zhu was enjoying looking at him and then he tells him to not send gifts in the stream since they are doing it for fun and the platform takes a cut for free. After some time, Zhu reached home and saw Jiang sitting on a couch. He went close to her and asked if she is unhappy because he didn't catch her live stream. She sadly replied that they were all there to watch him and they were asking where he was and no one was watching the stream when he wasn't around. Zhu couldn't believe that those dumbass viewers were all there just to see him stand still. He then looked at Jiang and wondered if she is acting coy right now. He hugged her while she was asking if grinding is all she is good for. Suddenly she mistakenly hit his chin while going back. She asked him if he went drinking again as he is stinking. She then tells him that she just showered so don't make her smelly like himself or the bed will stink too. She was thinking that having his scent around makes her feel like he's right beside her, while Zhu thought he shouldn't stink that much just from drinking beer. After some time, Zhu was taking a shower while thinking she has learned how to fuss about others and she doesn't let him hug her after he went drinking, though she restrains herself while giving him a smack. He wondered if it's an innate talent that all females are born with. After coming out, he tells Jiang that he saw somebody getting arrested today and the one arresting them had an imposing posture. His whole body was relaxed while his neck and shoulders were tense and one could tell that he was ready to fight, and asked Jiang if she has ever experienced such a moment. She then gets serious and gave him a murderous look, asking if he is ready to fight, which scared Zhu. She then asked him with a smile if it was like that. Zhu starts laughing while his whole body was shivering and he now understand why that big black dog decided to turn tail and run. He was about to leave, but then he turned back and said, it's not quite right, and it wasn't like this, when she first pointed her sword at him. Jiang calmly replied, it's because all he intended to do was to give her an umbrella at that time. After a while, he was thinking of all the things he had done, like tricking her into holding hands, drying her hair, hug and kiss her, and wondered if he was dancing with death all this time. He then heard Jiang saying that he hasn't touched her hands in a long time. He quickly went close to her and said, let him hold her hand now. He thought, it is true that he has been touching her hands less, since he has been thinking of ways to touch her legs, so he decides to teach her to edit videos, since he can hold her hands while doing that. He then asked her if that was her killing intent just now, and Jong replied no, it's just that he is too sensitive to danger. She explained, it's like how she doesn't feel any danger when she is with him, 
but when she bump into that policeman, she would naturally be cautious. Zhu thought, even though Hao wouldn't harm Jiang, but from his perspective, she indeed has a murky history, so he won't go easy on her. Zhu asked why did she scare him if she is not afraid of him, so Jiang replied, because he is the one who wanted to see what it was like. Zhu went close to her lips to kiss her, but then she pushed his face away, saying, he still reeks of alcohol. Zhu reminds her that she forced herself on him when she was drunk, to which Jiang said, he can force himself on her too, if he can beat her in a fight. Zhu felt frustrated after hearing that, since there is nothing he can do about that. Later at night, he was reading a book, thinking, it's been more than two years, since he last sat down and relaxed while reading. He then covered his face with the book and starts thinking about Jiang, how she has begun tightening her leash on him, and this is definitely not a good sign. The implication is that he will have to either not drink, or he won't be able to kiss her after drinking alcohol. And if he wants to do both, then he will have to suppress her strength, but that's basically impossible, even though the thought of it makes him excited. She looked back and asked him if he fall asleep. She went near him, while Zhu was thinking about how he can't just let her push him around, otherwise, it will be all over when they will be sleeping in the same room. She then sits near him and starts staring at him. Meanwhile, Zhu was wondering what she is planning to do. She then asked him if this is entrapment. But Zhu said she can't just learn the wrong meaning of words, as entrapment is when he has a plot, and she pretends to sleep and see if he would do something. She asked what kind of plot is he talking about. So Zhu explained that she wouldn't secretly kiss him, and even if she did, he wouldn't resist, so it does not count. Only when he is unwilling, and she is more than willing, it will count. She understands that, and starts leaving while thinking, watching him sleep just now, really made her want to bite his lips a little. Suddenly, a thought crossed her minds and she asked, what if she wants to secretly beat him up when he is sleeping, so will it count? But Zhu said it won't, since she can't beat him secretly, as he would wake up the moment she hits him. He then grabbed her hand and said, even if she knock him down and then proceed to secretly beat him, he will still know, since when he will wake up, his whole body will hurt. Therefore, there is no way to do that secretly, and it's different from when he touches her legs, since she wouldn't know a thing when she will wake up. He then asked her why does she even want to secretly beat him up, to which Jiang replied, it's just a question. He was playing with her hands, so Jiang thought that it actually feels kind of good to be touched like that. Suddenly, she starts wondering, why is she having this thought and realized that it's because Zhu's face is covered. She thought that his guy usually looks like he is enjoying it way too much, so it's so much better when she can't see his face. She then quickly removed her slippers and then lie beside him. She thought that laying there with the person you like through the night, it is really comfortable. Zhu tried to remove the book from his face, but she put it back and tells him to not move. He asked why is she acting all weird, but she said it's not weird in the slightest. She was thinking if Zhu's face wasn't covered, he would have already made all sorts of moves on her, so covering his face makes her feel so much safer. Meanwhile, Zhu was wondering if she get addicted to this because it was too comfortable the last time they cuddled like this, or did she use the book to cover his face and pretended that he is asleep? She thought she really wants to fall asleep like this, but just then, she opened her eyes as she realized something. Zhu heard her shouting, she won't get pregnant from sleeping on the sofa, right? He then asked her if she didn't watch any adult videos, but she angrily shouted, why would she look at that stuff? He asked if her second miss didn't teach her how babies are born, to which she tells him to shut up and said, she taught her everything. Zhu realized that her second miss didn't get the chance to teach her about that, maybe she was waiting for Jiang to get married first. Zhu tells her that she will get pregnant if she continues moving like that, but Jiang muttered, she is feeling a little hot. Zhu gets angry and asked, what kind of impure words are those? After some time, he tells her that he will buy a fan for her, so she can use it in the afternoon, as it's not good for her health to be under AC in this kind of weather. She said okay to it and thought, his arms are so cool and comfortable. Zhu asked if she is afraid of the heat, to which Jiang replied, that she feel a little dry, as if a small fire is warming the bottom of her heart, and it make her want to fidget. Then, after a while, Jiang suddenly gets up and said, no more. She grabbed the mouse while saying, if only she could fidget around. This guy said that she will get pregnant if she move around though, so she wants to see if that true or not. Zhu then looked at her making notes of something, while she searched how to get pregnant on the web. Zhu went close to her and tells her that touching her feet won't lead to pregnancy. 
To which Jiang replied of course she knows that, because if touching feet could get one pregnant, the world would have been filled with people already. He then tells her that not everything she sees on the internet is correct, it's just like liking shoes, as it's actually weird and normal people aren't like that. Only when you are really into someone, it actually happens. She looked at him with a disappointed expression and asked if he is finally admitting that he has a thing for shoes. Zhu thought, this is just liking shoes, it's not even someone else's, it's hers, so she replied yes, he does. But then he explained to her that the time when he hid her wooden sandals was because they were antiques. And after selling those, he would have been able to buy a big house with farmland, and she could have farmed to her heart's content. But Jiang said, why would she still be farming if she had a big house? So Zhu asked what she meant by that. She explained that she would hire someone to tend the fields, and Zhu thought, it's true that every farmer has the dream of being a landlord. He then tells her that he is heading to bed first, and reminds her to not blindly trust everything she sees on the internet. Inside his room, Zhu was thinking about how people from ancient times seemed to have an unspeakable fear of childbirth, because during that time, giving birth was like flirting with death. And asking the question, the mom or the child, just the thought of it chills him to the bone. Regardless of the era, childbirth still poses some sort of risk to the mother, even though it is as low as possible nowadays. Suddenly, he heard Jiang knocking on the door for the first time in the middle of the night. He thought, even though he expected this to happen sooner or later, could this be the moment, right after searching up questions about childbirth? He opened the door and she asked him if he has another tube of the cream. Meanwhile, he was in his own world, thinking about the stuff that is going to happen. But then, Jiang asked him why is he staring at her like that, so he came back to his senses. He showed the tubes online, and Jiang gets shocked and said, the one that auntie gave was this expensive. Zhu tells her that she can call her mom instead of auntie now, which makes her flustered. Zhu ordered the cream for her hands, and while she was leaving, she noticed that he was not going inside. She then pushed him inside and tells him to go to bed. She then go back to her room and sighed after locking the door. She then thought about how having their arms touching was comfortable, and there was a moment when she wanted to rip his shirt off. But then she shook her head, saying that she is a warrioress, so she can't do such things. Then the next morning, Zhu was practicing swordplay. After a while, he gets a call from Hao, saying he discovered that when he is with them, he always bumps into someone for him to arrest. But Zhu replied that this is just a case of a blind cat catching a dead mouse. Hao calls this nonsense and said it's true, and then gives some previous examples, and Zhu asked if he is sure that he doesn't have just a foul mouth. He replied that his words are worth in gold, so Zhu tells him to just fish out a gold piece, the next time he will be broke. Zhu asked about the people Hao arrested last night, to which Hao said they were just swindlers. Zhu thought, judging by his reaction, it's difficult to believe that those people were just mere swindlers, it was as though he met his mortal enemies. Hao tells him to hang out again, but Zhu replied, he knows that Hao is hoping to be able to catch someone again while they are eating. After the call gets disconnected, Zhu tells Jiang that only her mouth is the truly precious one, it's as though they were smeared in honey, which confused her. After some time, he and Jiang were going to visit his parents' house. Jiang asked if she call her auntie or mom, to which he replied, she should just call her mom. He then looked at Jiang, who wasn't able to bring herself to say that. After some time, Jiang greeted his mom, while addressing her as auntie. They then entered the house and Zhu asked his mom, where dad is. She tells him that another burial site requires his help, so he is out traveling for work, and that he won't be home for the next couple of days. Zhu sighed in disappointment, since he wanted Jiang to call him dad to observe his reaction, though in the end, she couldn't able to do it, and he is not at home. Meanwhile, Jiang checked her phone, thinking, it's run out of battery again. She asked Zhu, why aren't phones designed with a removable battery, just like a flashlight where you can use it after stuffing the battery in. Zhu remembered the earlier time and said, actually, phone used to come with removable batteries before it was changed to its current state. He then tells her to use her phone to search for the reason if she wants to know, thinking. That way, she won't create a habit to ask him about it all the time. He then lend her his phone and tells her to search for it, while he will be in the study room, looking at some books. Inside the room, Zhu was looking at the bookshelf, thinking about what he should read to pass the time. Suddenly, he comes across a book with the title, The History of Empress Wu Zeshen. He then heard his mom saying it's time to eat, so he replied he is coming. 
After he sit on the dining table, Jiang returned his phone back. Zhu thought that was really quick and she even changed his wallpaper. His mom asked him what shenanigans were he up to in the study just now, to which he replied. He was doing research on history and trying to understand the heritage of their people. But his mom didn't believe him at all. But then, Zhu asked what does she mean by that, as loving antiques runs in the blood of the mighty Zhu family. Jiang then heard him saying that his dad likes thousands of years old burial sites, and he as well likes, and then he chuckled. Jiang thought he is doing it again and then pinched his leg. While Zhu is shivering in pain, his mom tells him to stop spouting nonsense, or he will lead Jiang astray. She then tells Jiang to eat bitter gourd since it's warm outside. She said that she should soak them in salted water before stir-frying them, and it will be less bitter. But Jiang asked, aren't they supposed to eat bitter gourds for their bitterness? Zhu then happily tells his mom that Jiang knows how to cook more dishes than her now. She constantly research on how to cook tasty dish for him, and learns really fast. His mom gets a little angry and tells him to quietly eat his food, and thought, this rascal only brings his girlfriend to show her off every time. And now that his dad isn't here, he is showing off to her. After he done with the eating, his mom saw him going back to the study room, so she tells him to not mess up his dad's study, or he will flip out at him when he's back. He tells her to not worry and promise to put the books back when he is done with them. Inside, he was reading the book while thinking. He didn't expect his dad to have done research on this, considering how refined he is. Suddenly, he noticed Jiang entering the room, so he quickly put down the book that he was reading. She checked the bookshelf and asked if all these books are on history. He replied yes and tells her to read if she wants, but she must remember to put it back after she is done, or his dad won't be able to find it when he wants to read it. She went close to him, thinking that it feels weird. She is learning all there is about the modern world, while he is doing the same about ancient history. Zhu's mom then noticed them sticking close to each other and gets happy. She then quickly closes the door, thinking she should stop looking, as it's too spicy for her eyes. Jiang then noticed the book that Zhu was reading earlier. She picked it up and start reading it. But after looking at the content, her hands started shaking. She looked at Zhu with disgust and asked, why is he reading stuff like this? To which he replied, this is serious historical research, so please do not look at it with prejudice. She muttered, if he really thinks that she will believe his nonsense and thought she was happy because he was learning about history, but it turns out that he was reading about stuff like this. But then, Zhu asked how is it nonsense, and if she knows anything about what a boy toy is. Her whole body was shaking, while she was trying to say something. She then pouts and thought, how can she talk about such indecent things? He hold her hand and said, he will teach her about it. He then opened his legs and make her sit in between. She gets flustered and said, something is pressing against her. Zhu was trying his best to control himself in his Excalibur, but couldn't. He then tells her to stand, saying, it would be better that way, which confused her. At the end, they decided to sit apart. He then showed her a book, saying, it's filled with historical information, there is a large amount of info on the Tang Dynasty as well, and she might find traces of her village. After some time, while she was reading a book, Zhu looked at her and thought, when Jiang is quiet, she exudes an indescribable aura from head to toe. She isn't like the others, who would rest their arms on the table while burying their heads in the book. Her shoulders are square, and her back is straight. Suddenly, she felt a sudden chill all over her body as Zhu poked her a little. She jumped away and asked what is he doing, and he said with a smile that it's just a small poke. He then tells her that he has a matter to attend to, so he will be back when it's time to eat, so she can continue reading books, or can talk with his mom. She thought he is childish, and she won't be like him in the future. After some time, Zhu reached his destination, Hao's home, as he was there to check up on Hao's father. He went inside and asked if Hao is out again, and his uncle replied positively. Zhu then noticed his uncle's phone, which has his account video opened, so Zhu asked if he likes his videos. Zhu then tells him to watch it for entertainment, and there is no need to argue with his dad in the comments, also tells him that his dad is using a T9 input while he's using the handwriting method, so it's hard to compete. His uncle replied that his dad is the one who wants to argue, and thought, while he spent half a day writing out sentences, Zhu's dad is typing out just a bunch of words. Zhu then suggested him to just exchange voice messages on WeChat, so his uncle asked if he is there to fan the flames. 
His uncle then asked him about Jiang, so Zhu tells him that she is reading books at home. Hao's dad then offered him to drink, saying that he got a bottle of snake wine. But Zhu refused and said his girlfriend won't let him kiss her if he drinks. Hao's dad grits his teeth and looked at him with disgust. After some time, he asked Zhu about the chainmail he is making and if it is wearable, to which Zhu replied, yes it is. Hao's dad then imagined himself in the armor after hearing that the final product will be around 10 or 15 kgs, and he would be filled with bravado once he wear it. He then excitedly asked Zhu if he can try it on after he is done making it. Zhu thought they really are father and son, and then tells him that it will be of smaller size so he will not be able to wear it. Hao's dad then gets an idea that he should make one himself as he has plenty of time on his hands anyway, and once they are done they can both wear it out on the streets. But Zhu quickly refused, saying he will not wear it on streets, and also tells his uncle to be careful, or Hao might arrest him, but he replied he wouldn't dare to. Hao's dad said he will take a closer look at his videos from now on and get the materials needed by tomorrow. After an hour, Zhu returned home and was secretly watching Jiang and his mom talking. His mom noticed him coming and said, so he is back. He replied he is, and that he went to have a chat with Uncle Kim. His mom thought her son doesn't have much to talk about with his dad, while Hao is able to strike a conversation with him. It might be true that fathers and sons were enemies in the previous life. She then tells him that if he were to switch places with Hao, both his dad and Uncle Kin would be on cloud 9. But Zhu replied, he can't do that, since he still has her. But she shooed him away, saying, she doesn't care about either of them, as one of them is never home and out doing dangerous things. While the other never leaves his house, which isn't normal behavior, which pierced right into Zhu's soul. He then tells his mom that they are going home now. She asked him if they are not going to eat before returning and he replied that they have something going on at night. While they were on their way back to home, Jiang was thinking about how chatting with Auntie and hearing stories from when Zhu was a boy was really fun. But looking at the way he is currently, it's hard to imagine him being chased by a big goose down the entire street. Zhu noticed her staring at him, so he asked her the reason for that. She smiled and said, Today, she learned that the purpose of his martial arts training is to defeat monkeys and goose, and asked if there is anything else. Zhu replied, another reason is that he can spank her butt while holding her down. She looked at him angrily and thought, if there wasn't anyone out on the streets, she would let him have a taste of her true strength. After a while, they reached home, and as soon as they went inside, Jiang pins him against the wall. She pulled a table by her leg and then stood on it, thinking, it's more intimidating this way. Zhu was wondering if she is exploiting the situation, and he is not dumb so he won't be going along with it. Zhu tried to explain, but before he could say anything, she forcefully kissed him. And while she was leaving after teaching him a lesson, Zhu was thinking that she now knows how to have fun. But then he thought that it's a little off though, since their roles were supposed to be switched under normal circumstances. Later at night, she tells him that the bitter gourd dish that Auntie cooked wasn't bitter enough, so she made it for him. He took the first bite, and Jiang excitedly asked him about the taste. Zhu smiled happily and said, it's super tasty. She then tells him that when she will be teaching this dish to others, she will teach them both, the bitter and the non-bitter versions. Zhu asked if she is preparing to teach people how to cook as a food streamer, to which she replied yes she is. She also reminds him of plan to sell her salted vegetables, and added that she will incorporate his channel as well, when the time comes. But as soon as he heard that, Zhu gets too shocked. He tells her that there is no need for his channel to be around, while thinking, looks like her business plan involve him as well. Jiang was looking at him with suspicion, thinking he must be looking down on her again. Now, it was time for Jiang's live stream, and Zhu gets in his standing position. Wang was watching the stream, thinking, Zhu sure knows how to have fun. He decides to send some gifts, thinking good stuff needed. But then he remembers Zhu's words, that he should not send gifts in the stream. But then, he gets too angry to see that someone just took the number one rank on the leaderboard. Jiang also gets surprised after seeing that someone gifted her 10 pairs of angelic wings. Her eyes were sparkling, thinking if these all are for her. But then she pouts after realizing that it's not for her. She looked at Zhu with anger, thinking in just these few minutes he managed to earn a few hundred yuan. She was biting her lips in anger and if it would have been another guy then she would have murdered him. 
she gets into her evil mode, thinking as long as she plays the game well, she will attract her share of the audience too. She was winning every battle and the viewers starts praising her as well, saying, winning is like a piece of cake for her. And as soon as the stream ended, Zhu's phone starts ringing. He picked the phone, saying young master Wang, what are your orders? And Wang replied, his stream is really popping up, as he got a couple of hundred viewers for standing there. Zhu tells him that it's a gaming stream, he is just a part of the package. Zhu checked that more than 500 people have seen it, and thought, just watching her play games isn't all that interesting. It also isn't all that interesting just watching him stand, so the two of them together produced this amazing reaction. Wang then suggested him to set up a studio, as it will definitely be promising. Zhu puts his hand on her waist, and said he won't get involved in this matter. But then suddenly, he said in a teary voice, that he is just accompanying his girlfriend, he isn't planning anything. She was pinching him hard, so Zhu quickly cuts the call, telling him that he is just streaming for fun. After the call ended, Jiang said that even though they earned a couple of hundred yuan today, they sent it because of him. But Zhu replied, isn't what's his is hers as well. But she tells him to shut up, shouting, she knows that he is trying to play tricks. She gets up in anger and took some deep breaths. She angrily announced that she will make more money than him in the future. Meanwhile, Zhu was feeling good after seeing her reaction, since she was on fire. After she left, he thought that she even knows he was playing tricks on her. He checked her browsing history and said, browsing without a trace is even easier for her. It was the month of May now, and Jiang has started to transform into a modern person. Zhu was telling her to be careful and stay alert when she is outside, as she was going somewhere. She gets ready, take her bag and then leaves with a smile. Outside, the guard asked her where Zhu is, to which she replied that he's at home watching TV. As Zhang was leaving, he thought that this girl is becoming more and more like little Zhu, and even how they walk is similar. When she first showed up, she was walking like a tiger. While walking on the streets, Zhang noticed a store, so she went and purchased a cola for herself. She reached a bus stop and thought she hasn't been on this route yet. After some time, she arrived at her destination, the Baikeng district, which was near the end of the city. After walking for a while, she reached the farmland and gets surprised. Zhu was working on the computer when he received a photo from her, saying that she is there. He thought that her range of activities is increasing. The warrioress who wanted to get out of the city finally walked out of the steel forest. Back at Jiang, she ate a grain and thought, if they build a house in the wild, cultivate a large piece of land, and then get Zhu to harvest it with a sickle, it doesn't sound half bad. But then she thought that he won't be too willing. After some hours, Zhu was calling her, wondering if she is having so much fun that she forgot to come home. But before he could make the call, Zhang came with some groceries. She came close to him and gave some rice grains, saying she saw the countryside, it was really as expected, there were crops everywhere. But then to her shock, Zhu tells her that these sometimes be sprayed with insecticide to keep insects away, so she shockingly asked if she has been poisoned. Zhu said a little is fine, but make sure to not just eat random things in the future, and she took a sigh of relief. Zhu asked why she head out so far this time, to which Jiang said she just wanted to explore. Zhu was thinking, when the corn will ripe, she won't go and steal other people's corns, right? He tells her to get an electric bike, that way, she will be able to ride her own little bicycle anywhere, but Jiang said that she is fine with a normal one, since she can pedal at top speed. While having lunch, she asked if they can get a house on the outskirts to stay there and grow some core, to which Zhu tells her that the houses there are indeed cheap. Her eyes sparkled and she excitedly asked if it meant that they can do it. But then Zhu said it's not convenient, as there are few food and shopping options, there is no place to go for supper when she is hungry in the middle of the night. She pouted after hearing him, and Zhu continued that definitely it's more relaxing there, and he was originally a relaxed person. But after getting together with her, he has become less relaxed. She was blushing, and then tells him to eat his food. After eating their lunch, Jiang tells him that she is going out for a little walk. After her walk, she sits on a bench to relax. Suddenly, Auntie Chen came and asked what is she doing? And Jiang said, she is just relaxing and observing the outside. Auntie Cheng tells her that she is headed to the May Day seminar, so would she like to come along and redeem an umbrella? To which Jiang replied positively. While they were crossing the road, Auntie Cheng was thinking that having such a young and beautiful lady by her side makes her young again. Suddenly, Jiang noticed that a man was about to hit Auntie Cheng. 
But then, the man finds himself on the ground. Auntie Chen asked Jiang what exactly happened. She explained that this man nearly collided with her, but she pulled her away at the right time. The guy gets up and asked if they are blind and have a death wish, but Auntie Cheng shouted that he is the blind one since he ran the red light. The man was not ready to accept his mistake and was shouting back at her. But then, he suddenly went pale as he noticed Zhang looking at him with anger. He shrinked back and apologized, saying it was his fault and he won't run a red light ever again. He tried to pick up his scooter while thinking, an old woman and a fearsome girl. He can't cross them, so he has to run while he can. He started the scooter and quickly left, and thought, if he were to utter another word, that girl would have thrown a fist in his direction. Meanwhile, Zhu was planning to see what the warrioress has been up to lately. But to his surprise, her account was now password protected. Zhu gets angry, saying who does she think he is, he is not someone who peeks at someone's browsing history. But the reality was different. Now that he was free and has nothing to do, so he decides to get the ginger plant from the kitchen and basket in sunlight. While he was cleaning the plant, he noticed Zhang entering the house. He saw a cactus plant in her hand, so he asked why did she buy that. She replied that she saw potted plants being solid, and the small emerald green ones were very pretty. Auntie Cheng said that this helps prevent radiation. Zhu gets impressed and said that she also know what radiation is, to which she replied positively and said she looked it up before. Even though it's invisible, it is terrifying to think about. She then smiled and said she also bought snacks. There is peanut candy, dried sweet potato, and raisins. She then opened the sweet potato one and starts to enjoy it. Zhu asked if that snack really is that tasty, so she asked in return if it is not supposed to be. He took one from her and said it's tasty, but he doesn't think that it's as exaggerated as what her expression was showing. He then looked at her sulking and muttering that she should have bought more that way. She could have put a piece in her mouth while playing games and it would have lasted for a while. While opening one for himself, he asked her if she wants to get a bunch of snacks to eat while playing games and then advertise for others to buy. She surprisingly asked how does he know about that and if he is the worm in her stomach. Zhu tells her to forget it as this is at least more reliable than selling salted vegetables. If she wants to do it then go ahead but it won't make much money. He said, if she can figure out a way to sell it, then it will be a very valuable experience. She then tells him to open his mouth, and as soon as he opened it, she threw a snack in his mouth. After eating it, Zhu gets excited and said, this is really fun, and please do the dried sweet potato next. But then, Jiang gets her new joy, and she asked him what he want next. But Zhu replied it's okay, since this feels like feeding a dog. After some time, while Jiang was preparing to cook, Zhu thought that a life like this is so good. He then finds Jiang standing behind him and said, wasn't she going to cook? She hugged him, saying she wanted to hug him first. She asked him if she will be able to get married when she gets her ID. He said that the marriage she is talking about should be referring to having a wedding ceremony, so she doesn't need an ID for that. As long as they have the ceremony, they will be considered married. He asked if she wants to have a wedding ceremony with him, thinking he didn't expect her to be even more in a hurry than him. She asked his thoughts about it, so Zhu said if they do it, then this small, run-down house will be their new house. But then Zhang gets flustered while thinking, getting married means she needs to consummate during the night of the wedding, and will also need to give birth to five children. She said this house isn't run down, and Zhu replied, in few more years, they will be able to move to a big, new house. She was thinking that if he dares to break up with her, then she will beat him to death anyways, so it doesn't matter when. Suddenly, he grabbed her from behind and said, it's okay to have the ceremony first, and then they can sleep together. Her face was getting red, and then she tells him that he is poking her again. He then quickly makes some distance, realizing what she meant. He thought that last time, he laughed at how for being inexperienced, but he is also acting like it. Jiang then leaves from there, saying that she will go and cook first, and thought she won't talk to him about it anymore. While leaving, she said that getting married and having kids is scary. Zhu asked her if she doesn't want to have any. She replied, that's not it, she is just saying that it's a scary thing, and then asked how many kids he want. Zhu calmly answered, two, which shocked her. She shockingly asked if he really just want two kids, so he asked in return if that's too little. But she replied that she won't give him even one, to which he said okay. 
He explained that many people nowadays don't have kids anymore as kids are just monsters with two legs. Her jaw dropped in shock and she asked how could anyone agree to not have children? Then what's the point of getting wife? He replied that getting a wife is of course for cuddling while sleeping. It has nothing to do with having kids. She said in a shaking voice, then how about they have one? But then she stopped herself from saying it. Zhu asked what she was saying, but she turned around and said it's nothing. He smiled, thinking, did he hear that right? She said how about having one? He thought, that's all for the future, and it has nothing to do with the current him, and he still hasn't had enough of this life yet. After some time, while they were having dinner, Zhu was saying, she said that she was ready for marriage, so it means that he can move into her room, right? But she refused instantly, saying that they are not even married yet, and if he move into her room, then it will be called adultery. So Zhu asked, where did she learn that crap from? She said, he can't, regardless they will be drowned in pig cages, the consummation will have to wait until they are married, so she won't let him trick into having a kid. Zhu asked what she is afraid of, since he can't even beat her, but then Zhang angrily asked in return, if he is saying that he would do that, if he could beat her. He replied he wouldn't, and if he could beat her, then he will only do things that he like after her consent to it. What's more, he only just want to sleep together, and sooner or later, he will get her to come into his bed herself. To which Jiang angrily replied, she won't. After some time, he sits next to Jiang and said, it's charging time. He was touching and massaging her legs as always. She asked, why does he always like to touch her feet while thinking? That her body feels weird, she kept feeling like she wants to do something. Zhu said, he has thought about that question, and the conclusion is that he doesn't like touching her legs, but he likes seeing her acting all shy after being touched. She asked, so if she don't act shy, he won't like touching them anymore. To which, Zhu cheerfully smiled and said, of course not, but it will be a lot less fun. Also, he will know that she is actually still shy about it, so he will enjoy it even more. Suddenly, he gets startled, as she asked him what is he doing. She looked at his reaction and wondered if she touched some sort of weird switch on him, as his reaction is incredible. Zhu gets up and said, he is going to change and take a shower. After coming out of the shower, Zhu tells her that it's already 10 past 7. Jiang remembered, she is late for her stream, so she quickly run towards her computer to start it. She thought that she keep feeling like they aren't pure anymore, she was muttering that the youth is the most active and energetic portion of the entire society. They are the most willing to learn and least conservative, especially in this era. With knowledge, it is like standing on a mountain. You can see many things far away. And without knowledge, it's like walking in the dark. So Zhu asked in a confused tone, what is she saying? He then tells her that he is not going to stand today. He will make chain mail instead, thinking that he needs to calm down. Jiang started the stream, and the viewers started saying, she is finally here, and then asked about the brother, who is being punished to stand. Zhu smiled and said, he won't be standing today, instead, he will be demonstrating how to make chain mail. While the guys were getting sad after hearing that, Jiang was thinking that no one is watching her play games. Zhu started explaining, this is an open ring and how they can connect them to make a piece of chain mail. One of the viewers asked if he is from a family of generals and if he put on armor after martial arts training. To which Zhu replied that it's right. His grandpa's grandpa's many generation ago, it was Zhu Chu who left behind the tiger fool fist, which is what he was practicing. One of them asked if they are siblings, and another one said this is clearly the tiger fist. Jiang noticed the word siblings and then gets frustrated. She tells them that they are boyfriend and girlfriend, not siblings. The viewers then get a new topic to discuss, that isn't it normally the boyfriend playing games, and the girlfriend eating snacks, and then another one said, this stream is not normal from the start. While making the chainmail, Zhu looked at Jiang's legs and started to feel excited. But then he shook his head, thinking, the stream is still on, the number of people in the stream is a little small, although making chainmail is interesting and new to the old viewers. But as it's not very friendly to the new viewers, and as the retention rate is not high, he decided to stand. While the guys gets happy, saying that the standing is here, Jong angrily tells them to watch her play games. Some of them said they have been watching, but she seemed to be slacking today, as she lost many times already, and then asked if it's difficult to play at a high level. She thought, it's all Zhu's fault that she is like this, and tells the viewers that she just ranked up in the arena and hasn't gotten used to it yet. 
she gets serious and said, but it will be different from the next game. And just like that, she won 5 games in a row, thus earned praise from the viewers. After the stream ended, Zhu went close to her and asked if they should watch a movie next, but she refused. Zhu said whatever, and he just wanted to say that he didn't pee his pants. She looked down and after seeing his pant, she gets up and leaves. And then, she bangs the door of her room. Inside, she was thinking that they are boyfriend and girlfriend, so it's normal, they have a clear conscience. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that feelings are really complicated. He turned towards her room and saw her staring at him from behind the wall. She was muttering, he can do with her shoes, but Zhu angrily shouted, he won't do anything weird to her shoes. Then the next day, while Zhu is practicing with the sword, he asked Zhang why she is not going outside to explore. She replied, she wants to learn how to operate a computer and she will go out when she wants to go out. Zhu looked at her and thought, she is staring at him with those eyes again. He was really afraid, thinking that she will suddenly lift up his covers one day and pin him down on the bed. It was like that when they kissed back then, she was very embarrassed at first, but once she got a taste of it, she started doing it whenever and only after pinning him down for a while, she let him go. He then put the sword back and leave while saying, he needs to go out to do something. Outside, he was looking at the key while thinking, he won't follow her example and send a message every time he go out so that he doesn't seem like a frog with backpack. Outside, he met his guard Uncle Zhao and greeted him. He was looking at him with strange eyes, so Zhu asked him the reason for that. His uncle asked if he and his girlfriend going out for a breather, taking even turns, but Zhu brushed it off, saying, it's not what he thought it is. Zhu then tells him to remember to smoke less, but Zhao replied he doesn't understand, a cigarette after a meal makes you happy as gods. Zhu said, that statement has been studied by scientists, and has been proven to be wrong, which shocked Uncle Zhao, that there are scientists, that study it. But then Zhu makes fun of him, saying, yes, they found out that there are no gods in this world. Zhao realized, that Zhu was pulling his leg, and looked at him with a strange expression. After some time, Zhu sits on a bench and starts thinking about something. At the same time, Auntie Cheng noticed him and thought, last time, it was Jiang sitting there and she didn't know what she was looking at, and now, Zhu is sitting there as well. She went close to him and asked if there is a treasure over there. He replied, there is no treasure, he just find looking into the distance interesting. She asked why young people think about such weird things, so Zhu wondered, how is this weird? He then noticed some kids coming out of the school, and then, he remembered something. He thought, it's time for the warrioress to go to school. And after she completes all these workbooks, he will count as her graduating elementary school. After he reached home, the books he ordered for Jiang finally arrived. While moving the package to his room, Zhu was thinking, that once this box will open, the warrioress's smile might not be as pretty as before. He then asked her if she wants to go out and play tomorrow, thinking, he should let her play a bit before she starts school, since life should have a sense of ceremony. She asked where they are going, and Zhu said, the amusement park, since it's after the holidays, there shouldn't be many people, so the lines should not be long. Her eyes sparkle after hearing that they are going to the amusement park. She quickly searched about going to the amusement park with my girlfriend on the web. People's suggestions were to bring money and let her buy what she wants, kiss her, and use your best ability to care for her, give her happiness and satisfy her. Suddenly, Zhu tells her that this is the strategy of finding the attack points to yourself, and thought, it's no wonder she's learning fast when she is looking at this stuff every day. She then closed the tab and asked, what strategy? So Zhu explained, it's where he hasn't done anything to her yet, but she is already prepared. She asked if he really didn't do anything, and he nervously replied, at least for now. He said that they are in a consensual relationship, otherwise he would have been blasted to the wall by her. Suddenly, she said, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, and fool me three times, shame on both of us. Zhu gets confused, so she explained that a foreigner named Steven once said that. He smiled cheerfully, thinking that the warrioress comprehension skills are pretty good, so she will be able to graduate elementary school in no time. Then the next day, Zhang was fully prepared to go to the amusement park. Outside, Zhu asked why is she wearing a cap, to which she replied that she wants to hide from the sun, but she is too lazy to use an umbrella. He then take the cap from her and said, she can wear it when it becomes sunnier, thinking, she doesn't seem too comfortable wearing it. 
After taking the bus, she was looking outside and said that she has already taken every bus at that bus stop they were at, and Zhu calls that impressive. She then whispered to him that wearing a cap makes him look like those criminals from the TV shows. She continued that he really does look like them, he just needs a mask to complete the look. He thanked her for the praise and said, as long as she doesn't seem like she is secretly whispering the criminal plans to him, he thinks that he looked pretty normal. She pouts after realizing that he is making fun of her. Zhu was thinking that she is still a little girl at the core, and as her real nature slowly shows itself, she should be more bubbly and will come to like even more things in the future. For example, romance. After reaching their destination, she tells him to buy tickets from over there. But he stopped her, telling her to not rush to join the queue and take her somewhere. He reached a local store and asked a guy if he has discounted tickets there. The man replied he does for 180, it costs 260 at the ticket window, and it's even cheaper than buying online. Jiang was in shock, thinking, how is it so expensive there? After getting the tickets, she asked Zhu why is it so much cheaper at the local store. He explained that it's the internal price and the tickets are typically given as a staff benefit, so they sell them to the shop owner, who resells them. After getting inside, they checked that this 100 acres of land was divided into nine themed zones. Now that the holidays are over, there are little to no tourists visiting, there is basically no queue at many of the attractions, and a day should be enough to conquer the place. After looking at some rides, Jiang gets shocked and asked if this place is meant for fun and entertainment, to which Zhu replied yes. He was thinking that she can't let her know that this is his first time too, and a man can't say no. After submitting her bag to the storage area, they went to enjoy the rides. She said, this seems a little scary to her, and asked if this is not some sort of punishment. Zhu said, someone as capable as her should be able to fly down even if something bad happens, right? After sitting on the seat, she thinks that this seems secure enough. And as soon as the ride started, Zhu thought that the warrioress is right, this is really some form of modern punishment. After the ride was over, Zhu was trying to stop his shaking legs, thinking, they are like jelly now. He then peeked at Jiang, wondering how is she doing. And after looking at her reaction, he took a sigh of relief, thinking, it looks like they are on the same wavelength. While they were having rest, Zhu asked if she wants to go again. She looked at him and asked in return, does he wants to? And then, they both fell silent. Zhu said she is scared too, even with how skilled she is in martial arts, to which Jiang said, if she wasn't tied down, she wouldn't even be scared to jump from such a tall height. She said he can go if he wants, while she will watch from there, but Zhu said, how about he watch her instead? Jiang then noticed a super dangerous looking ride, and asked how are they enjoying the ride this much. To which Zhu said, it could be that they were forced to go on it. For example, the girlfriend might want to go on the ride, and the boyfriend has no choice but to follow. But then she clearly tells him that she won't be accompanying him on the ride, and Zhu said, it seems like her feeling for him are not strong enough yet. She asked with her strange eyes, would he accompany her then, to which Zhu refused instantly. They both then fell silent again. Zhu was thinking, two cowards having a serious discussion on something that will never happen is kind of stupid. He heard her saying, if there was such a thing in her era, she would tie any dishonest person on the ride and have it run for a few hours, but Zhu tells her to stop. He then takes out his phone and said, it's rare that they came to a water park, so let's take some photos. Jiang was thinking that the ticket costs more than 100 yuan, so she has to make her money's worth. She then visited many places and took so many photos. Zhu was thinking, a balanced ride, the merry-go-round should be fine, even though it's a little weird for him, but it won't look out of place if he is accompanying his girlfriend. Jiang asked Zhu why he is always so fast when he is using the restroom, to which he replied, because he is a man, so he just has to shake it around. She then makes some distance between them and asked, what shaking is he talking about? She then takes back her cap and put it on. Zhu tells her to let's go on the merry-go-round, but she is still hesitant to take any ride. He explained that she won't fly around on this ride, not will she be flung around in different directions, it's just riding a horse. Jiang finally agreed to go, but was thinking, if the ride is going to strap her down and send her flying around, she will let him take the ride alone. After a while, Zhu was feeling embarrassed, but Jiang was enjoying every second of her ride. He thought, the warrioress has been on this ride for half an hour, she must be trying to get her money's worth, as she feels that the tickets were expensive. 
She then gets a notification on her phone, and it was a voice message from Zhu. He was saying, if she wants to try something else. She replied, let's sit on this one for a little longer. He said, that they have been on this ride for a very long time. Even little kids wouldn't take this ride for this long. Meanwhile, Jiang was thinking, that only this ride is for entertainment, the others are all for torture, it's not fun and they are even paying to suffer. She then pointed at a dangerous ride, and tells him to get himself strapped into the chair, and get hung up from the top, she will watch him from below. Zhu angrily asked, why should he get strapped at the top, while she will be watching from below. She smiled and replied, then why should they go on other rides, this merry-go-round is the best. Suddenly, the atmosphere of the ride changed, since the operator played a bad song for couples. Jiang was angry, while Zhu was thinking, whoever in charge of choosing the songs is a genius, as he played breakup song on the merry-go-round. He sighed, and thought, he brought her over to let her experience what it's like, and have a fun day out, but he didn't expect it to go like this. He then grabbed her hand and said, since they are there, they might as well experience what it's like. He tells her that she won't know if it's fun or scary until she have tried it and she will only regret not giving it a shot. While Zhu was telling her that they should visit the Egyptian zone next, he noticed her looking sad. He hugged her and asked if she ever thought that they would be like this. While she was distracted, he take a sip from her drink. She gets angry and said if this was in the past, she would have used a single palm to smash him to death. After some time, Zhu was checking the shooting and dart games, saying the prizes for both of them are same. The shopkeeper tells him to bring that pretty lady over for a round, but Jiang was saying, if they were to each to play the game once, will they be able to carry that many prizes? Zhu said, they can leave it at the entrance, and the shopkeeper thought, he has seen many people discussing the prize they want, but this is his first time seeing someone thinking of the problem instead. Zhu purchased the darts for Jiang, so she asked if she just need to pop all the balloons. Zhu said yes, and that popping three will give her a keychain, six will be a toy, and nine will be the toy belt and transformation devices. The shopkeeper added that she can choose any prize including the plush if she hit all ten. Zhu saw her throwing three darts at once, so he tells her to use one at a time. The shopkeeper was wondering if they are pros in disguise or ex-military perhaps. But then he thinks that surely it's all big talk. But to his surprise, Jiang popped all ten of them in a single try. She asked if she can take it now, and he replied positively. She asked Zhu if he wants the belt, so the shopkeeper begged them to not play anymore, since they are just running a small business, and it will be hard for him to face his boss. Zhu tells him to not worry and said, they are just playing this once, and then he took another photo of Jiang. And then, to shopkeeper's shock, Zhu asked for the bullets, so he can play the bullet game. Jiang picked the toy gun and said, she doesn't know how to play this. Zhu said, it's precisely because she hasn't played it before, that she has to try it out. The shopkeeper asked Zhu if they have practiced before, and Zhu replied, that they are from the Jiang Cheng Recreational Darts Association. The shopkeeper misunderstood, thinking that there are more people like these two in Jiang Cheng who have nothing better to do, so he has to tell his boss about them. At the same time, Wang was enjoying his quiet time at his home, when he received a message from Zhu. It was a picture of Zhang playing the shooting game. He texted him to not play, since he lost 1000 yuan to that game, but Zhu said, it was his own fault. He then takes a picture of him with the teddy won by Zhang and sends it to him. After the shooting game, Jiang said it's not fun, and it's less useful than darts. The shopkeeper then quickly gives her the prize, which was a keychain. Zhu said, this keychain comes in a set for couples, so let's play another round of darts then. But before they could play again, the shopkeeper himself tells him to pick another one, as he will give it to him for free. After the game, they both leave from there with the teddy and keychains in their hands. Zhu asked if it was fun, to which she replied that she managed to get such a big bear with pretty much no effort at all, and asked if it's worth quite a bit. She then heard him asking why does she want to sell it, as it's better to hug it to sleep, and that way she can get more experience. She asked what experience is he talking about, but Zhu didn't answer and looked away from her. He then tells her to drop it off at the storage area, and then find a place to eat at. After some time, Zhu was saying that after they are done eating, they can go on the ferris wheel, so she asked what is that. Zhu explained, it's that tallest, big rotating thing in the amusement park that moves really slowly. 
While they were waiting for their food to arrive, Zhu was looking at her hands, thinking, those are capable of beating up numerous people like him. He thought, helping to integrate such a dangerous person into society and to transform her into wife material is all part of his duty. But suddenly, Zhu's reaction changed as he realized that his place in the family is slowly going down. Meanwhile, Zhang was thinking that he's staring at her hands and spacing out again. Nowadays, all she is doing is using a keyboard and a mouse as well as frequently applying fragrant hand cream on her hands. So could it be that her hands are more white and smooth now? Zhu then picked up her hand and kissed it. After some time, they reached the Ferris wheel and Jiang said, it's really tall. When the wheel started, Jiang was thinking that it really does move very slowly. But then, she looked at Zhu and asked if he is afraid of heights, but he refused it. He asked if she is not even a little afraid, to which she replied that there is nothing scary about this ride, as she is just getting flung around while strapped in a chair. She gets up from her seat and then sits near him. She asked if he is really afraid of falling, and Zhu said, it's just too high up, and it's a natural instinct to be afraid. Meanwhile, she was thinking that if she were to climb out and grab onto the support beams, it shouldn't be a problem for her to jump onto the next cabin. She then looked down the window and thought, it's really high up though. Zhu quickly takes a picture of her, thinking, it would be a waste to not take a photo of the warrioress in her hat. Suddenly, Jiang puts her hand on his. So Zhu asked, what is she touching him for? She said, did she ever ask him that when he grab her hands, so stay quiet. She thought that his hands are much bigger and thicker than her, and his palm always seems so soft. She said, she can also feel the warmth whenever he enveloped her feet in those hands. She then picked up his hand and kissed his fingers. Zhu asked her the reason for that, but she said, she is just doing what he did to her. She was thinking that he kissed her hand as well when they were eating just now and she can feel the affection that overflows from doing such an action. Zhu comments that she is being a little pervert so she move her hand away, thinking, how is he turning this on her? Zhu then asked if she can caress and kiss his neck or she can hug him too as that's how girls usually express their affection. She removed her cap and then pins him against the window so she can do all kinds of things to him. After doing their stuff, Zhu was telling her that deep down, he feel that he has a duty to fulfill as her guide, bringing her, the old granny from a thousand years ago, to experience sights she has never seen before. He was given such a heavy responsibility by the heavens. She tells him to not worry and said thank you for all he is doing for her. At the evening, they then decide to go back to their home. Outside, Zhang was saying that she has three bears now. This one, the bag, and the one that was beaten up several times. Zhu happily said that he can be the fourth one that will accompany her in the room, but she said that she doesn't need it. Zhu then tells her to not forget what he said and that he is going to give her a present in two days. Two days later, Zhang was having a tough time. Meanwhile, Zhu was standing beside her, saying that he had this specially prepared for her. A gift of love, the elementary school books. Jiang frustratingly asked, aren't these the ones that little Yan is using, and Zhu said bingo. He tells her that she has to learn these two, and she will be able to sell her vegetables without counting her fingers and muttering to herself. He makes a strange expression and tells her to come and experience the joy he felt when he was in school. She tried to read the books and Zhu said that her goal is to solve all of these questions. He continued that he had already torn off the answer sheet, and she is not allowed to search for answers online and will have to answer these correctly on her own. She looked at him, then at the book, and soon, she was biting her lips in anger, thinking, why is this person filling and draining the water container at the same time? While she was studying, Zhu was doing his martial arts training. Suddenly, his sword make a swoosh sound, so he excitedly asked her, wasn't that cool? She was angry, thinking that this guy is so noisy, and she really want to stab him to death. But before she could say anything to Zhu, his phone starts ringing. It was Hao on the phone, who was shouting at Zhu, saying that he has led his old man astray. He tells Zhu that his father is not taking out Tyrant for a walk anymore and says that he wants to make a mega chainmail, but Zhu said the fault lies with him. Hao gets even more angry and asked how is it even his fault. Zhu explained that he was the one who taught his dad how to surf video websites, and then his dad taught it to his. After that, Uncle visited his channel regularly and got motivated to make one himself. Meanwhile, Hao was sweating, since what Zhu is saying is right. 
Zhu then makes fun of him, saying, look how it came back to bite him in the ass, but how couldn't say anything in his defense. He then tells Zhu to stop with the sarcasm and help him, so Zhu tells him to let his dad have fun, since he managed to find something that he is really interested in doing. Zhu then did the thrust and it makes the swoosh sound again. He then tells Hao that he is practicing the sword. To which Hao replied that he is already lowly enough so there is not need to practice any further. Just to tell you guys that sword and lowly sound the same in Chinese. Zhu throws the phone and said he isn't even wary of him and he still wants to be his mortal enemy. Zhu then decides to practice hard so that he can patrol the alleyways in the night to fight evil and put that bastard Hao out of job. One week passed and Jiang is still concentrating on her studies. Then her head starts to hurt, and she wondered, what's the point of all this poetry and these questions? She thought they could have left at the same time, but for some reason one of them decided to run really slowly to let the other chase him. Or they could have just counted the number of rabbits and chickens, and yet they wanted to count the number of feet. She was about to tear her notebook, thinking, the one who came up with this question is definitely a pervert with a fetish for feet like Zoo. After some time, Zhu was telling her to not be frustrated, as there are many benefits to studying. The most straightforward is to earn money. The fastest way to earn money is to rob a bank, but then, the police will arrest her. But if she passes the interview and gets employed, she can get money without being caught. She said, but that isn't robbing a bank, that is work. So Zhu congratulates her for evolving to version 1 of the smart little Jiang. He then tells her that he is heading out, so make sure to behave at home. After he left, she throws the books away angrily. She looked from the window that Zhu really left and wondered what's so good about going out when it's so hot outside. She then turned on the table fan and get some cool air. Suddenly, she received a text from him telling her to not do the fan thing where she is facing the fan and making weird noises. She figured that he is bluffing and replied in anger that she is not doing it. She puts the phone down in anger and then looked at the book on the floor. She gets angry thinking everyone in the book is a moron and can't they look at the watch for time, run faster if chasing someone, and just look at the time when the container is filled to know how long it takes. She was thinking that she wants to slice the book in half with her sword. She thought something and then quickly turned on the computer. Her expression changes as she thinks that this is really the most fun thing to do. She searched for the computer course saying that she promised to learn something and learning this is the same. She checked the drive and thought, she has seen the D drive before there was just a movie folder in there, so why does it show that 300 gigabytes of the space is taken up? She searched on the web about the reasons why the D drive shows that it is low on storage. She gets different answers, but the most catching was that the drive may contain many hidden folders that are not usually seen. After doing some stuff on the computer, she proudly said that she solved another problem on her own, she is just too awesome. After some time, Zhu returned and said, he is back. The food was already ready for him, as she made spring onion beef and stir-fried peppers today. Zhu noticed that something is wrong, so he asked what is she spacing out for, to which, she panics and said it's nothing, and she will get the rice. While eating, Zhu asked her why she has been staring at him all this time. But she stuffs her mouth with rice and said, that's not true in a shaking voice. Zhu said her face is too red, so Jiang replied it's because of the heat. And then, the time for the stream came, so Jong gets ready for that. Zhu was on the computer and asked her why did she turn the volume off, which startled her. She angrily tells him that she was sick of listening to Xiang Sheng, so she turned it off, there is no other reason. It was time for stream, and Jong started playing games while Zhu was making his chainmail armor. Zhu looked at the number of viewers and thought, originally, he was just accompanying her to play around, but now it seems like it's getting popular, could it really become big? But this popularity may have reached its peak, after all, it will only become more and more difficult to keep on winning with basic equipment, and there will always be a bottleneck one day. Jiang has fans of her own, who are saying that they are there to watch her beat those noobs using basic equipment, thinking she and Zhu are quite rich. Some then offered to pay 900 yuan to Zhu for his armor after he completes it. She tells the same to him, but Zhu said it's not for sale, it's for personal use, he is going to use it to fight in a war. She said, but that can be sold for 900 yuan. But Zhu said it took a month to make two sleeves, so selling it for 9,000 yuan wouldn't be asking too much. But then he gets shocked, since one of the viewers was ready to pay even 9,000. 
Zhu said that he was just casually saying that, and they can find cheaper ones online. It's not that expensive. He tells them that when they stream, they just have nothing to do and don't have any plans, so the viewers should take it easy while sending gifts, or they will be scolded by their husband or wife. Everything went silent for a moment, and then it burst. They asked what he meant by wife, is there a thing called husband, and they got emotional damage from this. But then, he clears his throat and apologized for that, since he forgot that not everyone has a spouse. He said that having a wife is great, and then sends a flying kiss to Jiang. She gets embarrassed by it, and then starts scolding him. The viewers asked if they are quarreling. But Zhu refused, saying, they get hands-on, it can't be described in detail since it's too violent. Jiang was looking at him with disbelief and wondered, what nonsense is he spouting? One of the viewers said, he now knows why is Zhu making an armor, as a person who practices martial arts, he is getting bullied by a girl. But Zhu tells everyone to not make a fuss about it, since there is no couple who don't quarrel, as for how they resolve it, it doesn't matter. But the viewers hit on the weak spot. That they got it, as the way they too resolve it, is him getting beat up, and he is so pitiful that he has to make armor. After an hour, the stream finally ended. Jiang said that he seemed to be more suitable for this than her, as he can chat and joke with them. And Zhu replied, that's why he wants her to think carefully about she wants to be a streamer or not. After some time, while Zhu was sitting on the sofa, he looked at Jiang. He asked her why is she sitting so far from him. She didn't have an answer, so she slowly came close to him. She said she is fine, and he should do his work, and not think about random stuff. She was thinking, that if this guy dares to do anything, she will kick him back into his room. A few days later, Jiang was asking Zhu if he is not going to play today. Zhu gets confused and wondered, why is she always thinking about him going out these days? So he asked her, if something is wrong. Without changing her expression, she calmly said that she is fine. While he was going out, he suddenly got a notification on his phone. After checking it, Zhu finds that it's a mobile game collaboration invitation. It's a domestic martial arts mobile game produced by a small company that he never heard of. The reason why his videos are comfortable to watch is because he never asks for any gifts, nor do he ask for follows or likes. So advertisements unless the other party gives a lot, or they are a big company, accepting it so early will be detrimental to the development of his account. But still, he decides to answer politely first. A few hours later, he was looking at Jiang, who was concentrating at her studies. He tells her to take a break if she feels tired. She asked if he studied like this way before for nine years and he replied yes and that if he didn't, he would be spanked by his teacher. She said that's too pitiful, the computer is where the fun is at. She then turned on the TV, saying that she wants to watch something to take a break. Zhu checked the notebook and said, this really reminds him of his childhood. She heard him saying that he never likes reading when he was a child, but he was afraid of being abandoned by society, so he studied hard and then he was admitted into the university. He said, although he doesn't need school knowledge to edit his videos, but his years of studying have indeed changed his views and way of thinking. Jiang said she knows that he is trying to trick her into studying. But Zhu replied he is just stating facts, there are many jobs she can do without studying but it is difficult to find jobs where one sit in an office with air conditioning. Zhu also tells her that he once took the Mandarin test and he thought about becoming a teacher at the start, and he is still considering it as an option now. Jiang said she feel like studying isn't all that useful since his mom said that when he was a child and watching Ultraman, he cried and yelled with a flashlight to make Tiga stand up. Lin tells her that she will understand once she watched the last episode, while texting his mom to not tell Jiang about everything. His mom asked what did she said, and he tells her about the stuffs like Ultraman, Big Goose, Dog, and added that she should not reveal her son's dark history. But he gets too angry after looking at her reply, asking if he even has a light history. But then suddenly, he noticed Jiang sending a shocking emoji. Zhu gets confused and asked when did she join the group. So she tells him that when he was reading in the study last time, Auntie and she were chatting outside, and then she added her. Zhu then laughed it off, saying he didn't even realize that there were four people in the group. After a while, when Zhu was working on the laptop, Jiang secretly took a picture of him. Zhu's mom showed it to his dad, but he said that this kid is pretending, but she tells him that he is not pretending, since she asked Jiang to take it. She said to her that she misses him very much and asked her to take a picture to see what he was doing, so she took it for her. 
Zhu's mom said. Now he doesn't go out and randomly spend money or cause trouble, so what is he not satisfied about? To which his dad replied that he didn't say anything either. After some time, Jiang was thinking, although Tiga was petrified and sank to the bottom, he will definitely come back alive and defeat the monsters. All the episodes are in this format. She looked at Zhu and thought, he really was very stupid when he was young since there is nothing to cry about in the last episode. Zhu asked, why is she looking at him like that? And she said that he used to be a stupid kid. Zhu replied that kids are all stupid, but Jiang counters that by saying, but little Yan is very smart. Zhu tells her, it's because she didn't see her stupid side when she started changing teeth a few years ago. She thought that she was going to die, so she ran over to say goodbye to him. Jiang thought, when she was a kid practicing martial arts, her teeth fell out by themselves. How could they fall by themselves if they were clearly not touched? She then looks below and said, it's not that surprising at all, thinking, isn't it normal to feel like you are going to die when your teeth fall out by themselves? She remembered, there was an old man in the village who lost all of his teeth and died within a few months. She then gets up and went to her computer with a serious expression. She searched, why do children's teeth fall out by themselves? But then, Zhu startled her by coming close to her and said, let's take a look together. She tells him to not get so close, stay further away from her. Zhu asked, what's wrong with a couple exploring the abnormalities of the human body together? But Jiang said, it is unacceptable to her. Zhu quickly apologized, saying, sometimes, he treats her like a real modern girl, it's an oversight on her part. She asked, if would he explore such problems with a modern girl then, to which he said, if the person is not his girlfriend, then he wouldn't be talking about those silly things. She asked about her legs, to which Zhu said, whether she is able to accept it, and whether she is able to resist it, they are two different matters. She thought, if she really wasn't willing, he wouldn't even be able to touch her legs, much less hold it. Suddenly, she noticed something on the computer and said, what is that? It was the story of Zhu, saying, many generation ago, his grandfather's great-grandfather was Zhu Chu, who passed down his tiger fist technique. The first step is to train your core before the skills, then gather your energy from the bottom up, and then feel it in your shoulder, arms, and wrists. There was also a clip of Jiang in the middle of the story, telling him to scram. The story continued with him saying, the chainmail is not for sale, but it's for him to use. Jiang clip of saying, he is being punished to stand, and that he doesn't like to speak. They both were watching the video and Zhu thought, the clips of him practicing the stance and making the chainmail were edited into a video like it. And this dude made it look like a martial arts practitioner, who was suffering from humiliation and decided to make a chainmail, in order to prevent his wife from beating him. Jiang looked at him and starts laughing, while Zhu was angrily saying, who the hell made him into an automat? The video was even tagged with the story of Jane Doe's growth in the arena. Meanwhile Jiang was happily saying, so this is what people mean by quoting out of context. Zhu thought it's lucky that this video hasn't gone viral, otherwise people will be sending messages to mock him and say that he is afraid of his wife. Zhu asked Jiang, is it okay if they don't stream today? But she asked him the reason for that. He cried internally, thinking, she seems quite happy about it. It's no wonder the video painted her in such a good light, be it slaughtering her opponents or bullying him. He then thought of a plan to get back at her as he moved his hand towards her legs. He picked her leg and then suddenly kissed on her toes. She couldn't believe that and shockingly asked if he just kissed her feet. Zhu said yes he did and asked, will she still dare to tell him to scram next time, while she tells him to not do such perverted things with her. Jiang thought, if he is like this when they are not even married, so once they actually marry, will they be kissing each other all over like in that film, and even do that thing? She then came back to her senses and thought, this guy must be up to no good. She stood up in anger which scared Zhu a little. She then angrily went inside her room, while Zhu was trying to ask if she is alright. She then slams the door, so Zhu wondered if that was too much for her. Suddenly, she opened the door in anger and then returned back to the computer and turned it on. Zhu asked what is wrong, but she replied with all her strength that he won't be able to beat her. He sit on the chair and said he knows that. She then turned around in anger and shouted, as long as he is aware. After some time, while Jiang was working in the kitchen, Zhu was thinking that something is definitely up with her. Could it be that she saw something that she wasn't supposed to, like some of the videos that he hasn't transferred out of the computer yet? 
Jiang felt a sudden chill as she heard him asking if she happened to see something that she was not supposed to. She acted in a normal way and asked, what does he mean by that? Zhu said that he is referring to, but then he stopped himself from saying it. He tells her to forget it while thinking, he will find an opportunity to probe her later. While they were having dinner, Zhu thought, this is the perfect time. He said it's actually normal for humans to have needs, as sometimes, there is a need to deal with their biological system, so some companies produce content for that. She looked at him with a serious expression and asked, what his point is. He continued, that if there is something on the computer, it doesn't mean that it is perverted, it's just an expression of art. Jiang wondered, if this guy is trying to bait her, and then she calmly said, that she doesn't get it. Judging by her reaction, Zhu thought if he was mistaken, and then tells her to not worry, and that it's fine, if she doesn't understand it now, she will come to understand it in the future. Suddenly, Jiang asked, so how did he deal with it, which startled him. Zhu said he doesn't need to, the previous time was just an accident, so Jiang asked, what previous time is he talking about? He realized, that he almost exposed himself in the attempt of exposing her, and replied it's nothing. He then looked out the window and said, it is raining. After some time, Jiang was checking the video of her and Zhu, thinking, it's a pity that Winter Melon isn't in the video. Suddenly, she heard Zhu saying, it's time to study. She looked at him with her strange eyes and said, he is just addicted to acting like her teacher, isn't he? To which Zhu replied, he just wants her to study earnestly and improve day by day. She came close to him and addressed him as teacher Zhu. And just as she expected, it attacked straight on his heart. She blushed and said she knew it and asked if he still wants to deny it. He replied it's not like that, and she is not allowed to slack off, she has to complete her exercises and read the books. She gets angry after hearing him say that, she won't be able to calculate the prices when she go grocery shopping, and then people will take her for a fool, but she said she can calculate. Zhu then asked her a question. Leek costs 2 yuan per 500 grams, and egg costs 280 yuan per 500 grams. So how much is the cost of 750 grams of leek and 1250 grams of eggs? She started calculating on her fingers, and Zhu said that she is not allowed to use her fingers. She gets irritated and said, even he can't calculate it without using them. But Zhu said he sure can, as the total would be 10 yuan. He muttered, she will just have to buy them in batch of 500 grams. Also, why does she have to learn this when there are calculators? Finally, it was the time for her stream, and the study session is over. She was thinking that she wasn't even this tired while learning martial arts when she was young. While she was starting the stream, Zhu was thinking that the style of the stream was the gaming. Then it became martial arts, and now it's like a husband and wife skit. She started the stream and was playing games, while Zhu was making his chainmail. He thought, one of them is bending metal rings, while the other is silently playing games. Neither of them has spoken, yet the number of viewers are more than 700. He tell the viewers, that this isn't some mystical martial art, it's just the tiger fist technique passed down many generations from Zhu Chu. And then he asked the main question, who was the one who made an autumn out of him, as they have made it as though, his wife is really strict with him. He said, he is not standing because of punishment, it's just him practicing the stance. He is not exaggerating, but she doesn't dare to defy him at home, that is the power of his authority. Jiang was looking at the comments and thought, he can say whatever he wants, the stream will continue regardless. She was eating snacks, so she asked Zhu if he wants one. He remembered about how she will feed him like a dog, so he instantly refused, thinking, there is no way, he will be able to explain himself out of that one. He then noticed that she hit her peak at around 1500 rating with the lousy equipment. Now the only time her chances of winning is higher, when she matched with someone with a weak class like hers. He asked her if she wants to try switching to a stronger class. Zhu said he feels that the current one is too weak, so let's change to a stronger one. And once she hit around 1600 rating, there will be people paying her to lose on purpose, and they can earn some extra money. Jiang couldn't believe there was such a good deal, and Zhu explained, it's more common in the higher rating. It's the same as getting a rare drop while grinding. But then some viewers said, if he continue to stand in his stance, they will pay them and asked, isn't that a good way to earn extra cash? But Zhu said they are just streaming for fun, so there is no need for them to send money. Jiang tells him, if he had told her that earlier, she would have been at that rating long ago. One of the viewers then gifted her a flower, saying, if she hits 1600 rating, then he will sub to tier 3. 
She gets shocked after realizing that this time, the gift was given to her. She thought of telling Zhu, but then dropped the idea, thinking, if she were to ask, he would probably say that it wasn't for her. While she was carefully picking her class, Zhu managed to get her snacks. He makes fun of her, saying, the money she earns from grinding all went into these potato sticks. Jiang was not paying attention to him, and then she chews the female sword devil as her character. She tells Zhu that she is even wearing that ugly Christmas hat in battle, and Su motivated her for the game. He thought, even if the viewer count decreases when he is not in the stance, the warrioress didn't say much and concentrated on playing. To her, gaining attention or gifts isn't important, she plays the game for the viewers. Then the next day, they were standing near the window and Zhu said, the weather is horrible like that during May and June. But once the rain is over, the summer will start. Jiang said, looks like there is no time to wait for the rain to get less heavy, she will go get the groceries, and Zhu tells her to wait, saying that he will tag along. Outside, Zhu was telling Jiang, it would be more romantic if they were to share one umbrella when they are out shopping, but she asked if he is looking to get wet. He said, it's normal for couples to do dumb things like that when dating. Suddenly, a thought crossed his mind as he asked Jiang if she can deflect the rain with her swordplay, like swish and dance through the rain, while coming out dry on the other side. But to Zhu's disappointment, she replied of course not, and if she could do that, then he wouldn't have seen her in a pristine state that day, not like a wet chicken. Zhu then take basket from her hands and said, time passes by so quickly. In just a blink of an eye, it has almost been a year. After they returned home, Jiang was preparing for lunch. Suddenly, a thought crossed her mind, so she said, the more she thought about it, the more it doesn't seem right. Zhu gets confused and asked, what doesn't seem right? She said, obviously, he treats her as a cook, so why does he want her to study? And Zhu replied, even if she can cook, she still have to read books and solve problems. He thought, at times like this, she must be exposed mercilessly, as this girl is way too crafty. He then sits near the computer so he can play a song. But it was on the lock screen, so Zhu tells Jiang, that even if she didn't lock it, he won't just look through. But she said, his words have hidden intentions. Zhu gets up while accepting, that he did look at her search history before, but he was just doing it out of responsibility, just like how a father asked the teacher what his daughter has been doing at school. She asked then what about now, to which Zhu replied, now that she has integrated into society, she has the ability to live independently, so he will respect her privacy. Jiang said something is not right, as there wouldn't be a problem if he didn't mention it, so why is he doing this? He just wants to take a peek, right? She thought, she have repeatedly confirmed that if the history is cleared, there is no way to get it back, and then she wondered if there is still a way to find it. Zhu replied, it's a matter of respect and privacy, no matter how close the two of them are, each of them will have their own space, she doesn't have to guard against him. Jiang muttered, she doesn't think it's necessary, but still, fine, she accept her apology. And then, he played some music on the laptop, saying, maybe they were like this in their previous life, walking on the street with an umbrella and passing by. Then someone wanted to murder him, but she drew her sword and saved him. She asked, what previous life is he talking about? And then suddenly, he hugged her from behind, saying who knows, every bite and every sip is preordained, maybe it's all predetermined, she saved him before, and he took her in this time. She tells him to stop talking nonsense and help her peel the garlic. And just like that, several months passed and summer arrived. Zhu was telling Jiang that he is heading out, there are popsicles in the fridge, but don't eat too much, or she will upset her stomach. And as soon as he left, she take out a popsicle, sits near the fan and thought, this must be what that guy means by being free and happy. Suddenly, she noticed the computer and thought about watching some stuff. In the evening, she was learning a poem, so Zhu tells her that she doesn't need to memorize these poems, she just need to read them. Jiang said, Lai Bai was so amazing that there are still records of him more than a thousand years later. It is incredible to see these people recorded down in history. Zhu said, he also finds it incredible. He think about waking up one day to discover that Hao was recorded down in history and turned into a policeman from a thousand years ago. He then gives her sunglasses, saying, by the way if she goes on a long walk, she can wear this, also remember to wear a sun hat too. Suddenly, she gets scared as she heard Zhu asking, why did she pull down the shades? She looked back and said, it was too sunny, so she pulled them down to block the sunlight. 
Zhu said she doesn't need to wear those at home. If she is hot, then she can turn on the air conditioner. He will teach her how. He taught her about the air conditioner, how she can turn it on, and adjust it according to her needs. She said, his room doesn't seem to have this, so let's switch back the rooms, as she is not afraid of the heat. He replied, she can stay there, how can they keep switching rooms? So if it does get too hot to handle, he can come and sleep on her floor. But in front of her strange eyes, Zhu brushed it off, saying it's actually not that hot. Suddenly, Zhu noticed the leggings hanging in her room, that Zhang quickly grabbed and hide. He tells her that those were bought for wearing, there is nothing to hide. She asked him, didn't he secretly wear it too? Zhu replied he never wore them, and how can she smear a person's innocence out of nowhere, to which she said, she saw him washing socks early in the morning one time. He gets flustered, as at that time, he was washing the underwear. He then leaves while saying, anyway, he wasn't being sneaky, she can wear whatever she wants, it's up to her. He came out in the hall, thinking, she will wear them one day. After some time, he was thinking, but why she's still so resistant? It's clear that she isn't against kissing and hugging now, so what is she struggling with? Is she still afraid that he will do something? She came out of her room, so Zhu said, to be fair, he can't beat her, so there is nothing to worry about, to which she replied, what if he lick him, she can't sew his mouth shut. He angrily shouted, how could he do something like that, there is no way. But she tells him, he kissed her foot last time, so how could he not? She then remembered about the adult videos she finds on the computer. She thought, she has seen through it a long time ago, wearing those weird clothes is to get ready to do nasty things, so she replied that he can't fool her. Zhu then starts thinking about, how can he convince her? But then he takes out her notebooks and said, let's not think about that, hurry up and study, as there are so many workbooks left to be done. She then acted like she is being tortured and said, she doesn't want to solve problems. But Zhu called her a violent warrioress and said, can she not act like she has been wronged, as it feels incredibly fake. She gets angry and said, she won't do it, if he asks her to do math problems again, she will beat him. Meanwhile, Wintermelon was enjoying the scene of his master's quarreling. Then the next day, Zhu went on a business trip for a week. Jiang, in order to push herself to work harder in math, she started writing diary. June 9th, the plan is to finish all of the one lesson, one exercise for the fourth grade level, and wait for Zhu to check, and then prepare to learn the geometry formulas. June 10th, watched films, ate popsicles, and played games. June 11th, watched films and played games. June 12th, she went to the public activity area to play with the fitness facilities, and then confirmed to watch films when she went back. June 13th, realization of her mistake, questioned herself, how can she be so depraved, and that she can't be laughed at by Zoo again for being a stupid illiterate. Then on June 14th, watched films and played games again. On June 15th, the last day, she watched films. After some days, Zoo was near the bookshelf, thinking, for the past him, the biggest use of a bookshelf was to hold other stuff. However, it's different now, with books for the two of them, it has come to a point where they have no choice but to store their books properly using the bookshelf. Perhaps, due to his dad's influence, when it comes to spending money on books, he doesn't feel bad at all. Regardless of whether the contents of the book are useful or not, it feels great to just pick any random book to read when you are bored. Zhu tells Jiang that it looks like a scholar's bookshelf now, and she said, but he is a scholar to begin with. She then happily tells him, they will both be scholars once she is more knowledgeable. She thought, second miss would die of shock if she were to recite a roadmap on how to modernize society. After some time, to Zhu's surprise, he noticed her studying quietly. He said, this is the first time she is studying without him telling her to do, to which she replied, she has thought it through, if she doesn't study, she would have to rely on him. Zhu was using his phone and said, she would still have to rely on him, even if she study. But in front of her gaze, he corrected himself, saying, a warrioress, that gives up on martial arts to study instead, it's really admirable. She replied that she will never improve if she were to only play video games, the best way to improve herself is to study, otherwise, she will still be a farmer after years of playing games. Half an hour later, after all that speech she gave, Zhu noticed her sleeping. He went close to her, knocked the table, and said, she dozed off. After waking up, she said that on second thought, she should just become a farmer instead. 
she said that in her dream. Second Miss said that she is not cut out for this, but Zhu was telling her to not start putting away her books. But she looked at him with anger and asked, why should she be studying, while he is just enjoying life on the side? He replied, because she wasn't there when he was studying, and she calls that unfair, saying, she was practicing sword at that time. She gets an idea and said, for every hour she study, he would have to practice the sword for an hour, which will make him healthy as well. Also, he is not allowed to say no, so Zhu agreed. A few days later, Zhu thought that Zhang is officially studying materials from the fifth grade. It's been more than a month since she has started her learning journey. She looked at him and said, he will only become an expert through hard training, and only then will he be able to hold her down when he kiss her. Zhu picked his phone and tells her to not make robot noises with the fan, and don't draw the curtains too frequently. She gets startled and asked, what's wrong with drawing the curtains, to which Zhu smiled pervertly. She gets confused for a second, and then she blushed after realizing what he meant. He tells her that he won't be eating dinner at home tonight, so she will have to eat by herself, so Jiang asked, when will he be back? Zhu replied, he will be back around 7 or 8, he will let her know if he is staying out later than that. He was looking at her with his perverted eyes, but she looked in the other direction and tells him to come back early. As Zhu was leaving, a thought crossed her mind. She looked at him while thinking, for him to see through her this easily, he must have done the same thing in the past, pervert. At night, it's been 10 minutes since she started her stream, so she asked the viewers if they are even watching her. Some of them replied they are watching, and some asked about Zhu. She addressed him as her boyfriend and said, he is out today, so he won't be practicing his stance. The viewers tell her to stop explaining, as they can't bear her relationship with Zhu. After some time, Jiang checked the time, saying, Zhu said that he would be home around 7 or 8, that would be 7.30 if she were to take the middle of it, and yet he is still not home. Suddenly, she gets startled, as Wintermelon arrived and took one of the potato ring, and then a steamer called him a pig. She showed Winter Melon to them, saying it's a cat, who is just a little fat. Another viewer tells the guy to watch the stream for a couple of days, as they have chainmail armor, a wax figure punishment, the diligence of Zhang Koi, and the cat that looks like a pig. Meanwhile, Zhang texted Zhu if he is watching the stream. After the stream ended, she texted him again, asking, when is he coming back? After two hours, he replied that he is heading back now. After waiting for some time, she heard someone opening the door. She noticed Zhu and quickly went close to him, saying, about that thing he taught her. But then, suddenly, she noticed a blood stain on his t-shirt. She gets worried, asking if he is hurt, but Zhu tells her to not worry, saying, it's not his. She was still worried, so he removed his t-shirt to show that he is completely fine. She gets angry at him, and Zhu said it's a long story, so let him take a shower first. While he was inside the bathroom, she was thinking, staying out for so late and coming home with blood stains on him. Suddenly, he opened the door and tells her to bring his pajamas for him. After some time, Zhu tells her that he had to go to the hospital and then the police station, which made him come home late. She asked in a worried tone, what's up with the blood? Zhu sadly replied, it's of house. The one who was in a predicament wasn't him, it was someone else. She said that was good to hear, as she thought that he got slashed by someone, so Zhu tells her to think more positively. He said, if she came home late into the night with blood on her, he would have thought that she is the one doing the slashing. She tells him to sleep early, but Zhu said, if she doesn't stop touching him like that, he won't be able to sleep. She replied, she is just checking to see if he is injured, and asked, so, is how dead? Zhu said he has some minor injuries, and also, don't keep mentioning about death all the time, and then, Jiang asked if he wants to eat something. Zhu thought, he doesn't usually think this way, but the more he look at her, the more she looks like a wife. Suddenly, he grabbed her and kissed her cheeks, and then to Jiang's shock, he bites it. After doing that, Zhu said he is done eating, so let's sleep early today, and leave everything else for tomorrow. Before leaving, he tells her to not think about the violence all the time, today was just an accident. The next day, Zhu was going to the hospital to pay Hao a visit, and then head to the police station afterwards. Also tells Jiang, that there really is not need to give him her sword for self-defense. He said, Hao is the unlucky one, not him, he gets into accidents everywhere he goes, and he just got dragged into it, that's all. He tells Jiang, that he will come early and reminds her to study well. 
Outside, he buys some bananas for Hal. After he reached the hospital, he finds his uncle scolding Hal. He gave him a banana and then makes fun of Hal, saying, he will eat one for him. His uncle then asks Zhu what happened, since Hao describes as though he was some hero, and it was as if he was one step away from being the mightiest hero ever. Hao said, he was too careless and didn't think that the rascal has a knife, let alone use it, but his father tells him to keep quiet, as he will listen to what Zhu has to say. Zhu explained, the two of them were having a meal and then, they decided to have some fun at an internet cafe, where a man was trying to rob a girl, so Hao tried to stop him and took a knife for her. His uncle asked, if that is all, and Zhu replied yes, that is all. He scolded how that he should have explained it like this, and why did he describe it as though, he broke his limits and fought the guy in multiple bouts, and bragged for half an hour. He thought, that how should have been a storyteller, singing the same tune as Zhu, they would be able to carry an entire theater to glory. Meanwhile, how was saying that he wasn't bragging, he had to restrain him at the start, and take his bat away. Hao then tells his dad to go and eat something, as he will be fine with Zhu. After his dad left, Hao took a sigh of relief, and Zhu asked if it's serious. Hao showed him the bandage, saying, it's not, he managed to avoid any serious injuries when he turned his body. Zhu tells him to be careful from now, as the porridge that he is eating right now might just leak from his abdominal wounds, and Hao tells him to stop talking nonsense. While Zhu was eating the second banana, Hao asked Zhu, where did he learn those martial arts? Zhu said, it was all just in the heat of the moment, he will attribute it to the past two years of meditating his body and soul, otherwise, he would have chopped his head off with one strike. Suddenly, Zhu excitedly asked Hao if that will count as being courageous, and will he get recognized for it? It would be best if he were to receive a pennant of some sort, that way, he will be able to show off to his dad. Hao replied, the most he can get is the bravery award and he is lucky that his friend is a police officer, otherwise, that thief might have tried to go after him in the future. Zhu gets angry and asked, why honest people get targeted all the time. Suddenly, Hao questioned him, if his ancestor was really Zhu Chu, and that he will ask Uncle Zhu about it one day. Hao remembered, how he was on the ground, when the thief charged at Zhu to attack him. Zhu managed to dodge his strike and then, knock him down with a single strike. Hao thought he is so unlucky that he came across someone so rash and got stabbed by him. Zhu really surprised him though, since he knocked the thief out cold with just one strike, he was unconscious for a long time. Zhu then smiled and said, who knows, maybe his ancestors might have been Kin Kiong, and Hao replied, he can't say for sure. Suddenly, a girl arrived there and asked if this is the officer Hai's room. Zhu quickly tell the girl to come in, and then whispered to Hao that it's the girl from yesterday, she is there to see him. She bring a basket full of fruits for Hao, and was shy to speak anything. She said hello to Hao, while addressing him as Officer Hai in a shaking voice. But then Hao tells her that his last name is Kin, not Hai, so she apologized to him and said hello again. She blushed and thanked him for helping her yesterday, to which he said it's part of his job to help the citizens. Zhu noticed both of them acting shy, and then gets an idea. He tells them to carry on, as he suddenly remembered that he has to make a trip to the police station. He said Uncle Kin will be back soon, and then shut the door while leaving. Outside, he was thinking that's the best he can do for a brother of his. He met Hao's dad outside and tells him that he is going to the police station, and the lady that Hao saved last night is in his room to thank him. Outside the hospital, Zhu thought that the smell of disinfectant was everywhere in the hallways, a place like the hospital always does bring one's mood down. He further thinks that he used too much strength and didn't manage to get commended for his actions. How is really a jinx? After some time, the officer checked the video and asked Zhu if he trained before, to which he said, it's nothing serious. The officer checked his hand and said that strike of his was really clean, and then he also remembered that Zhu came there last time because of a fight as well. Zhu said he has a sense of proportion, as during that fight, he let the other person beat him up. Only in emergencies like this, does he unleash some of his power. The officer tells him to not be a glib, as long as he is aware of his actions, otherwise, he has many pairs of handcuffs there. While making the report, the officer said, it's fortunate that he was there or Kin Hao would have been, then he stopped. But Zhu smiled and said, nothing would have happened, as that guy would have run away instantly after stabbing him. But then Zhu thought, knowing what Hao is like, he would have clutched his stomach and continue to drag that guy. 
he gets angry as the more he thinks about it, the more shaken he is, so he should have given that guy a couple more kicks at that time. Suddenly, the officer said, Mr. Honorable Citizen Zhu, please be contactable for the next few days. They might still need his assistance. And Zhu happily asked if he is going to be on the news. But the officer tells him to not overthink, as the perpetrator is still in the hospital. After coming out of the station, Zhu went to a local restaurant so he can grab a quick bite for lunch. He checked the phone and gets angry after seeing Wang Jai's message. Thinking, this guy was the one who insisted on going to the internet cafe yesterday. If Hao is a jinx, then he is the bad omen. Wang Jai asked where he is, so Zhu sends his location, saying that he is in a noodle shop. After some time, Wang Jai arrived and asked where did he go, and Zhu replied that he just came from the police station. After a while, Zhu was telling Wang Jai that he is not suited for the martial arts. He explained, in Muay Thai, people will kick a tree all day to push the limits on the amount of force that their bones can withstand, but he will shatter his with just one kick. Also, there is no use for him to learn stuff like this as they are living in a peaceful society. Wang Jai asked, why did he learn it then? Zhu smiled and said, he might not believe it, but he do it for love and peace. He thought, there is no way he can tell him that the reason he is training in martial arts is to not get pinned down at the bottom during kissing. Wang Jai was almost convinced by Zhu's words, but then his noodles arrived and he came back to his senses. He then tells Zhu to go to the hospital together so they can play some cards with Hao. In the evening, Zhu was going back home, thinking it became so late after a session of cards. He entered his house and find that Zhang isn't around. He gives some food to Wintermelon while thinking, she's probably out on a stroll to God knows where again. After some time, Jiang entered the house and saw Zhu working on the laptop. She thought, she has so many things to tell him since yesterday, but there wasn't time. She went close to him and excitedly said that she rode on the metro today. For the price of $2, she got to enjoy the AC all day, plus the ability to travel from north to south, and it was all underground. She then sits beside him, thinking, she hasn't had the chance to sniff him all day. But as soon as she sniffs him, she asked why is he so smelly. Zhu said, maybe it's because he was at the hospital all day. Zhu then tells her that she can enjoy the AC at home, as only uncles and aunties do that during summertime, in order to save on electricity costs, so she should not pick up bad habits. But Jiang pouts and said, she doesn't think it's a bad habit. While she was working in the kitchen, Zhu said that he will take her on a plane next time. That is even more magical, as the planes are the result of thousands of years of knowledge. He looked at her and thought, this little old lady is magical as well. He then decides to take a shower first, thinking, it's true that the smell on his body is overbearing. After some time, Zhu came out of the bathroom and noticed Zhang's workbook. He understand that the reason why she wanted to enjoy the AC on the train is to avoid doing her homework. He tells her it's fine she slacks off occasionally, but she can't do it all the time, but she said she is too lazy to do it, otherwise she would have finished it all in a day. Zhu tells her to show him then, but Jiang said she doesn't want to, because if she were to finish it now, he will just get the new ones. After some time, Zhu was looking at her secretly. She was looking so cute, and he wanted to hug her and do nasty things with her. But then he controls himself, thinking that he has to hold back or he will ruin his plans to move into her room. Suddenly, Wintermelon jumped at the kitchen counter and was staring at the chicken she was preparing. She tells Zoo to come quickly and carry Wintermelon away. Zoo called Wintermelon from a distance, telling him to come to him. And then to Jiang's surprise, Wintermelon really went towards him. She asked, how is he able to get Wintermelon to listen to him? To which Zhu said, creatures like cats are all abnormal in the head. But there's a trick, she can lick him once and he will give her a shocked face, then lick him again to subdue him. He continued, that mom cats regularly lick the fur of their kittens, so do older cats on younger ones, it's a show of status and dominance. Therefore, if she were to lick him, he will obey her, and then asked, if she wants to try it out. She looked at him with her strange eyes and said, she doesn't want to. After some time, she tells Zhu that it's time for dinner, and Zhu said he will be there in a minute. She went close to him and asked, what video is he editing? Zhu then hit the enter button and said, it's a historical production. The story starts playing with the song that he listened to earlier. In the video, there were a couple before, but then the man was left alone. 
Zhu said, listening to this song, isn't it clear how the story goes, but if you were to edit and change it into a story about reminiscing about the past, so she asked, if the girl is dead. Zhu replied positively and said, one can string a bunch of clips together to make a whole different story. That's the beauty of editing. But Jiang said, she doesn't like it at all. She thought, it was originally about a couple conquering the world, and yet he changed it into a man living out his days all alone, for the sake of his partner. She thought, it was originally about a couple conquering the world, and yet he changed it into a man living out his days all alone for the sake of his partner. Zhu said, some people like it, he is only done with a third of the video, and will have to complete it after dinner. After dinner, while Zhu was picking up the dishes, Jiang hugged him from behind. She was thinking, she doesn't know why, but after seeing him yesterday covered in blood, she has the urge to get closer to him even more. After some time, while Zhu was working on the laptop, Jiang was sitting beside him. He asked her why is she touching his stomach. To which she replied, she didn't ask him why he touched her legs, but Zhu confirms, if she is sure about that. She makes a strange face and tells him to not worry about it. She was blushing while thinking about the second miss that she has made it. This has been the first time she has gotten handsy with a man. Zhu tells her to soak her hands in warm water more often, especially her right hand, and asked, did she order the hand cream that they searched last time? And she replied positively. She then tells him that he didn't catch the stream yesterday, she got a lot of gifts. Zhu gets shocked after checking and said, that's quite a lot indeed, and she even got more subs. She asked if subs are expensive, and Zhu replied, a sub is like a monthly pass with different tiers, and with the current numbers, she will earn around 1,000 yuan a month. He calculated that 30 hours of streaming in a month will give her 1,000, which is about 30 yuan per hour, and she said, this feels a little too easy. Zhu tells her, even though it looks easy at first glance, but the devil is in the details. It's mainly because they accumulated some popularity at the start, and her skill level is pretty high in the arena. Hitting a 1500 rating with trash equipment was no easy feat. Meanwhile, Jiang was saying that this feels super easy for her, as easy as he earns money. But Zhu said, she can't have that mindset, as it's not easy to do all of those things. Suddenly, she makes a face, meaning, do you have no conscience? Zhu replied, he is happy that she learned to trash talk. But when it comes to editing videos, 90% of the time is dedicated to finding suitable source materials. His time spent with the computer is even more than the time spent with her. Sourcing from material is the biggest time sink, and it's really tiring. He then tells her to reflect on why she is able to earn this 1000 yuan. For example, how she is able to earn it without grinding, how she is able to stomp others, and how to keep the popularity without even him on the stream. He said, if she is unable to figure it out, this 1000 yuan will dry up one day, and she will no longer find the money easy to earn. But she said, that she will secure her 1000 yuan. He then pats her head and said, he is just teaching her to be independent, she doesn't have to give him that look. She looked at him while blushing and asked, should she call him teacher Zhu from now then, which make him flustered. He said, the weather is hot today, so how about she let her teacher enjoy the AC in her room, but she instantly refused. Then the next morning, Zhu was explaining everything to his mom about the incident. He brags about how he took down that thief instantly, but it doesn't qualify for any awards for being a courageous citizen. Zhu thought, it's lucky that Hao wasn't raised by his mom, or he would have been taught to slip away at the first sign of danger. He then looked at Jiang and wondered, what kind of children this violent girl will raise. There was still some time left until 7, so Zhu decides to check on his chainmail progress. It was half completed, and Zhu was thinking about if he should make it down to his waist or his knees. He then sits on the couch so he can upload one of his completed videos. Suddenly, Jiang puts her legs on his lap and was not saying anything. Zhu asked if he scared her yesterday, and she replied with a no. He tells her to not deny it, since the gaze she had at that moment was enough to chill the room in the summer. She replied, it's just that she is worried about him, that he will suddenly die one day. She said, he once told her that this place is safe and that there wouldn't be any fights and killings. Zhu replied, that he was speaking in relative terms to her era, what happened yesterday wouldn't be encountered by 80%, so it really was an accident. She asked, does that mean how falls under the remaining 20%? And he replied yes, that the danger he faces is significantly higher than normal people. 
She looked at her sword and thought, she will have to shape him into a capable fighter, so that she won't have to worry about him getting slashed. He then pinched her nose while saying, people only worry like that when everything is fine, and it takes some bad luck to bump into a robber. After some time, it was time for their stream. Zhu tells the viewers that they play games because it's their hobby, therefore, he wouldn't recommend anyone to donate anything. But as soon as he said that, the viewers started gifting like crazy, which shocked him. Jiang was happy with so much money, while Zhu was thinking, that earned them so much, it looks as though they are playing hard to get. After the stream ended, Jiang happily said, that she earned another 30 yuan today. But then Zhu came close and said, it's more than that, probably around 80 yuan. He looked at a viewer and thought, this rich guy seems to be forever at rank 1 on the donation leaderboard. What an idler, the name of that viewer was, Young Master Wang. Jiang quickly calculated, that 80 yuan per day for a month, will give them 2400 yuan. Zhu said, it's enough to live an average life in Jiangcheng, so she will have to continue putting the effort. And she replied, the key thing is to note, that this comes from just an hour a day. But then, Zhu tells her that he is in the stream as well, so they have to split it by two, which angered her. She stood up and said, she is going to take a shower first and left. Later at night, they were preparing to watch a movie. Like always, Zhu puts her legs on his lap, so Jiang thought, this guy has his hands on her again. She then blushed a little and rubbed his thigh with her leg. Zhu was trying his best to control his emotions, which is noticed by her. She thought, he was like that the previous time too. She gets sad, thinking, what on earth did she just do? After the movie ended, Zhu tried to say something, but she tells him to shut up. With no explanation of his situation, he accepted his fate and said, all right, he won't say anything. He came back and sits on the couch to continue his work. He was thinking that he really wanted to reject her at first. But it's too difficult, and it's really not right for a warrioress to do things like that. Jiang looked at him and asked, why did he stop writing, to which he replied, that he didn't have anything to write. He then turned off the laptop, saying that he will leave it for another day. But as he was about to leave, Jiang grabbed his t-shirt and asked, if writing this not earn him any money. Zhu replied, it's not that it doesn't earn him money, he just hasn't earned anything from this yet, but it's not a guarantee that he will earn money from this. She leaned on him and said, he has said before, that humans need to be met. Zhu replied that's right, humans all have needs and it's all decided by their anatomy, between couples, it's normal for that to happen. He thought that he can't let her have any more misconceptions as there are enough fetish tables on him, like work fetish, shoe fetish, and hand fetish. He clears his throat and said with a cheerful smile that they are both innocent. But this makes her angry as she wondered if he is mocking her. She then pinched him hard to teach him a lesson. Zhu tells her that she is becoming more and more like a modern person now. He asked if she wants him to help her too, as it's actually very normal, so she doesn't have to be shy, but she angrily refused to his offer. Zhu was thinking that he will no longer skip training, as he must get stronger to do stuff with her. After a while, to Zhu's surprise, Jiang suddenly kissed him on cheeks. She said that she is going to bed first, and as his room is pretty warm, so don't forget to move the fan in. Zhu asked, can't they just look out for each other and enjoy the AC together, and that he can sleep on the floor. She turned away her gaze and asked, what's the difference between that and having a wedding night? Zhu replied, that a wedding night would involve other activities, but he won't do anything after moving in, and thought, even though he really want to, but he can't overpower her or pin her down. Suddenly, she looked at him with disgust and asked, if this was all according to his plan. She was looking at him with her strange eyes, and Zhu said that he is just her pure-hearted boyfriend, so of course, he wouldn't have such nefarious thoughts. She suggested switching back to their rooms, but he instantly refused and said that he will just continue to sleep in the storage room. He sighed, thinking he will just have to take a few more baths. Later at night, Jiang was thinking that she can pass it off as an accident the first time, but there is no explaining the second time. She was blushing and said, just what indecent nonsense has she learned? She couldn't sleep at all, so she decided to check on Zhu. She slowly opened his room's door and found him sleeping soundly. She sits next to him and thought, it really feels quite warm with only a fan in this weather. She touched his forehead, thinking that the AC is really such a great invention. Suddenly, Zhu wakes up and thought, he felt that someone was there. 
he thought that the warrioress wouldn't pull a sneak attack in the middle of the night and turned around to sleep again while she was hiding under his bed. She looked at his sleeping face and left the room. Then the next morning, while Zhu was training, Zhang came out of her room. He said that she woke up late today and that he is already done with practicing his punches. She gets scared after Zhu asked if she did not have a good night's sleep last night. She quickly left from there while saying, that's not the case, she had a very good sleep. While she was brushing, Zhu was bragging to her that practicing this martial art really strengthened his body. He is full of energy every day, and he feel like he can kill a cow with one punch. He then gets serious and tells her to stop practicing with the sword and practice the fists with him. Or perhaps she should just not train at all as she is already at such a high skill level and it would make no difference. Jiang refused, saying that she can't be lazy, as what if she go back one day, to which Zhu said, if that's the case, then they should get to know each other better before she go back. She looked at him and said, why don't he give it a try? Zhu gathered his courage and finally managed to touch her shoulder with his shivering hands. But after touching her, he quickly hide behind the wall. He said, he is scared that her heart isn't ready for it, so he will try it again at night. Jiang was getting angry, thinking, this guy is so annoying. After some time, Jiang was thinking that two big bowls of hot porridge, this is the best, and now it's time to take a nap. But suddenly, she realized that it would make her as useless as Zhu, who would only wake up in the afternoon before. After some time, she tells Zhu that she is heading out, thinking, she can't be like Winter Melon, who only knows how to eat and sleep all day. Zhu tells her that he will be going out in the afternoon as well, so if he don't message and say that he is on his way home, she can take his as he is not coming home for dinner. After going out, Jiang looked at the sky and thought, the weather looks great today. While leaving, she greeted Uncle Zhao and tells him that she is going out for a stroll. She remembered that when they were visiting Zhu's parents, he didn't even glance at the security, much less greet them. And for him, Uncle Zhao is an elder he respects. After a while, Zhu was done with his work and thought, it's about time to deliver some food to Hao. After some time, he brings some vegetarian buns and porridge for Hao, saying that patients should eat lighter foods. Hao gets irritated, asking, why is it time to eat again? He tells Zhu, that earlier today, Wang Zi woke up late, and it was almost 10 a.m. when he brought food over. Zhu then looked at his wound, saying that the blood is no longer seeping through, it looks like it's recovering nicely. He then excitedly asked how, if they will be on the news for this, as an officer stepped up to stop a robber, then almost lose his life, if not for the help of a courageous bystander. Meanwhile, Hao was thinking about, how it has always been his dream to randomly encounter such an event, and with this, he can strike it off the bucket list. Meditating disputes and looking for pets, even ten of those cases couldn't give him the sense of accomplishment from this one case alone. Hao then gave an orange to Zhu, saying, it's really sweet. Zhu asked if he can eat oranges with that wound of his, to which Hao replied, it's fine, he just had a little taste. Zhu asked, why does it feel like his face is glowing, and he is looking silly and got a goofy smile. Zhu tells him to spill the beans, how did it go with that girl from yesterday, and Hao replied that she is just an employee at the convenience store, and got targeted while on her way home from work. He happily added that luckily this hero was around, but Zhu interrupted, saying that the hero rescuing the damsel in distress should be him, saving him and her, the damsels. And as soon as Hao heard that, he fell into despair. After some time, while they were playing cards, Hao asked Zhu, didn't he say that he was practicing the sword? Zhu replied yes, just like in those TV shows, once his aura has recovered, it will be unstoppable with a sword, and then Hao's father arrived. He said to Zhu, so he is here to visit Hao again. And then Zhu invites him to play the landlord together, since it's boring to play with just the two of them. Suddenly, they heard someone knocking on the door, so Zhu rushed to open the door, thinking it's Wang Zi. But then to his surprise, it was the same girl from before. She was blushing and said in a low voice that she is there to see Officer Kin. Hao was thinking that this lady is acting weird, since she just has to thank him once, so why is she there again? Zhu then smiled and said, he suddenly remembered that he has something to do, and Hao's father also said, that he has to take Tyrant out for a walk. They said they are leaving first, and then shut the door. Outside, Zhu was telling his uncle to not drag him like Tyrant, and Hao's dad said that he is just finding a reason to excuse himself. 
Zhu asked with a smile, why does he has to excuse himself, she is just there to thank Hao, to which he replied, that it's just a little weird. Zhu thought, now he knows, who Hao takes after. After a while, Hao's dad was saying, that Hao gave him such a scare that day, one moment he was fine, and the next moment he was admitted to the hospital. He added that Hao is just a small-time cop, so how did he end up getting this injured? Zhu said that he is just being a hot-blooded and responsible cop, so it's a good thing. But Hao's dad angrily shouted, good his ass. Zhu sighed, thinking, looks like the old geezers in every family are the same. Zhu tells him that Hao's dreams are becoming reality, so there is no way. He will be able to get him to change now, and that it's good to have a sense of justice. Also, this is just a rare incident. If he encounters such a thing on a daily basis, wouldn't Zhang Cheng be in a state of upheaval? Hao's dad was still worried and said, even though it's a rare incident, he was unlucky enough to get involved. Suddenly, Zhu received a message from someone. It was a message from his mom, reminding him that it's almost his birthday. Zhu thought, if it wasn't for this reminder, he would have forgotten about his birthday, and that in previous years, he would head out to have noodles, and tells mom that he had a scrumptious meal. Or he would get his good friends for food, drinks, and karaoke, ending the day intoxicated, and considering his birthday spent. Then he wondered, how his birthday will be like this year. After a few days, Jiang tells Zhu that she is going out for a stroll again. After she left, Zhu was thinking, that she is off to idle around and enjoy the AC in the metro, and she is turning more into a modern person. After some time, Jiang was happily enjoying her trip in the metro. In the evening, she returned home and smelled something, so she wondered, what on earth is Zhu doing in the kitchen? She then noticed a box on the table. She ran to Zhu and asked excitedly, why is there such a huge cake there, is it his birthday today? And he replied yes. She gets angry and asked, why didn't he tell her earlier, as she would have prepared some delicious food today, to which Zhu replied, that life must be ritualistic and filled with surprises. She said that's not a good reason to waste the ingredients, and thought, what kind of ritual can a guy, who only knows how to cook ramen do? She looked at the box while drooling and said, that cake is massive, but Zhu tells her, that this is about the same size as the one they had before. She remembered about the previous cake and said, that cake seemed to disappear after a few mouthfuls. Zhu mocks her, saying that she has a big mouth, and she angrily replied, that her mouth isn't big. Zhu looked at her lips and thought, it is indeed not big. While Zhu was blowing the candle, Jiang was waiting for him to cut the cake. But then, suddenly, a thought crossed her mind. She came close to Zhu and asked, when is her birthday again? Zhu nervously replied, it seems that he has also forgotten the exact date. She then excitedly said, then why don't they set her birthday for today as well, and that it will be easier to remember that way. Zhu replied, setting her birthday on any date she wants, she is treating it too lightly. But Jiang said, since she has no idea when it is, she can set it on any day she likes. Zhu gets shocked hearing that and thought, she actually makes sense there. He tells her, but if they were to do that, they would celebrate their birthdays on the same day each year, which means giving them only one cake to eat. She thought about it for a while, that it is true, if they have the same birthday, they will only be able to eat a cake once a year. And after spending too much time thinking, she finally said, so be it. Zhu then places another candle, and tells her to make a wish. After blowing the candle, she happily said, that they will be celebrating their birthdays on the same day from now on. After a while, when she was enjoying her cake, Zhu said that if they were making a live-action adaptation of Cooking Master Boy, he is certain that they will offer her a role. Jiang asked him if he doesn't feel the sense of bliss washing over him when he is eating a cake, and Zhu asked in return if she knows what a bliss is. She replied yes she knows, eating cake makes her feel blissful. So does enjoying the fan, sitting under the AC, and eating ice cream, those are things that make one happy too. Zhu looked at her and thought, her concept of bliss is indeed that simple. Zhu then gave her one more piece of cake, saying, here comes a dose of happiness. While she was enjoying the cake, Jiang remembered something and tells Zhu that a couple of days ago, she hung out with a girl who always watches their streams. Zhu gets confused and asked, which girl? She replied that it's Teen Yogurt Beauty, she lives not far from there at the other building, and she even promised to let her be their housekeeper. Zhu asked for her photo, so Jiang gives him her phone, saying, she is on her feed. 
while he was checking the phone, Zhu was thinking that now, even if she say that she accidentally came from a thousand years ago, no one would believe her. She has already integrated into modern society from head to toe. After checking the photo, Zhu said that he had never seen her around and asked if she is renting, and Jiang tells him that she just moved in this year, it looks like she bought her own place. Zhu thought, even though this district is a little old, there are schools nearby, which would make the housing prices not that cheap, and wondered if this girl has ulterior motives. But then he shook his head that he is just probably overthinking it. Zhu then points at a building and confirmed if she is living in that building, to which Jiang shockingly asked, how does he know about that? Zhu said he guessed it, and she asked, how could he guess that, thinking, this guy seems to have some psychic powers, he just somehow knows so many things. Zhu tells her that it's just a casual guess, he wasn't expecting it to be right, and then he guessed again if she lives on the third floor, so Jiang quickly asked the girl about it. She asked which floor she stay on, and the girl replied the third floor. Zhu looked at her shocked reaction and thought, she is so curious that she has forgotten about the cake. Zhu said, it really is just a lucky guess, but Jiang said that she doesn't believe him. Zhu then tells her the truth that there was a neighbor, who he was friendly with, he had a place over there, which he sold at the start of the year after moving out. Jiang asked, how can he guess so right just based on that? Also, how does he know that his friend sold it to Ping? He replied, due to the location of the school around there, that place of his is much cheaper than theirs. Plus with the ghost incident, he was in a hurry to get his son a new place. And after looking at this girl's image, the chances that she has a husband is low, so even though she is looking for a new place, she wouldn't look for one that is too old, so a small place would be good for her. Jiang muttered, how does he know this much? And thought, even though the two of them are together all day, why does she seem like an idiot who doesn't know a thing? Zhu tells her to not get sad, and that she would have known too if she talked with the uncles and aunties around there. Jiang said, it still doesn't seem right, there's surely more people selling their place in the small district, to which Zhu tells her, that's why he was just guessing, as there was a sign at the main gate for rent and buy their places. Jiang gets shocked to know that he notices so many things every day. Zhu said, he just takes note of it from time to time. This is called information integration. The outcome of the guess is not important, what's important is whether they can piece the information together. Jiang excitedly tells him that he would have been a magistrate if he was in her time. Zhu added, and then she would be the one killing him, so Jiang asked why would she kill him. He replied, maybe he would have fallen in love with her looks and taken her in as a concubine, but she would have preferred death over marriage, so on the wedding night, she will decide to cut him down. Jiang brushed it off and thought. Hearing him explain it all, it doesn't feel that magical or anything, he just happened to know more. Suddenly, she freezes after Zhu asked her if she did not do her homework, and instead went out to have fun today. She pouts while looking at the cake and muttered, this cake is no longer tasty. After some time, she was doing her homework. She was thinking, while the summer heat is unbearable, what's more unbearable are the theatrics from Xiao Ming and Xiao Hong. She gets angry and punched the table in frustration, asking if the kings and generals are more noble than they are. Zhu tells her to not spout weird phrases like that, or she will look stupid. He said, if she is really tired of studying, she can take breaks from time to time, like watch videos, listen to music, or she can watch those videos, which only star two or three people. But before he could finish his sentence, Jiang shouted that she has never seen those. Zhu and Wintermelon looked at her with suspicion, and Zhu muttered crosstalk. She starts melting in shame, when he asked her what did she think he was referring to. She was controlling herself, thinking, she can't hit him, she can't hit him. She said, he obviously read the Golden Lotus when he was living alone, to which Zhu asked if she even know what a Golden Lotus is. Jiang said, she knows that he is just trying to move into her room so that he can commit despicable acts on her. Zhu shouted, wanting to, and actually doing it are two separate matters, it's totally normal to think that way since they are in a relationship. Also, he can't win a fight against her, so she is the one who gets to decide. They both fell silent for a while, and then she said, that thing he did with her legs. And as soon as she said that, Zhu froze in his place. Now, it was Jiang and Winter Melon looking at him with suspicion, and she said that he is taking advantage of a person from the Kai Yuan era, who knows nothing. She put the pencil down in anger and went towards her computer. Zhu tells her to wait and said, she is getting on the computer so has she finished her homework. 
She replied that he is thinking of tricking her all day and even want to move into her room. He is up to no good, then called him Deng Tuzi. Realizing that he can't win right now, Zhu tells her to go ahead. Suddenly, he heard some sound effects and thought about something. He asked what she is playing, and Jiang replied, bejeweled. He quickly went near her and tried to convince her to play another game while thinking. She actually found the games that he has put on his D drive. Jiang asked how is it not fun since she find it really entertaining. She excitedly tells him to watch her match these jewels, but Zhu tried to stop her. And then it came, an elf girl with no clothes on her. While she was looking at him with narrowed eyes, Zhu said that she should learn how to format a drive, so allow him to demonstrate with the D drive. But before he could do anything, she kicked him and tells him to stay away. Zhu muttered, it's normal for a guy who lives alone, and tells her that if she didn't add a password to the computer, he would have deleted those games long ago. He thought, people usually go from beginner to giving up, so where did she even learn to find hidden folders? She asked him if his brain full of stuff like this, to which he replied no, and that he only play this when he is really bored. She thought, it's true that he has mostly been on his laptop watching movies and writing reviews for the past year, and he didn't really play this. Zhu tried to explain, this is called hoarding, where one download it once and leaves it alone after, as there are so many more games that he has bought, but never played. But even after all the explaining, Jiang said that she is not trusting any of his bullshit. Zhu said that he should delete them now, but she tells him to keep his hands off, as these are all hers now. While he was confused to hear that, she said that these are all evidence of him being a dang Tuzi, so why would she let him delete them? Zhu tells her that playing too many of these games is no good for her body, thinking her Kaiyuan era wife is going to be led astray. She tells him that she will not trust any of his words and thought, she knew from the beginning, that there was more than meets the eye with this guy, his secret has been totally exposed now. She find another game, and Zhu said that this one is good, but she will need an account for it. She asked for his account, and Zhu said he is starting to realize that she is getting less polite with her. She angrily shouted that he took her legs, so Zhu surrendered and gave it to her. He thought, even though what's his is also hers, something still feels off about this. Zhu explained that this is a TCG, where she has her own set of cards while her opponent has theirs. Jiang was getting excited, thinking that she doesn't know who her character is and where is she. All she knows is that she is all ready to dominate this game. After explaining everything, Zhu asked if she now knows how can she play it. But she tells him to play a round for her, so Zhu realized that she understood nothing. He explained that it's actually really simple, look at these crystals over there, just accumulate some of these every round. She and her opponents will take turns playing cards. While explaining, Zhu thought that her body is so soft, and it doesn't feel too warm, her hair still smells great as well. He tells her that if she will be able to reach legend rank, then she can stream this game as well. Zhu continued that it feels quite magical when he realized that he is teaching an ancient warrioress to play games, but Jiang said that she is already a modern person. He said that modern people all underwent nine years of compulsory education, so is she done with her homework? She acted cute and said they agreed that she doesn't have to do it today. After a while, it was time for her stream. Zhu sits on the couch, thinking he will use these metal rings to make a grocery basket for the warrioress. After the stream started, Zhu noticed that Jiang's new friend, Teen Yogurt tried to be the top donator several times, but was pushed down by Wang Zi. He then greeted everyone and said he is currently making a grocery basket, it will be used to store things when it's finished. The viewers said it's awesome, the female streamer really picked up a treasure and then one of them asked if he get on the news. He shared the link of the news, where a police officer encountered a robbery while off-duty, and worked together with a warm-hearted citizen to stop it. They asked if he is from Jiangcheng, to which Zhu replied he is, and checked the news himself. He saw the clip, and his move was named the double ear slap. He said this is a misunderstanding, he is a good citizen, who just play games and makes armor, so how could he perform a double ear slap? Suddenly, Wang Zi donated 10 gifts, happily saying that his bro is on the news. Jiang also checked the clip while thinking, although she heard about what happened from Zhu, that he slapped someone silly, but she didn't know the actual process. The viewers called him awesome, asking if that is Kung Fu, but Zhu tells them to guess if that person is him or not. 
Jiang was playing seriously, thinking, it's getting harder to climb now, so she need to focus, while leaving the talking to Zhu. After the stream ended, she thought that she really had to concentrate, otherwise, she will fall quickly. She then asked Zhu if that's him in the news, to which he replied positively. Jiang said that she didn't teach him that move, it should have been his neck, right? Zhu replied it's because of her, as she said before, that he can snap a person's neck if he is lucky enough. So at that time, he was so angry when he saw Hao getting stabbed, that he used his full force to attack. But after remembering her words, he used the other hand to slap him in the head. He said that Kung Fu really isn't a good thing, its lethality is too great. Suddenly, Zhu confirmed with Jiang, that she should be able to hold back her strength, since he doesn't want to see her take someone's head off one day. Jiang happily replied yes she can, with people like him, but she doesn't hold back when she is dealing with masters, so he doesn't need to worry. Zhu took a sigh of relief, thinking it's a good thing that he is not a master. Jiang watched his clips more than 20 times and said, if she were to slap him like that, then his head would be like a winter melon bomb. Zhu gets scared after hearing that, so she called him timid. He repeated three times that he is not timid, so don't say nonsense. He tells her to not make those jokes anymore, as it's not funny at all, and Jiang said she just wanted to scare him a little, as she used to cut off people's head. Suddenly, Zhu shouted and tells her it's enough. He said, the past is the past, she is now just like a weak woman with no strength to even restrain a chicken. She has always kept herself safe and never hurt anyone, understand. He continued that he gets scared when she talk about that stuff with an indifferent tone. Jiang lowered her head and replied, she understand. Zhu looked at her and thought, when she held her sword back then, it was really possible that she could have killed him with one slash. If it wasn't because Hao was in danger, he may never have personally experienced how fragile life is and the respect for life. Jiang then opened her arms while looking at him with love and said, she is not Jiang from the past anymore, she is a modern person and his girlfriend. He sits near her and she tells him that she was just trying to scare him a little, she won't hurt people casually, so he doesn't have to be afraid that she will be arrested. Zhu said that she has to think of herself as a modern person from the bottom of her heart and she said okay to it. They both then kissed and Zhu wondered if she learned a thing or two about acting coquettishly. Or is this her natural talent as she's already such a good fighter and if she learns how to act coquettishly. After they were done with the tongue kiss, Zhu thought that she seems to be getting more skilled at this. Jiang then grabbed a coke for herself and sits near the computer. She thought, this game only requires her to sit and wait for the opponent to play their hand. She just have to use the mouse to play her cards too, it's nothing difficult. She looked back at Zhu and asked if he is free right now. She called him near her, asking if he wants to cuddle while she plays. Zhu said, any other normal girl wouldn't have given such a suggestion, so she should request for cuddles in a cute voice. He starts saying, that being a warrioress and a cutie at the same time, so Jiang gets confused and thought, he is saying those stuff again, that she doesn't understand. Zhu said, even if he is free, he will be able to find something to do, like watch a movie. He thought, he have to admit though, the time spent with his laptop, seems to be longer than the time he has spent cuddling with her. He was thinking, his previous video was on the front page for a day, and got quite popular. He doesn't have any inspiration for the next one though. The previous one relied on having the theme of the video differ from the meaning of lyrics, and yet they synced perfectly, which caused it to get popular. He then picked up Winter Melon and thought, once you grab the area behind a cat's neck, they won't be able to move. Just like the high-level bosses in martial art films, there is always a weakness somewhere. Suddenly, he tells Jiang that she and Winter Melon are really similar. He tells her how when Winter Melon first came there, his hair stood on days at end, and he hid himself in the corner or under the bed. He was only able to lure him out with food, but once that was finished, he would continue to hide. Later on, as he felt safer, his true colors started to shine through, and he became more and more clingy and just hung around all day at home. Jiang picked up Winter Melon and starts playing with him. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that he can't beat her, and now that she has learned how to act coquettish and dumb, it will be all over if she continues the trend and gets fat. Jiang asked, what is he up to now, and why does she feel angry all of a sudden? Zhu said with a sad face, it's just that, although he has a girlfriend by his side all day, he doesn't get the chance to enjoy the AC together with her. 
and now she knows that children aren't born from just purely sleeping together, why won't she take pity on him? As it is the summer and the electric fan only blows warm air at night. Jiang said that they can switch back then, to which he replied, he didn't say a thing. She angrily said, he is just trying to move in together and sleep with her, but Zhu said he is not, and that it's really warm in the storage room. She tells him to not use that trick on her, but Zhu said, how could he use such a dumb method, that tortures him, she is looking down on him. Jiang said, in that case, she will move to his room and the two of them can use the fan together. Unable to understand that she was testing him, Zhu excitedly said sure. But then he realized his mistake and lied to her, that he was just joking, and that girls are always afraid of the heat, so how could he let her move with him? Jiang asked how does he know that girls are all usually afraid of heat, and Zhu said it's the curse of knowledge. She knows he is making fun of her, and tells him, that when she went to look about Thanos, she found that he fought with Iron Man, and Iron Man eventually died, it wasn't like what he said. Zhu realized something and asked if she has always been looking up everything that he has told her, and she replied of course, and she also knows that he has been hiding loads of information from her. Zhu thought she is the same as before, she obviously knows about everything and yet she keeps it a secret and watched him make a fool of himself, she is a devilish girl. Zhu then tells her that the curse of knowledge certainly exists, when one encounters something out of his knowledge, he will either just understand or he never will, therefore he didn't trick her. Jiang replied that he wouldn't be able to, even if he tried, she is just letting him feel like he has succeeded in tricking her. Zhu gets shocked hearing that and said, she has even learned such mystical tricks. Then later at night, Jiang was saying, if it is really too hot for him, he can move his bed into her room. She added, he can have the bigger bed and she will take the small one, so Zhu shockingly asked, what's the difference between doing that and switching their rooms back then? She replied, he is the one who does not want to switch their rooms back, thinking, sleeping in the same room on separate beds is definitely better than sharing a bed together. Otherwise, he might trick her into having kids at any time. Zhu was thinking, even putting sleeping mats for summer on his bed doesn't help with the heat, and it leaves marks all over his body. So he really can't let her bake in the heat, while he is enjoying the cool air, so this compromise sounds like the best solution for now. Jiang looked at him thinking and said, she will help him move the bed over once she is done with this match, and Su gets happy after hearing that. He quickly gets up and placed a chair beside her. He puts her legs on his lap and starts explaining about the game, that the victory condition of this deck is to shuffle the cards. While explaining, he was touching her legs all over, thinking, her legs are the best. After a while, Jiang happily shouted that she won. She then tells him to play another round. But Zhu said, it's time to move the bed. While Zhu was packing his stuff and was preparing to move the bed, Jiang was thinking that putting two beds in the room would make the room very cramped. And now that they are going to be sleeping in the same room anyway, moving the bed in on purpose seems a little pretentious. It seems like there isn't much of a difference between moving the beds together and sleeping on the same bed. She then said in a low voice, that's it's possible. She said, they can place the sword in the middle of the bed, and can each take up half of the bed to sleep on. Zhu's eyes sparkled after hearing that, and he excitedly said, that would be the best. Jiang continues that since they are wearing the pajamas, and Zhu agrees with her, saying she is right. She was blushing, but continued that he can't beat her in a fight anyway, so she will kick him off the bed if he make any moves on her, and Zhu replied with a yes. She then tells her to continue the game, while he will pack and move his things over and then take a shower. After the shower, Zhu asked when is she planning to go to bed, and Jiang said that she will play for a little longer. After some time, Zhu was thinking that he didn't expect to be this successful, as he originally thought, that he would have to fight for a spot on the floor first, before slowly making his way up. After an hour, Zhu tells Jiang that it's 11 already, so it's time for bed. She then shut down the computer and said, she will take a shower first. It's been 45 minutes, but Jiang wasn't coming out of the shower, so Zhu wondered if she fainted in the bathroom. While Zhu was in deep thought, she came out and asked, why isn't he sleeping? Zhu said that he was waiting for her, but Jiang nervously asked why, since they are not planning on doing anything, and thought, he is pushing his luck, as she wanted to wait for him to fall asleep first. Zhu said yes, they are not doing anything, so let's hurry up and go to sleep. After a while, they both were watching the bed, and the sword was already placed on it. 
Jiang asked, why isn't the sword in the middle? To which he replied, he is fine with this amount of space, and he is also afraid that she will not be able to sleep comfortably. Jiang was trying to calm herself down, when she heard him saying, it's almost 12, so is she still planning to just stand there? She was thinking, how did she become this impulsive, and how her second miss, the townsfolk, and zoo parents will view her? She suddenly shouted, that she is not afraid of the warm weather, so it's better for her to sleep in the other room. And then she ran away from there. Zoo gets in shock while thinking, after a whole day's worth of work, he is still back to square one. After a minute, he angrily opened the door of the storage room. Inside, he finds Jiang setting up the bed for her to sleep. Suddenly, she gets startled by him, as he ignored her and lay down on the bed. Zhu said, he doesn't need the AC anymore, so she can have her bed back, thinking, the plan to get her to open up has not yet succeeded. He will have to try harder next time. Jiang shakingly said that she is really not afraid of the heat, but Zhu asked if she wants to sleep there with him then. Zhu tells her that in any case, she is only allowed to sleep in the other room, he won't budge on this. He continued, she said herself that they should save on electricity and that they can't waste it. He added that they are cuddling and kissing all day long, but before he could complete his sentence, Jiang picked him up on her shoulder and leave from there. After reaching the main bedroom, she throws him on the bed. Then to Zhu's surprise, she angrily put the sword in the middle of the bed, wished him good night and lie down. They both were silent for a while when she suddenly asked him to return her blanket. Zhu gives her the blanket, and after taking it, she quickly turned around. She tells him, if he dares to touch her, she will kick him off the bed. She added, then she will move back to the storage room. But Zhu tells her, that the storage room is actually his room, and he is just there to enjoy the AC, and doesn't have any other intentions. She questioned him, if he really think that she will believe him. While she was thinking, they unknowingly ended up sleeping on the same bed, she was tricked somehow. She said, she knew it he was up to no good, ever since they switched rooms at the beginning. She thought, this was all a ruse, if he didn't use a nonsensical excuse to get them to switch rooms, she would have kicked him out, if he tried to linger on the storage room bed. But now that they have switched their rooms, when he tries to move in with that thick skin of his, she can't even move back to the storage room. Or he will be an annoyance. And the more she think about it, the angrier she gets, so she has to think of a way to give him a good beating. She peeked at him a little, and then suddenly turned around in shame, thinking, second miss, she has brought her benefactor to the bed with her. But then, Zhu said that they are not even doing anything, and they have nothing to hide, they are just a little closer now, and are not even touching. He continued, that as a couple, they are as pure as white sheets, but she was saying, that at the beginning, they were. But Zhu tells her to not say anymore, he is just purely huddling over, just as he should, so she can move over a little, or she will accidentally fall off the bed in the middle of the night. To which she angrily replied she doesn't want to, even though they are just purely sleeping together now, he will surely take advantage of it in the coming days, and want to touch her sooner or later. Zhu laughed a bit and said, she said herself, it will happen sooner or later, so why does it matter if it happens sooner? Jiang smiled after hearing that, and tells him to stretch his hand out. Unaware of her true intentions, he excitedly gave his hand to her. But then to her surprise, she grabbed his finger and twisted it hard. And while he was screaming in pain, she tells him that they are gonna touch sooner or later, so here is a preemptive strike. Zhu said, since she has already touched him, does that mean he can touch her now? She replied, she will kick him off if he does, and Zhu cried over the fact that he suffered for nothing. After some time, she asked him why isn't he asleep yet, as this is the sixth time he has flipped over. Zhu replied he can't sleep, and thought, since they have both used the same shampoo to wash their hair, the smell is making him excited. He turned around and asked if she can stretch her hand over to him. Jiang asked what for, and Zhu replied that touching her hands is not a big deal. She thought about it for a second, and then slowly moved her hand towards him. Zhu grabbed her hand, thinking it's really soft and it smells great. But then suddenly, he realized something. He asked her in shock, why does her hand smell like his hand lotion, and if she secretly used it? She frees her hand from him and said, she didn't. Zhu said, that the smell on her hand is unmistakable of his hand lotion, and asked if she didn't buy her hand cream, to which Jiang replied she did, and is currently using it. 
Zhu was still questioning her, so she closed her ears and said, she is using her hand cream, and now that she is tired, she is going to sleep, and wondered if Zhu has a dog's sense of smell. Zhu said, he will talk to her about this tomorrow and turned around. After an hour, he was looking at her sleeping, thinking that even if they are not having any physical contact, watching her sleep from over there makes him feel comfy as well. He poked her cheeks, whispering that she is too cute, and then wished her good night. Then the next morning, Zhu woke up and find that Jiang is already up. He came out of her room and find her sitting near the computer. She was enjoying her yogurt, and after seeing him, she wished him good morning. Zhu showed the sword to her and asked if she is not training today, and she replied yes, not today. Zhu went inside the bathroom and then noticed Jiang's hand cream. He checked the tube and thought there is still quite a bit left and wondered if she can't bear to use it. He opened the cap and smelled it a little and gets too shocked, thinking, this is literally just his hand lotion. He went out and put the cream down in anger. He asked her why her hand cream has turned into the hand lotion that he is using, to which Jiang replied that she has no idea what he is talking about. Angered, Zhu reminds her, she said that she bought a new tube, so is she sure that this isn't his hand lotion? But Jiang replied, this is a new flavor, it just smells like his hand cream. Zhu put some cream and said, spending a couple of dollars to buy the cheap hand lotion he is using, and then squeezing it into this tube, isn't this just his hand lotion then? Jiang gets too shocked and asked, how did he find about that, and Zhu said that he is not dumb. He tells her that he will buy her hand cream next time, as it's not right to do this stuff to save some money. Jiang said but it's too expensive, to which Zhu replied, it can last for a few months, so it's cheap when she think of it that way. He tells her to have breakfast first, then he will tidy the room so she can go to study. After breakfast, while Zhu was moving his stuff, Jiang asked if they are staying in the same room now and he replied positively. She reminds him that if he ever does her wrong someday, she will really stab him to death with one thrust of a sword. Zhu smiled and said, so everything that she has said before was a lie. She replied whatever the case, this is not negotiable and then leave from there. After she left, Zhu muttered he know that he is way past the point of no return. Suddenly, he looked at her underwear and thought, just moving in like this suddenly might put him into some embarrassing situations. After setting up the room, he came out and find Jiang studying, so he asked if she is working on a question. She said, holding a meter-long ruler, you may half it with each passing day, and yet it never disappears, and then asked Zhu how that even work. He replied, every time she half the ruler, the next half that she would take becomes smaller, so she will never be able to reduce the ruler to nothing. He sits near her and said, it may be hard to imagine this in real life, but from a purely mathematical point of view, that's just what happens. After having it tens of times, it may not be visible to the human eye anymore, but if she were to only take half each time, there will always be half left behind. It becomes infinitely close to zero but never reaches it, and it is still able to become smaller and smaller each time. After explaining it to her, Zhu was thinking, it looks like she is starting to show some interest in her studies. Suddenly, she closed the notebook and asked if she can play now, and Zhu officially take back his words. In the afternoon, he was with Wang, thinking that it's finally time for Hao to be discharged, and take him home to continue healing his injuries. And as soon as Hao arrived, Wang congratulates him on getting discharged, and gave him a bouquet. Hao asked what's with all this, finding it strange to receive it as a grown man. Wang said he bought it for a girl, but she didn't want it, so he brought it over to give it to him instead, which angered Hao. He takes out some flowers from the bouquet, and forcefully placed them in Wang's hair, while Zhu was enjoying the scene and clicked pictures. While they were in the car, Hao remembered something that he forgot to mention. He takes out a newspaper, telling Zhu that the three of them are in the paper, and Zhu gets excited after hearing that. He was looking at the news with excitement and said, he didn't expect that one day he would be in the newspaper. He happily said that he will take the newspaper to frame and hang it in his dad's office, so he can look at it every day. Wang also excitedly asked if he is on there as well, but Hao shouted at him, saying, all he did that day was scream, so just pay attention to the road and keep driving. Wang replied that he was just calling for help, as what if the two of them couldn't stop him, so he was just being safe. Zhu comments that Hao is really playing with his life and suggests how to change jobs and do logistics or something. Hao irritatedly replied, no way, and that he wants to become a detective. 
Zhu then acts as a reporter and asked him, how does he feel after being hospitalized for half a month? But before he could reply, Wang hits a sudden break, and Hao hit his head on the seat. He tells Wang to drive safer, and has a terrified look on his face. Wang replied, he was feeling great, and this is called pain and happiness. Hao blushed and said, they already knows, that he always thinks about encountering something and then yelling, don't move, police, and this time he save a girl too. Zhu boasted in front of him, saying that if it wasn't for him, he would have died for his bravery, but Hao tells him to go to hell for his complacency. Wang blushed and added with a smile, if it wasn't for him, they would not got that chance to show off. Zhu and Hao both think that's true, as if it wasn't for Wang, wanting to go to an internet cafe, they would have gone back to their homes, and nothing would have happened. Zhu tells Hao that the two of them are a jinx together and will get into trouble, so it has nothing to do with him. Hao replied, it seems that as long as the three of them are together they will be fine, thinking, the bad omen is not Zhu, but Wang. After some time, they reached Hao's home, where Hao's dad does the ritual to sweep away the bad luck before entering. Inside, Wang gets too shocked to see the armor and thought, these people got nothing better to do, and now they are preparing for war. Hao's dad tells him that once he is finished, he can wear it on duty and then no one will be able to hurt him. Zhu said, he is about to finish as well, so let's see who finishes it first, and Hao's dad replied that he won't lose. Hao tells his dad that he is a little sleepy, so he is going to rest for a while. Wang and Zhu then said goodbye to him and prepared to leave. Outside, Zhu tells Wang to leave first as he is going to see his parents. After a while, Zhu reached home and was looking at the newspaper with his photo. After he went inside, his mom asked about Jiang, so he tells her that she is home and asked where is his dad. She said he is in the study room, so Zhu quickly goes there. His dad noticed him and thought, he is smiling like a mouse, so he is definitely up to no good. Zhu then went close to his dad and showed him the newspaper. Later that day, when Zhu was in his house, John came from outside while carrying a goose in her hand. Zhu gets too shocked and asked, why is she carrying a goose? He fell into despair after thinking that maybe she didn't catch a fish, so she brought back someone's goose instead. Legend has it that an experienced fisherman would do anything to ensure that they wouldn't return empty-handed. And then he asked her where did that goose come from. She replied that she bought it and that she will be home earlier next time to make dinner. As she was going to the kitchen, she smells something and asked, what is that? Suddenly, Zhu remembered that he brought something for her. He points at something and said he forgot to tell her that he left something delicious for her. He explained that this is durian, it's just like stinky tofu, it smells terrible, but tastes great, but Jiang refused, saying she won't eat that. Zhu then remembered his conversation with his dad and thought, although he didn't manage to secure this house, but he did get his hands on some of the durian, it's a pity that Jiang won't try it. While she was working in the kitchen, Zhu asked where did she buy this goose from, so she tells him that an old lady was selling it and she felt a little pity that no one was buying it off her, so she brought it home. He then asked about the fishing, so Jiang tells him that she was with Ping Ping, but she didn't snag any fish, so she gave all of hers to Ping. Zhu thought, if she really caught this goose from somewhere, she would have excitedly shown it off to him, the moment she entered the house. After some time, the dinner was ready and Zhu said while drooling, it smells so good. And as soon as he took a bite, he praised her, saying, it's awesome. He was thinking, even if he were to one day turn into a fatty from being fed by the warrioress, being able to eat delicious food like this would still be worth it. Suddenly, Jiang said that she received a message from Ping Ping. While she was checking the phone, Zhu finds it suspicious as before she was calling that girl Gong Ping. But now she is calling her Ping Ping. He peeked into her phone, asking what did she send. It was a picture of the dish she made from the fish that Jiang gave to her. Jiang said, it looks like she battered it in flour and fried it just like how they ate it before. Suddenly, Zhu shockingly said, what's with the King King? He thought that the witch called Ping Ping must have taught her this. Jiang said it's his name, but Zhu angrily replied he knows that, but doesn't it feel like it's a girl? Shocked, Jiang asked him if he is a girl. This made him more angry as he take the phone from her hands and tells her that he is talking about the name. After changing his name, he returned the phone to Jiang. After he left, she checked that he saved his name as husband. 
She blushed while thinking, he is her husband just like that. Zhu noticed her looking at him secretly while blushing. He tells her to give her phone to him again so he can change it back, as it feels weird. But instead of giving her phone back to him, she ran from there and went inside her room. After some seconds she came out and said, the battery is dead, so there is no way to change it anymore. Zhu sighed while saying, as long as she is happy with it, he is fine. After some time, when Zhu was making his armor, he heard a voice saying that a girl was being robbed, when a brave man came to her rescue. My ancestor from many generations was Zhu Zhu, and to practice martial arts, you have to first strengthen your core. Hearing all that, Zhu gets a little irritated and then he asked Zhang, what exactly is she watching? She looked at him and replied, he is on the front page. He then saw a video of himself, saying that it's not a mystical technique, it's just the tiger fist and then how he gave a double slap to the robber and knocked him down. The video continued with him saying, in order to practice this, you must align your body. Then the time when he said that Jiang doesn't dare to go against him. This is family hierarchy, and then he asked her to give him a kiss. They were both looking at the edited video and how it turned into something else. Zhu gets angry, thinking, it shows him practicing martial arts, and it makes him look like an experienced practitioner, yet it ends with Zhang saying that he is too weak. Zhu asked how did it get on the first page, and Zhang said, it's the first thing she saw when she entered the website. She happily said, that it made him seem like he is strong when he is outside, but weak when he is back home. Zhu blushed and said, it doesn't seem like it's the truth. He hit his head, saying that his reputation is totally in the gutter. Wang also sent him the video link while making fun of him. Zhu then checked his channel and gets shocked after seeing that the number of views has jumped by so much. He checked his chainmail video, and as expected, the views on that one also increased. Jiang asked him if it's not a good thing. He said it's good for now, and thought he is a skillful martial artist that catches robbers outside, but he is a punching bag when he is at home. But there is just one thing he is afraid of and then his phone starts ringing. And the thing that Zhu was afraid of finally came. It was a call from his dad, and with no other option left, he picked the call. And as soon as he picked it up, his dad shouted, what's with the tiger fist thing? He tells his dad that it's just a joke, it's just the martial arts he told him about earlier. And if not for that, he would have been in the hospital with Hao that day. His dad then asked about Jiang, as she is doing that infocom thingy. Zhu tried to escape the situation by telling his dad how one can set up an online stream and what devices they need. But his dad tells him to not give him that nonsense and speak clearly what the two of them are up to which scared him. Zhu tells him that they were just bored sometimes, so they play games while at home and then they started recording it to earn some cash on the side and the thing about him getting bullied, it's all fake. But his dad shouted at him, saying, who cares if he is getting bullied, he didn't ask that but Zhu tells him to let him explain first. He said that he might be getting popular soon, so when he will be pulling in the big bucks, he will be the father of a rich son, but his dad tells him to not give him that. Zhu then accepted that they are streaming martial arts training and his chainmail making process. Suddenly, to Zhu's surprise, his dad hung up the call. Zhu thought the old man probably hadn't thought this far ahead and hastily made the call when he saw the video. He probably wanted to lecture him a ton, but since he admitted it too quickly, he has no idea what to say anymore. He was in such a hurry and that's why he ended up failing. Jiang asked with a sad look if his parents are unhappy with this while thinking, watching their son getting called weak by his girlfriend. There is no way they would be happy about it. She suggested to ask the person to delete the video, but Zhu said that there is no need as it's more troublesome that way too. She then asked about his parents in a sad tone, but then to her surprise, Zhu tells her that it's their parents, not his. Zhu then tells her, now that the video has already been uploaded, they should take advantage of it as much as possible. Jiang gets confused and asked what he meant by taking advantage. Zhu excitedly said, he wants to direct some traffic from her stream to his videos, and he will make a video on the hottest series in town. Then, the same day, while they were on the stream, Zhu was thinking, that the old man might be watching as well. He then thought of something that it really might be possible. He starts saying that he has almost finished weaving this basket and it will be done by today. Also, he saw that weird video on the front page today and then asked who was the one who ambushed him like that 
please step forward. Then a guy commented, it's an invaluable recording of how humanity first subdued the comrade practicing tiger fists. Zhu looked at the comment and angrily asked the guy if it was him. The guy instantly refused, and Zhu remembered that this guy is their very first viewer, who kept leaving and joining during the stream. Zhu said that it doesn't matter anymore, since it has already happened, he will no longer keep it a secret. And then he accepted that he is from the ninth generation of Tiger Fist practitioners. Jiang heard him saying that he trains throughout the year, rain or shine, and not everyone can practice the stance for more than an hour. Zhu thought it has only been 10 minutes and they have almost as many viewers as compared to the middle of yesterday's stream, maybe even a little more. The helpful citizen who took down a robber is streaming himself making chainmail and practicing martial arts that's bound to attract some attention. He thought that the background character got popular in the end and then he went to bring the armor. He showed it to the viewers, saying he have a full tutorial of this on his channel, named the Deadbeat Master King. And as for why exactly he started making this was because he has been interested in martial arts since young, and most of his videos are also related to that. After putting down the armor, he started doing his stance, and the stream filled with comments that it started. His dad was watching all of this and said in a strange tone, if this is it. This is the tiger fist that took down the man with a single smack, it's nonsense. He was getting angry, thinking, their hometown is nowhere near Zhu Chu's, so where on earth did this rascal learn that stuff from? He then called Hao and asked him if he knows about what martial arts is Zhu practicing. Hao excitedly said, it's Tiger Fist, and it looks authentic, and then he asked Zhu's father to help him check his family tree too, since his ancestor can be Qin Jing. Zhu's father couldn't believe that Hao is also corrupted to the core by Zhu. After the stream, Jiang asked Zhu if it's really okay to stream him practicing martial arts, to which Zhu said, as long as he doesn't hurt anybody, it's fine. After some time, when Zhu was working on his laptop, Jiang was thinking that this guy would usually be caressing her leg while they are playing games or watching videos. But now that he is busy with the computer all day, it makes her feel guilty that she has been playing games. She tells him that seeing him work non-stop today, she feels a little awkward playing games all day long. Zhu said he understand, it's just like when someone has been studying non-stop in the school dormitory, others will feel ashamed. He then gave her the math workbook and said she can do this then. But she ignored the math workbook and picked a different book from the table. Then she puts her legs on his lap and start reading the book. Zhu said while blushing that she can do this while they are sleeping as well and asked why she won't let him get close when they are on the bed. She gets startled after hearing that and then shouted, it's just not allowed. Zhu asked if isn't this the same, they can kiss and cuddle on the couch but they can't do it on the bed, there is no logic in that. Meanwhile, Zhang was thinking, even though it's the same action, the change in location makes it feel different. She then tells him, it's endearing while it's on the sofa, but it's obscene while it's on the bed, to which Zhu thought, it's not easy to fool her anymore. He tried to convince her by saying, doing other stuff would be obscene, but just purely hugging isn't obscene at all. He then slowly puts his hand on her thigh while thinking, living this way is already great, one should be grateful for what they have. Initially, he had to rack his brains to think of a reason to be touching her, but now, she has come over on her own accord, so he have to be grateful. He then heard Zhang saying, holding her legs like that, he won't. But before she could finish, Zhu said that this is a totally normal reaction. He is not a pervert. What happened in the past was different, and he occasionally resolves it in moderation. Zhu continued that he is working right now and tells her to not move unnecessarily. He asked why did she stop playing games, to which she replied she already told him that her playing games while he is working makes her feel like a trashy deadbeat. She tells her to do his work in the bedroom so that she can't see him in serious mode and she won't feel pressured to not play games. But Zhu replied he chose to stay there so that she will feel guilty and study well. Being more intelligent will make life easier as by just playing games she will become addicted to the internet and then she will be trapped in the virtual world all day, then games will lose their meaning, no matter which game she switched to. Jiang said, but she is already earning money with it, to which Zhu replied, money that comes by luck will eventually be gone with incompetence, and she will be unable to earn money with other things. 
He asked her if she really think that the money has truly been earned. Jiang thought about it and said, then she will just be the fool, who can only cook food, do laundry, bear children, and play games, which turns Zhu into a stone. He said with a strange expression, that she should respect herself more. The same night, Zhu's dad was checking his phone while thinking. Zhu readily admitted to it before. He had even thought of how to lecture him, but it goes to waste. He further thinks that Zhu happily twisted the logic and spoke nonsense and wondered if he was always that bold. Suddenly, Zhu's mother came and asked, what is he still looking at on his phone? And he replied with nothing much. She then asked him why Zhu came over today and if it was just to brag about him being on the news. Zhu's dad tells her that Zhu wanted the ownership of the old house and said that he would get married immediately if they give it to him, so she tells him to give it then. But he replied, Zhu is not even the right age to become a dad, but his mom said he is almost at the age when she was pregnant with him. Zhu's dad asked in a worried tone if that is even the same, to which his mom gets confused and asked what is different. His dad then showed her a meme of a comparison between young and old parents at 25 years old, that the younger generation nowadays is not ready. Zhu's mom laughed at it and asked, where did he find this as it's too funny? Zhu's dad was thinking that youngsters these days only know how to play, though they do come up with some funny stuff, and then he noticed Zhu's new video. He played it, and the video is about some martial artists, and Zhu says that his dad whipping him with his leather belt had more martial arts in it than what is shown in the movies. His dad asked Zhu's mom if he was that ruthless to which she said she doesn't remember. All she knows is that Zhu cried pretty badly after every beating. She then drinks her water while Zhu's dad fell silent after realizing his mistake. At the same time, Jiang was also watching the newly uploaded video. She asked Zhu why did his dad whip him with a leather belt? To which Zhu tells her that there were many reasons, like him scaring Hao shitless with firecrackers or roasting the fish from the fish tank over a fire. Zhu then noticed that the video had gotten over 70,000 views in just three hours and then gets happy, thinking, this must be the cheat code to become wealthy. He then tells Jiang to turn the computer off as it's time for them to head to bed. After some time, they both were on the bed with the sword acting as a line. Zhu looked at Jiang and tells her that there is no need to put the sword on the bed, as when she toss and turn through the night, she might even bump into it. Suddenly, Zhu gets an awesome idea, and then he brings something. He puts the teddy bear in between, saying that this way, regardless of how much they move around, they won't bump into each other. Jiang pouts at that, but still said, this works too. Zhu then picked up the sword while thinking, he has successfully taken the first step, and his plans are in motion for when it's winter, so he shall not be greedy and be content with what he has. He looked at her lips and thought, patience is the key to success. After some time, Zhu asked Jiang if she likes to sleep in the dark and tells her that she can turn a small night light on if she wants. He explained that the small light exists so that it doesn't become too dark at night and it makes it more convenient to get out of the bed or do other stuff. Jiang thought about the other stuff and asked Zhu, what is he planning to do? He replied, having a nightlight is very common. He is just asking if she wants to turn one on, as people normally sleep with one on, and he usually does it too. She called him a liar and said that she had never seen him use one. Knowing that she is right, Zhu said that he used to use one before she came there. But then suddenly he realized something. He gets up and asked her how does she know whether he used the small light or not. Jiang thought about it and replied, she guessed it. She said that this is the curse of knowledge, and she has no idea how to explain it to him. She then turns her face down and tells him that she is tired, so she is sleeping. Zhu with his strange eyes said he seemed to remember that one time he touched something in his sleep, but Jiang immediately replied it wasn't her. Zhu understand by her reaction that it was her. He asked what she was planning to do sneaking into his room in the middle of the night, to which she said she didn't touch him, nor did she enter his room. Zhu said it's unfair, as he had to let her know in advance when he even entered her room, yet she sneaked into his and does unspeakable stuff to him. She blushed and tells him that she didn't, she just went in to see if he was feeling warm. Zhu heard her reasoning and then fell silent. After some time, Jiang asked in a slow voice why isn't he saying anything. To which Zhu replied, she was the one who said that they should sleep. 
Jiang was thinking, sneaking into a man's room in the middle of the night, and even getting herself exposed for it, she is really too careless. Suddenly, she heard Zhu saying, that actually, he had this all planned since winter, so she gets confused and asked, what he meant. Zhu said, that he planned to switch rooms with her, since it's so hot in summer, she wouldn't have agreed to move from the storage room, so he preemptively switched rooms with her. This was not shocking to Jiang, as she has already guessed that. Zhu was feeling happy since he revealed everything, yet didn't get scolded for that. He then asked her if she wants to hold hands. Zhang refused, saying that she is going to sleep. She thought, they are sleeping together just like that, and if he pounce on her in the middle of the night, how should she beat him up? She wondered if she should let him wear his chainmail first, or directly beat him. But she doubts that Zhu even has the courage to try it anyways, as someone like him wouldn't dare to pounce on her. She kept thinking about it, and then slowly touched his legs with hers. After touching him, she was thinking, why isn't he reacting? She then tried it one more time, so Zhu asked her if she is trying to seduce him. She replied, who on earth would do that, thinking, she should just forget and sleep. But then suddenly, to her surprise, Zhu locked her finger with his. She asked what his hand is doing, and if he tries anything, then she will kick him off the bed. Zhu replied that she is allowed to touch him, but he is not allowed, the people in rule may do whatever they want, but the commoners have no degree of freedom. Her leg was still touching Zhu's leg, and he was holding her hand below the teddy bear. She then used her legs to lock his leg in between. Zhu tells her to give him her other hand as well, so she can hold it. Jiang asked, what is he trying to do, to which he replied, if she won't give it, then he won't be able to sleep. Jiang looked at him with those strange eyes of hers and said, she doesn't believe him, as he has always been able to fall asleep, when he was sleeping alone. Zhu then tells her, that it's because he could hug her slippers to sleep, and asked, why is she thinks he has it on his beside. Jiang gets too embarrassed to know that, and called him a pervert. While holding hands, Jiang was thinking, as long as it doesn't end up with her getting pregnant, it doesn't seem like a big deal, as liking hands is better than liking shoes. Then the next morning, Zhu slowly opened his eyes and find Zhang sitting in front of him and looking at something. He gets up and asked, what is she looking at, to which she replied, nothing. Zhu checked that it was eight already and asked how long she has been sitting there, and Zhang said, a little while. She was looking at Zhu's Excalibur and asked if he had that kind of dream last night. Zhu looked down and saw that his Excalibur was full of energy. He quickly hided it under the blanket and said, this is what is called being young. He then asked her to leave first so he can change his clothes and Jiang said okay to it. After she left, Zhu thought, it seems like the warrioress has been up for a while, and she came back to look at it and wondered if she did anything with it. Zhu was thinking that with this curious baby at her side, who knows if she will do anything weird. Suddenly, Zhu noticed something and asked, where did she change her clothes? He thought that she changed out of her pajamas, so he seemed to have missed witnessing something great. She then shut the door while telling him that it has nothing to do with him. After she left, Zhu thought that sleeping with her wasn't that awkward, and as to how she will observe him after he fall asleep, he will just pretend that he doesn't know. He then decides to wake up earlier in the upcoming days, so he can see what happens. When they were having breakfast, Jiang asked Zhu that if she were to earn more than him, then would he become the fool? who do the laundry, make meals, raise their children, and play games. Zhu replied sure and that they should have a kid, but she angrily shouted that she doesn't want to. Zhu then tells her to forget about it as she is having trouble studying and yet she wants him to be foolish. After some time, Zhu checked that the movie critique that he uploaded yesterday got more than 2 million views overnight and there is still room for it to grow. He happily thought that getting a thousand views will net him about 3 yuan, and this would also bring traffic to his other videos. Meanwhile, Zhang was thinking that she has been there for a year, and she hasn't been transported back to her time, so it looks like she won't be going back. Such an event would only happen once or twice in thousands of years, and the probability of it happening again is close to zero, so she will just bring the corn kernels from now on. After removing the potato from her bag, she tells Zhu that she is heading out now for fishing, and Zhu asked if he should accompany her. Jiang replied that she only have two fishing rods, so she would have to let Ping buy her own. And after hearing that, Zhu tells her to forget it then, and that he will do work at home. 
He thought, fishing would be great if it's just the two of them. It would be meaningless to have a third party around. While he was in deep thought, Zhang came close to him and kissed him on the cheeks. Outside, her friend Ping was waiting for Zhang. After she came, Ping asked if they are walking there again, and Zhang said of course. Ping tells her that she is tired, so let's rent bikes instead. Zhang hesitantly replied that Zhu is afraid of her riding this, thinking that she would go too fast on a bicycle and cause an accident. Zhang then noticed something and asked, isn't her skirt will blow up while riding the bike? And Ping replied that she will just tuck it in and sit on it. Zhang agreed to go on a bicycle and on the way. Ping asked if she really listened to Zhu that much, to which Jiang said, it's bad when she don't follow what he says. Jiang was trying her best to keep her cool, so she won't go too fast. Ping shockingly asked if Zhu hits her, to which Jiang said it's impossible. Ping said that he is trained in martial arts, so she should be more careful, but Jiang said that he wouldn't ever hit her. Ping gets confused and asked then why she says that it's bad when she doesn't listen to him. Suddenly, a thought crossed her mind, and she starts blushing while saying, she get it now. Jiang asked what does she mean, and Ping said it's nothing. They stop near the vending machine and Ping asks Jiang what she wants, but Jiang tells her that this machine tends to get stuck, as they have got a few stuck last time. But Ping tells her that surely their luck won't be that bad. She then checked from the glass and said, there is still one stuck inside. She take out her phone while saying, watch her knock it down and hit the jackpot. But to Ping's bad luck, it gets stuck instead of hitting the jackpot. Jiang tells her to call them and ask for a refund, while Ping was getting angry. Jiang wondered if the owner purposefully placed it there to swindle others, while Ping was kicking it hard, shouting that she is really thirsty. She said, if Jiang's zoo was there, he probably would be able to knock it down, and Jiang replied positively. Jiang then imagines herself knocking the machine down, thinking that she can definitely do it, but wondered if she should give it a go or not. But she decides to not do it, since she is not with Zhu right now. Ping angrily said that she is ordering another one, and if it doesn't knock the other one down, then she will get a refund. But luckily, this time she managed to get one, which makes her happy. She offered it to Jiang, saying that she will give her first. But Jiang tells her to not worry, since she brought water, so she can just drink that. After taking the refund for the other one, Ping points at the dent on the machine, saying that probably someone tried to hit the machine to unstuck it. Jiang knows that this someone Ping is talking about is none other than she herself. She asked Ping if she would believe that Zhu was the one who did it, and this shocked her. She tells her that he made this dent with just a punch, and the drinks fell down. Ping shockingly said, so he is that strong and asked Jiang if wouldn't she just fly if you were to punch her. Jiang replied that could definitely happen, while thinking, although the one flying would be Zhu. Ping said, then the person in the news who got clapped is now a dummy, and that people who practice martial arts really like their violence. Jiang with a blank expression, replied yes they sure do. During fishing, Ping said, it looks like they are going viral, as there were a lot of viewers in the last stream, to which Jiang said, they were all there to watch Zhu practice martial arts. Jiang then takes out a snack from her pocket and gives it to Ping. Ping thought that sometimes she really felt like Jiang is like Doriman, taking out weird things from out of nowhere. Last time, she even took out a potato from her bag, it's really unbelievable. Some people who look gentle and quiet and fish while wearing a cap are actually Doriman. She muttered that when she saw her not talking during the streams, she thought that she was antisocial. Only after getting to know her that she find out that she is fun to hang out with. She tells Jiang she is focused on playing games while Zhu does random stuff on the side. But in reality, it should be other way around. Jiang explained that he is like a robot. He practices martial arts every morning. Then he hugs his computer to watch videos and look at the stock market. When he is not looking at the stock market, he is making chainmail. And then he will watch the news at 7. When she started streaming, he started practicing martial arts at night instead, saying that he could maximize his time using this way, as he could practice while accompanying her at the same time. Ping asked if Zhu played games, but Jiang said, he just watches her play, then used the spare time to edit videos, he doesn't get bored, eats when he needs to eat, and washes the dishes after eating. She smiled while saying, he is really a gentle person. 
Ping thought, practicing martial arts every day and making a dent on a machine to get drinks unstuck? How is that gentle? Jiang then caught a huge fish, making Ping excited. After some time, she gets depressed, asking why can't she catch one. Suddenly, Ping gets an awesome idea. She lifts her skirt, saying she got it now, she needs to seduce them. Jiang was looking at her with a shocking expression, as Ping was saying, come here, you perverted fishes. And then to Jiang's surprise, Ping finally caught one with her method. Jiang was looking back and forth, while Ping said, the perverted fish is really hooked. Back at home, Zhu was listening to someone saying that a man suddenly goes to bed early, gets up early, starts to take care of his body, and lives a regular life. That someone was his dad, who added, takes time to read and study, walks with his head high. And then he asked Zhu, what does he say happened? Zhu replied, it meant that he had drank too much chicken soup. He will be fine after two days. After explaining his last video, Zhu asked his dad if he came there today to handle the transfer procedures for him. But his dad tells him to handle his head, and that he is there to see what he is up to. His dad checked the room and thought that the bookshelf looks pretty good. But it's just a big pile of books that haven't been read, not good at all. His dad then asked Zhu about his girlfriend and where she is. Zhu replied with a calm look that she went for fishing. His dad asked why didn't he go with her, and Zhu said that she has her own friends, why does he have to follow her, as they are not conjoined twins. His dad then finds some notebooks, one book for each subject, and it's all for fifth grade. Zhu tells him, well since they can't hide it anymore, he will come clean, and then he revealed, that the two of them secretly had a child early on, and the kid is now in fifth grade. His dad gets angry and shouts, if what he is saying is true, then he had a child while he was in primary school, and Zhu apologized for trying to prank him. After getting a good beating, Zhu said that he told them earlier, that Jiang lost her parents at a young age, so she didn't receive much education, so he is just giving her extra lessons. His dad asked, if he meant when she was in the mountains, to which Zhu said yes, and the place where she is from, people will literally fight over half a biscuit. His dad asked how is that possible, there is no orphanages around, thinking, it's true that the lady seemed introverted and didn't talk much, but her history sounded ridiculous. Zhu said that anything can happen under the sun, the world is so vast, and then he tells him to look at the workbooks, as there is no way, this handwriting is fake. His dad checked it and thought, it does look like that. Zhu added, that earlier she didn't even know how to play games, but it seemed like she was quite talented, so he taught her how to earn money from playing games. His dad asked if she play games all day, to which Zhu replied, there is no way, he is letting her go back to the factory. He said, that he is letting her make a living through playing games, and he is giving her lessons between when he is free, they have been at it for a while now. His dad thought, that he couldn't find any holes in Zhu's story, and then asked, why did he find such a girlfriend? Zhu asked what he meant by that, and tells him that Jiang doesn't have a registered identity, and was taken care of by an old lady who was a scavenger. After the lady died, Jiang worked in an illegitimate sweatshop. His dad then tells him to break up with her then, but Zhu instantly refused. They both then fell silent for some time. His dad then heard Zhu saying that the two of them are already sleeping together. His dad asked why didn't he tell them earlier. To which Zhu said that he is free to love anybody and she is also not some indecent lady. He asked if he is expecting him to report when he got a girlfriend and above all, she didn't choose to be born like this as who doesn't want to have a loving family. His dad angrily shouted so he brought her home out of kindness. Zhu also shouted, what does he mean by out of kindness, she is such a good catch, she can cook and is wise, she is such an all-rounded person so he is the lucky one, not her. His dad asked, what is he going to do about her ID? To which Zhu asked in return, if he has any friends or colleagues who are able to help, and if not, then he would come up with a solution himself. His dad thought, he knew that this rascal was up to no good, if it looked like he had turned into an honest person, it's likely because he is keeping something even worse from him. Zhu continued, that settling his wife's problems on his own is normal. His dad asked, what if he has been tricked? To which Zhu asked in return, who is capable of doing that, it's a miracle if he is not the one doing the tricking. His dad makes a fist and thinks, while there is logic to his words, why does he make others want to punch him? Zhu then asked him, if isn't it good to accept her as his daughter-in-law now? He tells his dad to not make it, so that he will have to elope with her, and when they will come back with a chubby grandson one day, 
he will have no choice but to accept it anyway. His dad knows about Zhu, that this rascal sure can do something like that. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that by letting him clearly know what would happen and the consequences of it, his dad will have no other option but to accept. Unless they are really severing their ties over this, he would have no other option but to accept this, but he knows that his dad wouldn't sever their ties. Weighing the pros and the cons, this is such a devious plot. He imagined something and thought, at most, he would just be on the receiving end of his angry belt. His dad said, if she doesn't have an ID, then how does she? But before he could finish his sentence, Zhu said that she uses his accounts, and the money that she earns is safely kept with him. His dad tells him that he is painting the situation in a good light right now, but if he were to ever break up with her, he would get a good beating, and Zhu said, it's not happening. His dad then starts leaving, thinking that looking at Zhu makes his blood boil. But as soon as he opens the door, he finds Jung standing outside. Both of them get nervous and greet each other. He looked at the fishes that she caught and thought that's pretty impressive. Zhu tells him to stay for a meal before going home, but his dad said he is fine. Outside, he was smiling while thinking, even though he felt that the girl isn't any good. Just from listening to Zhu talk about her, meeting her in person makes him feel like she is good at everything. It's just like when he first got married, when he huddled in this home with Zhu's mom as they lived a peaceful life day by day. But this old house doesn't belong to him anymore as a new family has taken over. Inside the house, Jiang asks Zhu if uncle came over for something. Zhu tells her that he just wanted to ask when they are getting married, which shocked her. Zhu said if he had known that his dad was coming, he would have had her shout dad to see his reaction. Jiang asked what did he told him, so Zhu tells her that he replied soon to it and that they are not too different from a married couple. He hugs her while saying, after all, they eat and live together, the only difference is a certificate. She gets embarrassed and asked if he really told him that, to which Zhu replied, nope, just left out the second part. She was thinking that uncle's impression of them should have been how Zhu described it last year with her living in the storage room and him sleeping in the master bedroom. But now suddenly they are sleeping on the same bed. Zhu then takes the bucket from her and said he will prepare the fish. While Zhu was washing the knife, Jiang tells him that Ping was so good at fishing today, so Zhu asked in what way. She tells him that Ping was wearing a dress and wasn't getting any fish, so she lifted the corners of her skirt while saying, that she was trying to seduce them, and a fish took the bait. Zhu gets shocked and asked if such a method exists, and Jiang said, it sure do. Zhu then tells Jiang to not learn it, but she angrily replied, she will never, and above all, she doesn't even wear dresses. Zhu imagined her in a dress and said, he got a dress for her previously, so she can put it on and try to seduce him. She looked at him with her strange eyes and asked if she even need to seduce him, thinking, this guy is always trying to squeeze into her side of the bed, she could barely protect herself from that. At the same time, Zhu's dad was still thinking, if Jiang really was living as a vagrant before, or if she ran away from her home and came up with a story to deceive Zhu. But then, he thought that Zhu is smart, he would rather believe that he lured a lonely, introverted girl into his home for nefarious reasons, than believe that Zhu got deceived, and then, he called Zhu a beast. After some time, he reached Hao's home to meet him and asked about Jiang. Inside, he noticed the armor that Hao's dad was making, and thought, if Zhu wasn't a splitting image of him, he would have suspected that they brought home the wrong baby. Hao then greeted Zhu's dad and asked, why is he looking for him? After some time, he asked Hao to tell him everything that he knows about Zhu's girlfriend. Hao said that he only knows a little, so Zhu's dad tells him to start speaking and be honest. Hao was hesitant to say anything, so Zhu's dad asked if Zhu abducted a naive girl off the streets and brought her home to do whatever he wants. Hao gets shocked after hearing that and wonders if Zhu is such a beast. But then he realized that it doesn't seem like that. Hao said that Zhu's girlfriend is a little airheaded and she doesn't really like to talk. Also, she doesn't have an ID, as Zhu told him that she was living as a vagrant and was forced to work in a sweatshop, and then they met and stuff happened. He added that he has only met her a few times, and he felt that the way she speaks was a little odd. According to Zhu, she had a rough childhood, so it's normal for her to be a little introverted, and Zhu's dad took a sigh, thinking he could be a little more relieved. He then asked Hao about his recovery, so Hao said that it's okay, the wounds are healing quickly, and he wasn't that injured to begin with, it was just a little bleeding. 
Zhu's dad praised him for catching the robber as it even got Zhu in the newspaper. But Hao tells him that Zhu played an important role, as if not for him, he would have been left there. Suddenly, Zhu's dad noticed Hao's dad working on the armor. He said, that takes a lot of work, doesn't it? To which Hao's dad replied of course, he has to twist these rings apart, to link them together one by one, and it's so troublesome. Zhu's dad asked him to let him try it on after he's done, but Hao's dad instantly refused, and tells him to go find Zhu for his armor, as he is almost done. Zhu's dad called him stingy, but he angrily shouted, he is able to wear his son chainmail, yet he is there to wear his instead, and asked, if he is ill or something. Zhu's dad then gets up and leaves while saying, he still has things to do, which irritated him. After some time, Zhu's mom asked his dad, why did he came so late, and he tells her that he got caught up in some stuff. He then asked her, how does she feel about Jiang? Zhu's mom replied that she is pretty, and asked what's wrong, so he asked her if she feels that Jiang is introverted. She said, Jiang didn't like to talk much before, but now she is much better, so she thinks that she is just not good with strangers. And according to Zhu, a long time ago, she had a rough life and didn't had any friends, so she just needed time to adjust. After some time, Zhu's dad was in the study room, with some papers to sign. He thought, if Jiang was trying to trick people and cheat money, she wouldn't make up such a bad lie. Zhu is poor and has nothing, even the house is not his, so if they get married, they won't get past the household registration part, and everything will be exposed by then. And as long as Zhu isn't stupid, he won't be easily fooled. It's deserved if you get tricked by an illiterate person, and if Zhu was the one who tricked her, it wouldn't have been necessary to teach her how to read and write. It is really like what Zhu said, falling in love with a person that came from the mountains and ended up working in a factory, and they want to get married. But even after all this, Zhu's dad keep thinking that something isn't right, and he has overlooked something. Then July came, and under the supervision of Zhu, Zhang completed the fifth and sixth grade of happy learning. Hao came to meet Zhu, and excitedly asked where is the armor, and begs him to let him try it as well. Zhu take Hao inside, and as soon as he looked at the armor, Hao fall in love with that. Zhu said that although people are free to have their own fetishes, but he still recommends him to go see a doctor, but Hao ignored that and asked if he is making a helmet as well. Zhu replied no, as it's uncomfortable to wear, and it will mess his hair. Hao then wore the armor and thought it weighs around 18 kilograms. Hao feels that his hidden power is awakened after wearing the armor. After doing some squats and boxing, he tells Zhu that if he was wearing this armor that day, then he would have punched that guy, who stabbed him to death. Zhu then tells him to take it off already, but Hao tells him to take some pictures, thinking, if the old man wasn't working on another set, he wouldn't be able to resist making one too. They went to the main hall, where Hao asked Zhu, hasn't he been practicing that tiger fist, so how about they duel? Zhu said, let him wear the armor first, and then they can duel. Jiang heard them talking and thought, Zhu kept talking about a peaceful society, but now they are more violent than anyone else, and even the armor is out. She then thought, that Zhu is just like a kid, as he was so excited the day he finished the armor, and kept showing it off to her. Hao then tells Zhu to test its defensive property first, and asked him to go get a kitchen knife. But then suddenly, he noticed a sword beside the sofa. He picked it up, saying this is good, so use this to attack him a few times. But then Hao thought that this guy has been practicing his swordsmanship and his swing make noises. Zhu gets confused as Hao goes silent as his expression changes. He then addresses Zhang as sister-in-law and tells her to try giving him a stab. Zhu grits his teeth while thinking, why the hell is Hao courting death? Before Hao could give it to Zhang, Zhu snatched the sword from his hands and said, let him do it instead. He thought if Zhang were to make a move, then it won't be as simple as going back to the hospital, as in her eyes, Hao's stomach wound was nothing, wrap it with some cloth, and you are good to go. Hao tries to escape the situation, saying it's fine, but Zhu tells him to not worry, and promises to hold back. Zhu then took the stance and attacked Hao while shouting, take this. Hao gets scared and put the guard up, telling Zhu to wait. But then to Hao's surprise, the sword didn't manage to break the armor. Hao thought, it feels like being hit with a stick, and then he asked Zhu why did he use so much force. Zhu tells him that he already tried it with a kitchen knife and he couldn't cut through it with that little force. 
Meanwhile, Jiang was blushing while thinking about sister-in-law, wondering, why is Hao calling her that, as she and Su aren't even married yet. Zhu then checked the armor and said that only the few rings that came in contact with the blade are slightly deformed, so he has to hit five or six times at the same spot to injure the body. Hao then tells Zhu to try it again, but this time on his back. Zhu hit his back and asked, how does it feel, thinking, people will still be a little scared when getting slashed, even while wearing the chainmail, but this idiot isn't scared. Hao excitedly said, it does an okay job at absorbing force, as it feels like getting hit with a stick, and all that's missing is a helmet, the kind that covers the face. Jiang heard Zhu saying, that it's stab proof, as the tip of the blade can't go through the rings, and Hao said, if he had this in past, he could have walked through the back streets. She asked with a disgusted look, if they are preparing to go to war. To which Zhu said, they are just trying it out, since he has been working on it for several months, and Hao added that he can't bear to take it off. Jiang thought that the armor is pretty useful, as with this armor, even if someone hits you with a Jiu Huan Dao, you will be injured a little at most. But then her expression changed, as she thought that only idiots would aim at the armor, as the neck is so free. After some time, Hao asked Zhu if he wants to go out for a walk. Zhu picked his phone and tells Jiang that he is going out for a walk with Hao, so contact him if she needs anything, and then he left. Outside, Zhu was getting angry while looking at the sun. He thought, who goes on a walk in the summer, and then asked Hao where they are heading. Hao asked him, what does he think, to which Zhu shockingly said, didn't he said that he wanted to go out for a walk. Hao replied, he hasn't thought of a place to go, so Zhu turned back to go home, but gets stopped by Hao. Zhu tells him to talk quickly if he got something to say. Hao gets a little embarrassed and said, that person wants to invite him for dinner to celebrate his discharge from the hospital. Zhu gets confused and asked, who is that person, and if he knows them. Hao tells him, that it's that girl with the braids, that came to see him with the oranges. Hao said, he felt like something is up with her, and Zhu tells him, yes, he guessed it right, she is interested in him. At the same time, Jiang was playing games and shouted at a player for defeating her. She thought, it's only fun when she is playing with Zhu. But then, her expression changed a little. She looked back to see if the door is properly locked. After checking, she opened the D drive on the computer and start watching some stuff. Suddenly, she heard Zhu's voice saying that he is back. He looked at her near the computer and asked why her face is red. She replied it's nothing, she just summoned the High Keeper and she was a silver health away from killing the opponent but he counterattacked and killed her. Zhu said, no wonder her face is flushed from anger, and he is surprised that she didn't break the keyboard from that, which makes her angry as she thought that this guy deserves a beating. She asked him, why did he come back so soon? So Zhu tells her that Hao just wants to take them to eat tonight, but he ruthlessly rejected him since they can go themselves if they want to eat something. He brought some drinks for both of them and thought, it's better to stay at home with his girlfriend on this kind of day, as only crazy people go out and play around. He picked her legs while saying, she doesn't need to do homework this weekend, and he will also guide her when she is playing. Jiang blushed after he put her legs on his lap, and slowly replied, okay. Zhu then tells her that Hao helped a girl, and then she started to become interested in him. But suddenly, he tells her to not move too much, so Jiang replied, then don't randomly touch her. Zhu said, he is helping her massage her legs, so how is it randomly touching? But Jiang didn't say anything to that. Zhu thought, she guards against him every day like he is a thief, since he can touch and cuddle outside the bed, so of course he has to do it often. But with his skills, when he is not a video uploader anymore, he can become a professional foot massager. He then noticed something and asked Jiang why her face is still so red, to which she replied, because it's too hot. Zhu then starts blowing, telling her that he can help cool her down by blowing, but Jiang refused, saying there is no need. He then grabbed her hands, telling her that after staying for so long, her skin has become much better than before. He was touching her everywhere, saying that some people often go outside, and their skin color will experience changes, but she has no changes at all. He then touched her thighs, and added, that's the beauty of studying at home. She then grabbed his collar, shouting, it's so annoying. But then she looked at his neck and had some indecent thoughts. She gets frustrated and then left from there in anger. Zhu said she scared him for a moment as he thought that he is going to be ruined by her, but she tells him to shut up. 
He then looked at the computer and decides to check the history. He smirked while thinking, as expected, she was sneaking a peek at the study material before he came back. No wonder her reaction was so strong. And she has learned how to mute the sound, which is a big improvement. After some time, while Zhu was using the computer, Zhang came out of her room. She went close to him and said, he can move aside now. Zhu looked at her with big eyes, and then slowly, his expression changed, which angered Zhang. Zhu said, to be honest, hunger and sexual desire are engraved in the DNA of human beings, so don't think it's a bad thing, and that she can freely defile him. Angered by his words, she pinched him hard, as he shouted in pain. Zhu said, defiling is not pinching, but she tells him to stop talking. He muttered with teary eyes that the ancient people are unreasonable. And as soon as Jiang heard that, she released a murderous aura and asked, what did he said? But Zhu quickly gets up and tells her to sit, while addressing her as wardress. He thought, everything depends on what she wants, just being with her is enough for him. He then sits on the sofa with Winter Melon, thinking, let's watch Manchester by the sea today. After some time, he thought that if he can't see the warrioress next to him, he get the feeling that he is alone again. It was like this in those times, on an ordinary afternoon, hugging his cat on the sofa and watching his favorite movies with no one to disturb him. Suddenly, Winter Melon goes away as Jiang comes and sits beside him. Zhu asked if she is not playing anymore, and Jiang said yes because it's making her angry. Zhu smiled while saying, when it comes to playing video games, she truly lose when she gets angry. She asked him, what was he thinking about, that made him so happy, to which Zhu said, he was thinking about how she has changed so much. He thought, that last year, he was still trying to take it slow and carefully tried to help her adapt to this era, when she was unfamiliar with everything. Looking at it now, the most dangerous part has already passed. Meanwhile, Zhang was thinking that it's only been a year and they are shamelessly sleeping in the same bed together. Suddenly, she asked Zhu if they can call this a flash marriage. Zhu tells her to mind her words, as they are not married yet, so how can there be a flash marriage? She gets angry, thinking that she is already a scholar now, she must be cautious with her words and actions, and she can no longer be so stupid. Zhu sighed, saying it's a very heavy movie. But Jiang looked at him with disgust and said, it might be more convincing, if he could keep his hands off her legs. After some time, Zhu was writing the script for the movie that they just watched. Jiang thought, while watching the movie, she can only feel the sadness of the people in it, but he can write a large and neat paragraph on the behavior of the people in it. She leaned on him, thinking that this amazing guy is her man. She remember about her second miss and thought that her husband is a super talented scholar. Suddenly, Zhu asked her if she really likes scholars, which startled her. She gets angry because Zhu again figured what she was thinking and was happily saying that he know everything. She then removed his t-shirt and then pushed him down. She said, scholars are full of tricks. Second miss was right while Zhu was asking, what does this have anything to do with tricks? She then starts touching his stomach, but Zhu tells her to let him touch too, otherwise, it's unfair. Jiang said, sure enough, he is full of tricks, trying to take advantage of her by seizing the opportunity. Zhu smiled and hesitantly asked, then what is she doing right now? She replied, that she is exposing him, while thinking, that his body feels good. But then she distanced herself, thinking, it shouldn't be like this, so she will wait for him to fall asleep to poke him secretly. Jiang said, he has been doing movie reviews for a long time, but still hasn't made any money. Zhu tells her that doing something for a long time doesn't mean anything. You can't succeed in everything you do. On the contrary, it's normal to fail in most things. He tells her to not think that making money is easy just because she is making money from streaming. In fact, there are two kinds of people who can easily make money. One is smart and other is lucky. That's why she needs to study hard to become one of the smart people. But after seeing the notebook, she looked at him with her strange eyes. Zhu realized his mistake because he already promised her that she wouldn't need to study on this weekend. Jiang said that she is a smart person. It's just like how she knows that there are two soda in the fridge and both are Coca-Cola. While drinking it, she tells Zhu that there is another kind of person. Heaven rewards, the diligent hard work will pay off. She then remembers her second miss words that a person who combines intelligence, hard work, and luck then she points at Zhu and said, there are some smart people who like to use tricks, like him, who is trying to trick her into studying harder. 
She thought that this guy doesn't have good intentions and is full of tricks. Zhu replied that there is no shortage of hard-working people in this world. The important thing is choosing the right approach. It's like having a reasonable schedule is more useful than reading 20 hours a day. The key to work hard within your ability, which is what smart people do. Jiang said, then the scope of her ability is this small to even more little. So it's reasonable for her to do questions for only an hour every day. Zhu thought if he had known earlier, he would have let her study with little Yan, as at that time, she would learn whatever that was asked. But now, she is quick-witted and always wants to bargain with him to avoid studying. People from the ancient times aren't afraid of studying martial arts or bloodshed, but they are afraid of studying. She then noticed Zhu picking up the sword so he can practice. Jiang said it's the weekend, so he doesn't need to practice, but Zhu replied, on the road of martial arts, the most important thing is to preserve, he is setting a good example for her. Hearing all that, Zhang feels frustrated. After the practice, Zhu said that he doesn't have anything to do for tonight's stream, as he already finished the armor, and he can't be just doing his stance the whole time. Jiang tells him to wear the armor while doing the stance, but Zhu asked who in their right mind would wear that while practicing. But then, at 7 o'clock, he wore the armor and gets in his position for the stream. The viewers gets excited, while some shockingly said, so he can really wear it. Zhu tells them that it took him four months to make using pure stainless steel rings, so they all can make it if they want, in case something happens, like alien attacks, zombies besieging, and more. The viewers asked what danger is he talking about, and one of them said he forgot to mention one other, that his girlfriend is fierce. Meanwhile, Zhang was getting angry, thinking, this is a gaming stream, yet no one care about her playing games. At the same time, someone also joined the stream and finds Zhu in his armor. That someone was his dad, whose glasses broke after seeing that scene. But then he thought, forget it, as nothing can shake him anymore. Zhu's mom was with him too, and asked how much money can they make from this, and he said, according to how, it's at least a hundred. She then calmly sips her water, saying it's just that much. But then she was shocked to hear that it's hundred in one day. She said that's a lot, but Zhu's dad tells her to calm down. He then closed the stream, so she asked why isn't he watching anymore. He sighed and tells her he think that this kid looks like a member of the demon cult now. He also misled Hao's dad, as he is making an armor too. Zhu's mom laughed it off, but thinks, indeed, he refuses to do anything that's normal. After some time, Jiang gets too happy as she finally manages to reach 1600 rating. She was about to tell Zhu, but then he slams on the table. He tells the people, who said that they would sub and gift rockets after she gets 1600 rating, to not run now. The viewers watching the stream said, this couple is really godly. Zhu and Jiang couldn't believe, and thought it's too crazy, as the viewers were sending them gifts like crazy. Zhu thought, there is still a few minutes left before it's 8 p.m., so he should do something to celebrate. He quickly went to bring something. To Jiang's surprise, Zhu brought some bowls and the chopsticks. Zhu tells the viewers, now that they finally hit 1600 rating, if they continue to play, it might drop, so he will show them his talent for the rest of the time. He put some water in the bowls, and make a nice tone for the viewers. After some minutes, the stream finally ended. Jiang excitedly asked him if they are going to be rich. Zhu checked the account and said, how could there be so many gifts, and they even gained a dozen more subs. Suddenly, Jiang received a text from someone. It was Ping, who tells her that there are several streams tonight recommending them, and there are people talking about them on the online forum. Zhu said, no wonder there were so many people watching. He underestimated the difficulty of reaching 1600 rating in the dual arena, it's probably about to go viral. Zhu thought, Jiang is a person from the Tang Dynasty playing modern games, yet she is better than the vast majority. Then she asked him if she need to say something. Zhu said no, and that he is going to take off the chainmail. After Zhu left, Jiang thought, if it keeps going at this rate, they can probably install an AC in the storage room next month. She gets sad after realizing that they can separate that way. But then, she thought forget it, it's more cost effective to save money and buy delicious food. It's not because she doesn't want to move. After some time, she asked Zhu, why doesn't he become a singer as he can make a lot of money, and can also be on TV. Zhu said, why would he become a singer, 
He just has a little bit of talent, he has no professional training, and he doesn't like being a star. Jiang replied, she just felt that knowing music is very useful, and Su agreed with her. While playing with Winter Melon, he was thinking that it feels so good taking off the chainmail, he can't put it on randomly in the future. He then remembered about a comment that said that this couple is godly and they are a perfect match. Suddenly, he starts removing his t-shirt, which shocked Zhang as she asked what is he doing. Zhu said, he undressed to go to shower, has been wearing it for a while makes him a little hot. She was blushing while thinking, this guy is shirtless and looks kinda. But then Zhu completed by saying, robust, isn't it, but she called him a pervert. Zhu said, what's the matter, didn't the ancient people have to be shirtless when doing farm work? But Jiang tells him, that everything he watch on TV is fake. She explained, if one doesn't wear clothes, he will die from the sun, not only does he have to wear them, but also has to wear a straw hat for more cover. She was looking at his naked body and thought, she really want to poke a few times. But then she shook her head and decides to not think about that. She thought, tomorrow is Monday again, so if she wants to play games, she has to do a few pages of questions. She then decides to take this time to play some more and pray to God, for not let her see the math problems in the future. But then she thought about Zhu's chest, that just now, it was really robust. But she came back to her senses, internally shouting, just what the hell is she thinking? Suddenly, she gets startled by Zhu, who tells her if she plays so badly, then she won't have any friends. Jiang noticed Zhu's neck and starts thinking about kissing it. But then she clenches her fist, thinking, something is wrong with her. She asked him if he drugged her, which confused him. He makes a strange expression, as his mind wasn't able to process what she just said. He asked, what drug is she talking about? But she left in anger, saying she is a little hot, so she is going to take a shower first. After she left, Zhu thought that the warrioress is acting weird. He remembers that her eyes were shining just now and wonders if she was thinking of doing that stuff. After taking a bath, Jiang came out and noticed that Zhu was not near the computer. She went inside the room and finds the atmosphere totally changed. Zhu asked with a smug look if she liked the new light. She sits on the bed and then turned the other light on. But as soon as she did that, Zhu started screaming in pain, saying his eyes are hurting. She looked at him with strange eyes and said, he has been using this every day before. Realizing it's not easy to fool her anymore, he quickly lie down, telling her that he is going to sleep. After some time, they both wished each other before going to sleep. When Jiang closed her eyes, she was thinking of Zhu's chest and that she wants to play with it. She licked her lips and then suddenly opened her eyes. But to her surprise, Zhu was smiling in front of her face, saying, he forgot to mention that sometimes, he can become an animal in bed. She makes a fist while telling him to say that again. Zhu tells her, what he meant is, that he is going to become like a koala that lays down for a dozen of hours. He added, that he is really going to sleep now, which makes her angry. Then the next morning, Zhu wake up and goes outside. He finds Jiang outside the room, so he wished her good morning. But then suddenly, he dodged, as she was about to cut his head. She wished him back and continue her practice. Zhu, while dodging her strikes asked, why did she start practicing again? To which she replied, she hasn't practiced in a while and she feel like her muscles and bones are going to rust. She also thought and her state of mind has also changed so it can't go on like this. Zhu then went inside the bathroom and thought, there really is something wrong with the warrioress. Zhu then went inside the bathroom and thought, there really is something wrong with the warrioress. Jiang tells him that the breakfast is already in the pot, but Zhu said that she is not normal today. But she gave him the sword while saying she is very normal. She tells him to go ahead and eat as she is going to take a shower. Zhu was thinking she suddenly decides to work up a sweat in the morning before showering. Something is definitely not right. After Jiang was done taking the bath, she realized that she was careless as she didn't bring a change of clothes. Zhu calls her from outside, saying, how come she is not out yet after showering for so long? She was not saying anything, so Zhu asked, could it be that she didn't bring a change of clothes, as he doesn't remember seeing her bringing any. He tells her to wait, while he will help her get it, so she said okay in a low voice. She slowly opened the door and then take her clothes from him. 
After some time, Jiang was doing her study while thinking. A true scholar is a master of pen and sword. But in just some seconds, she gets angry and shouted, Why did Lai Bai write so many poems? Zhu replied, Lai Bai was known for writing a hundred poems per gallon of wine. He was a savant. Jiang said, The person who made these questions is so hateful. The same goes to Lai Bai. She really wants to tie them up together and beat them up. Zhu tells her to not hate studying. If she is really tired then she can go and play with Ping. But Jiang angrily said, no, she wants to study. She thought, she will reward herself two pokes to Zhu's stomach when he is sleeping tonight. Meanwhile, Zhu was practicing his swordplay while thinking, there is something wrong with the warrioress since last night. Or perhaps his perception has deviated, and his mentality hasn't changed all this time. The warrioress, who didn't know anything, has grown up during this year and is no longer ignorant. Although, not stated explicitly, the warrioress has always been in the underdog in her life. It does not refer to being weak in strength, but something else, she has been relying on him. And the situation right now is. But then, Zhu realized something and thinks, he understand. She doesn't want to be the underdog anymore. She was always on guard against what he would do, and once she started to defend, she was the passive one, and now she has to let go of her defenses to face her relationship with him. After some time, Zhu went close to her and asked if she figured out what she wants to stream tonight. Jiang replied not yet, as if she fix up her equipment, she doubts that she will still climb up and dominate the duel arena. Zhu said, if she wants to continue, then she can spend thousands of yuan to make a sky set to continue to fight. But she doesn't want to spend any money. Zhu explained, the process of building an account can also be streamed, if she like this game, then go for it, as according to the current trend, she can earn it back later anyways. She asked about his opinion, to which Zhu said, he was just accompanying her to play around to begin with, so she can just do what she likes, she can even stop streaming, he is fine with it. Zhu thought that he is also out of ideas, after finishing the armor, he can't just stand there for an hour in the stance, like he did in the beginning. Jiang said, then let's start climbing, as even if she fall down, she will climb back up, and then Zhu asked with a smile, if she can feel her own adequacy. She replied, she feel it, the goals that were set have been completed, and now she doesn't know what to stream, if she knew earlier, she would have dragged it out a bit more. She then opened a snacks packet while saying, luck has played a big role, so it can't be forced. Zhu opened his mouth, and tells her to give him a slice as well. She threw it in his mouth while he thought it would have been perfect if this posture wasn't like feeding a dog. After some days, it was raining outside and Jiang was near the window watching it. Zhu smiled while thinking she really likes to watch the rain when it rained last time. She was also by the window and watched for a long time. Zhu said that it rained all night and the temperature Beverly dropped and she agrees with that. Zhu then gives her his coat, saying it full of his scent. She pouts at him, but still wears it and calls him a dummy. In the evening, Zhang came to him and said, he has been reading the whole day. Zhu replied, it's raining so hard, so what else can he do besides reading? To which she said, he is not on the computer either. Zhu replied, it's rare for it to be raining, so he is giving himself a little vacation. But Zhang said, normally speaking, he is supposed to be studying during the normal days and play during vacations. Zhu said, if she knows that, then why does she always play games when she is asked to study? But she turned her face away while saying, it's not the same. She then went near the bookshelf while thinking, sure enough, she still need to read more books, so she doesn't get tricked. Zhu looked at her reading and thought, that instead of trying to get next to him and putting her legs on him, she is reading a book alone. He cried internally while thinking, his guess few days ago was right, the warrioress's ignorant consciousness finally awakened, she has figured out how to defile him. He then decides to test her, because he suspect that she took the opportunity to do something to him quietly, while he was asleep last night, but he has no proof. Zhu tells her that he had a dream yesterday, and she looked at him to listen. Zhu explained that there was a big octopus rubbing him with its tentacles. She asked in a confused tone, octopus and he confirms yes a super big octopus she then starts searching on web saying that she bookmarked a site for god of dreams so he can see what seeing an octopus means but Zhu shockingly said that there is no need he was sitting alone while thinking he didn't get anything out of her in the end 
He then tells her that reading at the computer desk isn't comfortable, so why don't she lie on the sofa and read? It's very comfortable. But to his disappointment, Jiang said that lying down and reading hurts the eyes. While reading, she said that this book talks about a kind of like, where as long as you think of that person, no matter what you are doing, or if it matters or not, you will feel happy. She asked if it is like that, to which Zhu replied, how does he know, and asked in return, if she feels happy when she thinks of him. She said, she just gets angry, so he apologized for that. She continued reading, it's a pity that he was let down by that stupid woman in the end. Zhu knows that she is reading the devotion of suspect X and tells her that the woman was really stupid and then asked her what would she do if it was her. Jiang replied she would kill those people and then break him out of prison. In fact, as long as you kill that person at the beginning, you wouldn't have anything to worry about. She could just kick him in the river and it will have nothing to do with him. Zhu said she will definitely be caught by the surveillance cameras if she run around with him, so Jiang said, but they didn't have that in the book and she would have shoot them with the poison darts. Zhu replied, if it was her, no one would dare to disturb her like that in the first place and would stay as far as possible, suppose she broke into prison. But then, Zhu suddenly stopped after realizing something. He asked her why are they talking about murder on a rainy night, so she asked if there is something he wants to talk about. He smiled and said, how about they talk about putting away the stuffed bear at night when they go to sleep. He continued that if she is afraid of thunder then she can hide in his arms, but Jiang replied, then it's more interesting to study how to kill people. She thought, she is only wearing pajamas at night, nothing else, so if she squeezed into his arms. And then after thinking about it, she gets flustered and internally shouted, absolutely not. Then later at night, after the stream ended, she peeked at Zhu, who was thinking about something and was smiling. She was looking at him with her strange eyes and thought that he is definitely up to something, as he has been like that since the beginning. But she then decides to forget it, thinking, no matter what tricks he has, it won't be able to withstand her punch, as all strategies are useless in front of absolute strength. And above all, she only secretly touched him a few times at night, she has nothing to be guilty about. This guy said it himself before, as long as he doesn't know, then it's okay, it's called a win-win. Then, Zhu checked his phone and finds out that Wang is going to get married. Zhu asked how if he hacked Wang's account, but he refused, saying it has nothing to do with him. Zhu thought that Wang is definitely joking, it really scared him for a second. But Wang replied he hasn't been hacked, so Zhu asked what he meant by might. Wang said, the reason is that his girlfriend is pregnant and now he is debating whether he wants this child or not. Zhu thought, after changing so many girlfriends, this kidney deficient prince has always taken careful preventative measures, but this time it didn't work. He then looked at Jiang and thought, his warrioress is still the best. He went close to her and has a strange smile on his face. She asked what is he doing, as he has a weird smile on his face. Zhu replied it's nothing, he is just happy looking at her, that's all. He tells her that he is going to take a shower and then leave from there. After Zhu left, she twitched her eyebrows and find it so suspicious. And then her fear comes true when she goes inside the bedroom. She saw him acting strange with a glass of water in his hand, so she asked, what is he doing? Zhu asked her if they can remove the stuffed bear, but she instantly refused. He sighed, saying, then they can't do anything. But then he intentionally throw the glass on his blanket and said, his hand slipped. He said with a cute face, it looks like he need to share her cover for tonight, otherwise, he will catch a cold. But she angrily replied, she saw him tilt the glass on one side. Zhu said, it was a mistake, but she looked at him with those strange eyes of hers and thought, he definitely did it on purpose, he is such a shameless person. But then, suddenly, she gets an idea. She said, now that she thinks about it, he can make it with the winter quilt. Zhu then filled the glass with water again. And after taking a sip, he asked what did she said. She tells him that cotton quilts are very difficult to dry if they get wet, and Zhu said he already knows. Jiang knows that as long as she puts the cotton quilt on, this guy's hands will definitely slip again. Zhu then heard her saying that she won't cover herself then, she will give her cover to him. She gave him her blanket, but Zhu was already ready with the glass of water. His hand was about to be slipped again, but she snatched the blanket from him. She then covered herself while saying, he doesn't need a cover. She thought, this guy is starting his tricks again, but she won't fall for it. 
Zhu puts the glass away and lie down, saying that he will sleep like this then. Even if he catch a cold, he can take medicine anyway. And even if he has a fever, he can pull through it himself. After thinking for a while, she turned back while saying, how about she help him get the cotton quilt? But Zhu was again ready with the glass, which makes her super angry. She gets furious while thinking where her sword is. But Zhu asked her if there is something wrong, as he is just having a glass of water. She took some deep breaths so she can calm herself. She then lie down again, telling him that he can just freeze them. She thought that second miss was right, the educated ones are all evil. After a while, she touches his leg and finds it cold. Zhu asked why did she touch him, but she didn't say anything to it. He turned around while saying, it's pretty late, so they should sleep soon, and then wished her good night. He thought, it's been a long time since it rained, now they will have to see if the warrioress takes pity on him. Though the weather has been crappy, he has to put on a coat in the morning, and the temperatures at night are even lower, it looks like a lost cause this time. He just hoped that he doesn't actually catch a cold. After some time, as he was feeling too cold, suddenly, Jiang came close and covered him. He was about to say something, but she tells him to shut up and sleep. She turned around and thought, she knew from the start that this guy was dishonest. Moving into this room was just the first step, and there is still the second step, the third step and more. She was prepared for his tricks, but she never expected him to be so shameless, as if he will be so persistent, then she really doesn't have a way to deal with him. Her martial arts skills are useless, especially in situations like this, and then she thinks about a way to beat him up and force him to not drink water. But suddenly, Zhu hugs her from behind, which startled her. She was blushing when Zhu tells her to just sleep. She slowly closed her eyes, thinking what was she worried about and what was she looking forward to. Then the next morning, she slowly opened her eyes, but then gets shocked to find herself in the arms of Zhu in the same blanket. She looked at his neck and starts having indecent thoughts again. She slowly removed his hands, thinking she will secretly get out of bed first and not let him know. After she gets up, she took a look at him, but to her surprise, Zhu was staring at her with a smile. But then quickly, he pretended to sleep again so he won't be caught. She grabbed his collar and angrily shouted his name, but he still pretended that he just wake up as he asked if it's already morning. She gave him his clothes and then tells him to come out. She slams the door while leaving. While Zhu was saying, it's early in the morning, why is she so fierce? He goes outside and finds her standing in front of him. He gets scared and asked what's wrong, to which she replied, he has been learning martial arts for quite some time, so it's time to have a sparring session to check his progress. She was like a wild cat, ready to devour her prey. On the other hand, Zhu was like a rat, saying that there is no need, as he feel like he hasn't learned it yet, and already admits defeat. But then she angrily grabbed his collar, telling him to cut the crap. Ten minutes later, Zhu was lying on the ground after taking a good beating. After some time, she was in a good mood and was preparing breakfast. She tells Zhu, who was lying on the sofa, to take his blanket and lay it out in the sun, otherwise it will get moldy. Zhu gets up and said in a low voice that he would have done it already if she didn't force him to spar with her. Jiang said he was the one who wanted to make the other blanket wet as well. She narrowed her eyes and asked or if he would like to spar with her some more but Zhu instantly refused. She said in that case he should not pour water on his blanket again but Zhu replied he already said that it was an accident. While having breakfast, Jiang was thinking that if she had brought out the thick blankets at that time, this guy would surely have poured water on it. She knows that when the weather will be warm again, he will set the AC to the lowest temperature and use it as an excuse to share a blanket. There is no stopping him when he has done it once already. After having breakfast, she tells him that she is done, so she is off to play games. While she goes near the computer, Zhu was thinking of buying a two-person pillow, so she will have no choice but to use it. If not, then he will just pour water on the other two pillows and dump them in the washing machine. After some days, Yan came to their house, saying that she is there to play with Sister Jiang, and she will be staying at Grandma's house for a couple of days. Zhu welcomes her inside, telling her that her sister missed her a lot. Zhu imagined the study session and thought, Warrioress should be able to guide Yan in the assignments, since Yan is just in fourth grade and this will also help Jiang with the fundamentals. 
and if the warrioress is unable to do it, surely she will feel ashamed and strive to study harder to become smarter. It's killing two birds with one stone. He left both of them alone, telling them that he is heading out for a bit. He went to meet with Wang and asked him why does it feel like he is the one who is pregnant. Zhu thought Wang looks like one of those people in the TV shows who got his life sucked out of him by a female ghost. Wang replied, pregnant his ass, he is in this state because he is tired, but Zhu tells him that karma is a bitch. Zhu tells him to put this aside and asked about the employment records that Wang made for Jiang, and after confirming, he gets to know that there was no problem with that. Zhu heard it from Auntie Cheng a couple of days back that his dad was asking her about Jiang, so he wonders if that old man realized that something was wrong. Wang said, his Jiang looks so well behaved, while he is involved with someone troublesome, he is really out of luck. Zhu replied, it's great, as he finally met his match. Wang then tells him that she is the same girl, who tricked him into the hotel and took his clothes last year. Zhu remembered that she was his ex-girlfriend, but Wang said, she is now the current girlfriend, and she is the one who is pregnant. Zhu asked if that girl is a bad person, to which Wang said, he doesn't know how to explain it, it's so annoying. Zhu tells him to not be frustrated, as marriage is great, he wants to get married but can't, and how doesn't even have someone to marry. After they are done eating, Zhu suggests him to go to the internet cafe for a couple of games, and Wang instantly agreed. When they reached the cafe, Zhu remembered that Hao's girlfriend works at a convenience store nearby, which shocked Wang, that Hao has a girlfriend. Zhu said he has no idea if they are together, though there are signs of it happening, so he will take the chance to grab some drinks from there. On the way, he explained everything to Wang, that Hao was going to have a meal with her last time. They reached the store and the girl gets surprised to see them. Zhu asked for some cola, while the girl thanked them and said she didn't get the chance to do it before. Zhu said there is no need to thank them, she just need to thank Hao, as they wouldn't have been spurred into action if it was not for him. While Zhu asked for the scanner, the girl tells him that there is no need and it's her treat as thanks. But Zhu said, how can they let her do that, and tells Wang to pay up while addressing him as boss, and Wang also added that it's an insult to him if she doesn't let him pay. After the payment, they both came out of the store. Wang asked, so this is Hao's girl, and Zhu said, from looking at Hao that time, it feels like there might be something between them, but he has no idea if they are together. Wang smiled and replied, he thinks that they are. But suddenly, Wang noticed something and tells Zhu to look there. They both noticed Hao, who was coming towards the store while looking in his phone. They quickly hide behind a car, saying, he must be going in the convenience store. And just as they expected, Hao goes inside and returns with a water bottle and has a smile on his face. But then he noticed both of them hiding behind the car and asked, what are the two of them doing there? Zhu said that they were headed to the internet cafe and decided to come there for some drinks. But Hao angrily said that the cafe is on the neighboring street. Zhu replied that it's cheaper here since the cafe is selling it for 50 cents, and Wang agreed by saying, 50 cents make a dollar, but this made Hao more angry as Wang is super rich. But then Wang went close to him and said, since he already caught them, he will say the truth, that they are there to tribute him, but Hao said he is still alive. He thought, these two guys are surely up to no good, it just happens that he is on this street, and buys a water bottle, so there is nothing to spy on. Suddenly, he gets startled, as he heard Zhu saying, picking up girls while on active duty, so maybe they can report him. Hao angrily grabbed Zhu's collar and asked with a red face, who is picking up girls, to which Zhu said, he wonder who. Hao leaves him, saying, that he is scheduled for the night shift today, so he is off duty. Hao then asked about Wang's marriage, so he replied, that he got scammed, as they barely did anything and she got pregnant, and now she is forcing him to marry her. Hao said, it was predictable long ago that it would happen. Wang was thinking, how did he become a dad at a young age? But if they were to abort it, he is not sure if he can do it, because that's an actual human life. Hao then asked Zhu about his plan, and when is he going to do it, which confused Zhu. But then Hao remembered that Jiang doesn't have an ID yet. Zhu then asked him about his progress with that girl, to which Hao said, there is nothing going on, he is just passing by and buying a bottle of water. But Zhu calls it nonsense and said that this store is not even on the way to his house. Suddenly, Hao starts laughing and asked him about Zhang's ID, to which Zhu's expression changes as he realized that Hao is changing topic. 
Hao then tells him that his dad was worried about them, that what would he do if Jiang got pregnant? And then, Su gets an idea, thinking, if all else fails, then Jiang getting pregnant can be a backup plan. Suddenly, Wang sighed and said, how did the three of them land in such unfortunate situations? He is getting scammed, Zhu's girl doesn't have an ID. But Hao angrily said, there is nothing about him. Hao then asked them if they want some crepes, as he is hungry, so both Zhu and Wang agrees to that. All three of them then sits in a corner and enjoyed their crepes before going back home. While returning home, Zhu was thinking that once upon a time, the three of them usually hang out, and chill all day, so much time has passed in the blink of an eye. As Zhu reached the entrance of his building, he noticed his auntie Chang and calls her. He tells her that Jiang is helping Yan with her homework, though he is not sure if they are done yet, to which auntie Cheng replied, she is aware of that, and she is at ease knowing Yan is with them. Zhu then asked her if his dad approached her about Jiang, and she said yes to it, and asked if they are preparing to get married, so Zhu tells her about the problem with the ID. After hearing Jiang's story, Auntie Cheng excitedly said she knew it, that a happy girl like Jiang must have had it tough in the past, so if she needs any help, she can find her anytime. Before entering his house, Zhu listened to Jiang's and Yan's voices and thinks it sounds like they are studying hard. He then happily opened the door, saying he is home. Both Jiang and Yan looked at him with excitement, but Zhu gets disappointed to see that they both were playing Minesweeper instead of studying. Zhu went close to Jiang and asked her about the homework, to which she points at the table, saying she has done a lot of homework exercises. She even did tomorrow's share, and Yan also announced that she has done the share for tomorrow as well. Zhu then pats her head while saying she will have to tell her grandma, as it's up to her to decide if she will have to study tomorrow or not. Zhu was thinking that having little Yan accompanying the warrioress seems like a good idea, it's more meaningful than spending the entire day alone playing games. He further thinks that if they were to have a daughter in the future, it would probably feel like this. After some time, while Zhu was looking something in his phone, Jiang came and tells him that she sent little Yan back to her grandma's. She then sits next to him and asked, what is he looking at? Zhu showed her the video and asked if she can use a soft sword, to which she said, nope. Zhu said it's to practice her moves, not for fighting and killing, so Jiang replied, if it's just practicing, then there is no problem, she just need to make some noise, right? But just then, something clicked in her mind. She excitedly asked Zhu if she will be streaming this in the future, but Zhu said, unfortunately, she is just a weak woman with no power to restrain a chicken in the eyes of people. Jiang clenches her fist after hearing that, and asked if he really thinks that she is a weak woman with no power to restrain a chicken. Zhu tells her to stop, as that look in her eyes is making him feel uncomfortable, and thinks it feels like that he is no better than a chicken. After some time, Zhu tells her that since she doesn't have an ID right now, she can only teach him how to do it first, and then he will use it to make money. He also added that if it's done well, they should be able to establish a long-term collaboration and they will also get all kinds of swords, like long, short, hard and Mayo, which excites Jiang. Zhu explained that the Mayo sword is a 1.5 meter long sword, it's about as tall as she, and if she used that, she can turn into a killing machine and become a battle angel. And as soon as Jiang heard that, her eyes sparkled as she said that she wants one. Zhu smiled at that and tells her that it will arrive soon. He then grabbed her legs as usual and put them on his lap. Then replied, of course, the manufacturer took the initiative to approach him, hoping that he can make a promotional video for them. After a while, Jiang checked her phone and said, according to the news on the phone, there are children who can compose two to three thousand poems a day, and asked if that is true. Zhu tells her to think about it, as even if she sleep only for four hours a day, on average, it will take one hour for hundred poems, that is basically impossible. Jiang gets disappointed, thinking, it's said that if one don't study, he can't even brag, but not only she don't study, she even believes the bragging of other people. She then gets up in anger, and starts walking towards her study table. She picked the pencil in confidence, thinking, she is going to be smart. But the first question she encountered was, that there are 4 liter in a 9 liter bucket, so how can little Ming fetch 6 liters of water? Jiang breaks the pencil in frustration, as she got stuck on the first problem. She said, he can obviously fully fill the 9 liter bucket and just throw away the rest. Why does he have to fill it with exactly 6 liters? And asked, if he is sick. 
Zhu tells her to calm down, as not everyone are smart like her, so they need her help in that. But this angered her even more. She thought that she is a smart person, so she shouldn't stoop to the stupid little Ming's level. After some time, Zhang gets happy, thinking she finally finished today's homework. She then went near Zhu, who was working on the laptop, and sits beside him. She closed her eyes and thinks if only life could go on like this forever. She put her legs on his stomach and further thinks that his stomach is so warm. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking that she is just acting like Winter Melon right now, they both like to step on his stomach. But just then, to Zhu's surprise, Jiang started moving her legs a little downwards. Zhu grabbed her legs and asked, what is she trying to do? Jiang pouts while thinking, when he wants it, he doesn't say anything and just hold her feet, but when he doesn't want it, he asks her, what is she trying to do? But then to her surprise, Zhu asked if she is trying to make it up to him because she used excuses to not study many times, or if she is trying to avoid studying next time. She turned her face away while saying, not at all, and then thinks that she has been seen through by this guy, but if he dares to continue, then she will beat him up. Meanwhile, Zhu was thinking, the first two times were really accidents, he really can't do it again in the future as he can't lead the warrioress on the wrong path. He then checked his phone and said, it's almost time, so he is going to take a shower and sleep. But suddenly, he sneezed and Zhang asked if he is alright. Zhu said, he might have caught a cold and will be fine after taking some medicine. And as he picked the medicine, a thought crossed his mind and he asked Zhang if she has ever been sick which confused her. Zhang said that she is rarely sick and asked Zhu if he is okay or if he needs to go to the hospital. But Zhu tells her to not worry as a little cold is not enough to kill him. After some time, Jiang came out from the shower. Zhu noticed her coming out of the bathroom and tells her that they should sleep in separate rooms tonight, or he would pass the virus to her as well. Zhu thought that they have been sleeping in the same bed for a few days now, so there is no need to be afraid that she won't let him sleep with her again. Zhu then leaves from there, telling Jiang that he will sleep in the storage room for the next couple of days, thinking that a proper rest is required for a quick recovery. Zhu goes into the room and thought that he need to treat this cold seriously, or it will get worse. Furthermore, the swords will be delivered the day after tomorrow, so he needs to be ready for that as well. After some time, suddenly, Zhu noticed that someone opened his room door. He gets up and asks Jiang what is she up to. She went close to him and said she just looked it up to see if he will die from his symptoms. She thought he was fine all along, but he suddenly develops heart inflammation, brain inflammation, and nose tumors, and then wonders if she is going to get widowed before they even marry. She then grabs Zhu and starts pulling him, saying that it's best if they go see a physician, but Zhu tells her to wait. He said at this rate that she is grabbing him, he will really die. Zhu tells her to not trust the internet blindly and assures her that this is just a minor cold, so nothing will happen to him. They both fell silent for 10 minutes, and then Jiang again asked if he is sure that he won't suddenly die, to which Zhu replied, he definitely won't. She then asked him, why is he using a blanket on such a warm day, so Zhu tells her that it's best to sweat it out when you have a cold, and then showed her the thermometer. He said that it's just 37.3 Celsius, he is just having a tiny fever, so she doesn't have to worry. She worriedly asked that his fever won't suddenly shoot up to 40 Celsius in the middle of the night, to which Zhu replied that would be impossible. He then lie down and tells her to not worry about him and should rest as well. After she left, Zhu thought that he only shared a bed with her for a few days and now he is back to sleeping alone again. After some hours, Zhu wakes up and finds Jiang looking at him with a concerned look. He asked what is she doing there and Jiang said that she is seeing if his fever has worsened and asked if they should measure his temperature again. Zhu gets up and asked what time is it, so she tells him it's past three. Suddenly, Zhu grabbed her hand and pulled her towards him, telling her to just sleep together as it saves her the trouble of overthinking. Jiang touched his legs and thought, it really doesn't seem as hot as she imagined. But then, Zhu tells her that he really won't get to rest if she will not stop rubbing him. She blushed hearing that and asked if he is not going to say that he will pass his sickness to her now. To which Zhu replied, he decided that he should just pass the cold to her to let her experience it, otherwise, she will think that she is about to die every time he catch a cold. Jiang thinks it looks like it's really nothing much if Zhu is still able to say things like that. 
she then wished him good night and sleep in Zhu's arms. In the morning, Zhu wakes up and wondered, why is there such an intense smell of ginger? He went out and asked Zhang what is she making, to which she replied, it's ginger water. Zhu with a horrified look said that he doesn't want it, but Zhang tells him to quit acting, and that he must drink it. Zhu quickly turns back towards his room, saying, he remembered that he didn't fold his blanket, but before he could escape, she grabbed him from behind. While vomiting, Zhu was saying that his mouth is full of ginger residue, but Zhang said he is exaggerating. After some time, she asked him if he wants to practice martial arts to sweat it out. But he instantly refused, telling her that he just wants to quietly rest there, thinking the cold got more serious. He then tells her to not sneak into his bed, just because she miss him, but she loudly tells him that it was clearly him who dragged and hugged him to sleep. Zhu smiled after hearing that and asked if he would have been able to pull her in if she really didn't want to, but she tells him to shut up, thinking she will beat him up when he gets better. Jiang then receives a text on her phone, and while going towards her phone to check the text, she tells Zhu that it best if he stay over there permanently from now on. The text was from Ping, who was asking her if she wants to go to fishing. Jiang gets sad, thinking that if she were to head out and leave him alone, will he be okay at home? She then tells Ping that Zhu is sick, so she won't be able to join her today. In the afternoon, Zhu did some martial arts training and thinks that after practicing a little, his stuffy nose seems to have gotten better. He then went near the couch, thinking it's time to look at the stock market. Jiang was already looking at it and asked if he can earn money by this, to which Zhu said yes, but it's hard to get a grasp of it, and it doesn't earn much. Jiang said, but he is having an easy time, so Zhu explained to her that if he is earning, it means that someone is losing, so it's not easy to earn. She pouts and said, he is always saying that everything is difficult all day long, and there is always someone smarter than you, but she has also been studying all this time. Zhu replied, when he is talking about smarts, it doesn't refer to IQ as she understands it. He added that she is studying because he is forcing her to, but real smart people are able to realize that they have to study and would do it on their own. She gets frustrated hearing that and thinks all this guy knows is to make her study and said that he is just tricking her into studying every day. Zhu then tells her that even if she is a dumb little sprout, he will still take care of her, to which Jiang said it's easier to take care of dumb people. He then asked her what kind of weird stuff is she searching again, same as thinking that he will die from a cold. She replied, she hasn't been reading any weird stuff, but is just concerned about him. Suddenly, Zhu grabbed her hand and put it on his stomach, telling her that she can touch him there as it's more accurate that way. Zhu then tells her that if she is willing to study on her own, then he will love her a hundred times more than he currently do. But she turned her face away in response and replied, she doesn't care. But then she slowly peeked at him and asked, how much is a hundred time more? To which Zhu happily replied, it's the level where he will even love her feet water, but then she calls him a pervert. Zhu was still not feeling better, so Jiang tells him that she will make another bowl of ginger soup for him tonight. But then, Zhu said, thinking about it, does her bath water qualifies as ginger soup too, which makes her angry, as she calls him a pervert again. She pushed him while thinking, he is still spewing such vulgar stuff when he can rarely talk, and she is sure that when he grows old, he will still be as pervy. After some days, Jiang went out for shopping with her friend Ping. She was thinking that she hasn't been out for some time since she has been taking care of Zhu at home. Suddenly, Ping said that she seemed like quite the bookworm and asked what has she been reading, to which Jiang replied, she read all kinds of stuff. She added that Zhu told her that she would get scammed by other if she doesn't study, and they would force her to box other people or whatever which shocked Ping. She shockingly said that someone as pretty as she, who has a boyfriend and has her own stuff to do, what business does she have with boxing? Jiang asked what does having a boyfriend has to do with boxing, to which Ping replied, because those people have nothing better to do. And as Ping was about to cross the road, Jiang pulled her back, telling her to stop. Ping tells her that if they don't cross now, they will have to wait for a long time for the next green light. But Jiang replied that crossing when the light is red will get her hit, so it's safer to just wait a little, but Ping still insisted on crossing. But then the lights turn green, so she said that this intersection takes a long time to turn green, while Jiang said she would rather wait three minutes than save one second. 
Ping pouts while saying that they aren't really crossing when it's red or anything. But Jiang replied, regardless of how small the chance of it happening is, it's a 100% chance when it happens to her. Ping said, after hearing her speak like that, could it be that the boxing she was talking about is that of the physical sense or if Zhu is teaching her martial arts? Jiang thinks if that's the case, doesn't Zhu mean that someone will teach her martial arts? But that doesn't make sense though, as she should be the one teaching others instead. It seems like the boxing that the three of them are thinking of are different. Ping then gets shocked and asked if that Zhu King, that nerdy straight guy, is really planning to have a weak girl like her learn martial arts. She frustratingly said that guy is also bad at video games, so it's a mystery how he got such a girlfriend like her. Jiang also tells her that he is teaching her everything, and today she learned about how he makes money from stock market, so Ping suggests her to ask Zhu to grow the money she earns as well. Jiang gets shocked after hearing that, thinking, why didn't she thought about it, as if Zhu is smart, it also make her smart by extension as well. If he can earn money, then why don't she pass him her money so that they can earn money together? Meanwhile, Ping was thinking, if she really make that much sense. They then went inside a restaurant, where Ping motivates Jiang to study hard and improve every day, thinking, Zhu doesn't seem like a bad guy. Jiang wonders if that is okay, so Ping said it's pretty good, after all, the honeymoon phase will eventually come to an end, so they will have to find a way to understand each other. After some time, Ping asked her if she will go for fishing, telling her that she bought a new fishing rod, but Jiang refused her offer as if she doesn't have much time today. Ping gets disappointed and said, alright, then let's go tomorrow. But then, her eyes sparkled as she asked Jiang if they should go roller skating right then. Jiang gets shocked hearing that, saying she never tried it and thinks that Ping is not Zhu so she can't expose herself. As she was thinking that she has to learn to lurk amongst the people from this era, Ping grabbed her hand while saying she will teach her. After some hours, Zhu was inside his house looking at Jiang's slipper. But then, he noticed Jiang looking at him with disgust. He starts laughing and asked why didn't she make a sound when she came home, but she didn't said anything. Zhu then nervously shows her a book, saying that he was just curious about the fashion in Tang Dynasty. It's true, he is on this page of the book, thinking, these straw strippers are a curse, as now, he really can't get rid of the pervert label. But God can attest that he really was researching ancient fashion. Jiang then make a big smile and said, she believe him completely. As she was leaving, Zhu fell into despair, thinking, believe my foot. After some time, while she was working in the kitchen, Zhu came close to her and said that if she is having fun with her friends, then she can just have dinner outside. He added that she has some money that she earned from the stream, so she should treat her friends sometimes, and she happily said okay to it. After a while, Zhu was checking the sword when she tells him that she went roller skating with Ping today, which shocked him as he asked if she can roller skate. Jiang replied, it's super easy and that she learned it in no time. While cutting vegetables, Jiang was thinking of something. Suddenly, she goes inside her room and then returns with her clothes. She tells Zhu, he said that he wants to do research so he can have this and Zhu shockingly asked if she really believes him. He checked the clothes and thinks that the needlework is immaculate and it is very neat, the ends are also neatly cut. As Zhu was thoroughly checking the dress, suddenly something fell from it. He picked it up and figured that it's a cloth to wrap around your breasts from the Kai Yuan era. He starts smelling it, thinking, with 1200 years of history, it's a great antique. But just then, Jiang came and shouted at him, asking, what is he doing? Zhu was startled and replied, he accidentally dropped this, and it looked a little dirty. So he was just blowing the dust off it, and then he put the cloth on the couch. He then clears his throat and asked, why did she came back? To which Jiang said, she came to get an egg. After she goes back to the kitchen, Zhu took a sigh of relief. He wondered, why can't he keep these hands to himself, why does he find himself in such situations, when he already has a girlfriend? He looked at his hands and thought, could it be that he really is a degenerate pervert? He thought that he doesn't have a fetish for used clothes, even when it comes to stockings. He is only interested when the warrioress is wearing them. He questioned himself, then why does he have such an interest in an antique? And then Zhu understood that it's because of the jeans. What he is interested in isn't the piece of cloth itself, but the fact that it's an antique. He then starts sniffing it again, thinking that he is only interested in the smell of antiques, unaware that Zhang was spying on him. 
He looked in her direction, but finds nobody, so he wondered if he is imagining things, because it felt like she was watching him. But then Zhu thought that if she was really peeking, she would most definitely let out a scream and not let him continue. He then looked at the strip and thinks since he has already smelled one of the antique, he should give the same treatment to other antique as well. He convinced himself by thinking that he is not a pervert, it's just in his genes to love all antiques, so he should not reject any of these. Just like Wang doesn't mind others saying that he is poor, he himself shall no longer care if Jiang calls him a pervert. Because he is not, that's what he truly believes. He then starts sniffing it again and gets excited by the smell. While having dinner, Jiang asked Zhu if he saved all the money that she has earned, right? To which Zhu replied yes. He thought that besides the 4,000 for the TV, he hasn't touched the rest as he was waiting for her to get her ID before he could transfer it all. She tells him that she was just curious if he can use her money to earn more from the share market, but Zhu instantly refused, saying he just invested a little for fun. Also, if he were to invest her money, he would feel even more pressure. The bigger the capital, the larger the risks as well, so Jiang asked if he is saying that it is easier to lost her money. Zhu then gives her an example, saying it's easy to just follow the thin white line on the road. They can walk straight on it without worry. But if they were to put a path of the same width on the mountainside and have her walk it, isn't it way harder and no longer easy? But Jiang instantly said with a smile that it's not hard though. Realizing what she meant by that, Zhu looked at her with a dumb expression. He then calmed down and tells her that he refused to be her fund manager because if he use her money, he will feel the pressure of losing it. Wang also proposed him a similar idea before. Even though the money wasn't that much, he refused without any hesitation. He tells Zhang that it's already enough to earn a little money by doing that. If he invests too much, he will feel pressured, and then it will just be giving away his money. Zhang thinks she seems to now know why he can live a relaxed life with a look of idleness every day. It's by having a clear understanding of himself. Not only does he have a clear understanding, but he is also very good at reading others. She thinks that maybe what Ping said is correct. He has been urging her to study, to keep them spiritually united. The more common language the better, so as to continue to manage the relationship between two people stably, after the novelty wears off. Smart idlers and stupid idlers will only drift apart. After a while, Zhu tells her that his cold has been completely cured so he can move back to sleep. But then to his surprise, she said, in the past few days, he proved that he is not afraid of the heat and can sleep there all the time. She added that if he still wants to move, then she is going to play right now. But then to her shock, Zhu turned his face away and said that he won't move so she can do her questions. She asked if he really will not move, to which Zhu replied, yes, not moving at all. She gets angry hearing that, and said then she will do these questions, and he can stay in the storage room. After some time, while she was studying and Zhu was doing the dishes, someone rang the doorbell. It was the belt sword that Zhu was waiting for, as he tells her that it's hard to get on the subway with this thing. She can't pass the security check, it's just a novelty. But then he used it as a belt, telling her it can be used as a belt at ordinary times, and it can be pulled out when needed. Jiang thinks about something and asked, then, won't his pants fall down when he take it out to fight? Zhu replied, the pants won't fall with a hollow belt, and tells her to not take it outside, as this is for collecting and playing. This sword is for her, so she can play with it later. Jiang thinks that this is just an iron sheet, yet it's called a sword, and wonders, when will her 40-meter sword arrive? Zhu said, then she can learn a few moves, and then put on the chainmail to shoot a short video, and if they can establish a long-term cooperation, her weapon rack can be filled slowly. She then asked him, when will her big sword arrive? So Zhu replied, that it's coming soon, and when the time comes, she can take it with her to shower and sleep. After some time, Zhang was thinking about Zhu, that he always seems to be thinking about her future. She remembered how he promised her that he will do his best to help her get acquainted with his world so she can slowly blend in. Then the time when he tells her to live in his era and enjoy the prosperity of 1200 years later. All the times when he tells her to solve the humanities, smooth out the information gap, and then become a modern person get to know his world, mature quickly so she can have the ability to choose freely, then there will be no problem. 
and that give her an environment where she can study with peace of mind. When she is independent, she can make her own choice on whether to leave or stay. She smiled after remembering all that and thinks it hasn't even been a year and she has already learned to smile. She looked at him washing the dishes and thought, maybe his intentions has changed several times along the way, but he has been thinking about her future and that has never changed. Separated by more than 1200 years, she came from the Kai Yuan era to the current era and then luckily met this person. She looked at the moon from the window and remembers her second miss telling her that he is really reliable. Then she wonders, what is her second miss doing right now? Is she counting copper coins with her small box? Or if she is repairing the leader's clothes? Or if she is also looking up at the moon? Suddenly, Zhu came close to her and asked, what is she looking at? Jiang said, she is looking at the moon, and then asked, for the people of the past, have they always lived in that time? To which Zhu replied, probably. She smiled and said, second miss must be looking at the moon as well, and she must be able to feel that she is living a good life now. Zhu also smiled after hearing that, and happily said, definitely. After some time, Zhu was thinking, that the warrioress has been there for almost a year, and after a month it will be exactly one year. He looked at her while thinking, originally, he thought that it would take at least a few years for her to intrigate into society, but she has progressed so fast because of the internet. Not only did she learn how to play video games and make friends online, she even learned to watch naughty films. Thinking about it carefully from a boyfriend's perspective, it seems that he hasn't properly given her a gift yet, so he decides to give her something on her first year anniversary. Suddenly, Zhu received a video from Hao in the chainmail, asking how is he looking, and if he is looking like Kin Kyong. Zhu then showed the video to Jong and asked if this stupid expression looked like her deputy leader. But she looked at the video with disgust and said, her deputy leader isn't that stupid. Suddenly, Zhu remembered that there are still some unused iron rings from the chainmail, and asked if he should make her an iron shirt. But Jiang said, it would not prevent someone from chopping her legs, and she will also fall from the weight. But Zhu added that he will add two suspenders to it, so she won't fall that way. But as Jiang imagined about it, she gets angry at him. She kicks him in anger and tells him that she is going to stream. During the entire stream, she focused on playing games while Zhu did his stance for complete one hour. After the stream ended, Jiang asked him in a low voice if he is going to, but then stopped herself. She gets frustrated and thinks that she doesn't care where this guy sleeps and it's more comfortable being alone in a big bed. She then wondered if Zhu really changed his mind and if he won't play any tricks on her. She then goes to her room and lie down, thinking she doesn't care anymore, and it's time to sleep. But just then, Zhu slowly opened the door and looked at her with a suspicious look. As he came inside, Jong asked, didn't he said that he is not going to move, so what is he doing there? Zhu replied that he didn't move as his pillow and sheets are still over there. He is there to talk to her about something important. He said, it's about the identity issue, that if it doesn't succeed the first try, it will be more difficult later on, so she must be fully prepared for the first try, to which she replied, she already know that. He then slowly get on the bed, saying, he is just worried that she is impatient, but there isn't much a need for an ID right now, so they need to prepare with peace of mind. He explained, that now the neighbors has a general impression of her, and Auntie Chang and Little Yan are strong witnesses, that he pursued her for several years. He then picked up a bedsheet while adding that there is also the sky eye CCTV outside, so the fact that she appeared out of thin air has been wiped out now. He lie down and said, there is no need to worry about the police investigation anymore, so it's a big step forward. Jiang looked at him while making a strange face and asked, why did he end up sleeping there? But Zhu ignored that and said, he is sleepy, so good night. This was the moment when she wanted to hit him for real as she looked at him with immense anger. She then turned off the light and lie down while thinking about him. But suddenly, Zhu hugged her from behind, which startles her. They both then wished each other good night in a low voice and closed their eyes. The next morning, Zhu wakes up and finds Jiang sleeping on his arm while hugging him. He starts sniffing her, but just then, he heard her asking if he is a dog, which startles him. Zhu quickly gets up and creates some distance between them while saying some nonsense, that he is the year of the dog. Meanwhile, Jiang was thinking that he likes to smell everything. He really is a pervert. She then gets up and do some stretching, which makes Zhu excited as he could see her curves clearly. 
he thinks it's a pity that he can't win against her otherwise. But just then, a thought crossed his mind. He asked Jiang if she was already awake, which startles her. She instantly refused, saying she just woke up, but Zhu replied that he doesn't believe her, thinking. He suspects that she is trying to entrap him again. She looked at him and said, whether he believe her or not, it's up to him. As she was thinking which clothes she should wear, Zhu tells her that she can change there and promise that he won't peek. But she looked at him peeking already and asked, what is he doing then? To which Zhu said, he is closing his eyes right now. She kept looking at him to see if he really is closing his eyes or not. Zhu asked, why isn't she changing yet? And if they don't trust each other in times like these, this relationship will be hard to last. She then put the teddy bear in front of his eyes and tells him to not peek or she will really hit him. While lying down, Zhu thinks that she would usually head to the storage room just to change her clothes, so this is a big improvement. Since they haven't been sleeping together thanks to his cold, he guesses that the absence really makes the heart grow fonder. After some time, while Zhu was in the bathroom, Jiang came and asked if what they are right now considered abnormal. Zhu asked in a confused tone in which aspect she is referring to, thinking they were never normal to begin with, to which she replied that with them sleeping together. Zhu said, it's normal to sleep together, what's abnormal is that she is still wary of him, even after they are already sleeping together. She asked, then how would modern people be like then? To which he replied, modern people probably wouldn't have any reservations about anything, they would have been running around but naked. He thinks that there is nothing wrong with sticking to the old beliefs from the Kai Yuan era and it's hard to find someone who is like her these days. He is just teasing her from time to time, but it has backfired and hopes that God will forgive him. He then looked at her, getting ready to make breakfast. And then he fell on his knees, thinking, no, it's still better to get her used to it early. While having breakfast, Jiang tells him that she promised to Ping to go fishing with her and asked if there is anything he wants her to get on the way. Zhu replied no, since he will be heading out in a bit too. Then he asked her if she wants to come find him at his parents' house at noon, as he might be having his lunch there. She said, in that case, she will go fishing with Ping in this afternoon, instead of the morning, to which Zhu tells her that it's okay, she can go with Ping, as his parents might not even want him around for lunch. After some time, Zhu was going to his parents' house. His uncle Zhao stopped him and said, he just saw Jiang and her friend heading out with their fishing rods, so why didn't he join them? To which Zhu starts bragging, saying, it's because he is too good at fishing, and they feel ashamed when he is around. But his uncle tells him to stop bragging, as he see them with buckets full of fish all the time. After some time, he reached home and asked his dad where his mom is, and he replied that she has gone to play mahjong. Zhu asked why she went this early in the morning, since she usually play in the afternoon. He then finds half pomilo on the table, saying, this looks good, and asked his dad if his workplace give him this. His dad tells him that there are a few more in the kitchen, so if he like it, he can take a couple home for Jiang and him to eat. His dad thinks that this rascal is probably there for something, and coincidentally, he has something for him too. Without wasting any time, his dad asked him to say what he wants this time, to which Zhu tells him to not worry, as he is not there to ask for the house. His dad replied he wouldn't hand it to him, even if he wanted it, and then asked if he is finally enlightened and is there to find him a job. But Zhu refused immediately, and as he was about to brag about saving Hao, his dad immediately stood up and starts leaving, saying he doesn't want to talk. Zhu then tells him that he just wanted to ask if he approached Auntie Cheng to ask about Jiang. His dad tried to refuse at first, but then Zhu asked if he is saying that Auntie Cheng was lying. His dad replied he was just parking his car over there and was doing some chit-chat, and the conversation drifted towards that, but Zhu knew that he was lying. He then asked his dad if he is able to help resolve it. His dad gets confused and asked what does it has to do with him. Zhu said that if the ID problem gets settled, the two of them will immediately get married, to which his dad replied, she is his girlfriend, so why would he help him? Also, didn't he said earlier that he will think of a way to resolve it, so just do that. But then, Zhu makes a puppy face and said, he is his son, but his dad shouted at him, telling him that those tricks of his won't work on him. His dad tells him that if he were to live an honest life and stop that dabbling streaming nonsense, he will help him ask around and talk about the ownership of that house. His dad thinks that getting on the newspaper once has given this guy the confidence to show off for a year. 
Zhu asked his dad which part of him is not honest, to which his dad replied, he can settle it himself then. Besides, the two of them are just dating, so they might break up in the future. But Zhu instantly refused, saying that's not happening. But his dad said, it's not up to him to decide. Zhu gets up, saying, he doesn't squander the money he has and doesn't go out and make trouble. He live his days in peace. What's wrong in that? But his dad said, he is like this at the moment, but will he still be the same? A few years down the road, to which Zhu replied, he definitely will. His dad said, then they will see in a few years, other people out there already have successful careers and families, while he has accomplished nothing so far. Zhu replied, that just because he is his son, it doesn't mean that he can place such expectations on him. He asked his dad to touch his heart and tell the truth, how many people would be able to meet his expectations. He asked him, if he really understands the youth of today. Being a civil servant like Hao is in the minority. Even if he were to be lucky enough to find a job at a good company, his salary would just be enough for food and shelter. If his luck is bad, then he might have to pay the rent using his money. Squeezing with others on public transport at 9 in the morning and sitting in the office for the whole day while having to work overtime during holidays and not being able to go home. His dad asked if he is saying that only the best among the elites are able to make that armor of his and why is he comparing himself with the worst of them. Zhu said he has to admit this, that most people out there are unable to earn tens of thousands while in school, pay the rent, stay home, all while building up his personal savings. He smirks and added, so this means, if you were to look at it from another angle, he is someone who is very hardworking and outstanding. Zhu said that he hasn't accomplished anything so far, it just seems that way in his eyes, because it doesn't fit his idea of success, and because he is not living to his expectations. Zhu thinks the day he met Jiang was the day he went for a job interview to please his dad, but now, when he think about it, it was totally unnecessary. Meanwhile, his dad was thinking, he admits that this rascal has accomplished some things, and tells Zhu that he never forced him to become super accomplished, he just wants him to not fool around. Zhu makes fun of him and asked if he truly believed that his son would behave himself in a job, he would be dabbling in alcohol and women. That's just who he is, which makes his dad angry. Zhu added that with the devious thoughts running in his head, he would easily be led astray, and when the time comes, he will only be able to visit him behind the bars. His dad asked why would he visit him when he will be behind the bars, to which Zhu replied, because that would be crazy. Zhu then gets serious and said, with his skills, he thinks that if he were to chase his definition of success, he would be able to do it better than most people out there. His dad tells him to stop bragging, saying, if he could, then why aren't he doing it? Is it because it's more fun waving that sword around and playing with slippers? Zhu then makes a funny face and agrees, telling him, yes, because it's fun. He said, this boils down to their different perspectives. He loved doing what interests him and living his life. Not everything is about money, he would never choose something, which will make him miserable, and he is not going to give up on his current life just because he thinks that he is loafing around. His dad grits his teeth in anger, telling him he is not going to fall for such nonsense, and asked, what does Jiang think, does she not complain that he is not striving to be better? Zhu replied, loving your way of life is striving to be better. If she is unhappy with it one day, they will think of how to change things for the better. His dad angrily said, he can take it easy then, and he won't give him the house, to which Zhu replied, if you were to donate his house to him, he would become serious immediately. But then to Zhu's surprise, his dad takes out a paper and slams it on the table in anger. He said that he will write his will, that when he is gone, he will donate his entire fortune away. But before he could write that, Zhu said, to tell him the truth, he has a hundred thousand in his savings, and he can make a down payment next year. His dad fell silent after hearing that, while Zhu was looking at his expressions. His dad removed his glasses and asked in disbelief if he robbed a bank. Zhu said he didn't rob any bank and he may think that he is not working a proper job, but he has made a lot of money from it. Zhu thinks that if he doesn't make a bet with this old man, he still won't recognize him, even if he earns enough for a house. He remembers that around this time last year, his savings were around 40k to 50k. And in the past year, he stayed home with Jiang and didn't have to pay any rent. 
The meals were made from ingredients handpicked by them, and thus, his expenses have decreased by quite a bit, as compared to the days when he was living alone. Combined with the money from streaming, their income is also higher than before, which led to an increase in savings all around. There is a big change in lifestyle too, the two of them staying home, reading books, and watching videos every day, has increased their quality of life, so the warrioress is really a blessing from heaven. His dad then asked him if he doesn't have to spend money on his girlfriend, thinking something is not right. She replied, she is great, she uses the beauty products he bought for her sparingly, and it would be even better if he could get her ID issue settled. Zhu added that he can find a flat on his own, and won't have to inherit his, so he can use it to generate income for his retirement while the two of them can live their lives on their own. His dad then asked, what is wrong with Jiang's ID, thinking, the two of them are just fooling around at home, yet they make that much money. Zhu replied, this is what he said in the past, but she is even smarter now and has self-studied her way to the high school level. His dad thinks that they are preparing to get married and buy a house, all of this does not add up. He then asked Zhu to show him his savings, as he believed that he is lying. But to his surprise, Zhu quickly take out his phone and showed him that his investments are worth more than 60k. There is also around 10k in the stock market and even more in the emergency account and suggests his dad to scrutinize it if he doesn't believe him. Zhu thought that if someone told him a year ago that he would sleep and wake up early, practice martial arts and put down a deposit, he would have laughed in their face. But it has actually happened. A warrioress from a thousand years ago has changed his life completely. His dad checked everything and thinks it is indeed in order and being able to earn 100k at his age is truly praiseworthy. And maybe he is telling the truth that he would be more successful than most people, but he is choosing the easy life. Zhu said, to be honest, he is able to get her ID settled himself, but he need to have a backup just in case. His dad replied, he can only help by ask around for him, so Zhu thanked him for that. He gets up while thinking, the most he can do is to erase any traces of how the warrioress suddenly appeared, and if her ID issue gets settled, then it will be smooth sailing from then on. She will no longer have to see the world through the small monitor at home, and will be able to step out of Jiang Cheng and explore the world. He then excitedly tells his dad, since they have some free time, does he wants him to demonstrate some martial arts. But as soon as his dad hears that, he tells him to scram. Zhu then picked up two pomilos and shouted, Tiger Fist, but his dad angrily tells him to get lost. After a minute, Zhu's mom arrived and said that she coincidentally bumped into Zhu on the way and asked why he was running off with two pomilos in his hands. His dad tells her to let him do what he wants as it's better than him running off with the house. Back at home, Zhang asks Zhu if he wants to visit Beijing together in the afternoon to which he surprisingly asks if she was serious about buying a plot of land in the suburbs and growing her own crops. She replies that she just wanted to go there to take a look, and they haven't been there together yet. Also, seeing fields full of crops makes her happy. Zhu goes on to agree and says they should go together in the afternoon, which makes Zhang happy. She goes on with her daily work and gives Zhu a kiss on the cheek. He thinks that she's so affectionate even in broad daylight. He wonders if he's able to use the excuse that her pee turned red to check out her body. He goes on to rebuke himself and say, how can he be like that? Isn't bullying an innocent girl from the Tang dynasty going against public morals? He also goes on to ask himself if his teacher raised him up to be such a person. After that, Zhang asks him if he can just steam the fish. Then he tell her that she will look good if she were to hold the fish with both of her hands, to which she asks him if he means like how he does it. Zhu becomes embarrassed and thinks that he occurred low physical damage and high emotional damage. After some time, Jiang takes a picture of the fish that she has cooked. Zhu goes on to think that she is sharing a picture of the fish with her friends the moment it's ready. He then tells her to send it to him as well, so she agrees with a confused look. He sends a message in the group, saying that he caught it himself and asks if he is awesome or not. His mother wonders if he didn't just leave here with two pomilos in hand and asks where he found the time to go fishing. His father replies that he is not showing off the fish itself but showing off the dish instead and thinks that without even looking at it, he can already guess that he has his nose up in the air and is showing off anything and everything he can. He then tells Zhu's mother to go and buy a fish later too as they haven't had fish in a long time to which she angrily tells him that it's not a special occasion or anything, so why does she have to go through the hassle 
and he realizes that she lost money playing mahjong this morning. He goes on to think, could it be that Brat rushed home before lunch because he heard that his mom was playing mahjong and was worried that he couldn't eat good food for lunch if she lost money? What a master of escaping, as Zoo avoided all the nagging too. He continues in thought that Zoo must be gloating that he has tasty fish for lunch right now while Zoo is happily eating his fish. He thinks it could be that the warrioress calculated the expenses for the two of them and chose to buy ducks, geese, and pork ribs for meat along with some fruits to change up their diet, though they still didn't spend that much. He goes on to think that he's actually starting to feel guilty for saving up money without having to commute or own a car plus not falling sick easily due to them practicing martial arts. He further thinks that perhaps having a kid is the only way to achieve a proper balance. He tells Jiang that the way things are going, he thinks they will be able to get their own place next year, or the year after next, to which she questions about their own place. She goes on to think about the topic of their own place. Zhu agrees that their own place and says that the place they are in belongs to his parents. Once they have their own place, they will be able to decorate it any way they want. They can have their own bookshelf built into the wall so that it doesn't take up much space. They can also paint the walls and ceiling off white for a minimalist look. Jiang while being surprised, questions if they are buying a place for themselves. He happily replies that if not for themselves, then for who? She blushes while saying, a place for him and her, and thinks that originally, she wanted to become a modern person just like Zhu King and Pingping. After that, to get better at the whole streaming thing, while starting her own business with making, selling and eating food, followed by, she is still learning how to integrate into modern society. And all of a sudden, she gets to own a modern house, or rather a house with Zhu King. She mutters, that's not good. To which he asks her what's not good about it, so she goes on to say, that a place must be expensive, and they have to be married for it to be called theirs. Zhu happily replies, that he will be beaten to death if they break up anyway and asks, what's the difference if they are married or not? Also, if she wasn't around, his savings would probably only be enough to buy a toilet, let alone a house, and he is just telling her his plans, that if they were to really buy one, the earliest that they can do so will be next year, they will be able to get a two-room, though if she wants big one, they will have to work harder. Jiang leave the table, as Zhu goes on to think, that 89 square meters is just nice for two people to live in, and is enough for kids in the future too. He continues to think that a family of three would mean one room for the study. If they were to have two kids, converting the study room is a possibility, though it might be a little cramped. But then, his face gets all sweaty as he realizes that he hasn't even done anything yet, so why is he thinking of how many kids they are going to have? After some time, Jiang walks into the room and finds Zhu writing. He thinks that getting two sets of new clothes when the season changes would cost at most 1,000 yuan. The toiletries can last for three months, and would cost at most 1,000 yuan over a year too. The only huge expense for entertainment was their trip to the amusement park, and they would usually just walk around, drink boba tea, and go fishing. He further thinks that there was a time when they would eat out a lot, but as Jiang got better at cooking, there wasn't any to eat out as often anymore. Besides that, there are miscellaneous things like buying a bigger pillow or a new fishing rod. He goes on to remember telling Jiang that he got a pillow, it's not a pillow for one but a pillow for two, while Jiang tells him that she got a new fishing rod, it is time for a big fish. He thinks it's a wonder that their expenses were only relatively high during the first few months after Jiang had showed up, where he brought her around to experience all of the things that she had never seen before. After all, they are only spending so little that it's not even as much as he could lose or gain from playing around with the stock market. Jiang asks him what he's calculating, to which Zhu replies that he's calculating how they were able to save that much money. He says that they have been quite a bit of money on hand, with her staying at home playing games, and him watching TV shows every day, and added that sometimes she would spend no money when she's outside, but instead bring some nonsense home. And then he realizes that it's the reason why, and goes on to think that before the warrioress showed up, the money was spent before they knew it, now the warrioress will bring stuff home when she's out, be it eggs, detergent, umbrellas, or fish. Jiang highlights that she's studying every day at home, she doesn't play games. She goes on to ask him that which stuff she brought home that was nonsense, to which he nervously says nothing. She tells him that it is not nonsense, he should look at this flask for example, she takes it with her when she is going fishing, so she doesn't have to buy drinks from that stupid vending machine. Zhu then quickly apologizes and said it was a slip of the tongue. 
After that, Jiang wonders why she lost her composure just now. She smiles and thinks that buying a house means that there's a place for her to call home. She then excitedly tells him that they should go as it's time to stroll around by Cheng. But Zhu tells her to hold on. He sits on the couch and tells her to come to him for a hug first. She jumps on top of him on the couch and Zhu starts smelling her. She asks him if he's a puppy, at which he tells her that she shouldn't move. She should let him give her a good hug. And since his hands were moving down, Zhang asks him what's on his mind, to which he replies that he's thinking about how once his mind is put to rest and he no longer have worries about everything and have secured what he has currently, life will only move towards how he envisioned it and it will naturally get better every day. Zhang keeps quiet and listens to him while blushing. She thinks that it is a little warm while Zhu continues to embrace her. But then she quickly dashes away while saying that she's changing her clothes, it's time to go to Bai Cheng, to which he replies that they should go and they will get ice cream too. Outside, Zhu and Jiang are enjoying their ice creams by the bus stop. Jiang asks him if he would like to try her flavor, to which he replies that she has already licked it though. But then she angrily thinks that it's not like they have never switched their food at home. Zhu goes on to ask her if she wants to try his and says that they should switch. But she also rejects his offer and says it is gross since he has already licked it. Meanwhile, Zhu thinks that it is right. She looks like someone from the present right now. He further thinks that if this was half a year ago, she would quietly look at him with an expressionless face. Suddenly, Jiang jumps on to taste Zhu's ice cream and thinks that she asked if he wanted to try hers because she wanted to try his in the first place. He compares Jiang from the past image he had in his mind and thinks that what a drastic difference it is which confuses her. She asks him how drastic it is, to which he replies that it's so drastic that she's practically two different people. She was like a shut-in before, it would have been perfect if he introduced her to his parents half a year later. She goes on to ask if he's for real, as it doesn't feel that way to her, and asks if she isn't the same. But then, she realizes something, that it looks like she has gotten chubbier. Outside the bus, Zhu asks her if she just realized that she's put on some weight, and further asks if she can still use King Gong. As they get in the bus, she angrily replies that how would she know, he doesn't even let her run too fast, while he thinks that she's at the right weight, and not actually fat. She feels so soft when he hugs her, which is way better than when he hugged her last year during Chinese New Year. Zhang goes to ask him, that it seems like they don't like obese people. Zhu shockingly asks why she says that and thinks, that when she said you guys, who was she referring to, and wonders if she means pingping or modern people in general. Jiang says she saw that other people will call skinny people slim, but obese people fat. Hearing that, Zhu tells her to ignore those people, and she agrees to it. They sit alone at the back seat of the bus ride, as Jiang gets lost in observing her surroundings. Outside, Jiang marvels at the sight before her and asks if this is the modern cornfield. Zhu agrees that it is, and goes on to think that this is great. If the warress is happy, then he is happy too. Jiang thinks that in another half a month, it should be the reproduction stage, and in Jiang Cheng, they call it pulling out the tassel. Meanwhile, Zhu thinks that although wonderful stories often happen in cornfields, he thinks that they were all rough men. As a scholar, he will get cut by the leaves, and it will be painful and itchy. He continues thinking, it is also possible, that before he's even cut by the leaves, he will be beaten into a dog by the warrioress. They walk through the cornfield as Jiang admires it, and then she calls out Zhu, and tells him to look. He stands still daydreaming, and Zhang asks him what he's smiling for. He asks her if these aren't just normal corn leaves, and asks her what is wrong, to which she replies, that she didn't expect corn stalks to grow so tall in the modern day. She happily thinks that she wanted to relax, and breathe some fresh air. While looking at the endless fields of wheat and corn, she wonders, who knew the corn stalks are as tall as humans, and finds it great. She says that this feeling of open-mindedness, it is so good. She then asks Zhu if the fields there will be harvested by machines and questions if she is right, to which he replies that probably. Technology is developing fast, and in the past, a family would have to dig into the ground manually. He heard that there was a machine to harvest it now, but he hasn't paid much attention to it. Jiang looks disappointed by the news, to which Zhu laughs and says there will be plenty of opportunities for her to see one in the future. Zhu further thinks that his dad moved to the city during his generation. Before that, his family were farmers for 18 generations. He doesn't know if this counts as forgetting his roots or not. Jiang then sits on the ground and says that machines are really great inventions. 
Zhu also agrees, while Jiang goes on to think that it's so comfortable sitting in the countryside and enjoying the breeze. Zhu then asks her, by the way, normal girls would find the ground dirty, but she seems fine with it, to which Jiang questions if she can't just wash it if it gets dirty. Zhu thinks that Warrioress is really not picky, she doesn't randomly spend money and doesn't want anything. Playing games and going outside are her only hobbies, and that although he is tired, he still wants to spend some more time with her. Jiang then tells him that she has thought about farming together and him helping her harvest wheat with a sickle, and asks him if he's willing, to which he laughs and says she shouldn't even forget to bring him with her to farming, and thanks her, but added that technology is already so advanced, so they should just hire someone to drive the machine, and it will be done in just a moment. He tells her that he wants to take her to sit in an air-conditioned room to eat watermelon, drink coke, listen to music, and read books, and ask if she's willing, to which she replies that she's very willing. She added that enjoying the air conditioner, of course, she's not stupid, there are necessary hardships she must face. But who would be stupid enough to face unnecessary hardships, and Zhu thinks that she is resolute and decisive. She further added, she said that she had thought about it before, but she didn't say she still wanted to do it now. Life has become easier, machines save time and effort, watering and other things are more convenient, and crops have become more productive. This era is great, so sometimes it feels unreal, to which Zhu replies that it's normal. Sometimes he also feels like it's unreal, and she shouldn't think too much, the more people think, the more tired they become. He goes on to say that if she has any questions, she can ask him directly, Teacher Zhu always answer her questions. He then asks her if she wants to do anything else and that she can do some exciting things in the cornfield. But she understands what he means and tells him that if he likes, she can show him what exciting means, to which he says that she misunderstood him. Since there is no one there and there is no cameras, she can show off her King Gong to him and asks if she can run as fast as a motorcycle. She replies that he should forget it as it feels good to be a normal person and he said that himself. He agrees and tells her that they should go home, to which she asks if he doesn't think it's silly to hold an umbrella in the summer. So Zhu then smugly asks her why is she under it then, so she counters by saying that it's not like she's the one holding it. Inside the house, Zhang tells Zhu that she's going to take a shower, to which he tells her to come then, they should enjoy it together. After that, he sits in front of the fan while thinking, no wonder the warrioress likes to go out and play. After she came out of the bathroom, Zhu goes on to say it's shower time and dashes towards it. He throws his clothes out and tells her that she should help him throw his clothes in the washing machine. After that, she washes the clothes and hang them. And while Zhu is still in the bathroom, she smells his t-shirt, then thinks while blushing, just how did she become as perverted as Zhu King, but then sniffs it one more time. Inside the house, Zhu is resting on top of the couch while Jiang is on the computer. Zhu then thinks about a house that the average price of the place he currently lives in is more than 8,000 since it's a small apartment where the total price is low and the unit price is a bit high. If he were to buy a place, he wouldn't buy a place this old, it would be the slightly newer ones that have an average price of 6,000 square meters for 100 meters, a third of the down will be a little over 20,000. If he's short of a few thousand, he can borrow it from his dad and others, giving him a much wider range of options. He has never thought about buying a place so soon, but his savings are unknowingly increased, so he naturally have this thought. He thinks that even if she doesn't do anything but laundry, cooking and playing games, the difference between having a girlfriend and not having one is huge, as in terms of food, clothing, housing and transportation, it is really difficult to save money when you are single. And when one gets married, they don't have so many bells and whistles, and they live a stable life and they save money without even realizing it. Cooking at home for a month may not save one much compared to ordering takeout for a month, but by extending the days, one can save a lot of unnecessary expenses in all aspects. He then says to Jiang that if she had come two years earlier, they might have moved into a new place by now. But she says that if she came two years earlier, she might have stabbed him to death. Suddenly, he hugs her from behind, which startles her. She asks what he's doing, and he tells her that she smells good after showering. He used to think that people in ancient times were smelly, but Jiang angrily looks at him and says that in the past, there was no hot water to take a shower every day. She asks that after they buy a home, do they have to move to a new place because they are already familiar with people around there, and do they have to get to know the new neighbors for the ID? Zhu replies that there's no need, they can get it done here first, they still need to save for another year anyway. 
or they will come back here when they are getting it done. It's not easy to get to know the neighbors around. Auntie Hang and the others are a different story because he has lived here since he was a child and she will know in the future that the relationship between neighbors in those high-rise buildings nowadays are very cold. He tells her that she doesn't have to think about that. He will take care of everything for her so she should just play games and read good books and he will take care of everything else. Jiang thinks that it will be a year soon. At the beginning, she thought about going back every day, but now she's worried about going back suddenly. She asked if he would poke her, to which he says that she can sit in his embrace while she plays a match. There is a message that says, Zhu King sent an invitation. She is hesitant at first, but couldn't reject Zhu, who is looking at her in excitement. And then, she agrees and blushingly sits on him. Yang asks if she smells good, and he replies positively. But then she tells him that she just touched her feet, to which he just keeps quiet. He then goes on to think, he forgot that she's also a pervert, then wonders why he just said also. Jiang says that he is always in heat with her and asks if that is affection. Zhu goes into a fit of coughing and tells her that this is a normal reaction from a normal man towards someone he likes and tells her to not use such weird words. He takes his hands off her and tells her that no more messing around, he will quietly watch her play. As she starts playing, the very next second she asks him what he is doing. As he puts his hands around her abdomen, he replies that he's not doing anything. He goes on to cuddle her and thinks that the lower abdomen is not a sensitive area for most people, and that of course, as long as she moves a bit, it will change. He squeezes her abdomen and says that just keeping it here can make people feel at easy and a little comfortable. But Jiang then attempts to punch him, so he runs off while telling her that she can continue playing. He also added that she can change the name of her character to something like Ginger Plant or Kaiyuan, so she asks him why expose that. Zhu asks who would actually believe her in game name, and asks that if he changes his to Alien Zhu King, does it mean he's from another planet? This is called reverse psychology, no one will be able to guess that she is from the Kainian era, and she is killing them in Summoner's Rift. She agrees to it, while Zhu thinks that she is still too innocent. Zhu then thinks about the ways of making money quickly so he can buy a place. The advertising sponsor decided to use the video of him wearing the homemade chainmail, holding a soft sword, and arrogantly performing moves. So he thinks that he needs to find a suitable video to insert at the end, one that has a high number of views. He goes on to type in homemade armor, master of martial art, shit talker, fair and impetuous, playing games with his girlfriend while editing some videos, cute new and uploader, and thinks that after a half a year of doing this, he will now be somewhat famous. Comments keep coming from different people, one comments that when his wife whips him with a belt, and another comments him that when his wife whips him with a belt she is even more of a martial art master. Another comments that they forgot about their wife whipping them in front and forgot about it in the back. Zhu cryingly thinks he doesn't know who took the phrase, when my father whipped me with a belt, he's even more of a martial arts master and turned into, when my wife whipped me with a belt she's even more of a martial arts master and now that the comments are all like this, he will be infamous forever. After that, Jiang asks him what he wants to eat tonight, to which he replies that he wants to eat, but stop for a second before saying that he doesn't feel like eating right now, she can make whatever she wants. She tells him she will go with small fried fish then, and added that Pingping asked her why she changed her name. She asks Zhu how she should reply, to which he says she should say that she saw a time-traveling drama and changed it. She questions if it's that simple, and he replies that it is. After some time, Jiang thinks she wonders if fishing too frequently will make him think that she is not studying properly, and she's too idle, so she decides that from now, she will take this book with her every time she goes fishing, so that she won't neglect her studies, as in the past, if she had a book on her for no reason, second miss would have thought that her brain burned down. She continues to think that this is what you call life, in the past, it could only be called living. In that era, where entertainment was extremely scarce, every day was spent thinking about food, clothing, and shelter, and as soon as it gets dark, she goes to her room. Occasionally, when she had free time, she leaned against the wall, or she would lie on the roof and lays in the sun. She indulges in thoughts that nowadays, just reading a touching book or listening to a good song, can make people feel the simplest form of happiness, live life to the fullest, is all very easy to achieve. He looks at Zhu enjoying with Winter Melon, and ponders in thought that there's also love. 
Inside the house, Zhu thinks that the most important thing for the warrioress is to learn literature and language, but he has no idea how to teach her that. It's not like mathematics, which has a certain set of formulas and problems to teach at each stage. He further thinks that by insisting that she reads a wide variety of books, she can then exude an aura of smartness. A scholar who is crazy strong at martial arts as well, what a superb image, as he imagines Jiang wearing her warrior clothes when she reaches that stage. Zhu says that as the autumn wind blows, the sunset turns the clouds to yellow, then asks her if she knows what is the greatest strength of people that study. She asks if it is that they can write poems, but he answers that they are able to express the most complicated of ideas in as few words as possible, which makes the conversation between smart people less energy consuming. So she asks, why is it so complicated when he's talking to her then? He goes on to think about it, while she looks confused, unaware of the fact that it's because of her. Zhu says that going back to the poem, in just those few words, one is able to describe the time, place and view, if she were to describe the wilderness that they have seen outside, how would she do it? She keeps quiet and goes to think about it, while Zhu looks at her in waiting. He keeps staring at her with hope, which makes her nervous every second. She goes on to say, in the afternoon, they went to the countryside, there was a lot of corn, and it was hot outside. Zhu says it is not bad, and that as long as she is accurate feels free to use simple words to describe simple things. He asks her that once she's got the simple stuff down, can they then learn more advanced things, as turning a simple thing into an essay is even more difficult. He tells her to take a poem as an example. First, she has to try and understand what's the meaning behind it. And then once she's understood it, she has to try and explain the author's intentions to him in simple terms. He tells her that only when she has truly understood it can she then explain it in simple terms, otherwise, she will just be saying a bunch of fluff. He added that with input comes output, but then seeing her face all puzzled, he asks her if she understood that. To which she says that she understands it completely, but goes on to think that she does not understand at all, and Zhu comments that he doesn't believe her. She then asks him why he didn't become a teacher, so he happily looks at her and goes on to ask if he isn't becoming one right now, to which she thinks that Zhu King is just plainly living out his dream of being a teacher when he's with her. She stretches her leg to touch the front of his trousers and slowly starts massaging him. Zhu thinks that she still can be flirtatious when studying, so it looks like she needs more homework to do. He thinks that he should get the book of 300 Tang Dynasty poems while she looks at his phone. She shouts at him, asking him what he's doing, and that she has enough books on her plate already. But Zhu says that as an ancient person who has not received compulsory education, she will have to work harder. To which she angrily says that she is not taking any exams, but Zhu said that she still has study to do. He tells her that if she doesn't study and just lays around, it's really easy to succumb to online propaganda and become part of the online mob. Also, he is ordering some light novels for her. The next day, the delivery boy came to deliver the order, so Zhu thanks him for the hard work, while Jiang thinks that the books that were bought yesterday are already here. She peeks her head into the room to see how many books are there, and then happily shouts that it's her sword. So Zhu explains to her that it went through logistics, so it was delivered at a later date than the soft sword. She gladly pulls the sword out and looks at it, while Zhu tells her now that he looks at it, he should have brought a saber instead, the curve on the blade would look better than this but she disagrees and tells him that she prefers swords. She tries it out a little and thinks that it's too dangerous for her to wield it properly. Zhu asks her if she can still sword dance with such a long sword, to which she replies that it's doable. She just needs to familiarize herself with it first. She happily thinks that once she's familiarized herself with the sword, she will be invincible. But suddenly, Zhu appears behind her and asks if she's thinking of hugging it to sleep tonight, to which she nervously replies, how could that be? He says that thinking about it, why the people of her era didn't make swords as long as this one, don't say that the longer the sword, the stronger it is, but replies that it's hard to maintain such a long sword, plus it's expensive, heavy and easy to break. She then asks Zhu that if she is able to bring the sword around now and not have it confiscated. He says that she will definitely get it confiscated, as this is a highly regulated piece of equipment, then tells her to look at how sharp it is and she should be careful with it. Zhu thinks that they will get a sword rack once they have four to five swords, as it might even spur Jiang into a collector's frenzy, and they might even get a wall of swords. 
Jiang hands him the sword and tells him that he can try it out, but he rejects while saying that he will pass. And when he was leaving, he takes a peek on Jiang's sword. He then picks it up and says if he may ask for her name, since he doesn't ever harm those whose names he doesn't know. Jiang turns around hearing that and has a murderous look on her face. She then introduces herself as Jiang Yi of the Salt Gang and asks if he's looking for a fight. She goes on to say that she is Jiang Yi of the Modern Time, to which Zhu replies that he is Zhu King of Jiangcheng. He tells her while releasing an aura that through his years of adventuring, nobody has been able to get him to draw his sword in defense, as that sword is only meant for attacking, not for defending. His sword moves with intention, and he chooses his moves carefully, and the nine style sword stance is versatile. He goes on to say that it grabs victory from the jaws of defeat, and trumps any martial art under the sky. Jiang gets angry hearing all that nonsense, and her thread of patience suddenly broke. She shouts that he should cut the crab and has fire in her eyes. She jumps to strike him and shouts take this, which cuts strands of his hair, and Zhu realizes that he messed up. He quickly ran towards the room and shouts from behind the door that it's great swordsmanship from the warrioress. And as soon as he said this, he shut the room's door in a hurry. Jiang then goes on to laugh in her head and thinks that the 40-meter sword is fun. The next day, Zhu tells Jiang that he's heading out for a bit, so she says okay to it. He tells her to be careful and not to damage the chair. Hearing that, she asks with a smile if he thinks that she is him and if he wants to exchange a few more moves. He quickly gets out of the house and says that she's funny and he is leaving. After he leaves, she takes her sword and puts it away. After that, she starts taking pictures of the chainmail armor. Suddenly, she comes up with an idea that she should also try on the dress Zhu bought her before. After getting ready, she looks herself in the mirror and thinks that Zhu is a pervert since the dress is too revealing. She thinks that he only knows how to take advantage, and the dress should only be worn at home, and wonders how anyone could wear such clothes out and about. She further thinks that she really can't figure it out, if something requires her to squat or bend over, then she might as well just die. But then, she looks herself in the mirror again, and smiles happily. Inside the bus, Zhu is holding onto his phone and thinks that it's a message from the warrioress, and wonders if something has happened right after he left. Jiang sent a text, asking if he sees it, while she's wearing the dress, to which Zhu wonders why she suddenly sent him a selfie. He sends her a question mark, and says he's not blind, he can see it when he opens the chat, to which she says, that's good. He wonders what is good, and says that it is strange. Meanwhile, she thinks that Zhu always wanted her to wear it, and now he has seen it, she goes on to think that although, he can't see the skirt. She further thinks, but what does that have to do with her, she still showed it to him, but Beidou is right. She thinks that the beautiful skin will fade with the passage of time, and there will be a day where he will get bored, but an interest in the soul is different. She then start her study while shouting, that's why, she has to work hard secretly. She will make Zhu super shocked, little ginger sprout made up her mind. At the same moment, Zhu is shocked, he looks at Wang Zi who holds up a card to him. He asks him what is it, and asks if he's seeing correctly, to which Wang asks him if he's blind, and that it's just an invitation. He says that the date has been set and once they get married, he will be able to become a father. Zhu then read the invitation, and thinks that he remembers it was the same person he met on the subway. He continues thinking that Hao doesn't even have a girlfriend yet, and this guy is already getting married, and he's also becoming a dad. He wouldn't have been of surprise if it was Hao, but for one Wang Zi to be tied down by a kid, that's really unexpected. Zhu asks him how he thought it through, to which he says he just did, he's bound to have a kid sooner or later anyway, and if he went through with the abortion, he would remember losing a child for the rest of his life. Wang Zi goes on to say, that won't work, he won't be able to accept it. Zhu keeps quiet, and thinks that although people are said to have many facets, but the playboy who changes his girlfriends every day, just like he changes his clothes, suddenly turned over a new leaf because his ex-girlfriend, but then corrects himself that his girlfriend got pregnant. Wang Zi sighs and says that many times, he just suddenly thinks about it. He smokes his cigarette and says it's no biggie, he didn't get advice from an expert. He sat in the car and looked at the traffic lights, lit a cigarette and thought it through, and he says, life. Zhu angrily tells him to keep acting, while Wang Zi tells him to give Hao his invitation as well, since he was too busy to come today. Zhu agrees to it, and asks him what about the child, and that his wife is at home preparing for labor, and Wang Zi says, they are just waiting for it to be born next year. Zhu putting the invitation in his pocket says, he got on the bus before buying a ticket, 
and asks if his dad didn't deal with him, to which Wang Zi tells him to not mention that, since his dad almost threw a chair at him. The waiter then brings them their coffee, and Su thanks him for that. He sips onto his coffee, looks at his friend and thinks that it has been an eventful summer. Wang Zi tells Zhu that he can do anything he wants if he's capable. He can be hold at home from finding success in streaming, and he doesn't have to work in any office anymore. He asks Zhu how much money he can make while remembering the stream that they do. Zhu replies that it is nothing compared to him. His family runs so many businesses, to which Wang Zi responds that it's his family. He has nothing to do with it, and says that to be honest, if he had any good ideas, they should do it together. He can provide the capital, and he can. But Zhu goes on to stop him, and he gets surprised, as Zhu asks him why does he have so much faith in him, and tells him that he shouldn't get any ideas, he's not cut out for big businesses, so he should forget about it. But Wang then suddenly grabs Zhu, and says that he has known him since the school days, that he is not an ordinary person, who else would be able to stay at home all day, and be glued to the computer while watching hours and hours of news broadcasts, the persistence of his, he will be able to succeed in anything he does, he saw that in him from earlier on. He tells him that he can sometimes even hear the jingle wherever he catches his live stream, so Zhu wonders if this meant to praise him or make fun of him. Zhu asks him if he's trying to exploit him or something, to which Wang says what does he mean by exploit, and that he just wants some money to feed his child, so he won't have to rely on his dad in the future, and requests that they grind it out together. Zhu laughs and says, someone famous once said this, one should never start a business with their best buddies or their family. Wang Zi goes into thought about it and tells him to forget it then. He sighs and says they have unknowingly reached the age where they are about to start their own families, to which Zhu replies that he is the one getting married early. The rest of them are not there yet, and he doesn't know if Hao has succeeded in pursuing that girl or not. Zhu then thinks about starting a family, the warrioress would definitely be happy to hear that. He then asks Wang Zi if he's got a place yet and ask if he has decorated it yet. He tells Zhu that he is no longer bored if they are talking about this and says that it has been bought and the renovations are underway. He paid for the down payment and it has both of their names on it and he will repay the loan first and then they will repay for it together in the future. Zhu asks him if he has to do that when they are so rich and asks how his girlfriend is going to help repay the loan when she's pregnant and not working to which he replies that she doesn't have to help repay the loan when she's not working, and they will split the repayment based on each of their incomes when she is. Zhu shouts and questions if she agreed to it, and thinks that he initially thought that his ex-girlfriend Song Hui would be hard to handle, but she somehow ended up like that after getting married to this rich guy. It looks like he has officially split off his finances from his family, with clear lines between what's his and what's his dad's, Getting rich just by marrying a rich man like him, it seems impossible now. Wang Zi says that she's forcing him to marry her after getting pregnant out of nowhere, and asks what can she do but agree, to which Zhu thinks that this guy is very good with his contraception. It's probably not an accident that she was able to conceive a child out of nowhere. He further thinks that Wang Zi still holds some resentment in his heart, and isn't this turning the marriage into a business transaction? Wang Zi will provide for her if she doesn't get a job and takes care of housework at home. But if she gets a job, she will have to pay for the house using a big part of her salary. The house that they bought is probably worth a million or more. He keeps thinking that it's easy for someone rich like Wang Zi, but for Song Hui, he doubts that she has much of her salary left after that. So regardless of whether she is going to work or not, the control over the finances is firmly in Wang Zi's hands and most of her salary will be used to pay the loan. He thinks that Wang is sure to comment on it, if she needs money to spend, and she will have to make him comfortable if she wants the money quickly. By adding her name to the house, he is directly restricting Song Hui's finances, which let him gain control of the family, it's such a scheme. He tells Wang Zi that capitalists are also cold-blooded, this marriage of his. Zhu thinks it looks like that Song Hui can't make a fuss of it anymore. If she wants to have a peaceful life, she will have to live in harmony with Wang Zi. Getting into fights with him would only make her suffer unless she decides to get divorced. While Wang can live a peaceful life without doing anything, and Song Hui will then naturally be a good wife and mother of his dreams. Wang Zi says that he was totally unprepared to become a father. He can't even party late into the night anymore and his life will probably turn into something unrecognizable like Zhu's. Zhu smiles hearing that and asks if isn't that pretty good as well. After Wang Zi left, Zhu stares at the invitation while releasing a sigh. 
On August 4th, a man comes and tells them that their express delivery is there. Zhu thanks him for his hard work, while the delivery man tells him to be careful when carrying it, as it's a little heavy. But Zhu easily takes it, while surprises the man as he thinks in shock that Zhu is able to carry it all with a body like that, and guesses that Zhu works out quite a bit. After opening the parcel, Jiang mortified shouts that it's books again. She asks what is in the other box, and hopes that it's not more books, to which Zhu replies that it is something high-tech. Jiang thinks that although reading all these books is a pain, she still has to respect the knowledge that they provide, since she is an educated person now. She excitedly says that she is studying for the advancement of China. Zhu looks at her quizzically, so she explains that she got that off the internet, on why they have to study, to which Zhu encouragingly tells her that she has a great ambition. He then shows her the box and tells her that she can open it. She excitedly asks him what sort of high-tech it is. To which Zhu tells her that it's a self-balancing scooter. And then, he demonstrates to her how it works, while she looks in amazement. He says, it feels like flying. She can just ride this instead of a bicycle when she goes fishing next time. To which she comments, wind fire wheels. To which he asks her if she remembers the wind fire wheels and explains that it's something similar, though she can't actually fly. Zhu asks her if she wants to try, and then he helps her to learn to balance on the scooter. He tells her to not be afraid, and just balance on it, and lean slightly forward. Then Jiang manages to get comfortable on the scooter. She goes on to say that it is such a good buy, and asks if the people acting as ghosts on the TV float around using this, to which Zhu replies that it is possible. She then look at the bottom of the scooter and says that there is an engraving. As she is checking it, Zhu tells her while embracing her that it is for her. They stand in the sitting room, embracing each other, while Winter Melon looks in confusion. In the 16th year of the Kaiyuan era, two ladies are sitting outside. One on the roof calls the other one sitting on the ground second miss, and says that there is no need to count it anymore, it will get stolen tomorrow anyway. Second miss questions in confusion, if she is sick or something. She asks if the sickness from that day damaged her brain, to which Jong replies that of course it didn't. Second Miss thinks that Jiang was terribly sick a few days ago, and when she woke up yesterday morning, her fever finally subsided, but she was up hugging her while laughing and crying. She started saying a bunch of unintelligible words, and was trying to mimic some potato car computer thingy, or whatever with her hands. Second Miss further thinks that according to the doctor, it's possible that she is in a state of shock and something supernatural must have entered her body, which caused her to cause a fever and say a bunch of crazy stuff. She wonders if it is possible to frighten Jiang He. Jiang looking at the sky thinks that her body came back, but that was the only thing that came back, the potato didn't make it, and neither the computer. She thinks that nobody believes what she was saying either, even if she were to try to teach them something. They would think that the sickness has caused her to turn down. Jiang calls out to second miss, who looks at her questionably. She tells her that if she said that there was someone far away waiting for her, would she believe her? The second miss asks who is that someone, and how far is she talking about? She replies that this someone is a tall and refined scholar, his name is Zhu King, and he is somewhere really far away. He is very capable, though he is lazy, he has the ability to earn a ton of money, but he chooses to laze around, he's the kind of person who is easily satisfied and gets complacent. And the second miss becomes shocked at her words, and continues to think that this girl is undergoing puberty. She jumps off to the rooftop to join her, then tell her that just from his name alone, this Zhu King doesn't sound like a good person, and added that these scholars from outside the village are. But before she finishes, Jiang replies they are evil. She says that she knows that, but she is a scholar herself too now, she volunteered to recite a poem first for her, to which the second miss tells her to wait, and asks what she is going on about, and why doesn't she keep talking about that Zhu King guy first? Jiang says he is really nice to her, he gave her food and a place to stay, then he tried all sorts of tricks to hold her hand. She continues that they will then get married and have kids, they will look just like her, and tells the second miss it's a pity that she won't see them. The second miss looks questionably at her, and shouts at her, asking if she has kids, to which she replies no, she doesn't, she is saying in the future she is still a proper lady right now. She goes out to call the second miss, and says that if she is unable to find her one day, she shouldn't worry, she will be on the way to a very great place. She tells her that it's a place where everybody is able to receive education. There are super fast cars, which go much faster than horse-drawn carriages, there are also airplanes, which make a buzzing noise as they fly across the sky. 
she get to learn how to play games, which helps her earn a living over there, and that she is also forced to study, she goes out fishing to have fun, and that she tries a bunch of tasty stuff. She continues to narrate that it is all thanks to Zhu King, who treats her so well. She tells the second miss that a golden age is sure to happen in the future, so she won't have to scrimp over that amount of food. The second miss looks at her coin purse, while Jiang says that actually, there's still a bunch of stuff that she wants to say, but it seems like they won't be of use to her. She then keeps quiet while looking at her, and tears formed in her eyes. She then tells her that she will go find and talk to the chief in them. She tells her to not worry, she won't talk about kids and the like. Jiang thinks that counting the days, it's possible that she have to leave tomorrow, so she will have to say goodbye to everyone in the village this time. She further thinks that second miss, she might have to leave, as she has to look for her husband. She continues thinking that she was really happy for the past three days. Zhu arrives home wet from the rain and says that he is so unlucky. He is drenched as he takes off his clothes. Suddenly, he hears someone saying, so he is finally back, with shocked Zhu. It is none other than Jiang, who introduces herself as Jiang He. He questions Jiang and says that he doesn't know anyone with that name, so she must have got the person wrong. But Jiang replies that it's because he doesn't know her yet. He looks at her critically, then unlocks the door in confusion. And then she drags him inside, while telling him that they should talk in the house. Inside, Zhu thinks that he is very certain. He has no idea who this girl is. But her cosplay is on point though, she has the sword, and is wearing coarse linen, and she is even wearing grass slippers. After that, Jiang tells him that she is his wife, they will meet by chance around there, and he will invite her inside, he will say that she is a nice person, and trick her into staying there, and she would do all sorts of chores from cooking, laundry, cleaning, and feeding the cat, it's just like how he took in Winter Melon. Zhu tells her to wait, and asks if he is on some sort of prank show, he knows all about it, she probably has a pinhole camera on her. He tells her that he just wants to take a nice shower and go to sleep after getting caught in the rain, and here she is out of nowhere, claiming to be his wife and he doesn't buy that, and she replies that she is an ancient person from the Kaiyuan era, to which Zhu sarcastically replies that he is then actually Zhu Zhu from the Three Kingdoms. He goes on to say that they are done there, and she should get up, otherwise he will be calling security, to which she tells him, that if he is able to lift her up, she will leave. Zhu uses all his strength on her, but she stays still. After giving up, he tells her that he will keep playing along, and asks where they were, and says right, they are predestined lovers, and she is there to repay his kindness, and thinks that he can't really do anything to a lady like her, if she has accomplices around, he will get beaten up into an unrecognizable mess. Jiang goes on to say that it's not to repay his kindness, it's just that he will think of ways to trick her all day long, and he will trick her into giving her body and into being his wife. Zhu keeps quiet hearing that and looks at her with a doubtful face. He says that he believes her, he needs to take a shower first, and that she can head home to take a shower too, and then they can begin living out this great love story. Zhu opens the door and tells her that she should be quick and be on her way or he will call the police. She takes her dagger and hits the television, to which he devastatingly shouts what she is doing. She goes on to say that now she owes him a TV, and he asks if she is really not afraid of death. Jiang thinks that he was the one who was keeping her in the dark last time, how the tables have turned. She tells him that these wet clothes are stick to her body and they are making her feel uncomfortable, and asks if they should take a shower together. Zhu gets shocked by the idea, and wonders if this world has gotten mad. And just like that, her sweet memory ended. At present, Jiang takes a picture of her scooter and sends it to Pingping, telling her to look. She asks Zhu why did he suddenly buy this. He tells her that it will be her first year here in 10 days or so, this is a present. He thinks that it's been a year, it seems both long and short at the same time. She thinks that she was still in the village a year ago but that seems like her past life now. Zhu tells her that the things that she owns are increasing, and asks how she feels about that. She says that she feels very happy. At night, she's looking outside through the window and notes that it's raining. Zhu replies that it's early fall now, and little Yan will have to head back to school, and she can't do her homework with her anymore. She tells Zhu that she's going out for a bit, and he asks her in this weather. She tells him that she's visiting Pingping. She takes the umbrella and walks out in the rain, after arriving at Pingping's home, she knocks the door, who alerts her that she is coming, and tells her to quickly come in. Pingping tells her that she is almost done with the set, she will be quick, she can sit on the sofa in the meantime. 
She thinks that the size of the place is indeed small, and it's about a third of the size of their place, and the living room has way less things. It's a simple layout, and it doesn't feel cramped at all. She wonders if this what a single lady's apartment is like. It lacks a little warmth, though. Pingping disturbs her thoughts and asks her if she wants to learn this from her. She goes on to stretch on the fitness mat and says that it is yoga. Jiang gets surprised and asks yoga and wonders what kind of position is that. Seeing her, Pingping asks if she surely knows what it is. She says that she knows but has never done it, to which Pingping says she will teach her. She tells her that she thinks it's better if she doesn't. She goes on to think that this motion is way too unsightly. She has some impression about the term yoga, but she has no idea what it does. Looking at Pingping's movements, she wonders if this could it be a specific thing used to get a man's attention. She checked the internet to search and finds out that she's wrong. It's actually a way to practice health and wellness. She believes that modern martial arts are way too weird. And Pingping tells her that yoga is similar to martial arts. It's mainly used to distress and make one's body more flexible. She tells her that she can try learning it when Zhu King is practicing his martial arts. She can practice yoga besides him. She adds that one is tough and loud, while the other is soft and quiet. It kind of fits. Jiang thinks that she seems to remember seeing these moves from the short films on Zhu Kingi's computer. She replies that it's okay, she'll practice the martial art he's practicing, so they can forget about yoga, and thinks that it's way too embarrassing to do this in front of Zhu King, she would rather spar with him. The feet stomp of the Tang Fist looks more powerful than this. Pingping tells her that girls should learn to be gentler, and asks what's the point of learning whatever martial art that he's learning. She might as well learn karate. Karate doesn't seem as strong as whatever he's practicing though. He'll be more than enough when it comes to self-defense. She will be very safe, so it's good to do yoga and adds that she can teach her if she wants. That learning this will also make her boyfriend more. Jiang asks, more what? To which Pingping replies, more in love with her. She thinks that she doesn't need Pingping to tell her that. She doesn't know about other people's boyfriend. But Zhu will definitely like this because he's a pervert. But she thinks that Zhu would prefer how she looks when she's practicing swordplay though, not when she pretends to piss on the carpet like a dog. She asks Pingping if she has always lived here by herself, and this apartment must have been pretty expensive. To which Pingping replies that she finds comfort in living alone. She adds that the apartment wasn't that expensive though, partly because it's old and partly because well there's a bunch of other nonsense reasons, so it's much cheaper than normal. And the best part is that this area is really convenient. One can get most things that they need from around here. It's neither too crowded or too deserted, so she has decided to settle down at this place. Jiang tells her that is impressive, to which Pingping agrees and says she still have to pay her monthly loans all for the price of freedom. Jiang thinks that regardless of whether this place is expensive or not, being able to buy one's own place is kind of incredible. She's looked it up online. The price of housing is shockingly high wherever she looks, and for the current her, the difference is between being unable to afford it and being even more unable to afford it. Pingping hands her water and she thanks her for that. She tells her that it's not as well furnished as her place, there are still tons of furniture that she hasn't bought, and she's too lazy to do it since she's alone. She asks that she plans to put a gazhang over there, so she can play it when she's bored, perhaps she can stream it like they do, and questions what she thinks. Jiang replies that it sounds good, she should just stream for an hour a day, and she thinks plenty of people will watch her stream. Ping Ping drinks her water and thinks that it's her current outfit, she's sure to attract a crowd. She tells her that she almost forgot about the reason she called her over. She tells her to come and look at the new spatula that she bought. She's ready to learn how to cook from her like they promised. She asks her if she thinks she is missing anything. Jiang says that the knife doesn't look sharp enough and she's lacking a whetstone, other than that they are good. Pingping tells her that they should start cooking then, to which Jiang tells her to wait. She has some notes with her. She jotted them down when she first learned how to cook. She hence shows her a book written Jiang's recipes, to which Pingping asks if she wrote that, and that it's awesome. Pingping says that there are so many, to which Jiang replies that it's nothing much. She'll let her borrow it and she can take her time to read it, she'll master it in no time. Pingping looks and points at the book and says this one, she replies that she's still filling that one. Pingping marvels at it, and Jiang asks how it is, and she replies that it is good, she sees some of her favorite dishes in there. Pingping goes on to say that she'll follow the recipe first, and if she has any doubts, she'll ask her about it. Jiang thinks that Pingping said that it wasn't mealtime yet, and suggested that they watch the rain. She thinks that she has to head home when it is mealtime though, 
or else Zhu King will just simply make some random noodles, eat a few mouthfuls, and consider his lunch settled. Pingping says that this is wonderful as they watch the rain, she adds that this mood is a pity that she hasn't bought a guzheng yet, or it would have been better if she were to play a song right now. Pingping says that she was still wondering how long it would take for her to make new friends here, and she didn't expect to make a friend this quickly, to which Jiang looks at her quizzically. Jiang asks her if it isn't easy to just make friends, to which Pingping replies that it's not easy at all. She tells her that it's easy to say that you know someone, but she sighs and says it's hard to talk about it. She continues that for someone like her, who is not from around here, it's hard to make a friend that she could invite to her house to hang out. She adds that it's actually harder to get a family, in any case. She smiles at Jiang and says that it's good right now. She goes on to say that she has already made a good friend who she can invite to her house to hang out. Jiang looks at her happily and agrees, both girls sit down and laugh and cheer. Jiang asks Ping Ping what kind of a job she did have before, to which she says, before this, she's worked in quite a few roles before, such as a trainer, a salesperson and even an influencer. Jiang gets shocked to hear and says, that many, which she agrees and says, it is perfectly normal, people who only work one job their entire lives are in the minority. She tells her that sometimes she really feels like Jiang is a child, as she stretches their cheeks, she goes on to say, she's a child. Jiang says only a child would try seducing fish. Pingping says that she is forever 18. She unlocks a quizzical look from Jiang. She thinks that she forgot that Pingping's real age was 19. She says that Pingping doesn't look over 23, but when Pingping was in school learning, she was already fighting for her life in the world. That's why she usually forgets about the age gap. She supposed family, and of course it's great to have a family. Pingping asks her if she really wants to go fishing after the rain stops. She won't feel bad about using the fishes that she's caught for training. To which Jiang thinks about it and says, another day perhaps, and how can she go fishing every day with her when she has a boyfriend? Zhu thinks that it's been a year and the warrioress has been slowly getting used to modern life. As for him, living with her has become the norm as well, and it's not that bad to be alone occasionally too. He looks out the window and thinks, this rain like before, if you were to go open the door right now, could be a Zhao He, or Zhu He appear too as well, he hopes not, his life now is very good. He pat his cat and wonders, if Winter Melon is just like Zhang He, raising a cat and raising the warrioress is pretty much the same. Though he thinks the warrioress wouldn't go through a rebellious phase or anything, he wouldn't mind if she had one though, but he will still look forward to the day when the warrioress has fully transformed. He goes on to disagree with himself and says, why does he sound like an old dad, and thinks that they are a couple, and it has been a year too, and they haven't even been super intimate yet. He were to tolerate this, then he'd have to tolerate everything else, and he thinks that he has decided, it's time to make a move. Jiang wonders what he's doing. He thinks that he's only in his 20s, so why is he exerting the composure of an old man, or should she say, the lethargy of one? She announces that she is home, in which he happily says, she's back, she pats the cats, and asks if he has fed him. Zhu looks at her quizzically, to which she replies that why don't they get one of those automatic feeders, and she saw it while scrolling her phone and it looks really convenient. Zhu says, why she doesn't guess how he became so fat. Jiang questions why he is so fierce with him, and is that it is not his fault that he's fat. To which Zhu shouts that it is his fault. He says that she got him that automatic feeder last time so that he could enjoy the wonders of technology. In the end, he learned how to open the lid of it and gave himself a free flow of food at home. He adds that he's really smart too, since he only does it in the middle of the night. If he didn't catch him in the act while he was going to the toilet, he would have probably turned into a pig by now. Zhu asks if it was fun hanging out with Pingping. She agrees and says that Pingping wanted her to teach her cooking. So she lent her recipe notes, if she manages to master cooking, she will have more confidence in teaching others how to cook. Zhu asks her why she doesn't just make cooking videos directly, and let Gong Ping learn directly from her videos, to which she says, that she wants to take it one step at a time. Her current goal is to save money everything else has to wait. Zhu questions what she is saving up for, and asks if there's something she wants to buy. She questions if he isn't thinking of buying a place, he pauses with shock. Zhu tells her that they won't need her money to buy a place. He tells her not to worry. He will keep her money safe. She asks him why he's not using her money, and she thinks that a house for two needs two people to buy it together, so how can he exclude her from it? 
He replies that even though they are not married yet, they pretty much act like a married couple. After she came, he saved a ton of money that would otherwise be spent on other stuff when he was single. Expenses like food and going out, combined with the money saved by her from getting the best deals at the supermarket, looking at it from another perspective. The money that he saved is especially thanks to her, and the money belongs to both of them. So there is no need to differentiate whose money is whose, of course. It's great that she's thinking of contributing as well. He says that when the time comes, they will look at how much they have saved and they can use that for renovations. He asks her if she is satisfied with the answer, to which Jiang thinks that she still has to prepare for her own dowry. If she were to contribute to the house, she may not have enough for it. If she doesn't contribute though, it just doesn't sit right with her. She keeps thinking that it would be great if they were to get married before buying a place. That way the dowry can be used for the place as well, two birds, one stone. She thinks that she can't come to a conclusion, so she guesses she'll just play games. Zhu says that it's weird seeing her play games like this. She says that she's just playing it for fun, and asks him to move further away and read his book. It's even weirder for him to stand around here, to which he tells her that she's allowed to play the game, but he's not allowed to watch. She says that she won't play it then, she thinks that it's awkward to play this game with another person around. He says that she can continue playing and he walks away. He goes to type in the laptop and thinks that a smart person like him is working so hard, while someone like her is addicted to her hentai games. She shouts at him that the stuff that he's doing is useless too. He replied that it's not just useless, it just hasn't found its use yet. Plenty of things around the world will become useful in the future, and it's hard to see the potential in the short term. He adds that like books, studying martial arts a good sleep schedule. Sleeping and waking early for a day wouldn't do much for one's complexion. Reading a book for a day doesn't make one look smart. And practicing martial arts for a day doesn't make one an expert. And he tells her that she should know this best, since she's a martial artist herself. She replies, if he were to wake up earlier to practice, he would definitely be an expert at it. She thinks that it looks like it will be impossible to drag this guy into depravity with her. Furthermore, this guy is scarily determined for certain things, so it is only possible for him to drag her into improving herself. She keeps thinking that one day, she will be smarter than him, and she will probably play games in front of him, before looking down on him with disdain. It's impossible to always be studying. The most she can do is to read a novel, actually. It's more interesting to read a novel than to play a game sometimes. Zhu says that thinking about it, does she want to learn to become a blogger, to which she agrees and says how does she learn it. He shows her on the computer as she sits on her lap, and she says that she feels like he's using this as an excuse to take advantage of her. He asks her if there is a need for an excuse when she is his girlfriend. Even if he needed an excuse, he would just treat it as a collecting school fees from her, and asks her if she thought that he would just teach her stuff for free. Jiang thinks that with them hugging each other to sleep every night, it really does seem like there is no need for excuses anymore. Zhu shows her that this will be her account, she can write anything she wants on it in the future, and he'll use the same username then, seedling of Kai Yuan. He continues to tell her that discipline is key though, even if she is unable to, she'll have to force herself to write 2000 words. If she keeps up with this, she'll find herself improving leaps and bounds. Jiang asks him what she should write about. And Zhu says that about a book she's read, a song she listened to, a movie she watched, he tells her that in any case, as long as she thinks of something, she can just write it down. He tells she shouldn't worry, no one knows who she is on the internet, and won't laugh at her either. Zhu tells her that she can try writing something now, maybe choose her favorite novel or her favorite song, and write about the reasons that she likes it and how it makes her feel. He tells her to remember to make it sound logical or else people reading it will get confused and will not be able to relate. Then she will just be the only one who can understand her feelings towards it. She says that he should let her think. Jiang thinks that he likes moments like this the most. On a rainy day, the two of them silently reading their own books or maybe watching a movie or even listen to their own favorite music, enjoying their free time together. Now that he looks at it, it's really lucky for her to bump into Zhu King. Everything that he has done for her is for her to upgrade herself and learn even more things. And if it was not for Zhu King, she doubts that she would be able to integrate into modern society this quickly. She asked if she should write about Zhu King's pervy adventures, to which he asks her what kind of nonsense that is. She replies that it is not nonsense, it's non-fiction. Nervously he asks her if she's writing a book on his secrets. He says that actually, he hasn't done much, so there isn't much for her to write about. The most he has done is massaging her legs or something, to be honest. 
he'd fare better if he were to apply to be a blind masseur, to which she says he's not even blind though, and he tells her that he'll just wear a pair of glasses, that all of those masseurs are actually blind, and she asks how would she know she's never been there. She says, but how would she write it out? Zhu explains that one's writing skills are cultivated through practice. It's not enough to just memorize vocabulary. She's not a genius, so this is very normal. Maybe he's putting her in a spot by asking her to immediately write something, so she can just look at how others write first. Jiang angrily asks him why he asked her to come over then, to which he says that once they get this ball rolling, whenever she reads a piece that is written by someone else, she'll start to ponder the reasons behind how it was written and try to figure out their thinking as they were writing it. She will learn to copy how they write they write and that is an important habit to have. Sue thinks that it really feels like he's hugging Winter Melon, but one size bigger, he thinks that well, she's not as fat as Winter Melon. It's fortunate that she went to Pingping's place today, so she has all the necessary garments under her clothes. He further thinks that if she was just wearing her pajamas like usual, he might not have been able to control himself, Earning money, buying a house, marriage and getting Jiang's ID settled, there really are quite a few things to take care of. Everything is going to plan, there is not much deviation from it, apart from the surprising speed at which the warrioress is getting educated. Once they have her ID, they will be completely free, and they can do traveling and see the world. They can also set a date for the marriage plus. He gets surprised and starts sweating but keeps quiet. He asks her if Pingping bought her place on her own. To which she says she did. She worked on a ton of jobs previously like being a trainer and selling stuff. She adds that she wants to stream herself playing the Guzeng 2, which she thinks would attract a lot of viewers, and he asks her why she thinks so. She says because the outfit that she's wearing is the same as those who are performing dance. He thinks that the warrior's ability to learn is scary. She's already able to crack the code of how the streamers get popular. He says that she knows that those outfits were garner views, and she says she does, but... He goes on to confirm that if she wouldn't do it, and she says that when he had her reservations about her streaming previously, was it because of that? He says, that's just part of the reason actually, many people out there are prejudiced against those who would try to get popular that way. His parents don't think too highly of it as well, though to him, all jobs out there are equal to him, besides those that are obviously illegal. She says that it's really impressive that she can buy a place by herself, she didn't think that the houses over here would be so expensive. Zhu tells her that it will be their turn one day. To be honest, the flats around the Jian Cheng area are already considered cheap, and if they were to look at Liu Cheng, he explains that it is the area just beside them, and it's well developed. The houses over there are more expensive, and only those who go all out to earn money can afford one, and says that life is more convenient over there though, but large and small cities both have their pros and cons. Jiang wonders if she should push him over to the sofa, but some intimacy between couples is nothing much. She asks herself if she should warn him in a loud voice, but he's just caressing her legs like he has done so many times before. Zhu tells her, in a large city with higher level jobs paying, a higher salary plus a higher cost of living just means that one spends as much as they earn. The quality of life is high and is suitable for people with ambition. Giving them a place to duke it out, he adds that on the flip side, the more prosperous a place is, the more likely they are to exclude others and be unfriendly to the outsiders. He says that poor areas face the same problem too. Since there are too many resources to go around, they tend to huddle up in their small groups. A mid-sized city like Jiangcheng is probably the friendliest. They have the higher level jobs like big cities and the cheaper houses like small cities and many choose to live this way. Zhu thinks that he felt like he was about to get beaten just now, that was dangerous. Jiang asks if that is so, she goes on to ask if they also consider going to a large city to work and then return back here. To which he replies, what they do is related to the internet, so it's the same everywhere. This is the particularity of this industry. Zhu asks Jiang if she is done, and if it is fun, to which she replies that it is very fun. Jiang gets irritated by his touches, she folds her fist and counts from one to two. Zhu shuts her eyes and tells her to go ahead, he thinks that dying at the hands of the warrioress is not a loss. Jiang keeps thinking that she is not going to sit there, it's broad daylight. She remembers Pingping stretching and thinks that Zhu King definitely likes that more. She tells him that they are not married yet. He replies that he knows if they were married. Jiang thinks that she wrote a movie review today, and the video was just updated yesterday, so he suddenly has nothing to do. Zhu goes to use the computer and a notification arrives that player Dark Girl sent him an invitation to a duel and asks if he want to enter the duel arena. He wonders if he added that friend. 
He smiles as a notification says that Dark Girl is offline. She sends a message saying that she wasn't playing, she was reading, it was Zoo King. Pingping replies that she shouldn't let him sleep on the bed tonight, she should let him sleep on the sofa. Yang asks Zhu, does he think aliens exist? He says that he doesn't know, but since an ancient person like her have appeared out of nowhere, maybe aliens really do exist. She says that she thinks so too, that Chang might even be an alien too and have returned to her own planet. Hearing that, Zhu explains that there's no aliens on the moon. She can be rest assured, they've been to the moon and there's nothing on the moon except rocks that she can't even grow anything on. Jiang asks how the Osmanthus tree grew on the moon. He replies that the Osmanthus tree maybe Chang peed and changed their geological structure, providing nutrients for it. Jiang throws a book on his face and says that she's going to make dinner. He watches TV and he comes across a program that says improve your academic qualification. Undergraduate degree, reliable adult education opens the door for you. He goes to the kitchen and asks Jiang if she wants to do adult college. He tells her that it's a college that adults go to, it can make up for the regret of not going to school, and she can also get a diploma. She happily asks if she can just casually go, seeing her he thinks that she's holding a knife. Jiang supposes that it's just that the word adult, it makes her think that it's not something good. Zhu tells her that if she wants to go, they can start preparing and researching. This requires her to choose an appropriate major. He asked, if she wants to go, they need to find an area of interest. Since she doesn't have an idea, she'll just have enough time to prepare and study the basics of her major. Otherwise, she won't understand anything if she does get in. The main point of all of this is to learn a skill and ask if she understands. Zhu thinks that when it comes to studying, the important thing is to look at the person, and with how serious the warrioress is, no matter how bad the school is, she will at the very least learn something with the money spent. He further thinks that it's better than doing full-time at a regular college. Jiang asks him if it costs money, and he says that spending a little money is not important. What's important is that it can make her road wider and give her more choices. He thinks that but it will be a bit more troublesome. She processes that she can go to college and thinks that that's great. Zhu tells her, to apply she must have a middle school diploma, however, she can just buy a technical school diploma and it will only cost a little, and for that, he will call a friend and ask if he can help. He calls Li Geabo and asks him how business in Computer City is lately, and tells him that he got something to ask him. He says that it can work, but it's just that he's not too sure about the ID issue right now. Once that's settled, it won't be too late to start attending. He adds that if she wants to attend, she must study hard, and don't use excuses like him grabbing her legs in order to play games. She replies that he did that though. She says that she's been working very hard. Zhu asks her what she's smiling for, and she says that nothing, to which he replies that she won't be able to use that excuse next time. He wonders if it could be that she's happy that she can go to college, but no matter how one looks at it, the warrioress doesn't like studying. He thinks that he got a chance to hold her chest today and it was fun, he needs to sneak attack when she's sleeping, otherwise she'll beat him up. While reading, Jiang thinks that to be a stupid woman who only knows how to wash, cook and raise children, no, Zhu King wants her to be a truly modern and highly educated person. To enjoy this era, she has to stand taller to see more and further. He really considers things from her perspective and put a lot of thought into it. She looks at him and says, this man still thinks of her as the ancient person when they first met. She continues to think that she's not the same person she was last year, sometimes this guy is quite cute. He always trying to safely touch. But that's normal in those days and age, however, they are a couple that's separated by 1,200 years apart. If that wasn't the case, Zhu King wouldn't have to think so much about her future. He's someone one can trust completely, always has been, but he's just a little perverted. She closes her book and says that she's taking a shower. And on the TV, it says that the next news is. He thinks that this is her clothes with her smell. But something doesn't seem right, there is a conspiracy. He asks her if these clothes need to be washed and she agrees. He thinks that everything is here except her underpants, and wonders why he didn't she just throw it in the washing machine. He tells her that then he'll throw it into the washing machine for her. He takes off his clothes to throw them in the machine too, and he looks back at the door. He thinks that it's an entrapment and says, it is no way, he have to tread with caution. He thinks that this ancient person who likes to watch films may come up with some weird ideas, he has to tread with caution. Jiang walks out of the shower drying her hair with a towel. She looks at Zhu and asks him why he doesn't have his shirt on. 
He asks her if it isn't normal to go shirtless in the summer. Besides, don't the guys in her village expose their chests when drinking in groups? She says that he made it sound disgusting. She continues that they're in a modern, civilized world now. They are not living in such an outdated era. And adds that he doesn't have hair on his chest either. And he says that he doesn't want that anyway. Also, he's being topless at home. And he feels much more free and prompts her to try it. She slaps his face with it a towel and replies that she doesn't want to. Zhu tells her that it's actually normal to be topless. When he was a kid, he stayed at his grandma's village for a period of time. Every summer, there were many people who would sit under the shade of the tree to feel cooler. Quite a few of the guys would be topless with a towel around their neck and they would be chatting away. He further says that it was like that too in their neighborhood before. She questions why it isn't like that way now. He says that now that the standard of living has risen, every house has an air conditioner installed. So it's a rare now. He thinks that he would have been topless at home just like every other summer if the warrioress didn't come out of nowhere. He tells the warrioress to look. He flexes his muscles and tells her to look at them, and asks if she doesn't think that they are taking shape now, and she keeps quiet. She thinks that it does look like it. She asks him if he should have her hair cut again, and she feels like it's more convenient to have it a little bit shorter. He says that he thinks it's fine, she can make her own decisions on stuff like that. Personally, he thinks it's good if it's somewhere in the middle, but a super short haircut is out of the question. She thinks that she does want to try one of those neat and short hairstyles though. It would make washing hair easier at least. She asks if perming her hair would make it go all curly. He agrees and says she can try having golden wavy hair that will make her look like one of those modern and fashionable girls, to which she disagrees and says she prefers to be black. He agrees and says there is more. He has seen on TV the kind of hairstyle where the martial artist would braid their hair and tie the end with a kunai. He tells her that she can use it to attack others while they're in a fight. He goes on to say that since she's good at knife throwing, perhaps you can do that too. She looks at him with consideration and he says that she really can't. She asks how if that could be possible. The training to throw one's hair around would take eons to complete. Also to control it effectively, she'd have to be bold all around. They may be ancient people, but they're not dumb. He tells Zhang that he thinks that she's pretty dumb, to which she angrily replies that he's the dumb one. She thinks that she suddenly has the edge to kiss him. He tells her that it is actually fine if she wants to go to a salon by herself. She just shouldn't get foolishly talked into applying for a card. Those are meant to scam people out of their money. He tells her that she can try styling her hair too. She can perm it or dye it if she doesn't like that look of it. She can just turn it back its original state. He says that he thinks she'll look great in any hairstyle though, and she says that she got it. He thinks, why does it suddenly feel like he's some high-end hairstylist? He tells her that her hair is dry. She asks him why he's back on the couch. Isn't he going to bed? It's almost 10, to which he replies that he just wants to tidy up some loose ends. He thinks that actually it's because he's afraid that he'll fall asleep too early before he has the chance to touch. She asks him, what? And he says that it's about the key developments in the future from agriculture to semiconductors, stuff like that. She looks at him questionably and he says that to put it simply, he's just collecting all of the information he has and using that to predict the main areas of development in the future, she still doesn't understand, and he says that it's okay. He thinks that the assets he has are meant for the house next year and is too early to pull his investment out of the market. But the investments seem to be plateauing though, it will be better to invest it in something else that is still growing. Otherwise, he will have no chance but to just hold and wait. He will just try reinvesting 10,000 over the next year first. Otherwise those who keep thinking about it while holding on to it, the chances of losing it all are small that way. And if he does lose the 10,000 who just write it off. Jiang tries to touch him, and he tells her that they're still not married. Jiang shouts that did he really think that she likes touching him. Men and women aren't supposed to touch each other to begin with. She tells him that she's going to sleep, while he looks at her laughing. She also says that their conscience is pure. While she's in bed, she asks him if he's done already. She thinks that normally, this guy would only be willing to sleep after sniffing her neck and stuff. He's being a little weird today. He replies that he is tired. Seeing him like that, she thinks he's lying down like a dead body. She switches off her side lamp and thinks that she's gonna sleep too, and she'll have to come up with a study plan tomorrow. If he's trying to help her improve, she shouldn't let him down. She further thinks that she really can't be the dumb woman who is only able to wash clothes, cook the dishes, play games and take care of kids. She is going to be someone knowledgeable in the future. If this guy were to try and trick her, she will be able to rebuke him successfully with her own words.
Zhu turns over to touch her on her abdomen. He asks her if she's sleeping, and he imagined that there is something, as he touches her, under her pajama shirt. He keeps putting his hand on her abdominal and reach to the top. He thinks that they're a couple and that has been living together and sharing the same bed. Not being able to get intimate with her is practically a joke. It is shameful. He keeps sweating as he reaches out his hand even more. He keeps thinking that this feeling is as natural as a ship entering a harbor or going back to its hometown. It's like embracing the warm ocean after spending time out in the cold. He gently laughs, not noticing Zhang staring at him. Zhang thinks that no wonder he didn't do anything perverted to his clothes that she left in the living room. He was waiting for this moment all along. Whatever, she will just spare him for now. She gets irritated and attempts to hit him, and tells him that if he get any more touching from him, and she is kicking him off the bed. Beginning of autumn August, Zhu bids Uncle Zhao a good morning. Uncle Zhao thinks that as the saying goes, people feel refreshed when happy events occur. He wonders if something happy happened to Zhu King. Pingping asks Zhang if she just saw Zhu heading out and asked if they went together, to which Zhang replies that he has his own things going on. Uncle Zhao asks the girls if they are going out, and Zhang agrees that they are and says that she is heading out with her friend. Pingping asks Zhang if they are familiar with each other, to which she replies that she can say that Zhu King is very familiar with him. He even plays with Uncle Zhao's grandson sometimes. She thinks that being more familiar with this area than Gong Ping. She doubt that anyone will be able to guess that she's only been in this world for a year. She emphasis, yeah, a whole year, and in the eyes of many, she has been living here for a long time. King says that if she had known, she would have brought her hoverboard out, her legs are killing her, to which Jiang asks her who asked her to wear high heels. She thinks that Zhu King bought a pair for her as well, but she never worn them. If she didn't see others wearing them out on the street, she would have thought that it was for something perverted. She adds that Zhu King likes her to try on different kinds of shoes. Pingping says that she can just buy it and let it collect dust, and ask her if she's right. She tells her to look at how beautiful she is. She says she's as conservative as a housewife from the 90s. Zhang asks her if the 90s were considered conservative, to which she says that the people during that time dancing in discos and partying together like packed sardines. They pass a couple together and Zhang thinks that the couple seems so peaceful. She thinks that if it was just her, she would have just gone to a small saloon, but with Pingping with her, it wouldn't be nice to bring her to a saloon like that. At the saloon, a young man with blue hair welcomes them. Pingping asks Zhang if she wants to dye their hair together, to which Zhang questions the dyeing part. The man tells them that they can consider dyeing her hair in this color as it's the popular choice this year. Zhang tells him that she is fine and thanks him. He asks, what about this beautiful lady referring to Pingping? and adds that perhaps this caramel color, it exudes confidence yet remains mellow. It makes her skin look whiter too. Jiang thinks that her hair belongs to her, and she doesn't want to take advice from anyone except Zhu King. Maybe except Pingping since she's a friend but for anyone else they must forget it. Pingping agrees and says that they must go with this. Jiang asks her if she's not gonna give it more thought. And she says no, it looks pretty nice, and the man with the blue hair says that the beautiful lady has good taste indeed. Pingping asks if they shall do it together or maybe she can get her hair done first and she can decide after seeing how she looks, to which Jiang says that she thinks black is better for her. Jiang's father at the library puts down a book and says there's no information at all. He asks if there is not even an ounce of memory left, not even her hometown. Zhu says that from the earliest reaches of her memory she has been following a scavenger old woman, and the two of them roamed around and slept under bridges and roadsides, they were even chased away sometimes since it makes the city look bad. His father says that it's hard when she doesn't remember a thing, without a lick of info. Even the census department can't do a thing. To which Zhu says that he has already thought of all sorts of normal ways to deal with this. The reason that he's looking for him is because. His father asks him, because of what? And asks if he wants him to commit a crime. He tells Zhu that he must think carefully. There might be something that he missed. He tells Zhu to forget it. He should just ask Jiang himself. Zhu holds his phone and then says that he really didn't miss out anything. He has already told him everything. He starts asking him, if does that mean that there is some stuff that he can't tell him about? He thinks that of course he won't say a thing if he has something to hide, if he just answers after him asking. He wonders which of them will be the stupid one in that case, regardless of whether they is or isn't. That question was a dumb one. Suddenly, a knock comes on the door, the person asks what national affairs they are discussing inside. Zhu replies that they're discussing when he and Zhang are getting married. 
His mother walks in holding a tray with two glasses of water and asks why are they hiding in there to talk about that. He thanks her and asks her if they don't need a house when they get married and adds that getting a house means. She says that she doesn't have money and tells him to discuss it with his father. She asks if Jong is at home and asks how about he stays and calls her over for dinner, to which he agrees and says he'll ask her. It's been a while since they've eaten here. His father thinks that this kid is doing it on purpose, he's not short of money and is always idle, but he said that in front of his mom so that she'll give him an earful about the house later. Whatever, if that was really the case, it's just a matter of refusing or agreeing, but it's not that, now he has another thing to deal with. He grabs Zhu by the hair, as Zhu thinks that he really fucking has nothing else to do. Zhu calls out to his dad and says, those students of his surely there's one that, he knows. He asks him to give them a call and he'll buy a gift and give them a visit. His father asks him if he wouldn't still be involved. He thinks that it doesn't matter how one comes out of the womb, what they becomes after is all up to fate. Even though he and King Hao grew up together, King Hao is honest and quiet while this guy. Zhu sends a text to Zhang telling her to come over to dinner, and she agrees and sends a picture of her hair. He asks her if she dyed her hair, and she asks if it looks good, he says, it suits her, brown hair makes her look whiter. She asks him why he talks like a hairstylist and asks him if he says she looks tan. He tells her that she's become even whiter. He thinks that he didn't even expect that the warrioress would dye her hair, and it doesn't matter if she looks good or not. The fact that she's willing to change up her hairstyle and hair color is something to be happy about. Jiang arrives at Zhu's parents' house and his mother asks that she came. She greets Zhu's mother and calls her auntie. His mother thinks that last year, she felt that Jiang was pretty and comfortable to look at. Now one year later it seems that she's even prettier than before. She has changed for the better, before, she felt a little dull and unnatural, but now she doesn't feel any of that sort. His mother tells Jiang to take a seat, she's going to buy groceries, to which Jiang agrees. She asked him if he thought she dyed her hair, to which he replies that the picture she sent was the back of the head, so of course he thought it was her, and asks why didn't she dye it. She says that there wasn't a color she wanted, and she thinks that the current color is the best. She says that was Pingping Ping in the picture, and asks if she looks good. He remembers his message saying it does and it suits her, and brown makes her look whiter. He says no, he also thinks black is the best and suits her very well, to which she replies that he also says that color looked good and suited her. He replies that how could he have known that it was it was old woe. Ping Ping, she didn't say they went together, she answers that she wanted her to dye the same hair color, but she refused. She tells him that they should buy a pair of scissors and he can cut her hair in the future. She thinks that she only got her hair cut a little shorter and thinned but it costed more than 80 yuan, which she felt wasn't worth it. Zhu tells her to not be ridiculous, and asks her how could he know how to do that. She tells him that she thought he knew everything. Zhu's father walks into the sitting room as the couple sit together cuddling on the couch. They break the bond and Zhang greets Zhu's father. Zhu tells him that he'll buy him some Malva nuts next time. It's good for his throat. His father replies that he should make sure to buy extra. After that, they all watch TV together as Jiang feels uncomfortable, so Zhu holds her hand and tells her to relax and ask her if she didn't want to buy scissors for her hair. As he was thinking they could buy a hair clipper, that way she can style her hair, it will go easy as she push and her hair will fall, to which Jiang replies that it's a good idea. She wonders why Zhu King is always smiling and playful, while his dad is so serious and has a completely different temperament. Jiang says that Ping Ping originally wanted to go to the movies with her with her discounted tickets that she gets with her membership that is about to expire, but she pushed it to tomorrow, to which Zhu replies, it is nice. His father looks at them annoyingly, he signals Zhu that he wants to talk to Jiang alone. He thinks that the signal is, and his father gave him the signal again, but Zhu ignores him. His father asks him if he didn't say that he wanted to see what his mother bought. Jiang thinks that Auntie said she was going to buy groceries, she should have gone with her. Zhu nervously says that his mom likes to buy a lot of vegetables, but she can't hold it all, so they should go take a look. His father shouts that they should sit down, they both keep quiet questioningly. Zhu thinks that the old man still doesn't believe him and wants to personally ask Jiang. He doesn't him to interrupt them. Zhu hands Jiang an apple and asks if she wants one, and she replies that she doesn't. He thinks that we should not talk about it if the warrioress will misspeak or not. Just looking at the old man's face, he thinks that he should forget it, although he's a little worried that if he doesn't let him ask he probably won't give it up. He tells them that he's going to the balcony to have a look. Jiang mutters the name, uncle, and he tells her to not be nervous. 
Zhu thinks that by just being able to communicate face to face with a Tang Dynasty person, the old man has surpassed everyone in his unit, which is enough to brag for a lifetime. And that's only if he knew the truth. He shouts for Heiazi, who looks around and sees no one. He shouts that he should up here. He calls out to Heiazi again and hands him a bitten apple and tells him to have an apple. Heiazi looks up and tells him to fuck off. He's mentally ill. He tells him that he wouldn't get it. It is Steve Jobs' apple, to which Heiazi asks him if he has nothing better to do. He tells him that he's pretty idle. And Heiazi tells him that he should then wait a moment. Heiazi goes to his side of the balcony and tells him to come and tells him that they should fight to death. Zhu tells him that he's the mentally ill one, to which Heiazi tells him that enough nonsense, where's his, and Zhu replies that he's not dressing up and playing around with him, and Heiazi tells him that he should help him take a picture. Zhu thinks that Heiazi is really acting like an idiot. Heiazi complains when Zhu tries to take his picture and says shit, not right now, and tells that he's not dressed right. Zhu agrees and says he'll take it again and asks what uncle holding in his hands. Heiazi replies that it is a belt. He says that his dad says that if he ties something there, it won't put all the pressure on the shoulders and it'll look better too. Heiazi's father thinks that King's piece is too small. His is what real men wear. Both the material and size are one level higher than Zhu King's piece. He tells Heiazi that he should girdle his waist so that he can bear the weight. Otherwise it will become loose and his shoulders will tire out. Zhu says that exactly as expected of him, there is actually such a thing. Jiang asks him what they are doing. He tells him that Heiazi wanted him to take a full body picture of him. His father comes along and he looks at him questionably. He asks if they finish talking, to which Jiang hands him an apple and asks if he wants one. And yes, they are done. On the other side, Heiazi shows that his outfit is awesome. His father punches him and says his ass. He tells him that he only knows how to play every day and hits him. Zhu takes a picture and says that it looks like Heiazi is feeling it. Uncle Kin must be using a lot of force, to which Jiang asks if Uncle Kin's hand does not hurt doing that. His father is looking at his phone, so he whispers to Jiang, asking her what he said. She tells him that he asked her if she remembers which part of Xingcheng she was from, and where her home was, she asks him if uncle is trying to. He tells her, that's right, he's going to help them. He further says that he shouldn't keep on calling him uncle. He tells her that next time, she should call him dad. Jiang tells him that he's teasing her again. She thinks that auntie should be back after shopping for groceries in a bit. If there's a lot to carry, she'll go downstairs to help pick them up. Heiazi's father plays with the dog and says that he should look at Zhu and then look at himself. Heiazi announces to his dad that he is right there and he asks him if he was talking to him. Heiazi looks at his picture on the phone and sends them. He thinks, how vulgar is it that he looks very handsome in chainmail. After that, Heiazi walks into the room and asks his dad if they should tidy up the rooms and make it more neat and prettier. He tells him that he also want to change the kennel, he bought a nice one on Taobao, and asks his father where did he even find this iron cage. His father replies that what's the point of making it look so good? He thinks it's better if he finds him a blind date. Who knows if he'll get stabbed again, and he'll have to. Heiazi shouts that they should talk about the dog cage, but his dad shouts back that he's talking to him about the blind date. He replies that in the city, people get married late, it's a national condition. He tells him to not listen to his second uncle and his friends, and asks how can his cousin's village environment be compared to theirs. He tells him to look at Little Kings and to look at that Wangzi. He asks if the invitation is still in his drawer. Heiazi thinks, not comparable, not comparable, he's a dignified policeman of the people, dedicated himself to the cause, love is trivial in comparison, but he won't dare say that to the old man. His phone dings and he opens his messages, he thinks that if possible, love will still be pretty nice. Jiang tells Zhu's mother that she should let her carry that. She thinks that Jiang is the best, although she doesn't wear makeup, she makes her feel comfortable at first glance, she's also diligent and ran over to help her as soon as she walked in. His father asks Zhu if they are short on money to buy a house, to which Zhu replies that he doesn't know yet, it is too early for that. His father thinks that when it comes to buying a house, Jiang he has no identity, so the house will only be under his kid's name. There is no chance of being deceived by someone without any identity. He further thinks that this kid is pretty smart, only a ghost can deceive him. All the worries he had before were in vain. If Jiang wanted to deceive Zhu King, she would have to return empty-handed. If this kid wants to deceive Jiang he, then there is no need to come to him for help. The logic is now straightened out. He keeps thinking that he should have figured out what he was thinking during the last conversation. 
but he didn't and was even despised by him. Su asks his dad why he's looking at him like that, if he is tired. He says how could he be tired, he really knows how to joke. Zhu wonders what else you can do after the encounter. His father tells him that he talked about the generation gap with his colleague Old Lai before. He says that he also told his daughter about how sitting in an office typing on a computer with the air conditioner blowing cold air, while earning money is not tiring at all. Zhu asks him what his daughter does, he replies that what she does, he doesn't understand it either. It's what daily young people like to do, to tinker with, old Lai can't figure it out, he tells Zhu to tell him, that in the past, they had to get up early and work hard all day long and still had to mow grass to feed the pigs, and asks why is it so difficult for young people to satisfy their generation now. Zhu tells him that as he has said before, times have changed, sitting in a cubicle and typing on the computer to communicate with stupid customers is not really as easy as feeding pigs, they should leave that poor girl alone. He adds that it is hard to satisfy them all they've all gotten gone through hardships and always think things are easy now, they should think about it from another perspective. When has making money ever been easy? Sue's father says they look pretty easy for him, to which he tells him, that's because he hasn't seen him pulling his hair out. Sue's father thinks that's true, if making money is that easy, either that person is a genius or that person has connections in their family. Those are the two most likely possibilities, this kid can't be called a genius. So the reason he thinks it's easy is because he doesn't understand. He says that anyway he can't understand it. As for Jiang's thing, he'll help him by asking around. Zhu asks him if he hasn't asked. Zhu's mother asks what are they doing, just sit in there. She tells them that it's time to eat, and Jiang comes out of the kitchen with food. Zhu tells his dad that Jiang he will definitely be not be as fierce as his mom in the future, to which the dad says that how about he tries and let his mom hear that. Jiang and Su are walking back home as Jiang is holding on to Zhu. Heiazi walks down from his house and Zhu asks him if he's garnishing his teeth and burning with jealousy, and can't stand it anymore, so he came to arrest them. He was in a hurry so he tells them that he will arrest them another day. Zhu thinks that it is strange, looking at this guy's excitement. He must have gotten a big case, but he doesn't have any electric scooter to drive. Jiang says that she already thought he was going to arrest him. He tells her that even if he arrests him, they have to release him because he hasn't broken any laws. He asks her if she's full, and he tells her to let him see how full she is. She shouts that she's 90% full and pushes his hand away. Hayazi looks at them and wonders what is wrong with those two. Zhu thinks that his skills are lacking. He failed to do a sneaky attack on her stomach, damn it. He asks if, does the saying rowing a boat upstream, if you stop moving forward, she falls back, apply to martial arts, she tells him, it does. She asks him why, and if he wants her martial arts to regress. He says no, he's just asking how long it will take. They hold hands as they cross the road. Jiang says that for her to regress to her level, it'll probably take a few decades. Zhu shockingly asks if she won't be an old lady by then. To which Jiang replies, that's only if she doesn't practice martial arts at all. She tells him that he shouldn't forget that he still practices with her sword every day. He thinks that he has to work hard, he needs to push down the warrioress as soon as possible. Zhu wonders what the warrioress is looking at. He thinks that it's the ring toss game, and she probably feels like she'll be bullying them if she plays, just like what happened in the amusement park last time. Zhu asks her if she wants to play. He tells her to look at the vase, it is quite nice, and they can bring it back for the ginger plant or put it in some flowers. Jiang replies that it's only 8 yuan if he buys it. He tells her that if she scores all 10 rings, she will earn a profit of 60 yuan. She asks him if he's going to go carry all 10 vases, and he tells her that he can't do that. Jiang tells him that it'll be hard for her to carry that many too, and asks him why he want to bring so many back to which he tells her that they'll use them somewhere. Seeing them like that, the owner thinks that he's heard many discussions about which one they want, but he's never heard of this kind of discussion before. He thinks that no matter what, he can't let this business opportunity escape. He asks them, how about he gifts her a ring to play with? Zhu tells them that wouldn't be good, as the other customers all paid and the owner says it's okay. The owner thinks that he doesn't believe someone won't play again after missing the first one. Zhu asks him, how about this, they'll buy a ring for two yuan, and asks how about that. The man thinks that after saying all of that, it turns out he was reluctant to spend money. And this young man looks like a pretty normal guy, hanging out with his girlfriend. But he turns out to be stingy and just wants to spend two yuan to have a good time. No wonder they are empty-handed. The man says that's also fine and hands them a code, so they can scan for the payment, and Jiang gets the ring. He thinks that it is not a loss for him anyway. After that, a notification arrives on WeChat that he receives two yuans. 
He thinks that it doesn't matter even if they don't continue to keep playing after missing and leave. He will still be able to make two yuans. Young scores and the man is surprised. They thank him, calling him uncle and they walk away. The man is left in shock as the couple happily walks away. Zhu thinks that using her skills of slaying dragons to catch loaches is pretty good too. But, why are there so many flowers? He says that no wonder, today is Kixie, and adds, that today is Valentine's Day. He was wondering why the night market is so busy today. Jiang asks him if it is a holiday, and asks him if they're eating dumplings. He says, it's a day for lovers, and he's not eating dumplings, but he can eat feet. She asks him if he wants to eat her fist, to which he tells her that he's not hungry yet, and laughs. He asks her if she didn't says that Pingping wanted to take her to see a movie today, if she's trying to sow discord between them, asking her not to accompany her on the Kixie and accompany her instead. She tells him that it's not like he was going to take her, and thinks that it's really different from usual. There are many couples holding flowers in their hands. Su says then they'll go see a movie now, to which Jiang says that it will be very late when they are done. They hold hands and he says that then he'll buy her a gift. He holds her hand and guides her through the mall as she follows. She processes his words and says a gift. She wonders why they went to such a bright and shiny shop. He puts a scarf around her and thinks that fortunately they went for a walk after dinner. And the shops aren't closed yet. They are just in time to pick out a Kixie gift for Warriress as it'll be meaningless once Kixie is over. Jiang wonders about the color, red. She asks him if red is good. He says that she likes red, so they will buy that one. He asks how much it is. Jiang looks at it happily and thinks that it's so pretty. The seller says that this Suju embroidery silk scarf costs 488 yuan. Zhu thinks that getting the shawl or the scarf would be good if the sun is strong when fishing. Wearing a hat and this shawl can provide complete protection. He asks the seller if he can take 500 and he says that he can. He thinks, shit, he was careless. He comments that he meant 500 for two. With the sky blue one, listening to him, the seller calls him young man and tells him that he shouldn't be so stingy when he's out with his girlfriend. He tells him that this is his wife. After knowing that, the seller tells him that two for six hundred and he can't go any lower, to which Zhu shouts, it's a deal. They happily hold hands and head back home. Jiang tells him that he knows how to haggle. He says, just the basics, if it were Auntie Cheng, she would probably be able to buy two for thirty yuan. Jiang says that then they've suffered a big loss, to which he replies that buying a wife for 570 is not a loss. She thinks that she'll let him take advantage of him with his words, but she won't let him do anything in bed. As they are working, they see a group of people in front. Zhu tells her that they should go see what's happening and pulls her. A spectator asks why they started fighting. Another person says a young couple was out shopping together and having fun but ended up bumping into a lover. Zhu thinks that Hayazi must have ran out excitedly to work overtime to deal with stuff like this. The officer looks back and sees Zhu. He greets him, calling him Officer Gu. The officer asks him if he's taking out his little sister to have fun. Zhu laughs and says it's girlfriend. Little sister has become girlfriend. Officer Gu wonders, what little sister and girlfriend, young people this day sure know how to play. He tells him to please pay attention to his safety and not cause trouble. He'll be taking these people back to the station first. Zhu thanks him for his hard work. Jiang asks Zhu, why does it feel like he's very familiar with him? And he replies, he's not that familiar with him. Zhu asks, why she's still a little nervous when she sees the police. She's like a mouse seeing a cat. If he was to become one, would that? She replies, she probably won't be nervous anymore. Jiang says, that woman just now had two boyfriends, to which Zhu replies that it's probably not just two. She says, then her legs would be touched every day. She says that she is joking and tells him that he should walk slower. Someone seems to be coming towards them. Zhu thinks that the warrioress is really good at cracking jokes now. A young lady appears before them holding flowers and seeing her, Zhu says that she probably thinks that they will buy flowers. The young lady calls him big brother and says how about he buys a bouquet of flowers for big sister. Zhu asks, who is she calling big sister? To which she says for sister-in-law, it is 28 for one flower and 88 for nine. Zhu smiles and says for more than five yuans, she'll have to ask her. He thinks that if it were the original warrioress, she would have refused with a pained look on her face for these flowers with no roots and can't be planted. They'll wither in a few days after purchase. For 28 yuan it is better to buy some pork. The young lady faces Jiang and calls her big sister and asks her to buy a bouquet of flowers for brother-in-law and Zhu keeps quiet. Jiang says that she'll pay 20 yuan for two. 
A song plays as they put the flowers in their vase. Jiang smells her red scarf and thinks that today she got two silk scarves, two flowers and a ceramic vase. She is so happy. She asks Zhu why Kixi is celebrated by couples, and he explains that meanings are given by people. Couples use this day to strengthen their relationship, and businesses use this day to make money, while men use this day to express their love. Jiang says that everyone gains something, and asks if does anyone suffer a loss. Zhu replies that everyone gets what they need, just like bartering. There's no such thing as suffering a loss, he adds. If they really want to talk about it, there's that person who ran into a lover bootlicker and jealous single people like Hayazi. She tells him that he said he wanted to lick her before, to which he excitedly says that he can do it now. She tells him that he wishes and thinks that there was Kixi that time as well, but it is different now. Zhu asks her what she's thinking about. She says that people's time is limited. The more things she likes to do, the less time she can allocate to each of things and thinks that she has to do so many things every day, she really doesn't have enough time. He asks her that she doesn't think it's a waste of time for them to go walking around, and wonders that he doesn't want the warriors to feel that walking around is a waste of time because she's not live streaming. She says, of course not, she just feels that their live streaming takes up the time and they can spend together outside. She kisses him on the cheek and thinks that maybe it's because she had too much time to do nothing in the past. As her life becomes more fulfilling, she naturally feels like she doesn't have enough time. If she guarantees the time spent with Zhu King, then time spent on things like reading, practicing martial arts, playing games, fishing and going out with friends will all have to be shortened. He tells her that they are going out again tomorrow. She asks where, to which he tells her that he's kidding. She should go shower, she looks at him, and walks away angrily. Zhu continues to use his laptop. He thinks that the recording of each live stream is posted which is also part of the income. In the future, every time someone watches it, income will be generated. As time goes on, and the popularity increases, the sum of the mosquito meat cannot be underestimated. His jaw drops as he wonders if the warrioress income will one day exceed his. He can't be here in a fight and now he's going to lose in terms of income. It seems to be came over, and he's going to become a house husband. But, a modern woman with both literary and martial arts skills, he has helped her become that. Jiang announces that she is done showering. She says that when she was showering, she thought about it, and she is now somewhat famous in this game. She adds that Pingping told her that this platform is small and the section isn't very popular. She asked her if she wanted to change platforms. Zhu asks her if she plans to keep on playing. She replies that she doesn't. The skill ceiling of this game is only so high, no matter how she plays, she'll almost on the same level as the others who has spent a lot of effort in making equipment and have good skills. And as for creating her own account, she doesn't want to just play this game from now on. She thinks that she's been here for a year and this is her first year job, whether it's grinding or the duel arena. There's this special attachment to them. Just like Zhu King said, life is countless paths. This is just one of them, and her life has just begun. Zhu tells her that if she changes the platform, other platforms will definitely want to sign a contract with her. The contract can only be signed by him and there will be many restrictions. Not signing the contract may be worse than staying at the current one and starting over, to which she replies that before she gets her ID, she just needs some income so there's no rush. She tells her that it's great that she can make up her own mind now, his daughter. Jiang has grown up and she replies that believe it or not, she will bite him. She thinks that it's been a long time since Zhu King held her legs. She further thinks that Google said that men are all like that. But Zhu King is not quite right. It was only those two times. And if that kind of thing also vary from person to person, or is this guy hiding some conspiracy? Although Zhu King sometimes acts very perverted, He's not as perverted as the people in the short films and some things are still acceptable. He says that her plan to sell pickled vegetables has been on hold, and asks, is she still planning to do it? She replies, that was when she had no income source, and now it's not cost-effective to spend her time making pickled vegetables. He replies that he's Dao, and she angrily stares at time while folding her fist, he slightly laughs and says he won't tease her anymore. Jiang plays around with her legs and puts them on Zhu's lap, who takes them. He thinks that she's dressed plainly all day long, doesn't put on makeup, is chill when she's not aggressive, and is very nice to get along with. This kind of girl can easily arouse impulses, especially since she's from ancient times. He thinks that he can't kiss her feet. If he continues to be like this, he will become a henpecked husband, and a henpecked or maybe even a father. He doesn't know if the warrioress will kick him with her feet if he says that. She asks him if he's not going to shower, and he says that he's going now. 
Zhu says that today is to Kixi, other couples will do some happy things, and what about them? Hearing that, she looks at him innocently. Jiang asks him what happy things, they are not legally married yet. He tells her that she can do those things without being married. As a modern person, she can no longer consider herself a girl from the Kai Yuan era. Otherwise, she would just be an old fossil. Jiang gets upset and says, whatever, he said she is over a thousand years old anyway, to which he lightly laughs and says she is not truly happy. She tells him that she is very happy with things now. Zhu shouts to her and asks her what's up. She replies that actually he can use her legs to do that, and if he doesn't need to secretly do it in the bathroom by himself. He shouts that he is not doing that. He comes out of the bathroom, wiping his head and says, actually he should have taken her to a hotel tonight with some soundproof. That way he can broaden her horizons and let her experience modern enthusiasm and under unrestrainedness, to which she replies that his hobby is very perverted. He tells her that it's not a hobby. He shoulders the important responsibility of helping friends from the Tang Dynasty to appreciate the world's scenery. This is popular science. And without experience, she will inevitably make mistakes. Going from having no experience to having experience is a process. Jiang says that regarding the time issue, isn't it better to prepare for a longer time than to prepare for a shorter time? Won't it be more beneficial and less harmful thinking this way? Su keeps quiet and says, tells her that if she goes back to the Kaiyuan era, now it will definitely be a big disaster. He thinks that if he ever met a comic artist one day, he will definitely ask him to draw a story based on Jiang He. The name will be my wife came from a thousand years ago to learn modern thinking from me, and then traveled back in the time to create a Lilong Jai's opponent that becomes the emperor that will step on Gao Lish's feet, punch Yang Yuhuan, eat all of the lychees, build socialism with the characteristics of the Tang Dynasty, make it bigger and stronger and then invade the unified territory of Gaguriel. He tells her that he, the emperor wants to rest, she asks him, rest, and says he should say pass away. He asks her if he wants to inherit her throne, and she says no way, he shouldn't even think about taking advantage of her. At night, he comes to Jiang to cuddle, she tells him that she advises him to stay still. He tells her that today is Kixi and asks if she wants to do something. He tells her that it won't hurt her health. She tells him to go to sleep. She thinks that she is not going to agree. When the time comes, the most he will do is hug her and secretly squeeze her. He tells her that she should help him get his phone, and she asks what for. He tells her that he will look and see if there is anyone selling Guangong statues, so he can buy one and put it in there. He tells her that he will then buy a big incense so that they can become sworn siblings, and he will offer incense to him every day, and they can have a clear conscience. They don't hope to be born in the same year, the same month and the same day but hope to die in the same year, same month and the same day, the yellow sky above and the thick soil below. She covers his mouth and tells him to sleep. He asks her why he should go to sleep so early and asks what exactly does he want to do. He tells Jiang that he likes her. She says that she also likes him. He tells her to hold him tight and kisses her lips and neck. She tells him that they still have a clear conscience. Zhu wakes up and covers Jiang with a blanket. He stares at her and thinks that he has never seen her sleeping position when she first arrived. He wonders if it was like this, or was she always in an alerted state where she would wake up with the slightest noise. He says love is never so simple and direct. When the feelings become strong to a certain extent, people will naturally become more intimate. The love at the moment could only be released through the most intimate contact. No matter what, the past is all in the past. He says that Zhu King believes that Jiang He will only get better day by day until she fully adapts to the world. A thousand years into the future, that good and bad, the happy and troubling times will all be experienced slowly. He says good night, little he. Zhu wakes up, startled and wonders, warrioress, as Jiang leaves the bed. He thinks that she is straightening out her clothes. She turns back to look at him and he pretends to be asleep. She wonders why it feels like someone was looking at her, it must have been her imagination. And he thinks that it is not really. She gets out of bed and looks at her underwear on the floor. She remembers last night's intimate moments with Zhu and wonders what did she do last night. Fortunately, Zhu hasn't woken up yet, she's got to hurry up and washed it. He tells her to just leave it there, he'll help her wash it later. He tells her that this is normal, it's okay. He also dreamed about certain things before. He explains that he then secretly got up to her and said that she was washing his socks. He asks if that isn't funny, who would wash socks early in the morning, and bursts into laughter, and tells her to just leave it there. She angrily attacks him and tells him that she will beat him to death. He tells her that she shouldn't. She will become a widow if she beats him to death. She then punches him in the head. He tells her that she asks him every day if he wants to grab his legs, and now it's her turn. 
she says that she already told him there's no need. She thinks that this guy is so lustful, any offer to help from him, it's just an excuse, and wonders how she could possibly like that stuff, it's shameless obscene. She walks away from the bedroom and Zoo asks her why she's still holding it. He already told her that he'll wash it for her, but she keeps quiet. He tells her that they are a couple of there is no need to act like strangers, and she says here, and throws the underwear to him, as it lands on his head. He says no, her, him. He thinks that is it a good sign or a bad sign that this thing fell on his head. While eating, Jiang thinks that it is a little hard to swallow and wonders if she should buy a soy milk machine. She thinks that she'll ask him, she suddenly doesn't feel like asking anymore, it's not like she can't find one by herself. As a modern person, buying a soy milk machine is something she can do by herself. As Zhu is training, she tells him that she is heading out, and he agrees. He thinks that little he didn't practice sword play today but he is practicing his martial arts. As this continues, the gap between them will increase, little by little, although it is only a little bit. Victory lies in perseverance. He further thinks that one can't become a master after practicing martial arts for a day, nor can one become smart after studying for a day. Perseverance is key. Jiang is like a max level boss while he is just a noob with a wooden sword coming out of the beginner village. But as long as there is enough time and his skills proficiency slowly increases, sooner or later, he will defeat her and carry her to bed. Jiang sneezes, she watches Pingping with two delivery men, she calls out to Pingping. Pingping calls back to Jiang and tells her to come over. She tells her to look, that it is the Guzang she bought. Jiang marvels at it and says, this Guzang is not small at all. She thinks that it's as big as the big sword. She tells the delivery men to help her move it upstairs. She assembles it. As Jiang watches and asks if she wants to learn, Jiang says that she won't be able to learn it, but Zhu King should be able to. He sings very well. Pingping asks her what's the point of him learning it. She thinks she will be able to learn a bit. Pingping asks her. If Zhu King doesn't know martial arts, she plays the Guzang while he displays his moves. It would be even better if he knew the sword. Jiang wonders, if she wants him to dance with the sword, she explains that he has no strength at all, and his hands start to swell not long after practicing. She says that she really doesn't have time to learn, but she looks at Pingping admiringly as she does, and Pingping tells her that then she should let her perform a song for her. She prepares to play for her and starts playing as Jiang marvels. She asks her if she wants to learn now. Jiang tells her that she won't be able to learn it and looks at her hands. She thinks that her hands are used to wielding a sword, and yet she still wants to do that. Just thinking about it feels wrong. Pingping tells her that she will be teaching her. She teaches her how to cook, and she will teach her how to play tunes. To which Jiang says, it's fine, she still has to study and read. Studying too many causes her brain to overload. Pingping asks her if she is still in school. She thinks that this is different from what she thought. Live streaming with Zhu King every day, going fishing with her, teaching her how to cook and yet she's still a student. Jiang says, no, Zhu King wants her to study on her own in preparation to roll at adult university, to which Pingping says, she understand. Pingping tells her that he wants her to brush up on her knowledge and asks what's her highest education level. Is it high school? And Jiang replies that it's 8th grade. Pingping looks at her with shock, she thinks that no matter how she looks at it, she can't tell that Jiang He didn't even finish middle school. Such a quiet girl who loves reading actually only had a middle school education. Pingping says that she remembers, she said that Zhu King graduated from college, she says she is now really curious how they met, and thinks that who knew that a cheerful looking person like Zhu King would do such a thankless task as asking his girlfriend who's already able to make money through live streaming, to study in order to get a better education. She says that speaking of which, she has only seen him through the live stream and not up close, to which Jiang asks her if she wants to get to know him. She says that it will be weird if she said yes, that's her boyfriend. What does she need to get to know him for? She was just curious since they two live together and asks if they are one away from getting married. Jiang blushes and says that still far away. Pingping says that she seems to complain that he kept forcing her to read books in the past, and now he wants her to get a better education. He's really helping her plan it out. Jiang agrees and says that he wants her to become a more knowledgeable person. Pingping says that this young couple, why is she a little jealous? She thinks that this man is planning for the future, and it is not the next three to five years, but the second half of their lives. In his plan the two of them will always be together. Jiang asks her why she jealous and asks if this isn't normal for someone they like. Pingping says that the reason behind it is heartwarming. She says, why not, and call him out and they should go walk around. Jiang asks her what she's trying to do and tells her that he's busy and has no time. 
Pingping hands Jiang a cup of water and tells her that it looks like she's going to eat her alive. She tells her to not worry, she won't do anything, to which Jiang replies that she didn't say that she would. She thinks that Zhu King said the same thing, saying he won't do anything but then squeezed into her bed. Pingping asks if she's afraid something will happen between him and her. Jiang replies that how's that possible if he dares, and thinks that she'll just beat him up. She says that she has to make it clear first that guys who are bad at games and play the priest class, she has zero interest in them. She just suddenly thought that he has quite a bit of charisma, and she wanted to get to know him. Jiang wonders if he does have charisma, to which Pingping explains that it is a person with a pure heart, clear thinking and no unnecessary emotions and delusions can bring a sense of security to others. Jiang asks how she knows that. Pingping says that she divined it. She tells her that she's just joking with her, she actually guessed it. She says, that line was from Lin Yunya. Jiang thinks that Pingping is bad. Pingping tells her that although she hasn't met him yet, she feels like he's like that kind of person. Although he doesn't work his butt off at home, he'll practice martial arts when he's free, help out when there's something going on as an enthusiastic citizen. And they should not talk about him for now, but how his attitude towards her. He doesn't like her streaming but will stream with her. He urges her to read and study and wants her to continue school to better herself, allowing her to have more choices and supporting her in whatever she wants to do. Jiang smiles at the thought of everything he's doing. Pingping tell her to not worry, she just wants to meet a rare normal man. She tells Pingping that she and Zhu are alike. Pingping asks her if she means her and Zhu King. She disagrees and asks her how they are alike. Jiang tells her that they both have one nose and two ears. Jiang thinks that Zhu King was just like her at the beginning. He could guess what kind of her house Gong Ping would buy without even seeing her face. Now Pingping was able to guess a lot of things without even meeting Zhu King. She tells her that she hasn't been to her place yet. Sooner or later, she'll get to know him. And Pingping tells her that then they should go take a look. She happens to also want to play with Winter Melon. To which Jiang agrees and says that they should go. Jiang knocks on the door and Pingping asks if no one is home. She tells her that he was home when she left, he probably went out. Pingping asks if this is Winter Melon, as he pokes his head out by the door, and she says that he's so soft. Jiang tells her that Winter Melon doesn't bite. She gives her a pair of shoes and tells her to wear this pair, and she'll get her a glass of water. Pingping tells her that she's fine, she drank some earlier. Jiang tells her that she can then sit wherever she likes. Pingping thinks that the house is much bigger than hers and it is very cozy. She looks at the vase with the flowers and asks where they went on a date for Kixi, and notes that they didn't even stream yesterday. Jiang tells her that they went to his parents' house for dinner, and then they went to the night market afterwards. It was already 9 when they got back so they didn't stream. Pingping says, that's not bad, she already meet his parents, and ate together with his parents during the new year and asks why did they go to his parents' house for dinner on Kixi, it's Valentine's Day. Jiang says that he also doesn't know, when they were walking home last night, Zhu King only remembers that it was Kixi when he saw the flowers sellers. Pingping gets shocked and says, what, and asks if he only remembered last night, to which Jiang tells her, it's okay, he bought her a gift, and Pingping replies, that's better. Jiang thinks that during holidays, Pingping does some dirty things she rather not celebrated. Pingping asks if he sat in her current spot and edited the videos, she asks if they have their own computer space, to which Jiang answers, that's how it is usually. She tells her that she doesn't know where he went, but he was practicing his martial arts here when she went out just now. She thinks that the fishing rod is still here, but the thermos cup is gone, so he wouldn't have gone too far. Otherwise he would have sent her a message. Uncle Zhao says Cao Cao shouldn't have left him go. He should have just given him a stab. Zhu replies that if they did what he says, then there's no need to write the novel and the story can just start with ascending the throne and the whole thing will just end right there. Pingping asks Zhang if that is Zhu King, and she says that it looks like it. She thinks that he really didn't go far. She touches his shoulder, and asks him what he's doing here, to which he replies that he's resting. He had nothing to do so he came out to bask in the sun, and is what they are doing. She tells him that they're going out for a walk, and introduces Pingping, who greets him. He looks at her and greets her, and says she's. He says, yogurt and she agree, and says it's her mod for the stream. Zhang tells him that they are leaving. And he agrees, and Jiang bids them goodbye. Uncle Zhao tells them to take care. Zhu says that the two of them often hang out together. Uncle Zhao tells him that that's true, they often go out to play and the two girls are pretty good at fishing. They rarely come back empty-handed. To which Zhu laughs and says that's one of her few hobbies. He further says that before meeting Pingping, Jiang he played games at home every day. Last year she probably didn't go out as much as in the past six months combined. He says he was worried that she would go stupid. 
He comments that friends are really important, to which Uncle Zhao confirms and says there's no one to talk to if one doesn't have a friend. He asks him where they were at, and says why didn't he just ascend the throne directly instead of doing all of that just like that. Zhu disagrees and says that if he ascended the throne directly, someone will definitely go against him. He will need. As Ping Ping and Zhang are walking, Ping Ping tells Zhang that Zhu King and the security guard are really familiar with each other, to which Zhang says that he rarely comes into contact with many people with his work. Those friends of his are very busy and far away. If he stays at home for a long time, he'll come out for some air he might be lonely. Ping Ping question if Zhu is lonely and asks how come she sees him quite capable at talking a lot on stream. Jiang tells her that's work and asks if she still want to get to know him. She responds that she just did that. The only problem is that she didn't add his WeChat yet. Jiang angrily shouts and asks her why she is trying to add her boyfriend on WeChat for. To which Ping Ping asks her if she can't have friends of the opposite sex anymore. Jiang fuming thinks to herself that she guesses has no chance to beat him to death. She then asks Ping Ping if she didn't say she wants to stream herself playing the Gezhen and asks where her computer is. She says the computer is in her bedroom. Putting it in the living room is troublesome since she likes to watch movies in bed when she is too lazy to get up. Jiang states that their computer is always in the living room and they never bring it to their room. Ping Ping replies that when she has a man, she will also move her computer out. She adds that there seems to be nothing good about men anyways, and Jiang responds that it's warmer sleeping on a single bed, that's all. The ladies arrive at the supermarket and Ping Ping says, Okay okay, Chef Jiang, see what you need to buy, and I'll buy a little myself to learn how to make it, and Jiang agrees. They walk out of the supermarket and Jiang tells Ping Ping to hit her up again next time. To which Ping Ping agrees and says that she will send her the pictures of the food. Jiang announces that she is back. She is met by a foul smell in the house. Zhu suggests that Winter Melon should eat more simple food because cat food does not seem very healthy. To which Jiang also strongly agrees too. She then says Ping Ping was wearing high heels, making the click clack noises, and further asks Zhu if he really likes that. Zhu is surprised and wonders if she is preparing to buy a pair and wear them herself, or is she preparing to give him a taste of his yin white bone claw if he says he does. Zhu then responds that to like heels and shoes, she must like their feet first. He doesn't like hers, so why would he like her heels? Jiang shouts and asks if he really don't like shoes, to which he tells her to not touch her. He hasn't washed his hands, she shouldn't don't touch him, and he shouts back that he just likes hers. She says okay, and highlights that Ping Ping said she's interested in him, to which Zhu asks why. Jiang replies that it is because of that Lin blah blah enthusiastic citizen blah blah, and she getting her to study, and to go to college etc. She then asks him if he doesn't have anything to say, for example, why is she interested in him, and says she thinks he should know, and asks what if she really likes him and wants to be his concubine. Zhu shouts and says, there's no such thing as a concubine now, she's studied for nothing. Jiang gets shocked hearing that, and shouts back that there is, a few days ago, she saw a guy who has a whole community of wives, even if it's not called concubine anymore, it's the same meaning. Zhu responds that she thinks too highly of him, it's only like that because the whole community is owned by that person. And the person like him with no money and assets, it's already a blessing to be able to marry an ancient wife, so how could he dare have a concubine? Jiang lets him know that after Ping Ping knew that he wanted to help her go to college, she wanted to get to know him. She says maybe it's because she saw how he is really nice to her. Zhu comments, or she thinks he's handsome. He says that the capable little rich woman likes someone who is handsome and strong like him. Jiang angrily asks, strong, and says they should have a fight, to which Zhu responds that if she wants to beat him up, she should just say so. He then thinks to himself that people who practice martial arts are really built different. Although her small hand is soft, it has power. He then asks her if it's because she had fun last night that he is getting this service. Hearing that, she puts extra pressure on his shoulders and tells him to say it again. She tells him that she didn't like it and thinks that if this guy dares to do it again, she should carry him to the storage room like a piggy. Zhu says maybe she thought he was good to her, such as forcing her to study, and then she became curious. After all, how can a normal man force his girlfriend who has never gone to school to continue going to school? She responds that surely her feelings are correct, even if what they say is similar. Zhu tells her that it's because she doesn't know that her true identity is a little old lady who is over a thousand years old. And if she were a modern person, dating is more about finding someone suitable and excluding the unsuitable ones. There are very few people like him who raise their girlfriend like a daughter. 
as she increases her grip when massaging him. She says raising an old lady over a thousand years old as a daughter. In pain he shouts back saying, as a wife, as a wife. She responds that they are not married yet. Zhu asks if it matters if they are married or not, and that last night said it all. Zhu tells Jiang that Gong Ping might be envious that there's someone thinking about her future, and as long as they don't break up, it's all an investor towards her becoming a family member. Jiang asks if he is being that good to her, to which he says that it's not that he's that good to her, they've become a whole now. He can't just think about how he can improve himself and then take her with him after. He should take her with him and consider how the two of them can live a better life, that is to say. If he's good to her, then he is being good to himself. If she lives well, that is good for both of them. Jiang is lost for words. She smiles and kisses him, and he asks why she isn't studying. She slaps him in the back and walks away and says that she's going to make lunch. Zhu says, so if she's interested in him, she doesn't have to be jealous. Jiang tells him that she's just trying to make friends, what's there to be jealous about? And asks him if he really does like her high heels, to which Zhu shouts that he doesn't, she replies that then everything is fine. She tells him that she'll beat him up if he dares to like her. Zhu thinks that for little Jiang he, this is not normal, for modern people introducing one's boyfriend to one's best friend is completely normal. A normal procedure would be inviting his girlfriend's best friend to a nice restaurant for dinner, and then he would show concern so that her best friend can get a good first impression. And in the end, he was holding a thermos cup and basking in the sun with a security guard at the gate. He further thinks that no, no, it doesn't matter anymore. What he should lament about is the accelerated growth of little Jiang He. The more things she's exposed to, the faster she integrates. The girl who was drenched in rain while holding a sword in the hallway can already joke around with him. He further thinks that he will bring Uncle Zhao some tea. Friends should treat each other the way they should like to be treated themselves. And Zhang asks him why he is taking out tea leaves. He replies that he's given some to Uncle Zhao. She asks him if he's going out for tea that afternoon, to which he asks if she wants to go with him. She replies that she prefers sitting with girls. Zhu thinks that she's making it sound like he always likes to sit with old men. Uncle Zhao asks Zhu why he's being so polite. He's acting like they are strangers, to which Zhu replies that is the least he could do. Uncle Zhao says that this kid, and asks why he acts like an old man at such a young age, where are his friends? Zhu says that they are busy, how can they be as free as him? Moreover, he usually drinks alcohol with them while he drinks tea with him. He can't drink alcohol like he used to anymore, since it's tightly controlled, and asks if all women aren't like that. When they first got together, she was quite obedient but after a while, she just turned into a tiger. Zhu turned back to see if Zhang isn't there and seeing him like this, Uncle Zhao laughs and says that he should look at how scared he is. He asks him when are they getting married, to which Zhu replies, soon, soon, she already met his parents, so within two years, and Uncle Zhao tells him that women are like that, they are like a kitten at the beginning, but as time goes by, she'll become annoyed when there's too many trivial things, if she becomes annoyed too much, she'll have a bad temper, then sometimes, he'll feel like, why is this different from before, how come they became a different person? Zhu asks him if Auntie is like that, and Uncle Zhao shouts, no. He tells him that he can't do anything about the smoking, but he concedes to her on everything else, and he pretends not to hear her and let her quarrel, since he'll feel better that way, otherwise they would quarrel for a while. Uncle Zhao asks him how long they have been together, and Zhu says that it is three years, he continues to say that it should be three years. He shouldn't let her hear him say that, otherwise she will get on him again. Uncle Zhao asks him if he doesn't remember, and he replies that it was very vague at the start. Even holding hands was hard, he doesn't know if they were together or not, but it's just that they started living together later. He tells Zhu that when they held hands at that time, they were already together, they had to get married to live together, look at them too, go together after living together, and he asks Zhu, what if they break up? He says that he'll be beaten to death by her, which surprises Uncle Zhao. Zhu asks him what he's thinking of. Jiang places her hand on Zhu's shoulder, and he is overwhelmed by shock. She tells him that they are heading out, to which Uncle Zhao tells them that they should take care of herself now. Zhu thinks that she's not studying today. Jiang walks in and he asks her if she's back and she agrees. He asks her where she went to have fun as he takes her feet. He tells her that she and Pingping went shopping, watched the movie and drank milk tea. She says that there were claw machines, but she didn't get anything. He tells her that it's okay, she can try again next time, to which he replies that she saw his police friend. She adds that he was watching a movie with a girl. Zhu is shocked by the news and asks if Hayazi. Zhu wonders if Hayazi brought a girl to the movies. He smiles and thinks that it's interesting. 
Jiang tells him that going out for it today made her feel like it's better to stay at home. She says that besides it's expensive and tiring and she can just watch movies at home, and he tells her that that's because she was not with him. She says that when she's with him, she will be tied to a chair and spun around to be tortured, talking about a roller coaster. He says that she has to experience it at least once when she goes to an amusement park for the first time. She replies, but if she doesn't go out to have fun, she won't have friends, it's better to go out a little. And she learned a lot from Pingping. Zhu asks her what she learned. She says that a lot of stuff, just like when she's with him, she learns a lot of things but listening to her talk. But most of it is for girls, like making a photo look better with a few clicks and Zhu lowly comments that it's called beauty cap. Jiang adds that, how magical, and with a few more clicks, it'll look like a monster with a pointy mouth and monkey cheeks. She tells him to look at this as she puts phone in his face. Zhu looks at the photo quizzically. She asks if it looks like her. Zhu thinks that it's pointy mouth and monkey cheeks. She says Yoisho. He thinks that this is the first time he's ever discovered that little Jiang he could use words so accurately. She picks up a flower from the vase, smells it and says that it's so good here. She calls out to Zhu King. She tells him that he's good too. He tells her that he feels like she's acting weird today, to which she says that because she's different from before, and she discovered it when she was out today. He asks her what exactly is different. He wonders if it's the hairstyle or it new clothes. She tells him that he's just different from before. She calls out to Zhu King and tells him that he's a modern person now. He agrees and says that she is still a modern, a naive person. She angrily tells him that he's the naive one. She then kisses him, and he says that it's broad daylight pretty early for that and asks, no. She tells him that she wants to tell him if he thinks of her as a daughter again. She puts a strong grip on his shoulder, Zhu screams, and she tells him that she'll bite him to death. He thinks that her calf was pressing down on it so hard, damn it. He further thinks that he needs to become stronger. He wonders that when it comes to learning martial arts, the warrioress never refuses to teach him. He doesn't know if she's really not afraid of him catching to her and beating her or if she really wants him to be more powerful. Jiang asks him why he is practicing martial arts so seriously when he's about to eat, to which he replies that when he succeeds in martial arts, he'll get his revenge for the past. He tells him that he's talking nonsense, she thinks that by the time he masters it and wants to force her to do something, they might already be married. He says alright, and he's also practicing so that he has another skill after she gets her ID. He says that he can shoot like a short video for it, which will at least ensure food on the table. Jiang asks him if he isn't able to make money from doing movie reviews, why is she trying to also make short videos? And adds, that's why it's just another skill. Too many skills won't overwhelm the body. The backup plant may not be used but it can be an option when needed. She says that it makes sense and asks how many backup plants he has prepared. He replies that she should guess, and she says she's not guessing. He thinks that there are so many benefits to practicing martial arts. The little impulse he felt when he was pressed down by the warrioress just now dissipated with sweat. Pingping is in her room on the computer. She's looking at pictures of Zhu and thinks sword. She further wonders if Zhu King knows how to use a sword. She thinks that she doesn't know if he knows how, but she does know he must be very despicable. Jiang stretches on the chair and thinks that she's failed to reach 1,700. Playing at a high level for one hour is a test for both the spirit and the body. Anyone who does the same thing mechanically for a long time will feel tired, so it was nice to not stream for a day. She didn't do it on purpose. Zhu grabs her attention with a slight cough. She turns around to look at him, and he says that the little Jian who worked hard. He asks her if she would like to read a book or watch a movie with him. He tells her to choose one of the two. She happily says that she would like to watch a movie. Jiang asks him what kind of a movie this is. He tells her that a woman takes revenge with her children. One day ten years ago, Zhu and Hayazi are watching a movie, and they are crying. Zhu is in the shower and he's still crying. He says that proud and laughing in the face of a thousand waves, passionate and victorious like direct sunlight, with courage and yielding as iron and bone as strong as the fine steel, a broad mind reaching a hundreds of miles, a vision that spans ten thousand miles, swearing to strive for self-improvement, becoming a true hero, and be a good man, strive for self-improvement every day, a passionate man more fervent than the red sunlight. His father asks him what's with the crying and wolf howling while showering. He says that he can't, he's too scared to shower. His father tells him to put on some clothes. Jiang asks him if it is a horror movie, and he says that it's not scary, it's just a normal horror movie. 
Yang shouts and asks him if ghosts are normal, to which he replies that ghosts don't exist, so why should he be afraid? She tells him to let her go. He tells her that then they are not watching. She thinks that if they don't watch then she'll have to study, and this movie doesn't seem as scary as the one before. It's just a child, he can be cut down with one sword strike. They continue watching the movie as Jiang gets scared. Zhu happily asks her what's wrong. She shouts crying and slaps him. She switches on the lights and tells him that she's not watching anymore. Zhu asks her if she's not watching anymore, really. She says that she's going to read. She hasn't read all day. He keeps quiet and looks back at her. He tells her that if she wants to go to school, she must study. But if she doesn't want to go, she doesn't have to, to which she replies that she wants to go. Jiang thinks that if she wants to live well in the modern time, she has to study. Reading is the simplest and fastest way. It is also the foundation. It's impossible to build a tall building from the ground. She stretches and says that she's going to take a shower first, to which Zhu agrees. She comes back and takes her sword with her. Zhu asks her if she wants him to accompany her. Jiang is in bed and wonders why he is taking so long to shower. He says that he's done showering, and he comes back, and she grabs him and cuddles him. He asks her if she wants to do something else, and she says that if he wakes her up, she will beat him. He notes that she's not asleep yet. She says that if she can't fall asleep within five minutes, she'll beat him too. He thinks that it's unfair, but his skills are inferior. It's better to be more restrained, and further thinks that he's quite satisfied now. Jiang tells him that if he keeps playing, she'll beat him. He tells her that they should just become sworn siblings and adds that a couple that's not even touching each other might as well become sworn siblings. They don't ask to be born on the same year, the same month, and the same day. Jiang kisses him and asks him if that is enough and tells him to sleep. She wonders how did it become like this. At a wedding, Jiang is staring at the bride. She thinks that throughout the ages, brides have always been so beautiful. Heiazi waves at Zhu and asks him why he is standing there, to which Zhu calls out his name in surprise. He asks him why he looks so lethargic, and he explains that to make it here today. He had to switch seats with a colleague, and he had to rush over here after finishing the shift. Zhu asks him where is his partner. He shouts that he doesn't have a partner, to which Zhu tells him to keep acting. Jiang tells him that she put 800 and asked if it is right, to which Zhu says that it is right, and she shouldn't put too much, it will make him look like a rich guy. Wang Zi calls out to them and asks if they are here. He comes with his bride and Zhu congratulates them, and Jiang tells him that she hopes they live in happiness and harmony for a lifetime. Zhu asks who he is giving this to, holding out the envelope. And Wang Zi tells him to look at what he is saying and says he should give it to her. Song Hao takes the envelope and thanked him. Zhu wonders that to be able to get a guy like Wang Zi to put on his wedding clothes so early is quite impressive. Jiang marvels at the scenery. She says that this probably costs a lot of money. Hearing that, Zhu tells her that he's a rich guy, so he definitely spent a lot of money. When it is their turn, it won't be as luxurious as this, to which Jiang says that it is good then. Zhu asks her why does she seem so relieved, to which she replies that she is not. She thinks that something's wrong with her, why is she talking about her wedding? She doesn't know when it started. She already sees Zhu King as her fiancé. She wonders if this is what a modern marriage looks like, then the two of them will start living together. Zhu thinks that this is how the good-for-nothing during college begins the next phase of his life. Heiazi says that the bride seems pretty impressive, to which Zhu replies that she's more than just impressive. He thinks that he's seen many of Wang Zijun's girlfriends. They all seem sophisticated and social. They can seamlessly navigate through five or six social scenes in a day, and he doesn't even bother remembering their names. The current bride seems to be an artist, he saw her on the subway that one time, and although her attire wasn't very elaborate, she looked neat and tidy. He further thinks that then in a low-key manner, she brought Wang Zijun to a hotel. Perhaps it is precisely this type of woman who can rein him in. That's why little Jiang he is better, when she wants to beat someone up, she tells him directly and doesn't deceive or trick them, she just clenches her fist and issues a threat. He tells her that she will be carried in a sedan chair in the future. She asks really, and keeps asking if it's an eight-lift sedan chair. He emphasizes that an eight-lift sedan, with trumpets blowing while crossing over a fire brazier, and asks that it sounds majestic, doesn't it? He says that a bright red wedding dress, the Fenguin Xiaopei. She says that then he has to keep his word, and he says of course. She thinks that compared to that exchanging of rings with microphones and in hand seems rather insignificant. Heiazi whispers to Zhu, asking him when they will do that, get married. Zhu tells him that next year, and Heiazi gets shocked and asks him, so fast. 
Sue says that how can he not hurry it up, and says there's a guy who's about to become a dad soon. Hayazi asks him how Wang Zai becoming a dad has to do with him. Hayazi asks next year, and says what about her ID. Zhu says oh right, there is that. He says that then they will, they'll get married when it's resolved. Hayazi thinks that it's already one thing for him to attend a brother's wedding alone. Now he's forced to a third wheel as well. King Zai is always like this, when he has to talk about something he doesn't want to talk about. He'll just say a bunch of nothing in the end. Zhu thinks that only a fool will reveal his plan to the police. The old man has already contacted some people a few days ago, and asked him to find some time to visit them in order to figure out a solution. He can't go empty-handed but it doesn't make sense to bring cigarettes and alcohol, and he doesn't know if they'll accept tea leaves that is worth several thousand yuan. He thinks that the money will have to come from little Jiang He's small treasury. Suddenly, Jiang senses danger out of nowhere. Wang Zai thanked all his relatives and friends for coming on this beautiful day. Hayazi continuously calls to King Zai. Zhu asks him what, and he asks him to turn around for a moment. He says that let's say if, and he means if, he wants to pursue a girl. What should he give her during the mid-autumn festival? To which Zhu replies that the mid-autumn festival is a day for family reunions. If he wants to pursue someone, he has to choose a western holiday. Western holidays are the days for dates and getting a hotel room. Hayazi thinks that did he fucking say he wants to get a hotel room? He thinks, wait, that makes sense. Even if he doesn't get a hotel room hanging out on a western holiday is better than disrupting a family reunion during the mid-autumn festival. He says that it seems like her family isn't around. He will ask her out for a walk with the excuse that the moonlight is beautiful tonight. Zhu asks him where he is planning to go. He will light some fireworks for him. He says that there is no need for that. He was just casually asking. He asks Zhu, lighting fireworks, and tells him that he will arrest him if he is not careful. Zhu thinks that he wants to pursue a girl and yet he is acting like that. When little Jiang saw him with that girl going to the movies, it was probably the girl who suggested going. He tells him that actually, that guy, Wang Zijun, has a killer move, and Hayazi asks him what it is. Zhu replies that he should just say whatever the girl wants to hear, and then he can do whatever he wants. Hayazi imagines punching him and thinks that he really wants to beat him to death, and wonders that when Wang Zijun says he will buy a bag, he really does it. But can he? People are different, and he doesn't have Wang Zijun's kind of talkativeness that can coax so many people at the same time. He further thinks that now that he is married, those things seem to be behind him. He think they once said that when they get married, they won't go home until they are drunk. He keeps thinking that once they are really at this point, he suddenly can no longer go back to his youth. After he gets married, if he encounters a knife situation on the street again, will he still be able to rush forward without hesitation? Or will he quietly call for help and not know how long it will take to survive as he watches from a distance? He wonders what he is currently doing. Everybody shouts happy wedding, as Wang Zai and Song Hao thank everyone. Hayazi tells Wang Zi that he is one lucky guy. He has a beautiful wife, to which Wang Zi replies that of course, and tells everyone to not be shy, and they should feel free to eat and drink to their heart's content. Zhu asks Hayazi if he really didn't drink a sip of alcohol and only drank juice, to which Hayazi replies that yeah, that's the nature of the job after all. He has to get up early tomorrow so he needs to go home and sleep soon, and people have left they should leave also. Hayazi bids them goodbye. Zhu asks Jiang if they shall walk around or go home, to which she replies that they should walk around. Jiang thinks that is autumn again, and this is her second autumn here. She asks Zhu what the lottery is. He replies that everyone has 5 million in the bank, but they just forgot the password and need to spend 2 yuan each time to guess, and she asks if there's such a good thing. He asks her if she is sure it is a good thing and says that she'll be betting on luck. She wonders, luck, then it has nothing to do with them at all. She tells him that they should go then. Zhu shouts 5 yuan for a ticket, a total of 10 tickets, they will get 5 tickets each. Jiang asks him if he didn't say it depends on luck. He agrees and says, they should see which one of them is unlucky. And he adds that maybe she's dragging him down, next time she draws cards or whatever. She should stay away from him, and he'll draw them. Jiang gets angry and thinks that even though both of their luck is weak, he still wants to compete. Zhu celebrates and shouts that he got one. He shows her the card, and says that it's 5 yuan. He thinks that as long as his winnings are better than little Jiang, he will have the right to speak about luck. He happily says rise in family status. Jiang looks at her card and thinks that it is the last ticket. She scrapes it out and gets mesmerized, and she thinks that there aren't more zeros at the end, right. She happily shouts that she got one, it's 5 yuan, they have the same luck. Zhu keeps quiet and stares at the card. 
He asks her how about they buy a few more. She tells him that no more, because it's clearly a scam. It'll be about the same if they scratch again. Spending 50 to win 10. Only a fool will do that. Jiang looks at the tickets and thinks that 50 yuan was really not worth it. When they walk out of the lottery place, Zhu says that some of the money is actually donated to charity. She looks at him and he tells her to look, it says it right here, that for every ticket sold, one dollar goes to the charity organizations that help the elderly, the disabled, the orphans and the poor. Jiang gets surprised and asks if they did a good deed, to which Zhu happily says, yeah, that Ten Yuan can at least give several children in mountainous areas a full meal. She processes it and thinks that wouldn't it have been better to just donate it directly. They still lost 30 yuan of those 50 yuan. Zhu tells her, over here, a man welcomes them. Jiang marvels at the place, seeing the place she wishes she could open a store like this. Zhu asks the man what's the price of the tea. He tells him that this tea costs 998 per caddy, and Jiang gets shocked hearing the price. Zhu asks the man what about this one then, and he says it's 1,600 per caddy, and Jiang goes into a fit of shock again. Zhu asks about the other one, and the man says 3,888, and Jiang goes into an extreme state of shock. Zhu takes the tea leaves and looks at them. He apologizes to the owner and says that they're going to check elsewhere, and thanks him, telling him that they'll come back next time, and the man happily tells them to take care. Jiang asks him if he wants to drink gold, to which he replies that he doesn't want to drink it. He wants to give it to others to drink. She asks him how much it costs for the tea leaves she used to make tea eggs at home, and she thinks that if it's as expensive as those other ones, wouldn't it be like eating golden eggs? To which Zhu replies that those are cheap, he's just an ordinary person, so how could he drink something so expensive? She breathes out a sigh and thinks, thank goodness, and she asks him, that then who is he buying such expensive tea for? He says that he's giving it to someone who can help with her ID. She kept quiet. She asks him if it's time. She excitedly asks if it is time. He says for that, let's take a look at the situation first. If it can be done, they'll definitely do it. They can't continue to prepare, they should explore the way first. He asks her if she can't wait any longer, and she says that she can. She thinks that he's been looking forward to it before, but now that is happening soon, she feels a little bit caught off guard. Zhu asks her what she wants to do after she gets her ID. He confirms that no one is around. She says what she wants to do, and she keeps quiet and thinks about it, and says that to get a bank card. He asks her, then what, and he thinks that he didn't expect little Jong to say that. She says that she'll then get a phone card, stay at a hotel to see what it feels like, go to an internet cafe to have fun, get an account on Taobao and JD, get social insurance and ride an airplane for the first time where they're sitting together, take the train, go to Sushual. He thinks that he thought that this little old lady from the Kaiyuan era had no desires, but it turns out that she has so many things she plans to do after getting her ID. He happily says that actually, there are many things they can do together, for example if she takes a train directly to Suju, she can accomplish two things at once. When they get to Suju, they will definitely stay in a hotel, and that checks off staying at a hotel, and then they'll get a double bedroom. Jiang is not listening at all. And she's thinking that there are so many things she wants to do. She needs a notebook to write them down so that she doesn't forget them all. They hold hands and walk away, as Zhu tells her that getting a room is a very exciting thing, and ask if they shall do it together, to which Jiang asks, getting a room, isn't that just living together what is exciting about it, what he is on about? He shouts, that phrase is very exciting, they should get a room. When she says it like that, it's very. She keeps quiet and thinks that if he wants to get a room, then they'll get one. This guy isn't that talented anyways, he's been practicing for so long and he still can't beat her. She further thinks that after getting a room, they'll just be sleeping peacefully at most. He asks her why she is squeezing him, and she replies that he interrupted her trying to think of what she wants to do, and he looks at her quizzically. They walk into a shop, and he thinks that he can't give something that's well known or has been hyped up because it will be flashy but lacking in substance, and taste bad and then he'll get this one as a gift. The seller says that they look forward to the next visit as they walk away with the bag. Jiang stares intensely at the bag and Zhu tells her that actually, it doesn't matter what they give, others may not necessarily want it, but it's essential for them to offer, this represents sincerity. Jiang asks that if they don't want it, can they return it, to which he replies, why to return it? They can use it to make tea eggs, she says they can't afford to eat it. Jiang thinks that the key to exploring the way for the ID lies in these tea bags, PTUI, tea leaves. Pingping holding a fish soup bowl thinks that this type of fish can only be made into soup. 
She says, by the way, those videos complaining about movies and TV series, how did he record those? Jiang tells her that he just sat there and recorded it with his computer, to which Pingping shouts that he doesn't need to write a script first. Jiang thinks about it and says sometimes he uses one, sometimes he doesn't. She asks her if she wants to play the Gajeng live, she can also be her moderator. Pingping replies that she's not ready yet, live streaming leaves not much room for error, and it's very tiring so she's watching these videos to learn. She says that she also needs a set of recording equipment, and the video recording should have good quality. She can't use the headphones she used for gaming, and the computer's built-in camera is too subpar. An idea comes to her mind, and she says, Hey, what kind of equipment do you guys use to make videos? She requests to see if she can buy the same equipment, to which Jiang says that she will help her ask. Zhu King was the one who bought them. Jiang sends a message to Zhu, and says Pingping wants to buy streaming equipment. Can he send his friend's business card? Zhu replies with kitten emojis saying he misses her. Jiang gets embarrassed and she hopes. Pingping didn't see that. This guy is never serious. She replies that he should quickly tell her and not send that stuff. Zhu forwards the business card and Jiang says she got it. Pingping asks if there is any discount for mentioning Zhu King's name. Jiang says that she doesn't know, but at least he won't scam her, it is his friend. Zhu is walking while looking at his phone and holding the tea paper bag. He thinks that although the tea was not accepted, they still had a pleasant conversation. It wasn't in vain. What's next will be the old man's business. He will give the tea leaves to the old man as well. If he can give them out, then he will. If not, then he can make tea for himself. He then adds that as for the tea eggs, they should forget about them. Zhu arrives home and he calls out for his dad. Once he arrives by the living room his dad asks him if he managed to get it done. He responds back saying not yet, but there is nothing particularly troublesome, and asks if he didn't tell him about it earlier. As his father is pouring him a glass of water, he thinks to himself that saying hello is the first and most difficult step, but what happens after that is simple. Whilst drinking the water still lost in his thoughts, he thinks that if he didn't make this trip, then when it's time for Jiang to go to the office to get her ID, it will probably be like. He then imagines how Jiang would handle the situation, as she is asked if she is applying for an ID, and should bring her documents. She replies that she is here because she doesn't have documents and to deal with it. She is asked, deal with what? And Jiang replies that she doesn't have an ID. The person assisting her then tells her to bring her documents, and she will help her process it. She shouts that she doesn't have the documents, that's why she is there. The person replies again that she has to bring valid documents so she can help her and Jiang bursts into anger. Zhu then stops daydreaming and tells his dad that he better take care of this tea, and he shouldn't let his mom make tea eggs with it, because it's very expensive. He then says goodbye and he will be leaving now. His dad, still trying to figure out what's wrong, tells him to wait a minute, and he asks Zhu to tell him the truth. Zhu says that Jiang's entire experience is both logical and coherent, and at first glance, there doesn't seem to be any issue but it seems so coincidental, and ask if there is really nothing wrong with it. He shouts that his intuition tells him, it's all arranged by him. Zhu smiles and says that his intuition is really accurate. He should let him tell him the truth, she is actually an alien. Her spaceship ran out of energy, and she ran into him, she taught him a set of alien kung fu. He should let him demonstrate for him. His father tells him to scram, and he leaves the house. As he is walking down the street, he meets Hayazi. He calls him out and greets him, and he offers him an apple. Hayazi gets astonished by that and eat the apple whilst thinking to himself that the old man nagged him about that matter all night. He goes on to say damn it. He'll eat it all today. As soon as he arrives at his apartment, he tells Jiang that he is back, and he bought a pineapple. Jiang anxiously asks him how it went, and if he thinks it can be done. Zhu vaguely tells her that it wasn't bad and that there is a big chance. While he is preparing the pineapple, he tells her that she shouldn't worry yet, because this won't be solved in a day. Anyway, it's just a matter of time and he actually has to think carefully about what else he has missed in the past few days. Check for gaps and fill them in. He adds that tea leaves were just the beginning, and that any accidents may happen in the meantime. He continues to tell Jiang that the key important thing is the preparation of both of them. They must abide by the rules because violating the rules will make it backfire, and that they will not do anything illegal or indisciplined. He further explains to Jiang that there may be questions, and other questions after that, and DNA information may be tested and the like, so she shouldn't resist. These processes are necessary as long as they are all done, there will basically be no problems. As he finishes preparing the pineapple, 
He thinks to himself that a Tang Dynasty person integrated into modern times. He then gives her a peck on the cheek. Jiang is caught off guard and yells his name, wanting to retaliate and beat him. He also shouts back and asks her what he just said. He tells her to follow the rules, domestic violence is illegal. He continues to remind her that after she gets her ID, she will have to listen to him, and she shouldn't raise her fist saying she will hit him every day. Otherwise, he will report her of coming from the Tang Dynasty, to which she then asks him if he thinks anyone would believe him. Surprised by that comment he says, what? She asks him, who would believe that someone came from an ancient time? He tells her, but he believed it, and thinks that it's true, but no matter how she thinks about it, it shouldn't have come out of little Jiang's mouth. She then tells him it's because he is stupid, and in fact she has been a wanderer since she was young. She continues that she came to the city after learning a set of three emperor cannon palm from an old scavenger lady. Zhu is left quite surprised by what Jiang just told him. Jiang tells him to go wash his hands and get ready to eat. He is lost in thought as he thinks that unknowingly, little Jiang took the initiative, and suddenly, he understood what she meant when she said she's a modern person a few days ago. The evidence that she's from ancient times now, and then disagrees with himself and says no, there isn't any more evidence. He continues to think that when she first came here, she seemed naive, and he thought she just hadn't adapted to modern times. Looking at it now, she may have been pretending on purpose to be able to survive the life of a warrioress. Strength alone is not enough. As they are eating their meal, Zhu tells Zhang that she is so smart. She then asks him if he has finally accepted the fact that he is the stupid one. He explains that he just said she is smart and not that he is stupid. He describes how smart Jiang is by using chopsticks, by saying strictly speaking, she is only this smart, showing her that she is only a tiny bit smart. He adds that he is smarter than her, to which she tells him that it's just food. She says, it's just studying that she can't beat him in, and that he's been studying for more than 10 years, whereas she just started reading. She then tells him to just wait and see that it won't take long for her to surpass him, and she will never be tricked by him again. Intrigued by what she just said, Zhu asks if he has really tricked her, to which she agrees, and says, otherwise, how could she deliberately let him get into her room? He tells her that she has also entered his room several times in the middle of the night. Hearing that, she yells back and tells him to shut up and eat his food. They have now finished eating their dinner and Zhang reminds him that it's almost 7 o'clock, and this time while live streaming, she's going to push for 1,700. As Zhu picks a book to read, he thinks to himself that the habit of reading will affect others, so him setting an example will affect little Jiang He. He tells himself that he will practice his stance at 7.30, because he can't fall behind when it comes to his martial arts either. Jiang has started the live stream and notices that he is reading, she goes on to playfully rub his head. He then is distracted and thinks to himself he will endure it. Ping Ping is watching the stream, and she thinks that the two of them always look very natural and lively when sitting in front of the camera. Zhu puts down his book and remembers that it's now half past seven, so he begins practicing martial arts. Lost in his thoughts, he continues thinking to himself about a bunch of mortals that don't understand the strong willpower and hard work that's needed to defeat the boss. The reason why mortals are mortals is that they haven't yet encountered an evil dragon that makes them warriors, but he has. He continues to think to himself that the evil dragon has taken over his computer, and also taking the mouse that used to be his. Zhang ends the stream and is excited that she finally managed to climb to 1700. Zhu makes a snug comment and says that she can already become independent. Zhang is surprised and asks him what, to which he replies literal meaning. He explained that she has gained a basic understanding of the modern world, acquired knowledge of the monetary system, developed life skills, and accumulated some savings to ensure a livelihood. Now she is only missing an ID in other aspects. Compared to those who run away from home, it's already much better. She tells him that if it is so, that means she doesn't need him anymore, to which he replies that even though it sounds weird, it's a fact, however, only part of it is true. Zhu adds that she still needs him and ends up hugging her. As they are cuddling, Jiang asks Zhu if he is afraid that she might just leave him and run off with her bags. While he is embracing her, she asks if he thinks. She turns to him and looks him in the eyes and tells him that he actually is afraid. As they are laying on the couch, Jiang also emphasizes that she is also afraid. Zhu jokingly tells her that he is not afraid and goes on to tickle her. She hysterically laughs and tells him to stop it, it tickles. She says that they are already sleeping in the same bed and asks if he is not afraid. He responds that they are not doing anything sleeping on the same bed, to which she replies back whilst poking him that it's because he doesn't dare to. Zhu in agony tells Jiang not to provoke him, 
because he will take it as a hint, and if he gets seriously injured by her, it will be over. She reminds him that they are not married, so they can't do anything, and he tells her that it feels like the two of them have a weird relationship. He further explains that weird would be right, and by breaking and reshaping their original logic and cognitive patterns, this process has been much faster than imagined. When modern ideas clash with the previous thoughts, she'll experience this feeling, the more changes, the stronger the conflict, in simple terms, it's due to the short time. Jiang asks if the serious and lengthy talk really conceals his intention to do something inappropriate. With a loud voice he tells her that it's just instinct. Jiang thinks that having sex is not possible, but she can reluctantly offer him a little comfort, but he doesn't seem to like holding feet. Still lost in her thoughts, she thinks about a few months ago, when she was still against him moving into her room, and then on Kixie, he kissed her a bunch. She wonders if does becoming a modern person mean that their standards are getting lower and lower. Jiang then asks Zhu why he is not afraid. He explains to her that he has never been afraid before, and that he was just worried that she wouldn't survive in this world. Taking risks with a sword in hand, and whether she goes or not, is not something he can control. She tells him that she knows that he is indeed lying, and he knows that she won't just leave, so that's why he is not worried. Zhu with a smirk on his face ends up admitting to what Jiang just said. Jiang grabs a book to read and is amazed by the book's contents and asks, who can write such a book? She asks if this is also part of him introducing her to modern entertainment. Zhu responds that it's just part of the plan. He lets her know that he wants to share all the things he likes with her. Jiang then wonders that this era indeed has many wonderful things. Reading a book, watching a movie, listening to a song, it's very easy to experience a sense of awe and emotion. She then thanks Zhu and tells him that she likes it a lot. She is so flattered and thinks to herself about the statement he made about the things he likes. She then tells him that she is going to take a shower first, and that after she is done, he should also hurry up and shower too. He agrees and waits for his turn to shower. After some time, he informs Jiang that he is done showering. To his surprise he notices that she is dressed differently. She is wearing a hosiery underneath her dress. She shyly makes a comment telling him he can, but just not that. He then thinks to himself with amazement, if today is the Chinese New Year. For the New Year, it's time to eat feet and quickly corrects his statement by saying he means dumplings. When he is on bed, he continues to think to himself that something's not right, everything was normal before and nothing was wrong. Now why is he so horny? He says that he is actually quite lustful, and that it is just pure lust, not perversion at all. Zhu puts on his clothes, he then picks up a garment and puts it in a black trash bag, and ties it. Jiang thinks of a caterpillar, she asks him if he isn't going to wash it, to which he asks if she still wants to wear it, he can buy her a new pair. She asks in a loud voice, if he isn't the one who wants her to wear it, so do not try to push the blame on her. Zhu smiles and thinks that she's so much smarter now. He tells her that they'll get new ones anyway, to which Jiang keeps quiet. After breakfast, Zhu thinks that the human body starts to secrete more dopamine at night, which makes one's mind more hyperactive and causes one to do things that they don't normally would. The warrioress has been learning about modern culture all along and even managed to use some of that incredible knowledge yesterday. It's normal for couples to do that in modern times, and he nearly thought that he was a pervert when he woke up. He further thinks that he is not a pervert, and he's being led astray by the little old lady, as he has been unconsciously seeing things from the view of an ancient person. He asks her if she's going fishing today, and she confirms it. She then says that she found a really good spot yesterday. He tells her that they can give one to his parents if she catches a big one. Zhu thinks that during the national day and mid-autumn long holiday, Jiang he can carry the fish that she caught, and enter the house while shouting, Dad, I caught a fish for you too. He thinks he's looking forward to the old man's reaction. Jiang agrees and says that this reminds her. She saw some people releasing some fish into the water that day to accumulate some good karma. What if those people just hand her the money and she promises not to go fishing, and asks if they won't accumulate good karma that way as well. Zhu tells her that they are not dumb, why would they give her their money? She then questions if monks in the temples don't do that, and he keeps quiet. She says that you hand them the money, and they would bestow good karma upon you. She further says that if they were to hand her money, she would be able to help them accumulate good karma as well. Zhu tells her that she will have to shave her head, bald. She looks at him and he looks back at her, and he asks her what she's doing. She shouts no, she absolutely cannot shave her head bald, and smacks him in the head. He says that dare to be angry but don't dare to speak. Ping Ping tells Jiang that she seems to be in a good mood today, 
and she agrees as they move around in their hoverboards. Zhu opens his computer, and he has flashbacks. He thinks that little Jiang He learned that from Pingping. After all, she would flash the fish when they are fishing. He then thanks the heavens for granting him this gift. He grabs Winter Melon and says he's got him, delicious little kitty. He tells him that he has perfect timing he should come and accompany him. He thinks that their savings have increased and the stocks have risen a lot, plus the savings from little Jiang He. He can consider teaching her about reverse repurchase agreements for treasure bonds and the like, or else she will learn all sorts of bad things from Gong Ping during her free time. While it seems like Zhu King is lazing around all day, he breaks down his work into manageable parts, be it video editing or when it comes to his savings or even those film reviews that don't bring in much income. It might seem easy but in reality, he rarely gets a break, it's just that he isn't shackled to a particular task all day. If he could, he would want Zhang He to learn it all too. Zhu takes his flask and drinks from it. While sitting outside, he sends a message saying, For ID related matters in Zhang Cheng, do I have to head to the main police station or just any police branch will do? Hayazi replies with question marks and asks why does he feel like he's up to no good with that sudden question. He replies that Zhang He's ID hasn't been settled yet. To which Hayazi replies that he nearly forgot. He is finally willing to get it done, huh? He continues to ask if Zhu has made a trip back to Zhengcheng, and he'd definitely have to do that at least. He replies, well, they'll talk about that when it's about to get started. He just wanted to check where he should go to avoid a wasted trip. Hayazi responds that the police branch, he should come to theirs, and Zhu keeps quiet. He asks him if they have been busy lately. Hayazi then sends him a picture and questions why, if it is something he is not supposed to, he should save it. He replies that he has to pick a time when they are not as busy to get it done. It's not like they are. His thumb covers the text as it continues to read as, just need to take a photo, they can just wait. Hayazi replies that it's nice of him to be thoughtful, but he's not in the ID department. He adds that the people over there, he'll help him to keep an eye on them. Zhu thinks that for this matter regarding a little Jiang He, be it handled by a super efficient lady or an old auntie, it beats it being handled by a meticulous and methodical person like King Hao. He thinks that as a normal civilian, all he can do is be meticulous to the best of his abilities. It might end up being useless, but it's better than just diving into it head first, though he hopes that everything will go well with all the work he's put in. Somebody shouts his name, King Zi. Uncle Zhao tells him to come have some tea. He asks him why he's zoning out at the entrance, and he agrees. Uncle Zhao says, a young man like him idling around more than a person like him. He lights his cigarette and further thinks that this guy went for a walk while holding that flask of his, while his girlfriend went out with her fishing rod, zooming by on their hoverboards with their little contraptions. Him and his family can't afford to be that idle. Zhu says that he just looks like he has nothing to do, and Uncle Zhao says in reality, what he's been doing that leaves him so tired. He replies that in reality, he has even less on his plate, and he is bored out of his mind, to which Uncle Zhao looks at him and thinks, this brat. He laughs and says that he's just joking, and he doesn't have any free time. When he can see him or when he can't see him, he's always thinking about work. Uncle Zhao takes a big puff of his cigarette and says it's better to take some time off. He adds that people in this lifetime, whether it's a luxury car or a simple house, they all still need to eat food. And there's women too, in a few decades they'll become old ladies, it's not just about appearances. He also has to consider their personalities, right? And Zhu laughs at his words. Jiang and Pingping come back from their fishing while holding a bucket. Zhu says, yeah, and he says women whether they are good looking or not, it's all the same. Uncle Zhao gets shocked, and thinks it's over, what young people like is a good looking face. Pingping asks Zhu what's the point of sitting with the old man every day and Zhu replies that he is free and has nothing to do. Jiang comments that she asked him to go fishing with them, but he didn't go, to which Zhu replies that he still has a lot of things to do, so how can he find time for fishing? Jiang gives Pingping one of her fish, and she says okay, as they directly ignore Zhu. The girls bid each other goodbye, and Jiang tells Pingping that she'll see her tomorrow. Zhu tells her that she's got a big haul today, enough for a whole plate. She tells him that it's average, she could have caught a big fish, but it got unhooked and ran away. Zhu gets shocked and asks her if it can get unhooked. She says, of course, if it didn't eat the bait, she would have been able to catch it. She wonders that when she has nothing to do, she often goes online to learn some techniques. This guy can only hook on some bait and throw it out. Whether he can catch fish or not will depend on his luck. It's just pure entertainment for him, not even a bit as studious as her. Zhu says, that's a pity, and thinks that with no big fish, the plan to show off to the old man fell through. 
He unlocks the door and says he remembers what she said. The old scavenger lady told her that she picked her up in Jiangcheng and later lived in Zhengcheng. That's why she came to Jiangcheng to work, right? Jiang turns to look at him and asks, what? She says that she didn't hear him clearly. He should ask again. Zhu repeats himself and says that the old scavenger lady told her that she picked her up in Jiangcheng and later lived in Zhengcheng. That's why she came to Jiangcheng to work, right? She replies, right, and that she's told him before. They stare at each other and smile at each other. She tells him that he sits with Uncle Zhao every day and asks if he is helping him. Zhu replies no, he just likes to chill with him, and she asks if it has any meaning. He says, of course, it doesn't cost any money. A cup of tea will last him all afternoon and he can bask in the sun. He asks if it isn't more comfortable than sitting on a small red bucket with a cushion on top by the riverside, to which she replies that putting down her hobby is not allowed. He tells her that he shouldn't judge Uncle Zhao and them for their way of life. Maybe they have a life as well as he has, but there's one thing he can't buy or find no matter what. She asks what, and he replies that a lifetime of experience. He says that the setbacks faced, the paths taken, the people seen, the experiences lived, just a pot of tea can open the floodgates of conversation. How can he not say he's earning big, and Zhang keeps quiet? Zhang comments, but from a distance, he really looks like an old man, to which Zhu shouts that his hair isn't white. She notes that he doesn't like it when his dad tells him though, and he says that that's not the same. He can find his own way to avoid the pitfalls they once fell into, and adds, but he can't let him dictate exactly how he should proceed. While his father directly telling him what to do may be convenient, what experience would he gain from it? Jiang processes his comment. She then says, then his dad. He corrects her and says, their dad. Jiang murmurs the word, there, and repeats after Zhu, and says, their dad. She thinks that being interrupted by him, she forgot what she was going to say. He confirms her words and says next time she should just go over and shout loudly. Their dad is just so stubborn, she shouldn't be afraid. He thinks that a severe old relic needs strong medicine, and she keeps quiet. Jiang tells him to get out, and he shouldn't disturb her while she's cooking. He then grabs Winter Melon and runs out of the kitchen. While he's on his computer, Jiang peeks at the screen and marvels, saying that that's a lot of money. She asks him if he's earning this much, and he says, it's just good luck. He thinks that little Jiang only sees thieves enjoying the benefits, and doesn't see them getting punished right now. That's why she thinks it's easy money. He further thinks that if one really gets into it, they won't be able to sleep at night, sitting on the bed, tossing, and turning, wondering if they'll incur losses tomorrow. He asks her where her bank card is, and she says she'll go get it. He says that he's transferred 30,000 yuan to her card, and he'll teach her how to make money with money. Jiang is mesmerized and says money with money. He tells her to call him teacher, and she shouts teacher Zhu. He tells her that she's so obedient and pats her head. She folds her fist and he tells her that she can hit him after learning, and repeats, she can hit him after learning. Zhu says that student Jiang should prepare her pen and notebook, they are about to start the lesson. Jiang replies that she understood, teacher Zhu. She asks Zhu if she won't lose money, and he tells her that she won't. He says well, it's not the kind that she's thinking of at least. She asks what kind it is then. He then explains, for example, she could have earned 100 in a day, but only earned 30, that's a loss of 70. He elaborates that the interest of such reverse repurchase bonds is always changing. Investing in it, using different amounts at different times will yield different results and investing in it with a regular amount of money at a regular time would guarantee a loss. Jiang tells him to wait, as she takes notes. He further explains that she should understand that trading is done on weekdays during working hours. She should follow a regular routine starting around 9.30 in the morning and finishing at 3 p.m. with breaks in the morning and afternoon. He continues to teach her that even though it's early, this time is usually when the market is quite active and there can be big changes before it closes. He tells her to pay attention, and they'll figure out the best times. Unlike traditional auctions where she can just watch, where she needs to be active and not just wait for opportunities, Jiang tells him to wait, and say he should go slower, she can't write that fast. He says that he's just giving her a brief overview, it'll be easier for her to get the hang of it when they start trading and that she can take her time to learn. He's not going anywhere. She can ask him if she doesn't understand anything. She says that it's fine and says that jotting things down is better than trying to remember it all. He thinks that he planned to teach her how to trade first, and then let her learn the ropes slowly after. But it seems like she's been taking a ton of notes, so he'll just have to teach her whatever comes to mind. 
He tells her that they should continue then. He tells her to look and explains that it surges before and after holidays and she'll be able to earn three days worth of interest with just this one day of holiday and it might even go up to eight to nine days worth and she can also split her orders. Sometime later, Jiang goes through her notes and says that this is the secret of growing money with money. Zhu tells her to stop dreaming and makes her aware that it's just something that any ordinary person can do. She marvels and asks how much will this earn, to which Zhu replies that looking at how things are going for each day period, she can earn a percent or two on good days, it might be 10% or higher if she were to empty her magazine. He adds, no, she should use up all the cash and miss the opportunity. She'd have to watch others earn that 10% while she's crying with that 2% of hers. He teaches her, that's why they should split the others, but that's up to her to discover on her own. She keeps quiet and says that she understand. He says, well then, student Jiang, they should make her first ever trade. He thinks teaching an ancient person how to invest achievement points plus one. She says that it's already 2 p.m. though, and she shows him where he said opening hours are 9 in the morning to 11.30 in the morning, 1 in the night to 3 in the night. They stare at each other in silence, and he tells her that they can't turn back time. She then asks, so why didn't he teach her earlier? He explains that he can't just teach her everything on the first day, he must take it slow. He wonders if he is going to get beaten up over this. She gets on top of him, and he wonders what's happening. He's left on the couch as she continues to work on the computer. He asks her to please not to do that all the time. He's worried that she'll be the top in the future. She screams, hey, he gets taken by surprise and asks her if she understood what he said. She pushes him and tells him to go away. She tells him that he shouldn't interrupt her money-making session. Zhu is on the couch playing with Winter Melon. As Jiang works on the computer, he thinks that when the warrioress is passionately in love, she seems no different from a normal girl and would randomly shower him in kisses. She's just a little violent. Wait, will this really devolve into domestic abuse next time? He further thinks that he picked up martial arts to strengthen his body and to fight back. Does he have to use it to prevent domestic violence as well? He looks at Jiang as she's on the computer and he thinks that he's a willing participant though. She happily tells him that she's done and she still has half of the amount left. He asks her why did she leave half. She then explains that she's scared that it will all be gone and thinks that if she was just handling a couple thousands, she wouldn't be this worried. 30,000 is way too much. With that she could, she could contribute towards buying the house. Jiang asks, with the two of them hard at work and earning money, will they be able to buy the house soon? To which Zhu asks, who is working hard, and says he is playing with the cat here, and she just went fishing this morning. Is she planning to change the definition of hard work on Wikipedia? She suddenly realizes and says, he is right, the two of them are lazy bums. She wonders, why does it feel like she is giving her all though, what do they usually did? Zhu King would edit this videos, check out different films, write his reviews, film adverts for the channel, recording, looking at different reports. The one hard at work is Zhu King, but he still seems so free. Seeing her like that, Zhu says, she is tired because she is not smart enough. Zhu shouts, foolish Zhang He and tells her to become his Pokemon. He says that she should listen to his commands and become big-brained. Jiang thinks that he is so smug when he has only graduated after 10 years of studying. She thinks that she, Jiang He, is the truly smart one. Jiang is listening to Zhu's diary. She listens as it says, Observation Diary of Little Jiang He, Date, September 26th, Weather, Clear. The number of times that Jiang He has left the house for fun has decreased. Discovering investing is like discovering an interesting toy for her, and she's devoted to it. Date, September 27th, Weather, Clear. When the gains can be observed, even if it's just a few dollars, she would drink cola like it is the best thing in the world. Because in her mind, cola is considered free. Date, September 29th, weather, clear, even though the revenue from steaming or grinding prior is enough for her to buy many cans of cola, she considers those as hard-earned money as opposed to investing which is free to her. Date, September 30th, weather, clear, Jiang says if she hasn't a million and lent it out like this every day, would that mean that she'll no longer have to do anything else to be able to support herself? To which Zhu asks her, if she's calculating how much capital she would need in order to just laze around and rot away. He tells her that she's thinking too far ahead. Most people will think of living off their dividends when they have $10,000. When she has $100,000, she might have learned how to do simple trades such as buying gold. He explained that when she has a million dollars, she will consider people who leave their money in the bank or are doing what they are doing right now to be dumb. She asks if it isn't great just to live off these dividends, and he replies that it is, but her worldview will constantly evolve. 
Every stage would have its own way of living. He adds that anything goes as long as she's happy. She then keeps quiet and thinks about it. He smells her hair, and she angrily looks at him. He defends himself and says that he's suspecting that she used his shampoo, and he was taking a sniff to confirm his suspicion. He wonders why the huge reaction. She says that he should just say it outright if he wants to smell, to which he replies that she'll think that he's a pervert if he does that. She calls him a pervert, which makes Zhu's jaw drop. Jiang thinks, why does the perverted stuff that Zhu King does now feel normal? Zhu tells her to come. He tells her that she should come here and watch heroes of Sui and Tang dynasties with him. They watch the show and Jiang thinks that it's all fake in the TV shows. Even bizarre things like her coming from the past to the present have happened. From the viewpoint of a modern person, her appearing here is nothing short of a miracle. She thinks that a miracle like her has been getting mocked by this guy though. There wasn't anything like this in the ancient times, so how can he blame her? She says, by the way, why do these tacticians like to present three strategies every time? Why don't they just present the best one? It's not like they would choose the worst plan over the best one. He replies that it just so happens that he has three strategies for her too. He tells her to listen up, and he says that if she'd like to be an outstanding modern person who can surpass him in every way, the best strategy would be to turn off the computer, study hard, set a goal and leave her phone and games behind, keep away the fishing rod and uninstall all the games giving it her all. He adds that the middle strategy would be to study three hours a day, be serious when learning each subject, do her homework and figure out the parts she doesn't understand, study up on her shortcomings, dedicate another hour to reading professional books and use the remaining time for novels and famous works. He continues to say that the worst strategy is to continue watching this film right now and let the day pass idly by and let tomorrow resolve itself. They both keep quiet and Jiang kicks him. His diary entry continues, date, September 26th, weather, clear, national day and mid-autumn festival coincide. He tells the seller that he sent the payment over, and the seller replies that he has got it, and hands Zhu his mooncakes. Zhu happily thinks that he says he's managed to get his hands on some traditional mooncakes for little Jiang to try after scouring a few streets. He arrives with the mooncakes at home, and Jiang walks in after him, and he asks her if she's back and she agrees. He asks if she caught another huge one today, and adds that it is probably around 1.5 kilograms, to which she replies that she'll take it to his parents' house in the afternoon. He says when she's giving it, she should remember to address them as mom and dad. Hearing that, Jiang gets embarrassed and nervously says, I. She then shouts, you, and Zhu points at himself, wondering himself, and she continues to note that he has something behind him on the table, and asks what it is, he replies that it is some super tasty mooncakes, she will know how tasty it is once she tries it. Jiang gets a bite of the mooncakes and she marvels that they are delicious, to which Zhu agrees. She says she is happy that their tastes are aligned. After that, Zhu's mom smiles and says, they're just coming over for a meal, there's no need for them to bring so many things for them. Zhu mentions that the fish was caught by Jiang He, who stands next to him feeling embarrassed. She then greets Zhu's mom and dad, calling them an uncle and auntie. Zhu's mom marvels and says that's impressive, and asks if she caught it all by herself. And Zhu agrees that she did catch it all by herself, while his father notes that it is not impressive. Jiang offers to help Zhu's mom in the kitchen, while putting on an apron. She scales and slices the fish, and Jiang's mother asks her what she did in the past. She questions, in the past, and says it also involved using a blade. Zhu's mother replies that her knife skills are impeccable. She thinks and concludes that Zhu used to be a kitchen assistant. Zhu and his father are sitting on the couch as they indulge themselves on cookies and tea. Zhu's father thinks that whenever he comes to visit, he would be alone and would head home shortly after the meal. He doesn't even bring fruits, much less all of these things. He keeps thinking that this is the first time he is acting like a proper guest, with all those bags of his. He can immediately tell what his intentions are. He is curious as to what other tricks he has up his sleeve. Zhu's father is close to the sitting room door, with gifts behind him on the couch, and Zhu's mother wiping the table. She comments that it feels kind of weird. It's not the first time they are back for a meal, but it is the first time they brought along this many gifts. She thinks of the gifts and says that when she saw that their hands were full of bags, she nearly thought that they came to the wrong house. Zhu's father asks, what's so weird about that? Would she have found it weird if it was Jiang who came with the idea instead? And while surprised, she stares at him. He tells her that she'll get used to it once it happens more often. Zhu and Jiang are walking back home, and Jiang says that she thinks it would be better if she only addresses them that way after they are married. He thinks that he didn't expect her to be so serious about this matter. 
He then tells her that she can do it whenever she feels comfortable doing it. He further thinks that the old man regardless of how traditional he is, he is still the head of the household, for many times. His status as a parent is more of a cause than the person himself. Currently, the relationship between them has not changed, but each of their statuses have changed. He adds that this would have happened sooner or later. They're two individual men, and one is no longer reliant on the other. It doesn't matter if Jiang has addressed him as dad or not, the old man's mood is probably complicated now. An idea come to his mind and he thinks, that's right. He asks Jiang if she wants to do some exercise. He takes her hand and walks to the side. Jiang asks if he is sure and asks if that brain of his is okay. He tells her to not be so mean and to just give it a shot. He continues that the chance for her to stay active too, otherwise she will become a psychopath if she holds it in for too long but she is not allowed to injure him too badly. Jiang sighs and ties her hair. She thinks that she will never heard of such a strange request. She wonders, how should she beat him up in a way that doesn't hurt him too badly? Jiang asks if he is ready. Two days later, Zhu thinks that the facts prove that unbridled confidence only signal disaster. It felt like he was getting charged it by a 400 kilograms boar, who trampled all over him after knocking him out. Well, at least now he knows the difference in strength between them, as well as his limits of endurance. Jiang points at Zhu and asks if it still hurts, to which he replies that it is lucky that he has been training for so long, or she may just have murdered her husband. She then asks that who knew that he would be so weak after all that training. She thought he would be able to handle more than one of her moves. She pokes at him and he screams in agony, shouting that she is blaming him for being too weak. Jiang asks him if he doesn't know how to slide tackle, to which he says the lethality is too high. Silly log for National Day, Lazing Around Edition. October 3rd Gong Ping and Jiang dragged Zhu King into a game of fight the landlord using melon seeds to gamble. Zhu King quickly won over half of their melons by counting cards. Jiang suspected that Zhu King was cheating and gave him a good beating. She then grabbed all of the melon seeds and snacked on them, while watching shows with Gong Ping. On October 5th, Gong Ping and Jiang came back from fishing. While they split up the small fishes that were only two fingers wide, they let slip that Jiang bought a huge fish on the first and Zhu King overhead it. After giving Jiang weird looks all day, Zhu King was eventually silenced by Jiang when she clenched her fist in a display of strength. October 6th, Zhu King took another advertising order for a mobile game set in ancient times. The selling point wasn't extensive character customization option, nor the good recharge rate, but the hardcore controls and compact feel. Su King thought of roping in Kin how to reenact a martial arts battle while they wore the untouched chainmail armor. Zhu asks Hayazi if he is serious about this. Hayazi gets shocked and asks Zhu if he is using that, and why is he even hiding such a long sword at his place. He replies that it was for work, work purposes. Zhu thinks that it's a little over the top though, he's being too much of a bully. And this looks more normal, if it was the kind of game where a single 999 yuan recharge is needed. Wielding that big sword would probably be very appropriate. They go into the martial arts battle recording. Hayazi tells Zhu that he'll wait for a copy of the final cut from him. He'll probably look pretty cool since it's rare to don armor and wave a sword around. And Zhu replies that he should let him know when he is free, he will bring Zhang along to visit him. Hayazi confidently replies that the one he's looking for is not him, it is that department over there. Zhu says right, but for whatever questions, whatever checks, they would still have to look for them, and it's not like they're looking to get one reissued. She just appeared out of nowhere like an alien, an alien who can shape shift, and she's here gather some intelligence before waging an all-hour attack on them. Zhu says no household registration, no documentation, nothing at all, haven't even seen her parents and haven't been to an orphanage. He then asks if isn't this situation quite complicated. Hayazi agrees with him and says, according to what he's saying, it is very complicated and extremely rare case among the rarest. Generally speaking, people have their roots, knowing where they come from and where they are going. He adds that even if they were cases of abandonment before, if someone picked up the person, they would usually be registered under the adopter's household or sent to an orphanage, and highlights Sue's current situation is really unheard of. He continues that he remembers someone he knew before was adopted by an old nun in a temple, but the temple was also well-connected in the town, able to handle everything. He asks Zhu what is his situation. He replies that the old scavenger lady wasn't very clear-minded and lacked education, so she didn't consider all of that. Surviving is already good enough for her, there's nothing new under the sun, so this doesn't seem particularly unusual. Just happened to be the case. Hayazi notes, he ended up encountering it. 
He usually only sees such things in TV. Zu asks if he haven't been featured in the newspaper, and Hayazi keeps quiet. Hayazi tells him that he should let him inquire about it. He hasn't had such examples before. Typically the scenarios unfold as follows. When the old lady passes away, the local government takes over and everything that should be in place is arranged. Zu asks, then why are there still begging children on the streets? To which Hayazi replies that is a different situation. Zu says, so he sees her story is not the usual plot. Surviving on her own all this time has been all luck. Now she wants to turn things around and live a normal life. Whether it's for justice or social responsibility. He has to help. Zhu tells him to just pretend he doesn't know him. He asks him if he didn't say that when there is trouble, they can come to him. Hayazi takes off his garment, and he says all right, all right, he doesn't really understand these things, but he'll help ask around for him. He says those who work from home usually have some skills, and he should remember to send him the video when he's done and says he's leaving now, and Zhu agrees. Zhu asks if he is going show it to his girlfriend, and he adds that keeping her hidden is no fun. Hayazi shouts that he doesn't have one. He looks at Zhu embarrassed and says he doesn't have a girlfriend. They haven't become a couple yet, and tells him that he shouldn't say things like that. Zhu says, oh, and asks if after all this time, they still have not become a couple. Hayazi tells him not to worry about it, and that when the editing is done, he should just send him a copy. Jiang walks into the room with her hoverboard, which hurts Winter Melon. Jiang asks if he's tricking people again, and he says that he shouldn't use that inside and to be careful not to fall. She gets off the hoverboard and says, by the way, he should have a listen to this. She says that this was played by Ping Ping. She plays it on the phone and Zhu is taken aback by it. She notes that it is awesome. He comments that she really knows how to play, to which she replies that she's skilled in many things. She wants to teach her, but she feels like she won't be able to learn it. Zhu says that if she wants to learn, she can. She, as a person from ancient times playing this would be even more interesting. Her temperament is different from theirs. She should tie a veil around herself and it will surely look good. And Jiang replies that she will play for him. He asks who else would she play for. He says actually, he doesn't recommend her head to watch too many short videos. Although short videos have everything. If she watches too much of them, she won't find time to look up at the stars. He adds that even if she finds the time, there's not much to think about in her head. Just laughter, especially since she's an old lady from the Tang Dynasty. Jiang agrees and says she will be careful. She calls him Mr. Zhu and asks what he just said. She repeats his statement and says, an old lady from the Tang Dynasty. Zhu puts his arm around her and says, white silk beauty from the Tang Dynasty. Jiang puts her head on his lap, and she says that short videos have everything and thinking about it is somewhat frightening. She knows that free things are actually very costly, and she asks, so what is she giving up is? Zhu replies that it is time. She wonders that this guy sometimes likes to lie on his legs, it's even more comfortable than a pillow, and it comes with a faint fresh fragrance. It's the mist fragrance that comes out after washing the clothes with laundry, detergent, and then drying them in the sun. Zhu stares down at her and touches her head. He says that time is only valuable, when she realizes it's worth, without that awareness it's worth less. She wakes up and reads a book, he asks if she's going to post a moment on WeChat later saying, in the end, one person is still shouldering everything alone. She positions her glasses well and tells him no, and that he should not disturb her, she's reading. Zhu is on the computer, as Jiang is reading. He thinks that the plan was to buy a house after another year. But the ad revenue has been great, and the warrior's ability to save is even better. But with the income that they have now, they will probably reach 200,000 in savings half a year, right before the new year. 200,000 may just be enough for a car, if they are from an affluent family. But in this small city, where the average price of a house is around 6,000 to 7,000, where the most, with the more expensive ones going from 20,000, they'll be able to get their own house with a size to their liking. He continues to think that looking at the current follower count, it would be better not to take up commission which pay well but are of little substance. He should earn more the right way, and uphold his reputation. The size of the house they getting has not been decided on, and they are just in the preparation stage. They'll have to get a house with their abilities, with emphasis on the location and layout of the house, even if the houses are around 80 square meters, as long as it's in an area that they like. It wouldn't be any worse than 100 square meter house. He further thinks that the warrioress wants to live closer to Baikang, while still within the Jiangcheng itself. It would be better to get a house on the higher floors, where she'd be able to look out of the windows into the horizon, while it may be in an isolated area. It's a huge improvement as compared to getting a farm in the countryside. 
Jiang looks at Zhu's laptop and announces that housing is so expensive, to which Zhu explains that it has never been cheap. Bai Juyi became an officer at train 20 plus years old and only got his own house when he was in his 50s. Su Dongpo was even worse, he had to rely on his younger brother to buy a house in Jiangsu. He adds that there's also Xiao Yang, who only got his abode in his middle life, when Si Magwong and his other friends raised funds on his behalf. Jiang replies that she understand, but they could build their own house during those times. He explains that she can do the same in the village even now, houses themselves actually aren't that expensive. What's expensive is the other stuff such as resources, services, medical education, job opportunities, all of those these drive the price up. If she's willing to forego everything, she'll be able to rent a room in a small remote village for hundred a month. He tells her that whether she likes the hustle and bustle or the peacefulness, the convenience of living on the first floor or the spaciousness of the top floor, they each have their pros. The first floor is more convenient while the third and fourth floor are easy to get to, and still while lacking the foot traffic from the first floor, and the top floor is quiet, and she'll not have neighbors above her making a ruckus. Young smiles and says she's fine with anything, they should go with what he prefers. She says that she just wants a place she can call home and she'll be content. Zhu tells her that he thinks they should find a place which is quiet. The two of them would need it for work after all. He says that actually, since there is no need for them to commute to work, it'll be pretty much the same whenever they are going to live, if they are working in some mainstream job. Zhu looks at Jiang and realizes that she is asleep. He then places her on the couch properly. Someone says here, handing Jiang a slice of fruit. He tells her that is for her. Second Miss smiles and tells her to eat up, she's in her growing phase. Jiang tells her that she now has a home. While she is shocked, she asks Jiang if she has a home now, and tells that it is great news. She tells her that she's glad and asks if he's a good person. To which Jiang agrees. Second Miss asks her why she's crying. She calls her a silly girl and asks her why she's crying so easily to which Jiang replies that she doesn't know either, it's just that. She wipes her tears and asks if everyone in the village is doing well. Second Miss tells her that they are all doing well. Jiang says that the person treats her very well. Second Miss responds that she can tell by how pale her hands are. She then asks her where he is. Jiang drops her food and asks herself where he is. Second Miss confirms and asks again, where is he? Jiang looks around as the second Miss shouts and asks her how she lost him and tells her to go find him quickly. She asks her where does she go to find him. The second miss asks her in a high tone, where did she come from? Jiang scared and confused says she comes from. She wakes up from her bad dream and calls out for Zhu. He comes rushing and asks her, what's wrong? What's wrong? He tells her that he heard her shouting from the toilet. He asks if she's disoriented after sleeping for the whole afternoon. She rushes to him and gives him a big hug. She asks if she was asleep for very long and he says she should tell him it's almost time for dinner. He then asks her if she woke up feeling like she was all alone. He tells her that it all happens sometimes after long naps. He has experienced it himself regularly before. Especially when he woke up after it had gotten dark. He adds that he got winter melon on as a result. Jiang kisses him on the cheek. He covers his nose and asks what she's doing and says she shouldn't kiss him after she's just woken up. It's stinky. She tells him that she'll eat a big bulb of garlic later to stink him to death. He asks her who's afraid of that and says she should bring it on. Jiang and Zhu are in bed, Zhu touches Jiang's melons, and she pushes his hand away. She thinks that this guy isn't even sleeping, is he? As he tries to touch his head melon again. She thinks that he's keeping his hands to himself though, he somehow managed to cultivate such a habit, even when he's asleep. She thinks that he's kind of warm, as she goes on to touch his abdomen. She pulls up her t-shirt and comes closer to him, so that both their abdomens can touch each other. She then bids him a good night in her thoughts. After that, Zhu says that he's a little addicted to practicing martial arts and says that it feels like something is missing whenever he's not practicing. As he practices, he asks Jiang if there is no internal strength, and Jiang replies that teaching him how to train, his core is equivalent to internal strength. He replies that he doesn't feel anything special though. She tells him to come over, and he asks why, and asks if she wants to give him a kiss. She hits him with her head on the stomach, and tells him that when she hit him like that previously, he took a few days for the pain to go away. She then asks him if it doesn't hurt too bad now, does it? Zhu thinks that he can't tell her that the pain wasn't for that long. The last time she hit him like that, was all an act to get her to massage that area. As Jiang is working outside, he gets alarmed. He comes across Auntie Cheng and asks her where she's going, to which she replies that she's just moving her bones. 
He tells her that Jiang said that there have been fewer and fewer promotions by the supermarket recently, and there are no longer any flyers being passed around. She then replies that she's been seeing quite a few of those flyers still though, she'll bring her along next time. Zhu laughs and says she's still amazing. She shies away and replies that the young lady sure is thrifty. It's rare to see people like her. Zhu replies, after preparing for their wedding, they'll have to prepare for a car and a house too, so every bit counts. And they are not playing around like they are some honeymoon stages of their relationship. They've settled in a stable routine by now, and she's constantly thinking about their finances. Auntie Cheng thinks that she's always felt that Zhu King had the smarts ever since he was young, and it looks like she was right. Jiang seems like a pretty honest girl as well, and she seems more like a more reliable person as compared to that fishing buddy of hers. Pingping approaches, and Auntie Cheng thinks that speaking of the devil, Pingping and Zhu stare at each other, they pass each other without saying a word. In the middle of the October, Hayazi sends Zhu a message and tells him to bring her over tomorrow. Zhu tells Jiang that they're heading to the police station tomorrow. He tells her that they should go over the lines one more time and Jiang agrees. Jiang lies awake at night and says tomorrow, she asks if they really have to go. Zhu puts his hand underneath her head and tells her that they'll have to go through this eventually, and that all of the precautions that they took previously weren't needed after all, and everything has been going smoothly. He sees that as a good omen. He touches her abdomen, and she asks what if it all falls through. He replies, then, they'll think of something else, and they will solve it somehow, she's not some illegal immigrant who was smuggled into the country. She says that she came here illegally from a thousand years ago though. Zhu calls her an old granny and tells her that they don't need to overthink it, they should just get some sleep. He tells her that if she's not going to sleep, he will, as he touches her, before him going any further. Jiang hits him and tells him to go to sleep. At the police station, Jiang thinks that a little old lady from a thousand and two hundred years ago. She holds a book as Zhu holds her hand. He tells her that it's her second time here and asks if she expected to be here so soon. He thinks that at that time she was a clueless person from the Tang dynasty that didn't know anything. She can pass herself off as a modern person now. Hayazi asks if they are here. He tells them to follow him. He asks Zhu why he's following along and asks what his relationship with her. He replies that he is her guardian. Hayazi points out that guardian, his ass, if there's anything, he'll let him know. Zhu and Jiang let go of each other's hands as she follows Hayazi nervously. She thinks that she should believe in herself, she's a modern person, and she follows Hayazi. Zhu thinks that once they're done here with some sort of outcome, they'll take it to the identity department. They dropped there once before, so the process should be smooth, they'll then follow the normal procedure. And when this is resolved, the warrioress will be free to do anything she wants, be it work, study, or even travel to the Great Lakes and mountains of the 21st century. Zhu thinks that it's impossible for her to travel the world with just a sword. But with money and ID card, she'll basically be able to go to majority of places, he imagines themselves at the Great Wall of China. Jiang comes out and finds Zhu sitting on the waiting area chairs, and they walk out of the police station, and they get into a taxi. He holds her hand and asks her how it went. She says she doesn't know yet, and she heard that she still needs to come back a few more times. Zhu replies that it sounds like it went well. He tells her that it would have been all over if they let her go without asking her to come back, and she confirms that it's true. Zhu suggests that they shouldn't cook today and have barbecue outside, and she agrees. He shows her his phone and tells her that Hayazi she just sent this, she'll need to undergo a medical exam. They might draw some blood from her by pricking her with a needle, and he requests her to not punch the person doing it. She asks about drawing blood with a needle. He replies that so she already knows it's nothing spectacular. Those big bags of blood are for blood donations. They will probably just draw a little blood from her. It might even just be a prick for blood testing purposes, which pales in comparison to biting her finger and using the blood from it to write a message. She replies that she wouldn't do that. That's something that is purely fictional. He's the dumb one who believes everything that the television shows, even though he knows that it's not real. He says that the biggest source of information is from the television. It's something that she already subconsciously believes in. She can't blame him for that. It's like that for modern people. He thinks that his warrioress is not cute at all. She says, that's why modern people are all dumb. Zhu reacts with shock and requests her to touch her heart before saying stuff like that. To which she replies that she doesn't have a heart. Zhu says really, and says she should let him confirm that, as he stretches his hands to touch her melons. She hits him, and because of the disturbance, the driver is agonized by the noise. There are a thousand ways on the road, but safety comes first. 
Inside their house, the duo sit on the couch with full bellies and Zhu says that he's feeling sleepy after all that food. He asks Zhang if her internal strength can be detected through the medical checkup, to which she replies that she doesn't have any internal strength. He asks her what about the rest, her body composition or whatever, he feels like it might be a little different from his. He asks if the doctor will be able to tell the difference between a Muay Thai practitioner who can kick down a tree and a normal person. He adds, that's true though, he should let her know that Muay Thai is also known as Thai boxing. Even though the legs and elbows are regularly used, it is still called Thai boxing. His phone rings, he picks up and replies Hayazi that he should just let him know if there are any problems. He will most likely be able to resolve whatever problems he is facing. He adds that there is no need for him to give them any special treatment. He must be impartial and be objective, a comrade like him shouldn't have to worry about things like that, and he asks Hayazi if he got it. Hayazi replies on the call that he knows, he knows, they are being annoying at this point, there's no reason for it to go wrong if there are no problems, isn't it? And as long as she's someone normal and hasn't broken any laws, helping her get her life back is part of his duty, and there's no need for him to drone about it. Zhu hangs up on the call and thinks that this guy goes by the book all the time, and his sense of righteousness is never lacking. He should make a banner or something for fun and send it to him anonymously. Jiang wipes her arm with the cotton wool. She asks if they are able to find any information just from that little vial of blood to which Zhu replies that for normal people, yes, but not for her, there is no record of her to begin with, not even a trace. These events are all happening in November. She thinks that in those detective shows, a strand of her is enough to constitute evidence. As for blood, using blood to identify related families is so lame. She says that if he looks at it from another angle, it does give some sort of info to them. When she first came over, if she was to slash a couple of bystanders before running off, they wouldn't be able to know it was her right. It was raining heavily too, and the crime scene was destroyed by the rain. Sue Devastated says that she should read less detective novels. He adds that there are CCTVs everywhere, and asks where can she run to. She tells them that she'll cover her face, to which Zhu replies that with the current technology they have, unless she crossed back over to her time after slashing the bystanders, it would be hard for her to truly hide forever since she'll still have to live her life. He holds her shoulders and tells her that it was really dangerous for him back then, and asks if she knows that, and it is all her fault for being so pretty. Jiang is staring at Zhu in an uncomfortable way. Zhu can feel it and ends up yelling asking her what's wrong and why she has been staring at him for over 10 minutes. She goes on to ask him that if she is not even 14 years old yet, will he get executed? He is totally lost and asks her what exactly she is trying to say. She then asks him if he shouldn't be packing his bags and running. Zhu King is wondering what's wrong with Jiang but then he ends up daydreaming about the police coming at their place, taking him and executing him. He then yells and tells Jiang to stop saying that, and why will he be getting executed, since they haven't done anything wrong. He then wonders if she is actually a minor. She then giggles and tells him that she is kidding, she is actually 20 now, and already a grown woman. Loosening up he tells her, that she scared him for a moment, and that he thought she matured early or something. He thinks that he also feels the same way, that she is around 20 years old, after all, it's difficult to grasp one with just one hand. She asks him furiously, where he is looking at. He tells her that he is just estimating how big she is. He then explains that he meant her age, how old she actually is. Outside by the lake Ping Ping and Jiang are fishing. She asks Jiang what she has been busy with lately. She had to call her on the weekend just to get her to come fishing. Jiang explains that she has been making money through investing. She tells her that Zhu King has been teaching her about repurchasing national bonds and that she works from home every day but recently it has been a bit busy. Going back and forth to the station to handle her identity, she tells her to look at how they have pricked her arm for blood collection. Pingping says, ouch, and that it looks like it hurts. She takes her arm and tells her to wait. She points out that she is unregistered, to which Jiang agrees and says that she is in the process of registering now. Pingping then asks her, what about her live stream, bank account, her phone and wet chat? She happily replies that she has been using Zhu Kings. Ping Ping tells her that if Zhu King was to take her money and run, she wouldn't even have a place to cry. She then assures her that if something like that really happens, they will call the police and get him sentenced and sent to jail, and adds that they should punish bad men with the weapons of the law. She continues to say that she will take care of her by then, and that Jiang could play games whereas she plays the Gezheng, and they will cook and live together. Jiang comments and says it's impossible, and that Zhu King hasn't stooped to such a level of stupidness. 
Jiang then tells her that she feels like apart from getting married nothing else should be an obstacle. And that's how they have lived since the beginning. Ping Ping is surprised and shouts asking if the two of them are planning to get married. To which Jiang tells her that yes, they are. And Ping Ping goes on to say that she has been curious for a long time and wants to know where she is from. What she did before, how the two of them met and how did they end up together. She says that there must be a long and deep story between them. And Jiang responds and says it can't be considered a story. What happened in the past? Ping Ping sighs and tells Jiang that she didn't expect her story to be so complicated. Fortunately, everything has turned out well. She then wonders if Jiang had encountered a scumbag. She doesn't even dare to think about what would have happened. From the perspective of a bystander, relying entirely on others' actions is akin to walking a tightrope in the sky. In case of an unexpected event everything may change in an instant, and that Jiang he can only gamble. She then thinks that fortunately, she won the gamble. She then asks her that even after she told Zhu the truth, did he confess to her, and she tells her that he did, and says that he also hesitated, considering whether to take on this mess of hers, and that's how it became how it is now. Pingping then responds that hesitation indicates a sense of responsibility, which is better than taking on everything without careful consideration and regretting it later. And in response Jiang says, that's true. She thinks that he will regret it, is that a joke? He is really an idiot, she clearly came directly over, and yet he keeps saying he is a thousand-year-old lady, and ask herself, how can a young lady like her be so old? She further thinks, no, she have to go back and give him a beating. And on the other hand, Zhu thinks, why did she want to spar with him as soon as she came back? He have already admitted defeat, and yet she insists on pushing him onto the sofa. Zhu asks her, is there any saying or expression from her era? For example, is there a saying like she can't use her hands to hit her husband? Only her head can be used. Hearing that, she butt her head and says, if he keep talking, she will head butt him again. Zhu holds her and thinks she is clearly quiet and gentle most of the time, yet why does she always like imitating a little calf? As Jiang is practicing with her sword, she tells Zhu that he is barely earning anything from the movie review channel. To which Zhu tells her that what she just said is nonsense, and that this has earned him a couple of hundred bucks. She then asks if it's just a couple of hundred, even though it's been a year, he then counters that it still isn't money. Zhu says that comrade Jiang, she has been bragging too much recently. Has she forgotten the days when she was earning peanuts from doing menial tasks for others online? She ignores him and thinks to herself of how annoying he is. She then covers his mouth so he keeps quiet. Zhu hysterically asks if she washed her hands. She tells him that it's precisely because she didn't. That's why she used her hand to shut him up and says that she even went to the bathroom before she started practicing. He then thinks that it's over, the warrioress is quickly becoming like him, and perhaps one day, she might say something like, let's smear some chicken babies over the dead fish bodies while she's cooking. He then reprimands himself and says he has to lead by example. He calls her comrade Jiang, and tells her that he thinks she should learn more from his strengths, become someone as outstanding as him as quickly possible. She then responds and asks him if one of his strengths is making those useless videos. He is left distraught and yells to himself, what? Officer Hayazi receives a package and is amazed by the contents inside. He thinks to himself that he knew it and that there was something suspicious about the package. His colleagues notice and compliment him on the banner he just received. Seeing them, he responds that it's not just for him, it's for everyone. One of the colleagues comments and says that he is right, it is for everyone, and asks who sent it. Officer Hayazi then tells them he doesn't know because it was sent anonymously, and he just collected it from the mailroom. Another officer asks if anyone has done anything significant lately, and the other replies that he doesn't think so, and one of them tells him to put it away. It might be from someone from two months ago, as long as it's sent to the right place, it's fine. Zhu is busy texting with Hayazi, he questions, another medical exam, and asks what's wrong. Hayazi then replies that it is nothing to worry about. Early November, Jiang does her second exam. While Zhu is sitting outside, he thinks to himself that usually just one medical examination is enough. But now since they are asking to do another, could it be that something is wrong with the test results? Even if there were abnormalities present in the results, it should be treated as a medical issue and surely no one would guess that she's from the past. He wonders if he missed something. Hayazi texts him again asking if he knows where the problem is. Zhu mutters, problem, he types on the phone to reply. He replies that everything is based on hearsay. Zhu then thinks that getting abandoned, roaming the streets, working random jobs, all of it is based on what the warrioress had told them, and with no evidence whatsoever, neither can she produce any. 
Even though it may all be logically sound, it cannot be used as evidence. It has a missing link in the middle of it all, and if they are willing to spend the effort to investigate it, they should have been able to find records detailing her work from the past few years at Wang Zijun's. That would lend some credibility to her case. He further thinks that even though it seems like they are not planning to do so at this point in time, suddenly, Hayazi texts him to tell Zhang to think again to see if there is any other evidence. Zhu replies that how about they visit the Black Factory. Hearing that, Hayazi replies that it has long gone and asks what's there to see. Zhu asks, does the Black Factory have anything to do with the medical exam? He replies that the medical's exams are another matter. Hayazi says that if her fingerprints or DNA didn't turn up any information about her relatives, and it's a good opportunity to help her find them, he tells Zhu that they weren't able to find anything, and he just wanted to remind him that any other piece of evidence will be helpful, and also urged him not to make up a story that can't be fact-checked. Out of being frustrated he yells that it's all true, and that asks him to prove something that can't be proved isn't that paradoxical. He asks him if getting an orphan to find evidence to prove her existence is really appropriate. Hayazi responds and says either way he has to prove that she is an orphan then. He angrily says, why the hell, how the hell can he prove that? He then tells Hayazi that he is smart, and he will think of something and hangs up. As they leave the hospital, Zhu asks Jiang how the blood tests went, to which she tells him that they took a lot of blood. Out of interest he asks her how much blood was drawn. She says most probably a lot, around 10 samples or more, he then tries to assure her, with that much they probably won't need to take any more blood from her again, and offers to buy some red dates for her to replenish the blood, after all, it's her first time getting her blood taken. He tells her that the hospital doesn't have any medical records of her as well, so that's why they will probably run a ton of tests. While they are home, Zhu does some research about the reason, why so much blood is drawn to do tests. Seeing him worried, Zhang thinks to herself that she can feel that things are not going smoothly. She then asks Zhu if he regrets taking her in, along with her whole mess, to which he asks her what she means by this whole mess. She tells him that they can't even get married. If this doesn't work out, he then assures her to not to worry, and that the things will work out. Zhu explains that there are always ways to get it done, she doesn't have to overthink it, and that they're just testing the waters for now. If it doesn't work out, there are other things that they can do, like going to the countryside or wherever, and encourages her to relax. She then asks if he is certain, and he tells her that she should just leave it all to him. He says that if this doesn't work out, what they have now is good as well. He is content with their life right now, and the marriage, it is just a piece of paper. To which Jiang says, back then, they were all like that too, marriage certificates and such, many people didn't have them. She then states that having kids with him, and caring for them with him, and also her staying at his house, it is not much of a difference, the only thing missing is just a piece of paper. Excited about what she just said, Zhu asks if they should practice having a child right now. She yells at him and tells him that she is talking about the future, and that the only thing he thinks about all day is having kids. He then tells her that she doesn't have to overthink it, they will find a way even if everything fails, what she said is a possible option too, and thinks to himself that this little old lady must have looked up what would happen if she were to have a kid without getting married, and wonders who's the one who wants a kid between them, she sure is prideful. Zhu meets with Wang Zai for dinner and says, logically, someone who is about to become a dad should be experiencing the best time of their life, so why does he look so drained, the friend responds and sighs a pregnant lady. He then yells and tells him not to mention it. He continues that a bunch of scoundrels every single one of them and that they shouldn't even talk about being fathers, since not a single one of them is even married. And Zhu asks him to lower his voice. He then asks him if they should order a drink. Wang Zi declines the offer and tells him that if he drinks, she will smell it and definitely vomit. And vomit hard, so he doesn't dare to drink. He also suggests that Zhu shouldn't drink either. He might pass the stench of alcohol to him. He then asks Zhu if Hayazi is still busy serving the people, and that they should send him a banner. Zhu then tells him that a few days ago he anonymously sent him one, and Hayazi that day was so proud of it when he was talking to him. He laughs and says that he is going to send him one as well and asks how he sent it anonymously. Zhu then asks if he will get arrested for being a nuisance. Wang Zi tells Zhu that they must thank them for doing such a great job at maintaining the peace around here, because he doesn't even have to worry about getting robbed when he is out and about. Zhu wonders that the reasoning may sound a little forced, but it really does feel that way, the piece of Jiancheng is shouldered by these officers. 
While at the office Hayazi receives another package and when he opens it and takes a look at it, he utters some words saying the hell. One of his colleagues says why is there another one? The other colleague asks did anything significant happen recently and who saved a life, to which Hayazi says that all he did every day is catch small fry. Hayazi then says that this just proves that they're doing a great job at keeping the peace and thinks to himself that the last time he handled something serious was when someone was threatening to jump. They didn't really say thanks, so he doubts that this was sent by them. Beyond that, it should be the knife incident, and wonders if maybe it was her. With a smile on his face, he thinks that he will ask her when he's off work. All of a sudden, one of his colleagues says that the results are out for that girl, and continues that this is the medical exam report that she retook, and Hayazi eagerly requests to take a look. Hayazi and one of his colleagues are busy going through the results. His colleague says that if she was born in an official hospital, she would have some medical and vaccination records on file. This was mandated in the 80s, to which Hayazi says that it's possible to look up something like that. Though how does she survive without gaining any antibodies from vaccinations? His colleague asks him if he is dumb and tells him that natural antibodies are a thing, it's just a matter of how much there is, and continues to state that without vaccinations it must be in the hundreds, and with vaccinations, it will be in the tens of thousands. He then asks Hayazi what he learned during his university days. Hayazi yells and tells him that they don't teach that in university, and that he is a cop not a doctor. His colleague tell him that people in the mountains from decades back did not have such health care available, and they are pretty much extinct and tells him that he is really lacking in general knowledge. He then asks if it means that she wasn't born in an official hospital. His colleague responds and says not just that, if she were to go to school, she would need proof of vaccination as well. She would have gotten the shot even if she had been born at home, and never been to school, regular person with nothing, no records or documents whatsoever, and ask why is that. He then carries on to wonder what are the possibilities that led to this situation and then comes to a conclusion that she might have been born at home, never been to school without any ID and considering her age, it's most likely an additional child. Hayazi agrees and also says that's what he was thinking. Hayazi's colleague says that those kind of children have long been able to apply for an ID, and Hayazi suggests that maybe she was abandoned after she was born, since she is a girl too. Being abandoned after she was born, at that time, it is not that uncommon. The colleague also says that maybe she was picked up by some homeless old lady, which is such a coincidence, and that old lady probably didn't understand anything, because she didn't seek help, nor did she think about enrolling her in school, she didn't do anything and just brought her along with her. Hearing that, Hayazi says that it's possible. He thinks to himself why children are there still begging for food by the roadside. He then says it's hard for these people to even survive, and what other possibilities are there if not that. Zhu arrives home and as he enters, he informs Zhang that he is now back. He then tells Zhang that she seems to be more skittish recently, and asks in what way has she been more skittish. Is she preparing to sell sweet potato chips? And continues to say that they are eating it usually anyway. If someone wants to buy it, they can easily sell it. Something as tasty as that should be shared with others. And she can take her time to eat them all. Many people who just started a business will usually end up with a ton of leftover inventory. He thinks that when he was in school a friend of his started selling socks and that he never earned much and also didn't lose much either, but he was left with a bunch of socks on hand. Jiang tells him that there is a first for everything, and she is giving this a little try. He didn't have to put her down like that, to which Zhu brushes it off by agreeing to what she just said. He thinks that sweet potato chips are an everyday snack anyway. They can slowly eat them if they can't sell them. If they are left with a bunch of useless products, he will say that they got cheated. Suddenly, Jiang throws a chip towards Zhu and he manages to catch it. She thinks that it was pretty convenient and it feels like feeding a dog, while Zhu thinks that they are getting married soon so he won't make a fuss about what just happened. As they are out, Zhu orders five sticks of roasted gluten from a vendor. He then asks Jiang if it doesn't feel more interesting to be out and about, because her life is a little monotonous, it feels like it would be good for her to go out for walks more often. Everyone has their own interests and hobbies. They would experience what the world has to offer, meet different people, and encounter different events. Even though she is living a thrifty life, she shouldn't be cooped up at home all day in that small house and plan for their everyday necessities. He zealously tells her that this world is alive. Staying at home all day will dampen her excitement for it and will make her more reclusive. As they continue with their walk, she tells him that she goes fishing with Ping Ping 
to which he replies that fishing is also a quiet activity, where both of them are sitting in one spot and there is no liveliness in it. They will reach nirvana at that rate. She thinks to herself agreeing with the fact that he is not wrong. Standing here in the night feels a little disorienting, and she constantly wants to go home. He tells her that they are out to try to browse and have a look, it's free anyway, and it's good to have a change in scenery for her spirits. Otherwise, if this goes on someone like her would end up saying things like, there's no need to get married and to just have a child. It also feels like she will end up becoming a classic yander and beat him to death if they were to break up. He tells her that she's been roaming the pugilistic world for so long and she is now staying at home all day. He continues that something does not feel right. She asks if it's not what he likes, because he has been teaching her about finance, so that she stays at home more and be with him, and not out fishing with Ping Ping. He yells and tells her that it sounds like a conspiracy theory, and that she is jumping to conclusions, and he swears that it's absolutely not the reason why, and he didn't even have that thought. It's just that he saw her being bored at home, and playing games all day will make her brain rot, so he decided to get her to do something that would get her brain working and learn new things. Learning without thinking makes one ignorant, while thinking without learning makes one dumb. After all, she is trying to become someone who's cleverer than him. She says, it must have been hard on him, having to take care of an ancient person, to which he tells her that it's nothing, all part of a day's work. Zhu tells her that he didn't expect her to come up with such a conspiracy theory at all, if she didn't mention it. He wouldn't have even thought that deep into it. He then thinks to himself that the warioress's IQ is not any lower than his. She asks him if he is blaming her for overthinking things. He spent half a year scheming his way into her room. He shouts and tells her that regardless of how skimming he was, there would have to be a willing party as well, and that she is the one with all the power. Jiang furiously asks him if he is trying to say that she is the one who wanted him to move in with her. Hearing that, Zhu trembles and says that's her words, not his, and reminds her not get rough with him, since they're in the middle of the streets, and it would cause a commotion if he were to be sent flying. He then offers to take her to another place so they can sit down and eat. While they are waiting for their food, Zhu tells her that it seems like there is no need for him to worry about her life being too monotonous or whatever, because she is already capable enough, and she is able to have deeper thoughts than him, so his worry is all for nothing. She tells him that she loves hearing him rumble about his plans for her, to which he tells her that he feels like she is saying that just to comfort him. And it's possible that when she becomes smarter than him, she'll pretend to be dumb, and quietly watch him perform like a monkey. She giggles and thinks to herself that this is probably how a peaceful time is like. A few days later, a police officer named Bai Feng introduces himself to Jiang, saying he is the one who contacted her before. She nervously says hello to him, as she is sitting in front of him and his friend. But then, Feng says that she looks a little familiar, while Zhu also came next to her. And as the officer trying to remember, Zhu says that he is right, and tells him that he is Master Zhu King, that he saw on that video website. But the officer tells him to be quiet, since he was referring to Miss Jiang, not him. He then points towards the fishing rods and says, he is now sure after seeing them. Previously, when he was investigating the case of electro fishing, there were two ladies fishing, who gave him directions. Then he asks Jiang if that was her. Jiang remembers the officer now, and replies with a yes, and that it was she and her friend. Feng laughingly comments, it looks like they are quite faded, as the people who were electro fishing, are really hateful. Regardless of how big the fishing area is, there would be no more fish left once they electrocute the area. Jiang asks if they managed to catch them, to which Feng says that they ran away pretty quickly, and they only managed to nab one after several attempts. Then he asks her if she has been living with Zhu all alone. Jiang replies with a yes, and that they are living as a couple, and thinks that even though it feels like small talk, she definitely cannot let her guard down. Feng says that the apartment looks a little old, and asks if it is rented. Jiang replies that it's her boyfriend's, he has been living there the whole time, and she only moved in at a later date. Feng makes notes of all the information, and asks what do they usually do. But then, Zhu tells the officers to have some water, and thanks them for the hard work. The officers thanks him, saying they doesn't think that it's hard work at all, since it's all part of the job. But just then, Feng notices some notebooks on the table. They get shocked to see the middle school practice problems notebooks, and questions themselves, if Miss Jiang is not just 20 years old. Feng then seriously stare at Zhu, and tells him to not take this in wrong way. But when did the two of them had a kid? Zhu notices the dark aura that the officers were releasing, and says that the notebooks are for Jiang, while she thinks that the atmosphere just suddenly turned aggressive. 
The officers get shocked to hear that, and Zhu tells them that Zhang didn't go to school because of her earlier circumstances. He says that he can't let her continue being uneducated, so he thought of giving her the lessons that she missed, and to guide her back to an ordinary life. After that, they both hugs each other and smiles happily. Feng shockingly thinks, to guide her back to an ordinary life, they are there to take stock of the situation. And they thought of a bunch of questions on their way there, but he didn't expect it a situation like this. Officer Feng asks Zhang if he can take a look at the practice books, to which she happily says sure. And as Feng is checking the books, he thinks that it seems like the work of a child, who dislikes studying. He asks them if this is how they live their daily lives, to which Zhu replies that he make videos, and she accompanies him during live streams, by playing games and such. But then, Feng notices Zhang's sword, to which Zhu thinks, crap, he forgot to put away the sword this morning. He quickly picks it up and tells the officers that this is purely for work purposes. His client sent him this. It's a toy sword with a blunt edge. It is very safe and tells them to look. But Zhang shouts that this is not actually the case. Truth be told, he has a little issues up in the mind as he thinks of himself as a warrior every day and even enjoys editing martial arts videos and such, which surprises Zhu. After that, the both of them starts quarreling and the officers sees that. They tells them to stop, as it's very normal to have these at home, so they tell Zhu to calm down, and Jiang to continue the interview. After some time, the officers left, as Jiang sees them from the window and says that it seems like they are fine. Zhu replies he thinks so, though they may be back in a few days, which shocked Jiang. Zhu tells her, that before they left, Feng told him to not be nervous, they were there this time to better understand their situation. At the same time, Feng is thinking of something, so the other officer asks what's wrong. He replies that it's nothing, and tells him to let's go, as he would like to speak with the security guard. After that, the officer went to meet the guard and says hello to him. Back at home, a delivery boy delivers a parcel to Jiang, as she thanks him after receiving it. Zhu sees the parcel and asks what's in that parcel, to which she happily replies, it's lavender seeds. Zhu asks if she wants to grow flour, to which she says yes, after the rose from before, she has prepared a pot of soil to try growing something. Zhu asks if she can really grow something out of that, to which she says that she definitely can. Zhu imagines the plants and thinks it's not bad to have some around in their home, and perhaps this is the charm of life, but then he notices winter melon. He tells Jiang to keep an eye on winter melon, and not let him tip it over. Jiang seems confused hearing that and asks, why would Winter Melon do that? Zhu says with a smug look, it's because this is just what cats do, so Jiang says, in that case, she will grow it on the bedroom windowsill. While watering the soil, she thinks that Zhu's foul mouth may be sometimes accurate, it might be because of their gap in knowledge, but she would rather not let what he says come true. 